Ding! The system of the multiverse money bank has been activated. Chen Fan found himself in a splendid hall. His eyes lit up instantly, and a look of excitement appeared on his face. Finally, he got this exciting golden finger. As a time traveler, he arrived in the eastern region of the Spirit Cloud continent a month ago, in the Great Qin Dynasty, and became a slave of the Qin family in Yancheng. In this world, strength is paramount, and commoners are at the mercy of others. Only the martial artists can enjoy dignity. Among the martial artists, there are different realms, including spiritual cultivation, spiritual profound realm, spiritual movement realm, spiritual transformation realm, spiritual communication realm, and even a higher level, the spirit control realm, where one can control space freely, like a deity. As a time traveler, Chen Fan naturally refused to be ordinary. He worked hard to explore this world even at the cost of obtaining the Chen family's inherited martial arts, preparing to embark on an extraordinary cultivation journey. However, fate played a joke on him, as he unintentionally witnessed the intimate contact between the young lady of the Chen family and a man, which resulted in a fatal slap from the young lady. This made Chen Fan feel extremely wronged and frustrated. I have brought shame to the time travelers. This was Chen Fan's only thought before his death, but he had another idea. If only he could have a system like other time travelers. Unexpectedly, he really got the system. But, he was already dead, so what's the point of getting the system? Chen Fan cursed angrily. Then, a large amount of information about the system flooded into his mind. Host, Chen Fan. Identity, Soul Cultivator. Cultivation, Soul of Yin. First level. Resources. Two Yin Soul Puppets. Click to view details. Three Multiverse Tokens. Click to view details, several debt contracts, click to view details. The top four lines of information made Chen Fan's eyes light up. Yin souls are extremely rare in this world. Only when a person dies, the soul does not disperse, and can exist for a long time, can it be called a yin soul. Those who can do this are none other than the strong in the world. Obviously, he was not strong. Being able to become a yin soul was obviously the credit of the system. Next. He only needed to use the power of the system to continuously strengthen the multiverse money bank, improve the cultivation of the yin soul, and eventually have the hope of seizing rebirth, or even reshaping the body. And now, he had two yin soul puppets, specially designed bodies for soul cultivators. He could enter the puppet's body and walk in the world in the identity of a human. This idea was brilliant. Chen Fan didn't want to be trapped in the system. So he immediately checked the details of the two yin soul puppets. Then, the models of two puppets appeared in front of him. One male and one female? He was surprised to find that there was a female puppet, and it was completely different from the stiff mechanical puppets. Except for the slightly empty eyes, it was almost no different from a real person. However, to enter the body of a female puppet? Isn't that transformation? Although it was a bit strange, a hint of anticipation arose in his heart. Seeing this exquisitely beautiful and voluptuous female yin soul puppet, Chen Fan's eyes sparkled with excitement, full of determination to explore. So, his yin soul unhesitatingly entered the body of this female puppet. Immediately, the originally empty eyes became spirited, even a bit eerie, as if a living person. However, reality was not as beautiful as he had hoped. Worry creased her brow as she struggled with helplessness and conflict in her heart. To control the puppet in intense battles, she needed a large amount of spirit stones, which made her extremely anxious. After some complaints, Chen Fan resolutely decided to enter the male yin soul puppet to investigate. The male yin soul puppet had the strength of a ninth grade spiritual cultivator, while the female yin soul puppet had reached the later stage of the spiritual profound realm. Regardless of which puppet she controlled, it required a large amount of spirit stones. However, the dilemma now was that as a yin soul, she could not easily obtain enough spirit stones. Furrowing her brows, she cast her gaze on the three faintly glowing world tokens and several debt contracts. In this seemingly powerful world bank system, she could not even obtain a single spirit stone. The only thing she could rely on was those world tokens and debt contracts. According to the information she obtained, the world tokens were used to attract customers. Through them, customers could directly come to the World Bank Trading Hall to negotiate lending matters with her. However, it was the debt contracts that Chen Fan was most concerned about. 
She immediately checked the details. Golden Eye Demon Sovereign. Borrowing the appearance of the World Bank's Golden Eye for a thousand years. To be returned after the deadline, or life is collateral. Spirit Enchanting Fairy. Borrowing the appearance of the World Bank's beauty for ten thousand years. To be returned after the deadline, or a lifetime as a slave. War God Lei Tien. Borrowing a thousand year lifespan from the World Bank. To be returned after a hundred thousand years, or a hundredfold return if overdue. Looking at the contracts in her hand, Chen Fan couldn't help but be stunned. The illustrious Nine Heavens powerhouse, the Golden Eye Demon Sovereign, was unmatched. Her golden eyes were even more magical, able to see through everything, revealing all lies, making people palpitate. Who would have thought that her renowned golden eyes were actually borrowed? And the spirit enchanting fairy. She was the number one beauty known to all in the fairy world, possessing an irresistible charm that made many strong men willing to fall for her. Who would have thought that her charming appearance was also borrowed? Then, what was her original appearance like? No wonder she was called the Cosmetic Fairy, Lei Tien, the ancient war god, one of the top ten powerhouses in the divine realm. Who would have thought that he owed the World Bank a thousand years of life? Furthermore, all these debts were overdue, and the task she faced was to repay these debts. The thought of the spirit enchanting fairy possibly becoming her female slave filled Chen Fan with excitement. Chen Fan now controls the universal bank system, able to easily sign debt contracts and become the creditor of many strong individuals and beautiful women. As long as he retrieves everything lent out by the system, he can become the invincible man in the world and the wealthiest person. However, he is aware that his current strength is still weak, so he decides to first collect debts from some easy targets, preferably nearby people. Chen Fan remains calm, not arrogant or complacent, and continues to search for debt contracts, eventually targeting the county governor Xiao Sheng of Lingyun County. Xiao Sheng borrowed a female puppet with the initial strength of the nascent soul realm from the Universal Bank, promised to return it after a year, and charged 10 years of lifespan as interest for each year overdue. Now, he is 10 years overdue. Does this mean that Xiao Sheng owes me 100 years of lifespan in interest alone? Several years ago, he was just a mid-level expert in the spiritual realm, but suddenly rose to power after marrying his wife, relying on her strength to establish himself in Lingyun County, commanding the 10,000 Qin army, highly valued by the King of Qin, and envied by many. And unexpectedly, Xiao Sheng's wife turned out to be a puppet. Even more surprisingly, his wife is under my control. In this world, the most painful thing is that many people owe money to Chen Fan but dare not go to collect it. These debtors consider themselves to be superior, making Chen Fan feel helpless. Even the worst behaving county lord Ling Yun, Xiao Sheng, cannot be defeated by Chen Fan. Challenging him would be a dead end. Therefore, he can only start with small businesses. Only when he succeeds can he qualify to ask Xiao Sheng for repayment. Chen Fan is already familiar with this system. Besides countless dead contracts and two puppets, he also has himself. Yes, he can also exchange things on his body for capital. At this moment, he is in a state of yin soul, with only his soul force available for transactions. However, the capital available to Chen Fan is very limited. He can only use one-fifth of his soul force at most, any more would jeopardize his foundation. After understanding the basic information, Chen Fan unhesitatingly used a transaction qualification. System, I want to trade with a universal token, using only one-fifth of my soul force. The next moment, a universal token suddenly disappeared in front of Chen Fan without any sign. In the Lord's Mansion of Yancheng in Dachin, Li Zan is a Dachin military officer, commanding 5,000 troops in Yancheng with supreme authority. At this moment, he looked at his son lying on the sickbed with a distorted face and unclear consciousness, burning with anger inside. Who did this? The yin soul of Hauer was forcibly erased. I clearly told you to protect him. How could he end up like this? He grabbed the deputy general kneeling beside him and roared, Lord of the city, I. Dot the young master. He deliberately avoided me. When I arrived, he, he was already. Li Zan, who cares deeply for his only son, acted directly in anger slapping the Beiwi acupoint on the deputy general's head. Then, the deputy general's head instantly exploded, blood gushing out, and he died on the spot. Others present were frightened and knelt down, trembling all over. 
Get out of here. Li Zan, in his anger, lost his mind. Power, wake up. Tell dad, who harmed you? I will avenge you. At this moment, a token suddenly appeared in front of him. This dark golden token was inscribed with the words, universal, and emitted a dazzling light. Then, a solemn and majestic voice echoed in Li Zan's mind. Despite his doubts, Li Zan thought that since everything could be traded, perhaps he could awaken his son. So, he grabbed the token without hesitation. At that moment, he only wanted to save his son, regardless of anything else. Immediately, he disappeared from the spot and reappeared in the hall of the Universal Bank. Is this the Universal Bank? I want to save my son. At all costs, Li Zan said urgently, fearing that his son might still be alive. According to the assessment of the Universal Bank, you cannot afford the price to redeem your son. In general, a yin soul at the first level can easily defeat a spirit warrior at the first level of cultivation with their soul techniques. A yin soul at the second level can easily defeat a spirit warrior at the second level, and so on. When a yin soul reaches the ninth level, their strength can match that of a ninth grade spirit warrior. However, without soul techniques, their attack power is almost negligible. If the level of the soul technique is too low, the damage to the enemy will also be reduced accordingly. Nevertheless, this trade is still a huge gain for yin soul cultivators. This special item is simply too powerful. Miss Chen, Chen fan of the Chen family, has finally come for revenge. Li Zan was burning with anger, with only one thought in mind, to completely destroy the Chen family. How dare the Chen family harm his son, Li Hao? He immediately ordered the mobilization of troops to besiege the Chen family, showing no mercy. Inside the main mansion of Yan City, Li Zan was filled with rage, his eyes burning with furious flames. Just awake, Li Hao recounted the events in a clear and concise manner, revealing the sinister intentions of the Chen family to force Li Zan to surrender control of Yan City. Therefore, the warriors of Da Qin quickly assembled, disciplined and organized, like five giant dragons, surrounding the Chen family from five directions and launching an attack. The people of Yan City were all drawn to the scene, watching as Lord Li led the army into the city, knowing that something major was about to happen. Could it be related to the attack on his son? Were they heading towards the Chen family? Everyone followed the army, eager to find out the truth. In the blink of an eye, before the members of the Chen family could react, they were already surrounded. Why are you doing this to yourselves? Don't you know this is the Chen family? The first family of Yan City. Several members of the Chen family shouted angrily. Obviously, they were so arrogant that they didn't realize the danger they were in. Suddenly, everything went dark before them, and before they could figure out what was happening, Li Zan had already struck, wielding his long sword, decapitating several heads in an instant, blood splattering in front of the Chen family's gate. This was the fate of the Chen family. How dare the Chen family attack my son? Unforgivable, Li Zan roared his voice echoing like a bell within 10 miles. Kill, kill, kill. Immediately, 5,000 soldiers shouted in unison, marching in unison, charging into the Chen family. The swords gleamed, blood splattered, and a brutal massacre began. The strongest in the Chen family was only in the later stage of the spiritual profound realm, while Li Zan had already reached the early stage of the spiritual dynamic realm, crushing them with his superior strength. Coupled with the numerical advantage, the 5,000 soldiers easily overwhelmed the hundreds of members of the Chen family. This massacre was without suspense, the Chen family had truly dug their own grave. Upon learning of the situation, Chen Fan could only shake his head helplessly, wasn't this an opportunity for revenge? Why provoke the city lord? In Da Chen, strength was paramount, and the martial spirit prevailed. The stronger the city lord, the greater the power. For someone like Li Zan who completely controlled the life and death of Yan City, wiping out a family was like child's play. How dare they harm his son, they simply didn't know any better. City Lord Li, do you have any evidence to prove that it was my Chen family's doing? The head of the Chen family asked angrily, even if you were the city lord, you can't just falsely accuse my Chen family, right? He believed he had been cautious in his actions and left no trace behind. Humph. Still trying to argue? Li Zan snorted coldly, his voice icy, my son has confessed himself. Impossible. The head of the Chen family's face changed drastically. 
Li Zan didn't mince words, waving his hand, and four soldiers brought in a stretcher, on which lay Li Hao. At that moment, Li Hao, with a face full of resentment, stared at the head of the Chen family. How? How is this possible? I destroyed your soul. How can you still wake up? The head of the Chen family asked incredulously. Li Hao didn't hide the truth. I made a deal with the 10,000 Realms Bank using 100,000 spirit stones to partially restore Hao's soul. Everyone was shocked to hear this. Trading with Yin spirits? What kind of place is the Wenji Bank? Such a mysterious and powerful force. The Chen family head was completely at a loss. Faced with the threat of death, he suddenly had an idea and shouted, I also want to trade with the Wenji Bank. I will exchange everything from the Chen family for a breakthrough. At this moment, only a breakthrough could save his life, but to trade with the Wenji Bank, he needed a Wenji token. Did he have one? Just then, a charming and captivating woman walked out slowly, her voice gentle and pleasant. It turns out she was the female yin puppet controlled by Chen Fan. Who are you? Li Zan's men immediately stepped forward to block her, and everyone's gaze turned towards her. At the same time, a Wanji token floated in the air next to Chen Fan. Li Zan's pupils shrank, his expression suddenly changed, as he personally stepped forward. Are you the steward of the Wanji Bank? When Li Zan traded with the Wanji Bank before, he heard a male voice. How could he have expected such a lifelike yin puppet? Even more unexpectedly, the yin puppet even had a voice-changing effect. No, this servant is just the master's maid. Chen Fan said calmly. Everyone looked at each other in surprise. Such a beautiful woman was just a slave? Wasn't her master lucky? My master is also the owner of the Wenji Bank, Chen Fan explained. The head of the Chen family respectfully greeted the woman, but before he could finish speaking, Chen Fan interrupted. I'm not a miss, you can call me Xiaomi. The head of the Chen family was taken aback and said, Please give me a Wenji token. Here are 20,000 spirit stones as a reward. Chen Fan waved his hand, No need. I'll add another 30,000 spirit stones, a total of 50,000, please. The head of the Chen family gritted his teeth, I'll give you as much as you want, I won't give you any, because the master of this servant is Chen Fan. With that, he turned to the young lady of the Chen family and smiled. Miss Chen, this name should be familiar to you, right? The young lady of the Chen family's face changed dramatically when she heard this, shaking her head in disbelief. Impossible, didn't I slap him to death? He was just a servant of our Chen family. How could he be the owner of the Wenji Bank? And how could there be such a maid? Chen Fan smiled, but the fact is so. What is even more unexpected is that because of your slap, the Chen family will face destruction. This world is truly full of wonders. The young lady of the Chen family was in tears, pleading in despair. Please spare me, spare the Chen family. Monster, you are the sinner of the Chen family. Today, I will avenge the Chen family. In the next moment, the head of the Chen family actually did not hesitate to slap the young lady of the Chen family to death. She was his own granddaughter. The head of the Chen family looked at Chen Fan with a flattering expression and asked politely, Young, this messenger, are you satisfied with the outcome? Chen Fan gazed at Miss Chen from the Chen family, who looked terrified and incredulous. He sighed softly, then turned to the head of the Chen family and lightly replied, Very satisfied. Of course, it's quite ironic to treat her the same way she treated your master by slapping her granddaughter to death. It's satisfying. Let's just say I'm happy for you. The head of the Chen family smiled broadly. As for the matter of the interrealm token, I refuse, Chen Fan flatly rejected. The head of the Chen family's expression changed, and a murderous intent flashed in his eyes as he menacingly charged towards Chen Fan, then let's die together. Chen Fan sneered and didn't dodge at all. With a loud bang, in front of everyone, the head of the Chen family's palm struck Chen Fan's chest. As a late-stage spiritual profound realm expert, he exerted all his strength, and the power was extraordinary. Everyone present believed that Chen Fan was bound to die since there was no fluctuation of energy on him. However, in the next moment, the head of the Chen family's face changed drastically. A frontal attack? Chen Fan looked at the handprint on his chest left by the head of the Chen family and calmly said, I didn't expect you to be an old rogue. The puppet has extremely strong overall defense, no pain sensation and is the king of close combat. The shadow puppet possesses all the characteristics of a puppet, 
and human souls can control it, unleashing various combat skills. Its combat power is outstanding. Even without any special combat skills, controlling the puppet Shao Mi is enough to make Chen Fan invincible in the spiritual profound realm. This battle is destined to have a certain outcome. Remember not to casually attack a woman's chest in the next life. Chen Fan quickly struck, punching the head of the Chen family in the throat. Crack, his neck almost collapsed. The head of the Chen family covered his throat, fear on his face, took a few steps back, and finally fell to the ground, critically wounded. A gasp sounded from all around, and everyone looked at Chen Fan with horror-filled eyes. How? Is this possible? Master Li, my master said that no one from the Chen family should be left alive. Chen Fan said to Li Zan. Li Zan woke up and quickly nodded in agreement. Chen Fan gracefully turned and left, and the crowd automatically parted to make way for him. Next, he headed to Lingyun County to collect a debt from the county magistrate Xiao Sheng. Chen Fan did not return to the Interrealm Money House but continued to control Xiao Mi to leave Yancheng and head to Lingyun County. Along the way, he casually swallowed spiritual stones. The weakness of the puppet is usually in the heart area, storing the body's energy, which can be shattered with a single blow. However, the shadow puppet does not have this weakness. By consuming spiritual stones, the energy will permeate the entire body, eliminating the puppet's fatal weakness. His only weakness is the yin soul. The enemy can only damage the yin soul puppet through attacks on the yin soul level. Deep within Chen Fan's heart lies an indomitable determination, as he knows that only a powerful yin soul can defeat all enemies. Xiao Mi is invincible in the spirit profound realm, and Xiao Sheng, as a strong contender in the early stage of the transformation realm, commands an army of 10,000 soldiers, with skilled subordinates abound. Faced with such formidable opponents, Chen Fan knows that going alone would only lead to his demise. Therefore, he decides to take the risk once again for a trade, hoping to gain more strength and rewards. Without hesitation, Chen Fan enters the Wenji money bank system, wielding a high-level TNJ technique, the Yin Soul Secret, which enhances his soul power and broadens his range of trading partners. With a firm resolve, Chen Fan watches as a Wenji token disappears before his eyes, then sets off on his journey to the eastern domain of the Lingyun continent. In the eastern domain, the Great Zhou Dynasty reigns supreme, with the Great Ming Kingdom as one of its powerful vassal states. Since ascending to the throne, King Zhu Tianlong of the Great Ming has been dedicated to the prosperity of the country, but his cultivation has remained stagnant at the late stage of the spiritual communication realm, causing the country's development to hit a bottleneck. With lofty ambitions, Zhu Tianlong gazes upon the territory of the Great Ming aspiring to free the country from dependence on the Great Zhou Dynasty and achieve true independence and strength. However, the Great Zhou Dynasty has always monopolized the inheritance of Yin Soul cultivation techniques, preventing other countries from accessing higher-level Yin Soul cultivation methods. Zhu Tianlong knows that to break through his own bottleneck and make the country strong, he must obtain a ground-level Yin Soul cultivation technique at all costs. He is willing to do whatever it takes to gain this power. Roaring with determination, Zhu Tianlong clenches his fists, determined to break free from constraints and become a strong contender in the spirit-controlling realm, standing side by side with the great Zhou dynasty. In his moment of fervor, a mysterious token suddenly appears. Although Zhu Tianlong does not know its origin, he decisively seizes the opportunity and chooses to enter the Wenji money bank. The next moment, Zhu Tianlong vanishes on the spot only to reappear in the hall of the Wenji Money Bank, ready to face the challenges and opportunities ahead. Zhu Tianlong was startled by the sudden teleportation, his face turning pale. This mysterious power that tore through space made him speculate about various possibilities involuntarily. Facing the imposing four characters of the Wenji Money House in front of him, he struggled to control his inner excitement, filled with caution and vigilance towards this mysterious force. I want to obtain the earth rank yin soul cultivation technique, does your money house have it? Zhu Tianlong inquired, showing his eagerness for the heaven rank technique. I only collect heaven rank yin soul cultivation techniques, not earth rank ones, Chen Fan's voice rang out. Heaven rank? Zhu Tianlong's pupils contracted, with a glint of joy in his eyes, but his face remained calm as he continued to inquire, what price do I need to pay then? 
he knew that there would be a price to pay for the transaction. Of course, there must be a corresponding exchange, Chen Fan replied. Zhu Tianlong listed his resources, including 3,000 beauties in the harem, 10 spiritual veins, Lingyu Step, and Flame Palm. Chen Fan's mind received a prompt from the system, and he keenly focused on the spiritual veins. A spiritual vein is enough to support the prosperity of a country. Dachin is a small country with only one spiritual vein. In contrast, Daiming has ten spiritual veins. Ten spiritual veins. Chen Fan exclaimed. It's impossible. Zhu Tianlong's face changed. If all ten spiritual veins were handed over to Chen Fan, Daiming would quickly decline. Spiritual veins are the foundation of a country. Without the spiritual veins, his strength cannot be improved, even if he obtains the advanced heaven rank yin soul cultivation technique. The entire cultivation speed of Daiming will also be affected. Nine spiritual veins. Chen Fan knew that Zhu Tianlong would not easily agree. Negotiations in business are all about bargaining, so he made a concession. Ten million spiritual stones. Zhu Tianlong proposed a price. Do you think the advanced heaven rank technique is worth 10 million spiritual stones? Chen Fan countered. Advanced heaven rank? Zhu Tianlong's eyes lit up, but he still furrowed his brow and hesitantly said, at most half a spiritual vein. However, Chen Fan shook his head and insisted, eight spiritual veins, no less. He had already made two concessions. No, eight spiritual veins are too many. And how do I know if the technique you give me is truly heaven rank? Zhu said, requesting to inspect the goods first. You must understand, you are the one seeking me. Chen Fan waved his hand, expressing helplessness. Since we cannot reach an agreement, please leave. Wait, Zhu Tianlong gritted his teeth, one spiritual vein. But I don't want the complete heaven rank yin soul cultivation technique. Oh, Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, three spiritual veins, and I'll give you the first level of the cultivation technique. And, before Zhu Tianlong could object, Chen Fan continued, You must first produce the spiritual veins. Zhu Tianlong furrowed his brow tightly, finding Chen Fan's conditions extremely harsh. But as Chen Fan said, he had no other choice. Fine, I agree. Zhu Tianlong gritted his teeth. When he became a strong spirit realm cultivator, three spiritual veins would be a small matter to him. These three spiritual veins are not on me right now. I need to go back to Daiming to retrieve them. Zhu said, this token is the pass to the Wenji money house, but you wasted one of my tokens, so you need to compensate with your flame palm, Chen Fan said. Zhu Tianlong felt extremely frustrated, as the deal was completely controlled by the other party. Taking a deep breath, he had no choice but to use the secret technique of the flame palm. With a wave of his hand, Chen Fan made Zhu Tianlong disappear instantly, and the flame palm was also put away. Shortly after, Zhu Tianlong returned and handed over three spiritual veins to Chen Fan, receiving the first level of the Yin Soul technique in return. However, Zhu Tianlong did not leave immediately. Instead, he began to cultivate the Yin Soul technique on the spot apparently wanting to verify its authenticity. Chen Fan did not want to accompany him in the verification process, so he forced Zhu Tianlong to leave in order to check the rewards of the transaction. Zhu Tianlong found himself back in the Ming Dynasty. His face changed color, worried that he had been deceived. Why not let him verify on the spot? But thinking of the mysterious means of the other party, he could do nothing about it. What he hoped to obtain was an advanced heavenly grade technique. So. Zhu Tianlong sat cross-legged and cultivated the yin soul technique. After a moment, he was overjoyed, with a breakthrough in sight, even expressing gratitude towards the distance. The second transaction was completed, with a completion rate of 200%, and he received the mission rewards, 10,000 female yin soul puppets, 100 world tokens, and a special item. Chen Fan focused on studying his rewards, also achieving 200%. The Yin Soul technique had a total of 10 levels. He exchanged the first level for three spiritual veins and then used a world token to exchange for the Earth Grade Primary Battle Skill Flame Palm, which turned out to be a great deal. When he checked the rewards, he was surprised to find 10,000 female Yin Soul puppets with the strength of the later stage of the spiritual profound realm. Although impressive, he was also worried about the difficulty of controlling so many experts. 
Chen Fan could only control one Yin Soul Puppet in battle before, but now he could control 10,000. After using the special item this time, the little secret became even more perfect and agile, exuding more charm and giving people an invisible pressure. Chen Fan once again entered Xiao Mi's body to sense her strength. He found that Xiao Mi had reached the late stage of the spirit realm, and her strength had increased by one level. This made Chen Fan very happy, and he decided to test the power of the late stage of the spirit realm. So, he left the system and smashed his fist into the ground to feel the strength. With a loud bang, a huge pit appeared on the ground. The cracks spread out like a spider web in all directions until they stopped a hundred meters away. Chen Fan took a sharp breath, finally realizing how terrifying the power of a true strong person is. He hoped someone could be his sparring partner. Suddenly, dozens of figures appeared in his sight. They were dressed in black, riding black horses, heading straight for Chen Fan, or more precisely, heading straight for Xiao Mi. Their formation was chaotic and they were using foul language, looking like bandits. Chen Fan smiled slightly, rubbed his wrist, loosened his muscles and bones, with a smile on his face. He noticed that one of the women was the leader, and he thought she was very beautiful and matched the leader well. He secretly followed this woman and then reported to the leader. A young man who thought highly of himself bragged to the leader about his actions, while Xiao Lu was trying to please the leader. The leader was satisfied with them and promised to reward them. Chen Fan decided to play a game with them and walked towards them. Seeing Chen Fan obedient, the leader felt possessive and ordered others to welcome him. The sharp-mouthed young man and Xiao Lu were excited to comply, but Chen Fan suddenly took action, controlling the sharp-mouthed young man and throwing him into the pit. Xiao Lu was panicked and before he could react, Chen Fan had already struck his chest, making him fall to the ground and unable to get up. With a loud crack, his sternum was fiercely hit, sinking in and making a terrifying sound. Xiao Yu felt his heart instantly bear a huge pressure, unable to resist, and it burst suddenly. He realized that his strength was too weak to unleash his full potential. Chen Fan shook his head in disappointment and turned to the leader of the group. Just then, the leader and his men were completely caught off guard, let alone offering any help. Good, I didn't expect you to be a compliant puppet but a fiery chili pepper. However, I prefer you this way, Chen Fan provocatively remarked. Get them, but don't harm the leader's wife. If even a single hair is injured, I will cut off your heads. The leader's face twitched, showing a grim smile, seemingly more interested in Chen Fan. Oh, next, the bandits behind them rushed in. Fearless, Chen Fan walked straight towards them. Bang, bang, Xiaomi possessed the strength of the late spirit realm while the bandits in front of her were just scrubs of the spiritual realm and spiritual profound realm. To test her current combat power, Chen Fan chose to go all out. So, this battle was destined to be one-sided. Throughout the battlefield, Chen Fan rampaged like a wild beast, leaving a trail of bodies in her wake. Bang! In less than a minute, Chen Fan defeated the last bandit, smashing his head and throwing the body into a large pit behind her. The pit was just big enough for one person. Will you walk in by yourself, or shall I invite you? Chen Fan turned back, raised an eyebrow slightly, and looked at the trembling leader with a sweet and gentle smile. But, seeing the pit almost filled with bodies behind her would surely send chills down one's spine. Run, the leader finally came to his senses, pale-faced, and desperately tried to escape. He was only at the initial stage of the spirit realm completely overwhelmed by the combat power displayed by the woman just now. How could he continue to resist? You can't escape, Chen Fan said, closing in instantly. Trembling, the leader begged, Mercy, lady, spare me, I can give you gold coins, spirit stones, I. Without hesitation, Chen Fan punched him directly. Bang, the leader's head instantly exploded, his face filled with fear and regret. Bang, then, Chen Fan threw his body into the pit, disdainfully saying, Do you think I would be interested in your gold coins and spirit stones? Mounting the leader's horse, she spurred it and galloped away. True to her word, Chen Fan's body remained untainted by a single drop of blood, even leaving the battlefield quickly to avoid the smell of blood. What does this show? The power gap between the two sides is too huge. They are simply not on the same level.
the city of Lingyun is bustling with high-rise buildings and people coming and going, making it the most prosperous center of Lingyun County. As Chen Fan stepped into the city, he immediately felt the hustle and bustle. Shops and vendors were shouting on both sides of the street, causing him to slow down and carefully inspect the surrounding goods. Chen Fan thought to himself that he had not truly experienced the local customs and culture of this new world. Beauty, come and take a look at the rouge in my house, absolutely good value for money. Beauty, would you like to see our sun umbrellas, perfect for shading and whitening. Beauty, care for some candied haws, sweet and good for the skin. The vendors all tried to attract Chen Fan, making him can't help but smile. Due to his slender figure and handsome appearance, People around couldn't help but cast envious glances at him. Suddenly, a young nobleman's attention was drawn to Chen Fan, accidentally stumbling onto a sturdy girl. The girl embraced the nobleman and jokingly said, Sir, you have to take responsibility for me. Chen Fan watched the comedy unfold with a smile. He thought it would be better to bring out the male puppet Little Black from the system. Suddenly, a delicate shout broke the hustle and bustle of the street. The crowd parted revealing the appearance of the county magistrate's daughter, Xiao Shui. Proud and arrogant due to her beauty, everyone made way for her. Hearing people discussing that Xiao Shui was the daughter of the county magistrate, Chen Fan's heart stirred, as he was looking for the magistrate, Xiao Sheng. Chen Fan finally saw Xiao Shui, a charming and lovely beauty, but with a hint of arrogance in her demeanor. Xiao Shui locked eyes with Chen Fan at first sight, full of jealousy and hostility. She ordered her men to scar Chen Fan's face, only to be met with Chen Fan's mockery and counterattack. With a hint of disdain in his words, Chen Fan made Xiao Shui burn with anger. She personally wielded her sword to stab at Chen Fan, wanting to leave scars on his handsome face. Chen Fan couldn't help but sigh inwardly, realizing that Xiao Sheng, in order to conceal his wife's true identity, would resort to such cruel actions. Chen Fan immediately guessed what had happened. Originally, he just wanted Xiao Shui to take him to meet her parents, but she insisted on seeking death. So he would grant her wish. In the next moment, Chen Fan took a big step and crossed over a distance of more than 10 meters, instantly appearing in front of Xiao Shui. Xiao Shui's face changed. She knew she was no match for Chen Fan at all, with only the strength of the mid-spirit profound realm. Even with several spirit-moving realm guards by her side they couldn't come to her rescue in time. Crack, in the next instant, Chen Fan ruthlessly twisted Xiao Shui's snow-white neck. He had no mercy in his heart. After experiencing two deaths, his temperament had undergone a huge change. She killed the little princess. She killed her. Otherwise, we would all die. Xiao Shui's guards shouted in horror, then rushed towards Chen Fan. The people around were scared and fled in all directions especially when they saw a strange woman punch and burst the little princess's guard. The scene was bloody and brutal, causing everyone to tremble with fear. She killed the little princess. Could we get the reward from the county lord by killing her? Several martial artists who saw this scene exchanged glances, and without hesitation, they rushed towards Chen Fan, trying to surround and attack him. Bang! Puff! Then, they fell down one after another. Chen Fan began to kill without any scruples. His puppet not only had extremely high defensive power, but also had long-lasting combat power. As long as enough spirit stones were provided, the puppet could continue to fight. Outrageous. A few minutes later, a roar suddenly came, and a team of soldiers rushed out of the crowd, surrounding Chen Fan. Are you tired of life, rampantly killing in Lingyun County? The leading soldier was wearing armor, obviously a general. General Qian, she killed the little princess. At this moment, someone loudly accused. What? General Qian's eyes were filled with killing intent. He was the most outstanding general under the county lord, young and promising, highly valued, and a capable assistant to Xiao Sheng. In order to climb higher, he relentlessly pursued Xiao Shui and finally succeeded, but now. Xiao Shui was dead? Wasn't this ruining his plan? Damn it! Burning with anger, he became extremely irritable and immediately launched an attack on Chen Fan. As a mid-spirit moving realm powerhouse, his combat power was extraordinary, with rich experience. Even when facing a late spirit moving realm master, he could fight, not to mention the weak woman in front of him. In his eyes, capturing Chen Fan was a piece of cake. Catch him, 
report to the county lord, and surely be rewarded. Especially since the other party was also an unparalleled beauty in his mind. Thinking this, General Qian's wrist flicked, the military knife turned, intending to capture Chen Fan alive. Unfortunately, bang, in General Qian's incredulous eyes, Chen Fan reached out with his left hand, grabbed his military knife, and then forcefully pulled it back, while his right fist smashed towards him. Bang, General Qian was caught off guard, the difference in strength was insurmountable, he couldn't evade at all, and his head was hit. The next moment, his head instantly exploded. That's how he died. Step, step, Chen Fan enjoyed the sweetness of the spirit stone in his mouth as he walked slowly towards the county magistrate's mansion. With every step he took, blood splattered around him, and the road was lined with corpses. A blood-stained avenue led straight to the county magistrate's mansion. At this moment, the county magistrate's mansion was bustling with extravagance and revelry. Sitting at the head of the hall, Xiao Sheng, obese and surrounded by beautiful women, indulged in the pleasures and luxuries. All of this was the result of a deal. Originally, he was not exceptionally talented, barely reaching the mid-stage of the spirit realm in his thirties, missing the best breakthrough opportunity and facing a bleak future. Why could others become geniuses and enjoy glory, while he lived a mediocre life? He refused to accept this. He was unwilling. So, the token of the myriad realms appeared. The deal began. He borrowed a lifelike female puppet from the myriad realms bank, with the strength of the early stage of the spirit realm, which allowed him to become the county magistrate of Lingyun County. Then, relying on this wife, he suppressed dissent in Lingyun County. Subsequently, using the authority of the county magistrate, he looted resources and forcefully improved his cultivation to the current early stage of the spirit realm. However, he knew that his talent was limited, and over the years, he had been relying on resources to cultivate desperately, leading to an unstable foundation and a superficial realm, making it difficult to make further progress. But at least, he was satisfied. At least, after returning his wife to the Myriad Realms Bank, he still possessed the strength of the spirit realm, coupled with the 10,000 Qin army he held, enough to suppress opposing forces in Lingyun County. He could still maintain a stable position of power. However, when he faced the token of the myriad realms and prepared to return his wife as agreed, he hesitated. If he kept this puppet, perhaps he could enter the court of the great Qin dynasty and rise to the core of power. The future glory would be even more brilliant. And as long as he had this puppet in hand, even without any combat power, who could harm him? Any future crisis could be solved by her. So, he chose to break the agreement. He wanted to see if the Myriad Realms Bank would come looking for him. Day after day, the Myriad Realms Bank remained silent. From initial unease to later ecstasy, perhaps the Myriad Realms Bank had disappeared? So, he indulged himself, immersed in the gentle land. Suddenly, a subordinate rushed in anxiously, breaking his indulgence. What? The young county princess has been killed. Xiao Sheng's face turned pale in an instant, his anger soaring. She was his only daughter, deeply loved, and suffered such a misfortune. Who is the culprit? Find them, they must not be let off. Keep him alive, I want to witness his suffering with my own eyes. Xiao Sheng stood up in anger. County magistrate, the culprit is already at the door. The frightened subordinate reported that the opponent was powerful, even General Xincheng was no match for them. What? Xiao Sheng's pupils contracted, burning with rage. Jian Cheng knows his own strength like the back of his hand, otherwise he wouldn't be seen as a confidant and approached for alliance. Madam, please come over. Xiao Sheng instinctively thought of his wife, but his heart was filled with unease. He immediately ordered the army to enter the city. Guards inside the mansion. Stop this person at all costs. He quickly gave the order, and his men hurried to carry it out. Xiao Sheng took a deep breath, his eyes flashing with a hint of fear. The intruder must have some backing, he wouldn't recklessly send himself to his death. The peaceful life of these years not only made him weak, but also made him much less courageous. He speculated in his heart that the intruder dared to break into the magistrate's mansion, there must be a reason. Could it be because his wife offended a formidable enemy? Or, is it targeting him? Suddenly, he guessed a forbidden possibility. His face slightly changed. Ah, oh, just then, a clear and miserable scream rang out. Bang! Then, a body fell heavily in the courtyard, 
convulsed a few times before falling still. Thud, Chen Fan finally broke into the magistrate's mansion. Hooray! He let out a long roar, displaying astonishing combat power all the way, fighting with exceptional ease. You must be Xiao Sheng, right? Chen Fan stared directly at Xiao Sheng, ignoring the fear of those around him, and asked directly. Yes, I am the magistrate. Who are you? How dare you break into my magistrate's mansion? You have quite the nerve. Facing Chen Fan, Xiao Sheng asked sternly, showing a strong aura. I am Chen Fan. Chen Fan replied. Chen Fan? Xiao Sheng looked at the beautiful woman in front of him, feeling slightly puzzled. Isn't Chen Fan a man's name? No, you're wrong. I am Xiao Mi. Chen Fan is my master. My master sent me to take your life. Chen Fan said, looking at Xiao Sheng with a hint of provocation. It seems like you're prepared to resist? What? You? Dot you are. Xiao Sheng's face changed dramatically after hearing this, his inner guess becoming more firm. Whoever you are, this is my territory. Dare to cause trouble here, you will undoubtedly die. Xiao Sheng gritted his teeth, his face fierce, ordering, kill Chen Fan. Reward a million spirit stones. Tempted by the million spirit stones, many people lost their rationality and rushed towards Chen Fan. Chen Fan unleashed another round of slaughter. Watching as his subordinates fell one by one, Xiao Sheng's face became increasingly ugly. He then turned to his wife who had approached him and commanded, Madam, this woman is too arrogant. She dared to kill our daughter. Unforgivable. Go and kill her. He stared at his wife, trying to test if she would obey his command. Immediately, his wife rushed towards Chen Fan. Seeing this scene, Xiao Sheng breathed a sigh of relief. As long as his wife stood by his side, he felt at ease. Although Chen Fan was only in the early stage of the spirit transformation realm, his combat power was comparable to a mid-stage spirit transformation realm expert. The person from the Wenji Qian Bank in front of him only had the strength of the late stage of the spirit transformation realm, not even a match for his wife. The people around all believed that Chen Fan was sure to die. Chen Fan had not expected that Xiao Sheng would actually use the puppets from the Wenji Money House to deal with him, which caught him by surprise. However, at that moment, his wife suddenly took action and killed two guards who were attacking Chen Fan. This sudden move shocked everyone present, and Xiao Sheng's expression turned serious. My dear, why would you do such a thing? Have you stopped listening to me? Xiao Sheng's tone carried a hint of unease and doubt. Xiao Sheng, did you really think your wife would always obey your orders? She belongs to me now. Chen Fan said calmly, finally able to face Xiao Sheng with confidence. What? What's going on? Does the prefect's wife have an affair? Onlookers whispered to each other, unable to comprehend what was happening before their eyes. Xiao Sheng clenched his teeth, trying to understand the situation. You should have guessed, right? I am the current owner of the Wenji Money House's female puppet. Chen Fan explained with a smile. According to the contract, you borrowed this female puppet with the initial strength of the Huali realm for 11 years, and you are now 10 years overdue. You owe us Wenji Money House 100 years of life, and I've come to collect what is rightfully ours with interest. Upon hearing this, the surrounding people became even more puzzled. They began to understand that the prefect's wife was borrowed and Xiao Sheng seemed to have outstanding debts. It all sounded too bizarre, unbelievable, leaving the onlookers unable to comprehend what was happening before them. I don't know what you're talking about. Kill him. A reward of a million spirit stones. Promote three ranks in official position. Xiao Sheng shouted loudly, inciting the guards who had just arrived to attack. Meanwhile, Xiao Sheng himself turned and fled without hesitation. The existence of the Wenji Money House made him feel powerless. Coupled with the betrayal of his powerful wife, he was simply unable to contend with it. Trying to escape? HMPH. Wishful thinking. Chen Fan furrowed his brow slightly. He had thought he would be able to confront Xiao Sheng head on, had confidence in the puppets around him, and even had the assistance of a small secret with the initial strength of the Huali realm. However, he had not expected Xiao Sheng to choose to flee, catching him off guard. Chase, Chen Fan ordered the puppet with the initial strength of the Huali realm to pursue Xiao Sheng. The previously bustling atmosphere at the prefect's residence suddenly quieted down, leaving the remaining people staring at each other, unsure of what to do. Xiao Sheng saw a large number of troops rushing in, 
a look of ecstasy on his face, and he immediately ordered an attack. With a hundred thousand Qin troops at his disposal, he believed he was not defeated. This was his territory, and he could control everything. Kill, kill, kill. Qin soldiers pointed their weapons at Chen Fan and his companions, executing the orders without hesitation, their fighting spirit soaring. Xiao Sheng, full of confidence, asked, Chen Fan, even though you two are powerful, how can you resist my 10,000 strong army? Chen Fan surveyed the charging Qin soldiers and calmly replied, not even a thousand. But so what? Before you break through, the remaining army will surely arrive. Xiao Sheng knew the strict military discipline of the Qin army, but he was not afraid. Chen Fan chuckled lightly, then waved his arm, suddenly summoning 10,000 female ghost puppets. Xiao Sheng's face changed drastically, and he asked in amazement, how did Chen Fan do this? Can he create such a huge army with just a wave of his hand? Chen Fan sneered and said, Xiao, don't underestimate the Wenji Bank. I can grant you the power of a county magistrate, or I can destroy you without mercy. Now, attack. Chen Fan waved his hand, ordering the attack, kill. Xiao Sheng roared. Can't the warriors of Dachin fight against a group of females? Hold on and wait for reinforcements. Kill, kill, kill. The morale of the Dachin soldiers was high, intimidating the area for miles around. On the other side, the 10,000 female ghost puppets controlled by Chen Fan remained silent, creating a stark contrast. Then, the two armies clashed violently, puff, puff, a brutal solder unfolded, with the Dachin soldiers being beheaded before they could even scream. With the strength of 10,000 Lingxuan realm female ghost puppets overwhelming the opponents, the two sides were not in the same league. In just a few seconds, more than 3,000 Dachin soldiers on Xiao Sheng's side were slaughtered. At this rate, it was feared that within 10 seconds, all of Dachin's soldiers would be wiped out. Seeing the situation deteriorating, Xiao Sheng's face changed drastically, and he fled without hesitation. Chen Fan immediately ordered a pursuit and stuffed a large amount of spirit stones into Xiao Sheng's wife's mouth, who then chased after him relentlessly. Chen Fan himself did not make a move as his aid, though limited in strength, was enough to deal with Xiao Sheng. Ten hours later, Xiao Sheng exhausted his stamina and could only watch as his wife captured him. Another ten hours passed, and Xiao Sheng was ruthlessly thrown in front of Chen Fan by his wife. My love, we've been married for ten years, and you abandoned me like this? Xiao Sheng cried out in grief, trying to struggle. However, his wife, just a puppet, coldly replied, I am only a tool of the master obeying the master's orders. Xiao Sheng was speechless. Chen Fan said, Xiao Sheng, what's the point of saying all this now? Debts must be repaid, it's only natural. You borrowed, now you must repay, not doing so is unjust. I won't kill you, just here to collect what the master is owed, with interest. Chen Fan gestured to his wife to hold Xiao Sheng down to prevent any sudden resistance. The people of Lingyun County around them were surprised to learn that their magistrate had debts to repay. And his wife had borrowed from the Wenji Bank. Now the creditors had come to collect the debt and interest. Just endure it for now. Chen Fan walked up to Xiao Sheng and mercilessly pressed his Beiwi acupoint. No, Xiao Sheng shouted loudly, but to no avail. His life was ruthlessly drained, visibly withering away. Wrinkles quickly spread across his face. His body bent down. His breath weakened, as if he had aged a lot overnight. The people around him retreated in horror, helpless in the face of this sudden and bizarre situation. They had never seen such an eerie and terrifying method that could snatch away someone's life. At this moment, Xiao Sheng was lifeless, looking utterly defeated. Losing a hundred years of lifespan, he keenly felt the approach of the Grim Reaper. And this incident would surely spread. As the governor of Dachin, he had incurred a huge debt with his lifespan running out, without the protection of a wife. By then, he would not only lose his position as governor but also face possible retaliation from some insignificant figures he had previously disregarded. As for his own strength, over the years, he had used precious spiritual materials to enhance his cultivation, but his foundation was unstable. Coupled with indulging in pleasure leading to a serious loss of vitality, as he aged, his combat power would inevitably plummet. He could only be at the mercy of others. Thinking of his bleak future, his eyes flashed with intense resentment. 
Rather than die in humiliation, I'd rather take you down with me. It's you who destroyed everything I had. Even in death, I will not forgive you. Die. Then, he suddenly struck. A fierce punch aimed at Chen Fan's heart. Though I may be an early stage Wa Ling Realm expert, and you are just a late stage Ling Dong Realm powerhouse. Even though I am old and feeble, killing you is as easy as pie. Chen Fan could feel his overwhelming anger, but life and death are not determined by anger at a critical moment. Boom! Chen Fan couldn't dodge, after all, the distance was too close, and the opponent's strength was higher than his. However, he just grunted, being pushed back a dozen steps but steadied his stance. You, you're okay? How? How is this possible? Xiao Sheng even forgot to escape, staring at Chen Fan in disbelief, then suddenly realized, you, you're a puppet. You must be a puppet. Despite his sharply declining combat power, a fatal blow to the heart like this would be enough to kill a martial artist in the late stage Ling Dong realm. Unless, a puppet. In fact, I am a yin soul puppet. Chen Fan looked coldly at Xiao Sheng, as if looking at a walking dead. I originally wanted you to live, but you chose the path of death. Then it's not my fault. Since it was your wife who gave you strength, let your wife be the one to end you. As soon as Chen Fan's words fell, the puppet with the strength of the early stage Wa Ling realm instantly clapped on Xiao Sheng's head. Bang! His head burst on the spot. A generation of governors, destroyed just like that. Silence enveloped the surroundings. Ding! The first debt has been recovered. Completion rate 100%. Extra rewards received. Obtain 10,000 first grade divine burst symbols. 1,000 second grade divine burst symbols. 100 third grade divine burst symbols. 10 fourth grade divine burst symbols. And 1 fifth grade divine burst symbol. After defeating Xiao Sheng, Chen Fan heard a beep from the system and a hint of excitement flashed in his eyes. Divine explosive talismans? So many. Fantastic. Divine Explosive Talismans, one type of mysterious talisman. They can eliminate enemies through explosions. And as the grade increases, the explosive power becomes stronger. A first grade Divine Explosive Talisman can defeat a spiritual realm warrior. A second grade can defeat a spiritual profound realm warrior. A third grade can defeat a spiritual dynamic realm warrior. A fourth grade can defeat a transcendent realm expert. And a fifth grade divine explosive talisman can even defeat a transcendent spiritual realm powerhouse. Could it be that I now have a batch of powerful bombs in my hands? Chen Fan frowned slightly, but unfortunately, there will only be additional rewards when recovering the first debt, and there will be no more rewards for subsequent debt recoveries. But even so, this result is still very impressive. He actually got a batch of time bombs. This is his trump card. Right. Crafting talismans requires powerful soul power, and he is already at the ninth level of yin soul, with quite impressive soul power. Perhaps he has the chance to become a spirit talisman master. A spirit talisman master can inscribe talismans on various talisman stones, create various talismans for battle, even for war. If he can become a ninth level spirit talisman master, he can easily create legendary ninth level talismans. Moving mountains, overturning seas, nothing is impossible. Unfortunately, his talent is just too terrible. This is what makes Chen Fan quite frustrated. When he came to this world, he once tried to become a spirit talisman master, but his talent was just too poor, even making it difficult for him to speak about. Now, he can only hope in the system. Since the multiverse bank can trade everything, then it should also be able to trade talents, right? A hint of contemplation flashed in Chen Fan's eyes. It seems he needs to take on more clients. Huh? Suddenly, he came to his senses, realizing he was still beside Xiao Mi, surrounded by his female yin soul puppets, with the soldiers and warriors of Lingyun County all watching him. He stood quietly, and everyone else remained motionless, not daring to make a sound, fear evident in their eyes. Disperse, I'm just here to collect debts, it's only related to the creditor, not to others. Chen Fan waved his hand then ignored the reactions of the crowd and walked away. He needed to quickly proceed with the third transaction. After leaving, news of Chen Fan's actions in Lingyun County quickly spread throughout Great Chen, as if a gust of wind had suddenly risen. The name of the multiverse bank began to circulate among the people. This mysterious and eerie organization suddenly gained the attention of many forces. And at this moment, 
Chen Fan had already found an inn to stay in Lingyun County City, then entered the Hall of the Multiverse Bank alone, ready to find suitable customers. He now had significantly more resources in his hands. In addition to the previous resources, he also had gained a hundred years of lifespan and numerous divine explosive talismans from Xiao Sheng. These were all capital he could use for trading. In the depths of the Ming family mansion in the capital of Great Qin, General Ming Tian, the commanding general of the Great Qin town, was imposing and powerful, with profound cultivation, making other countries feel awe. Unfortunately, when he was young, he fought on the front lines year-round, accumulating numerous injuries in his body. He had been concealing the injuries with his powerful strength, which had not erupted before. But now, as he aged, the accumulated injuries finally erupted with his declining physical condition. In an instant, he collapsed on the sickbed, looking drowsy and on the verge of falling asleep. Ever since he lay on this bed, the power and influence of the Ming family plummeted, especially the military authority of this general of the state, has become the target of criticism. Currently, various forces are busy vying for control of Mengxin's military power, yet no one has come to visit him. The once bustling Ming family is now deserted and desolate, with past glory becoming a distant memory. The stark contrast is truly astounding. Only the ninth prince, Qin Zheng, has come to visit him at this moment. Your Highness, Prince Zheng, Montian could no longer support you helplessly. You have toiled for great Qin, yet father, the king, has not fully supported you. Seeing you in such a weak state, you are his own brother. Zheng clenched his fists tightly, his originally gentle demeanor suddenly turning fierce. Why is he so indifferent? Could it be that he already knows you have silently supported Montian? That's impossible. Montian closed his eyes slightly, deeply understanding the situation with all the power plays in his grasp. Upon hearing this, Zheng abruptly closed his eyes, filled with resentment. He had worked so hard to gain Manchin's support, only to face such setbacks. If Montian were to fall ill or lose power, he would lose the chance to seize the throne. By then, the ruthless crown prince would not spare him, along with those who supported him, even the descendants of General Mont, that fierce crown prince would not show mercy. The court is bound to be in turmoil, and it all stemmed from the sudden deterioration of General Mont's condition. If saving General Mont could be achieved, no cost would be too high. Zheng pondered silently, the bank of ten thousand realms, wealth connecting all things. Suddenly, a majestic voice resounded in Zheng's mind, the bank of ten thousand realms. He opened his eyes wide, only to see a token of the bank of ten thousand realms floating in front of him. News came from Lingyun County that County Governor Xiao Sheng owed a puppet to the Bank of Ten Thousand Realms and was being pursued by the bank's envoys. In plain view of everyone, he was being asked for a hundred years of life. Could this news be true? Zheng and Montian exchanged a glance, both seeing the hope in each other's eyes. Montian obviously heard the voice as well, and the dead embers in his heart reignited instantly. If there was a chance for survival, how could he easily give up? Montian suddenly grabbed the token of the Bank of Ten Thousand Realms and disappeared in an instant. Seeing this, Zheng's eyes flickered with joy. In the blink of an eye, Montian reappeared, now standing in the hall of the Bank of Ten Thousand Realms. He coughed a few times, weakly surveying his surroundings, wondering what kind of magical means this was. Taking a deep breath, he steadied his thoughts and respectfully said, I am Montian, willing to trade with you. Montian. The Grand General who guards the country of Great Chen, in the twilight of his life, with only three months left. Chen Fan's mind flashed with various rumors about Montan, and he guessed the purpose of Montan's visit, but still politely asked, Montan, what do you plan to exchange with? Montan's pupils suddenly contracted upon hearing this. As a strongman in the later stage of the transformation realm, he couldn't even locate Chen Fan's position. The voice seemed to come from all directions making it difficult to determine the direction. He realized how terrifying the cultivation of the owner of the Wenji money house was. With a deep sense of awe, his attitude began to change, and Montan proposed to exchange his life with Chen Fan. He learned that Wenji money house had already taken a hundred years of life from Xiaoxing today, so he also wanted to obtain this hundred years of life, believing that by replenishing this hundred years of life, his injuries would quickly heal, and he would return to his peak. Oh, okay, Chen Fan responded, 
but I'd like to know what price you are willing to pay. Once again, Montan's current list of resources appeared in his mind. Millions of spirit stones, 10 layers of strength, a 4-star divine explosion charm, 2 4-star divine shield charms, 2 4-star divine agility charms, 2 4-star divine power charms, an ancient jade key, purple lingzi, millennium earth ginseng. It seems that Montan is the Grand Marshal of Dachin, and Chen Fan is quite interested in these resources. A hundred years of life is not trivial, and Montan is willing to offer millions of spirit stones for the exchange. Montan hesitated slightly, saying that millions of spirit stones were already equivalent to several years of Dachin's taxes, which was a great sacrifice. However, Chen Fan shook his head and said, Do you really think a year of life is only worth a hundred thousand spirit stones? Montan frowned, obviously dissatisfied with this price. Seeing through Montan's thoughts, Chen Fan directly said, Millions of spirit stones, ten layers of strength, seven four-star charms, and the ancient jade key on you. Montan's face changed instantly upon hearing this. While the millions of spirit stones and ten layers of strength could be put aside for now, how did the other party know that he was carrying seven four-star charms? And that ancient jade key. It was something he obtained from an ancient tomb, and its purpose was still unknown to him. How did the other party know about it? Montan took a deep breath, gaining a deeper understanding of the strength of the owner of Wenji Money House. However, as a master in the later stage of the transformation realm, his mind was exceptionally tough. He steadied his mind and calmly said, Master, I can offer you a million spirit stones and ten layers of strength. Chen Fan stood in front of General Meng facing his demand for seven fourth-grade talismans with a firm expression. General Meng thought his offer was flawless, but Chen Fan remained unwavering. General Meng, do you think your life is more important, or are these talismans more important? Chen Fan's tone was calm but showed unwavering determination. How about this, I'll give you 50 years of life, and I only want three talismans. What do you say? Meng Tian immediately refused, unwilling to sacrifice his lifespan. This opportunity was too important to him. He wanted not just three talismans but all seven. After a moment of contemplation, Chen Fan continued, Ten million spirit stones, tenfold strength manual, ancient jade key, and four fourth grade talismans, that's my bottom line. His voice revealed unwavering determination. Bottom lines are meant to be broken, Chen Fan said lightly, with no room for negotiation in his offer. Meng Tian hesitated for a moment but eventually nodded in agreement. He understood that he was not in a dominant position in this trade. The items in Chen Fan's possession were not essential to him, but they were necessary for him now. All right, here are the things you want. Meng Tian finally compromised. He then placed 10 million spirit stones, the tenfold strength manual, ancient jade key, and seven fourth grade talismans in the hall. Chen Fan felt fortunate, and with a command, all the items disappeared, entering the vault of the multiverse bank in the blink of an eye. He closed his eyes, relaxed, and silently marveled at the smooth progress of this transaction. With a hundred years of life injected into Montan's body, the changes were obvious. His hair turned from white to black, and the once gloomy aura became powerful and vigorous. But most importantly, Montan's own feelings. At this moment, he felt like he returned to his peak state. The feeling of regaining control over his power made him nostalgic and familiar. Suddenly, he opened his eyes. His eyes sparkled. Fantastic. Now I feel like I'm in my prime, breaking through to the late stage of the soul transformation realm. Previously, he was only in the early stage of the soul transformation realm, but in this state, he completely had the potential to break through to the next level. The spirit communication realm. He was ecstatic. Once he broke through to the spirit communication realm, his lifespan would be extended. A sense of gratitude welled up within him. Montan clasped his fists and bowed deeply to the Wenji money house. Few people could make the Grand General of the Great Chen Empire bow so sincerely. Chen Fan said, No need to be polite, we are just mutually beneficial. Do you now feel like you've made a profit? No, Montan had only wanted to survive before. How could he have such deep thoughts? Now that he truly returned to his peak, he realized he had even greater potential. In this light, he had made a huge profit. Montan said, Master, in the future, feel free to ask if you need anything. In the Great Chin Empire, my name still carries some weight. 
the Wanji Moneyhouse only does transactions, without considerations of sentiments. Chen Fan said indifferently, you can leave now. May I ask for your honorable name, master? Montan immediately changed the subject and asked, may I know your surname, master? Chen Fan. Chen Fan had already revealed his identity when he killed the miss of the Chen family in Yancheng, and he had no intention of hiding it. In fact, he had no plans to hide it. Right, just before Montan was about to leave, he suddenly remembered something. Master Chen, I have a piece of information that may be helpful to you. Oh? Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, curious. Xiao Sheng is a trusted aide of the Crown Prince. If you kill him, with the Crown Prince's character, he will definitely not let it go. Montan reminded. Oh? With the Wanji money house in hand, how could Chen Fan be afraid? So he waved his hand, and Montan disappeared instantly. Ding! The third transaction is completed, with a completion rate of 100%. Receive corresponding task rewards. Reward settlement. Obtaining a special item. As Montan left, Chen Fan's mind flashed with reward information. How come it's only 100%? It seems that he severely underestimated the value of a hundred years of life. Chen Fan frowned. This was a lesson to be remembered. Although he only received a special item, it was not bad either. He just didn't know what good things were hidden in this special item. Since it's here, he must accept it. Chen Fan adjusted his mindset and eagerly checked the reward. The appearance of the special props made Chen Fan's heart soar, and he immediately chose to use them, enhancing his 10th layer power. Chen Fan's cultivation has always been mediocre, and his martial skills training has been a mess. The appearance of this special prop undoubtedly solved his urgent need. A flood of information in his mind made him feel as if these martial skills had long belonged to him, fitting seamlessly. The 10th layer power, a basic earth ranked martial skill, is powerful enough to strike the internal organs, causing massive damage. Chen Fan's heart surged with fighting spirit. This martial skill is perfect for close combat with puppets. If thousands of puppets simultaneously use the 10th layer power, they would be invincible. Thinking of this, Chen Fan couldn't help but feel sorry for his enemies, as they would face a disastrous fate. As for the impending retaliation from the Prince of Qin, Chen Fan was eager and ready to face it. He then began to study the seven fourth grade talismans he had just obtained, along with the mysterious ancient Jade Key. The Godburst talisman can kill enemies through explosion. The God Shield talisman is a high defense type of talisman. The God Speed talisman can accelerate the user's speed, and the God Force talisman can enhance the user's strength. These are all good things without side effects, especially the fourth grade talismans. Although they are expensive on the market, they are rare and worth cherishing. As for the ancient Jade Key, although its function is unknown, it exudes a mysterious aura, and Chen Fan hopes it will bring unexpected surprises. When Montaigne reappeared, he looked extremely well, which brought joy to Chen Zheng. Montaigne revealed that he had gained a hundred years of lifespan, his condition had returned to its peak, and he was likely to make a breakthrough soon. Upon hearing this, Chen Zheng was overjoyed believing that another breakthrough would make Montaigne a powerful expert in the Ling realm, equivalent to his father's status, making it difficult for the king to treat Montaigne lightly. Upon hearing this, a sly look flashed in Chen Zheng's eyes, as he began to devise his own plan. Montaigne informed Chen Fan, the owner of the Wanji Bank, that the prince wanted to cause trouble for him, giving Chen Fan the opportunity to prepare in advance. Upon hearing these words, Chen Zheng's face broke into a slight smile of challenge, secretly pleased in his heart. He knew full well that Montaigne's move was not only to curry favor with Chen Fan, but also to further drive a wedge between Chen Fan and His Royal Highness. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, especially when it comes to a mysterious and powerful force like the Wenji Money House. This kind of transaction naturally warranted careful consideration. The prefect of Dachen, holding a crucial position, is an important official of the Dachin country, responsible for the life and death of a region. However, he was tragically murdered, which is truly unacceptable. Despite rumors circulating that he had unpaid debts and many witnessed the incident, the truth is quite different. The Dachin crown prince has misunderstood the facts, as the Lingyun County Princess Xiao Sheng is a loyal and righteous general, how could she have unpaid debts? Obviously, the people from the Wenji money house acted arrogantly and cruelly killing Xiao Sheng and kidnapping his wife, 
committing heinous crimes. Such actions cannot be forgiven. They must be completely eradicated to demonstrate the might of Dachin. With the approval of the King of Qin, the order to mobilize troops was issued, and 100,000 Qin troops and dozens of experts were assembled to Lingyun County, led by the trusted general Gan Yue, to confront Qin Fan. Various forces within Dachin are paying close attention to this matter. Clearly, the Crown Prince's actions are aimed at demonstrating authority. The King of Qin's approval signifies full support for the Crown Prince, even at the cost of internal unrest. For a hundred years, there have been few conflicts within Dachin, and the Qin army has been invincible, striking fear into neighboring countries. This time, however, it became an unprecedented precedent. Yet, Chen Fan seemed indifferent to the threat from the crown prince, instead busy searching for surrounding debt contracts. He was determined to collect debts, trading on one hand, demanding payment on the other. He had to juggle both tasks and forge ahead. With a resolute mind and quick actions, Chen Fan quickly identified the nearest debtor. The Chu crown prince, Chu Wushuang, borrowed from the Wenji money house, possessing a third-grade talent, to be repaid in ten years, with forfeiture of appearance if overdue. Seeing this information, Chen Fan was puzzled by the lack of emphasis on a third-grade talent. He understood that talents were divided into nine grades, with the ninth grade already being exceptional. Reaching the spirit profound realm was quite challenging unless one had an extraordinary talent. A first grade talent was extremely rare, scarcely seen in nearly a thousand years. A third grade talent was a once in a century genius in the entire eastern domain. Under normal development, one should be able to reach the emperor spirit realm, right? Chen Fan couldn't help but feel mixed emotions. Was appearance really so precious that it would be forfeited just for being overdue? He took a deep breath touched his own face, and suddenly became curious about Chu Wushuang's appearance, that someone could be more handsome than himself. But if you don't repay your debts and behave improperly, don't blame me for taking away your handsome appearance. This debt must be settled as soon as possible. He urgently needed that third grade talent because his own talent was poor, and his cultivation speed was slow. However, Da Chu bordered Da Chen, and with only the strength of the late Lingdong realm, even with the use of a teleportation symbol, it would take more than half a month to reach Da Chu. Insufficient strength had truly become the issue. Ultimately, everything still depended on strength. He must quickly obtain the third grade talent. Chen Fan furrowed his brow in contemplation, unwilling to spend his days traveling on the road. He must come up with a solution, perhaps buying flying beasts, or rapidly increasing his strength. With these thoughts in mind, he got up and left. Enhancing strength was not an overnight matter, but purchasing flying beasts was a feasible solution. Miss, may I ask where in Lingyun County can I purchase flying beasts? Leaving the inn, he asked a passing woman. He was now controlling Xiaomi, and outsiders could only see a female. To avoid trouble, he tried to avoid dealing with males and chose to inquire from women. In Westgate Market, a woman caught sight of Chen Fan's extraordinary looks and couldn't help but feel envious. She shyly lowered her head and gratefully said, Thank you. Chen Fan followed the woman's directions and hurriedly made his way. Along the way, he noticed the gazes around him and realized it was because of the stunning beauty of Xiaomi. So, he casually picked up a golden mask to reduce the frequency of turning heads. Finally, he arrived. He quickly reached West Gate Market, where a variety of elixirs, talismans, techniques, and martial arts were available, along with numerous antiques and jewelry. Chen Fan wasted no time and swiftly made his way to the area where flying beasts were being sold. The business here was not bustling, with only a few customers, all of whom were clearly wealthy or powerful individuals. After all, flying beasts were not something an ordinary person could easily afford. A single flying beast could cost millions of gold coins or tens of thousands of spirit stones. Due to the limited market size, the number and variety of flying beasts were also limited. Chen Fan quickly surveyed the area and found a total of seven flying beasts. In the end, he approached a black feathered eagle. Standing next to the black feathered eagle was a long eyebrowed old man dressed in a black robe, exuding a powerful aura. However, Chen Fan was unsure of his strength, only sensing a subtle and uncomfortable aura from him. The black robed old man was bargaining with the shopkeeper, saying that one million spirit stones were too expensive and he only had 870,000 spirit stones at the moment. 
Could he buy it for 870,000 spirit stones? The shopkeeper shook his head and explained that the black feathered eagle was fast and still in its juvenile stage. Its value would far exceed 1 million spirit stones once it matured. Then, the shopkeeper turned to Chen Fan and casually asked, Miss, would you like to buy it? Chen Fan's mouth twitched slightly at being called, Miss, feeling a bit awkward. Xiaomi, should I abandon you? Chen Fan hesitated in his heart, wondering whether to bring Little Black out next time. The black-robed old man glanced at Chen Fan disdainfully and said, Who do you think you are looking down on? One million spirit stones? Chen Fan directly looked at the shopkeeper and asked, Is this the lowest price? I don't want to bargain anymore. If I can buy it, I'll buy it. If not, before the shopkeeper could finish, Chen Fan took out a spatial pouch and threw it to the shopkeeper, saying, There are one million spirit stones inside. The pouch is a gift for you. Help me clean its feathers. Just having received 10 million spirit stones, taking out 1 million was nothing to him. The shopkeeper's eyes lit up, and he quickly took the spatial pouch with a happy expression. He originally thought Chen Fan couldn't afford it, but he didn't expect him to be so straightforward. 1 million spirit stones, just right. Please wait a moment. I will help you clean the feathers of this black feathered eagle. After confirming the amount, the shopkeeper's attitude changed drastically, becoming exceptionally polite. Suddenly, the old man in black robes with long eyebrows said coldly, Young lady, are you determined to steal from me? Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, sharp gaze fixed on the shopkeeper, questioning, Shopkeeper, did you sell someone else's belongings on purpose to deceive me? The shopkeeper hurriedly explained, Absolutely not. This flying beast belongs to my family. Chen Fan suddenly realized turned to the old man in black robes with long eyebrows and said, I pay for it, so this flying beast is mine. Does this senior not allow me to purchase it just because he has no money? The old man in black robes with long eyebrows, upon hearing this, his face immediately turned dark and gloomy. The old man in black robes with long eyebrows stared at Chen Fan with a fierce intensity, like a vicious snake locking onto him, sending shivers down his spine. Chen Fan felt a slight tremble in his heart, sensing a hint of fear. The old man coldly reminded Chen Fan to take good care of himself outside, especially not to take risks walking alone at night. Although accompanied by the black feathered eagle, Chen Fan humbly replied, Thank you for your concern, senior. I will try to avoid going out alone. The old man's eyes flashed with displeasure upon hearing Chen Fan's response, gritting his teeth as he turned and walked away, clearly unsatisfied. Chen Fan thought to himself, he doesn't have money to buy things and doesn't let others buy them. This old man is too overbearing, isn't he? At that moment, the shopkeeper quietly reminded Chen Fan. Chen Fan smiled and said to the shopkeeper, you can call me Miss or Beauty, no need to call me, young lady. The shopkeeper, slightly puzzled, informed Chen Fan that the old man's surname was Chu, nicknamed Old Chu, a sinister and vengeful person. He had repeatedly come to purchase the black feathered eagle, claiming that anyone who dared to buy it would be his enemy. Chen Fan's heart skipped a beat upon hearing this, realizing that this was one of the reasons why the black feathered eagle was difficult to sell. Chen Fan sighed. No wonder this black feathered eagle has been unsold for so long. If it weren't for me today, it might have been sold at a low price. The shopkeeper advised Chen Fan to spend more money and ride the black feathered eagle away from this place to avoid old Chu's jealousy. Although Chen Fan nodded in agreement, she was not afraid in her heart. Despite old Chu's strength and expertise in poisons, Chen Fan was secretly confident because she controlled the impervious Yin Soul puppet, which even poison couldn't harm. Suddenly, a servant responsible for cleaning the feathers rushed in, reporting that the black feathered eagle was unconscious and wouldn't wake up. The shopkeeper's face darkened, worried that this incident would lead to customers returning their purchases. The servant knelt in fear, trying to explain the situation incoherently. Chen Fan speculated that it might be old Chu's doing. The shopkeeper reassured Chen Fan, promising to do everything to save the black feathered eagle, then turned to check on the situation. Chen Fan's eyes narrowed slightly, becoming alert, as if sensing old Chu's scheme. The black feathered eagle originally majestic and vibrant, suddenly underwent a strange transformation, most likely due to the sinister actions of the mysterious old man in black robes with long eyebrows. 
The boss returned to the scene with a grim expression, gritting his teeth as he accused. It must be from the Ku family. How dare they lay hands on my flying beast in my shop? It's absolutely outrageous. This boss, with a strong background, was able to run a business selling flying beasts and even monopolized the entire market in Lingyun County. He apologized to Chen Fan, saying, I have temporarily controlled the situation with the black feathered eagle, but the poison in it is too unique, it will take time to find an antidote. Before that, I cannot determine when the antidote will be developed. Chen Fan took the one million spirit stones and the chink in bag, frowned, feeling very irritated. He secretly vowed that this old guy had delayed his own affairs, and if they were to meet again, he would make him regret it. He left with malice, ignoring the other flying beasts, just to vent his anger. As he left the flying beast market, the old man in black robes with long eyebrows appeared ominously, saying, little girl, dare to go against me? Unfortunately, your looks and figure will be ruined tonight. That night, while Chen Fan was practicing the yin soul technique, he suddenly felt a danger approaching, and before he could react, he was pricked by a poisoned needle on his shoulder. Sure enough, the old man in black robes with long eyebrows appeared again, undoubtedly from the Ku family. Little girl, your skin will ulcerate, your face will be covered in sores, oozing pus until death. Doesn't it sound interesting? The old man said sinisterly. Chen Fan calmly replied, I think such a fate would be more interesting for you. The old man laughed, you underestimate me. Without hesitation, Chen Fan pulled out the poisoned needle from his shoulder. The old man sneered, do you think this will free you? The toxin has entered your body. Even a strong cultivator in the nascent soul realm would find it hard to escape death. Feeling all itchy and unbearable now? Kneel and beg for mercy. Offer up your resources and the black feathered eagle. Maybe I'll let you die more gracefully. Chen Fan instantly rushed towards the old man, who finally realized the danger. You shouldn't be able to move. Your poison seems not as potent as I thought. Chen Fan coldly approached. No matter what means you use, you cannot undo the unique poison on my body. Now, let me have some fun with you first. The old man, brimming with confidence, threw a punch, but gave Chen Fan a chance to test the power of his tenfold vigor. Fist met fist, the old man's face turned pale, the sound of bones cracking, his features twisted in an instant, and he was sent flying backward. Blood gushed out like a tide. Chen Fan's punch severely injured his opponent leaving him instantly battered. Meanwhile, Chen Fan remained calm and composed, showing no fear. He confidently stepped forward, firmly grabbing the neck of old Chu, and calmly said, it seems that your poison and strength are not enough to make me back down. You, are simply, impossible. Old Chu stared at Chen Fan in disbelief, filled with shock and incredulity. Chen Fan was pierced by a poisonous needle from old Chu, who looked at him incredulously. Chen Fan slightly raised the corners of his sexy mouth, a hint of charming smile appeared, and gently said, you will understand, when you figure it out, tell me. Old Chu was speechless for a moment, completely puzzled by the mysterious golden masked beauty in front of him. Chen Fan frowned slightly, without hesitation, thrust the black needle towards Old Chu's body. Old Chu's face instantly changed color, to prevent him from seeking an antidote. Chen Fan controlled his neck with one hand and disabled his limbs with the other. Accompanied by the sound of bone shattering, Old Chu screamed in pain. After all this, Chen Fan heartlessly threw Old Chu on the ground, then sat cross-legged quietly, continuing to practice the yin soul technique. Before long, Old Chu began to itch uncontrollably, his skin ulcerated, thick scabs appeared on his face, he scratched frantically, the ruptured scabs oozed pus and blood a scene that was shocking. Old Chu finally realized, you are a puppet. Only a puppet can ignore toxins. Tell me, who is your master? Why did he target me? Old Chu, full of fear, begged for mercy. Whatever you want, I can give it to you. Please spare me. Chen Fan calmly opened his eyes and questioned again, why did my master target you? Old Chu shouted in despair, struggling, help me. I know, I know, please spare me. Chen Fan indifferently closed his eyes again, continuing to practice the yin soul technique. Old Chu was plunged into extreme torment. He understood that if he continued, it would not be as simple as scratching the flesh. He would scratch his blood vessels, meridians, and even internal organs. 
He knew the horror of this poison. The pervasive itching almost drove him crazy. Finally, Old Chu realized his mistake. I shouldn't have robbed the black feathered eagle. Let alone poison it, causing it to be temporarily paralyzed. Old Chu became cautious, crawling on the ground, asking, Am I right? Where is the antidote? Chen Fan nodded in satisfaction, inquiring about the whereabouts of the antidote. Old Chu quickly pointed out, in the small brown bottle in my chinkin bag. And, can you help me get the antidote for the corpse poison? It's in the small blue bottle. Chen Fan learned that the poison was called corpse poison, coldly smiled, took the chinkin bag, and left. Old Chu panicked and shouted, wait, where are you going? Chen Fan calmly replied, I'm going to help the black feathered eagle detoxify. Old Chu urgently requested, please detoxify me first. Chen Fan stopped, took out a small red bottle from the chinkin bag. Old Chu hurriedly corrected, no, that's the hundred flowers poison. It will make flowers grow all over the body, draining the vitality of the poisoned person. Then, Chen Fan took out another bottle. This is the illusion spirit poison, infecting the spiritual power of warriors, trapping them in illusions. The spring spirit medicine, once ingested, will immerse a person in romantic entanglements between men and women. Even with the use of spiritual power, it is difficult to suppress the effects of the medicine, and instead, it will intensify the release of its effects. On the other hand, the stiffening death poison will cause a person's whole body to stiffen, rendering them motionless like a walking corpse. Chen Fan took out bottle after bottle of medicine, and Old Chu quickly introduced the characteristics of each one. When all the medicine bottles were laid out on the table, Old Chu stopped and suggested, Thank you for informing me about the effects of these medicines. To reward you, I can make your death more merciful. Before the words had even finished, Old Chu's body had already decayed, bones protruding. Unable to bear witness, Chen Fan took out a sharp sword and mercilessly stabbed him in the throat. Then, he turned and left. However, just as he stepped out of the inn, he encountered two drunken men. Seeing her voluptuous figure and the mysterious charm revealed by the golden mask, the drunken men excitedly stepped forward to block Chen Fan, teasing, Beauty, where are you heading so late? Do you need us to show you the way? Chen Fan remained indifferent, preparing to leave, but suddenly sensed a hint of imminent danger, not from the two drunkards, but from, come out. Chen Fan scanned the shadows around him. With a cunning smile, the drunken men continued to jest, but their actions and gestures revealed their sinister intentions. Suddenly, dozens of figures flashed out. The drunken men, upon seeing this, hesitated for a moment before disdainfully saying, We are experts in the spirit profound realm. You people are not worth fearing. Are you the messenger from the Qianzhuang Bank of the Myriad Realms? A burly figure stood at the forefront staring coldly at Chen Fan. Chen Fan asked, one of Prince Chen's men? With so many experts before him, it was clear that they were here for him, obviously sent by Prince Chen. Tell your master to come out, or you will face consequences you can't handle. The burly figure spoke resolutely. The drunken men looked at each other in confusion, and one even staggered towards the burly figure, threatening, leave quickly, don't blame me for not warning you, I am. Before he could finish, he suddenly stopped, then fell to the ground lifeless. The other drunken man's drunkenness instantly dissipated, realizing that he had inadvertently provoked the wrong person. Don't kill me, I. He tried to explain but was cut off. The burly figure furrowed his brow, not making any further moves, and the drunken man also fell lifeless to the ground. He turned to Chen Fan, asking again, what is your decision? Without hesitation. Chen Fan stared firmly at the burly figure and inquired, Shall we resolve it here, or shall we find another place? When Chen Fan refused to toast, dozens of figures around immediately raised their weapons without hesitation, pointing them at him. The atmosphere was tense and exciting, as if a fierce battle was about to unfold. Chen Fan nodded slightly and fearlessly said, Coincidentally, I didn't have a good fight before. I hope you can let me vent properly. The burly figure didn't rush to attack, but coldly asked, Where are the troops of your Wenji money house? Chen Fan smiled and waved his hand, saying, Troops? Oh, you mean those 10,000 female ghost puppets? I don't need to use them to kill you. The burly figure seemed puzzled at the term, female ghost puppets, as it was clearly the first time he had heard of it, 
furrowing his brow in confusion. Understanding his confusion, Chen Fan patiently explained, Female ghost puppets are an upgraded version of regular puppets, nearly invincible and very powerful, a unique existence of our Wenji money house. By the way, have you met Xiao Sheng's wife? She is one of the female ghost puppets. With that, Chen Fan summoned Xiao Sheng's wife directly and asked, Do you know her? The burly figure's eyes flashed with surprise, his expression turning grim as he said, I once met Xiao, the county magistrate, and I know his character well. I can't believe you're accusing him of debt, murder, and taking away his wife. Such crimes are unforgivable. Chen Fan felt slightly puzzled by this revelation but then suddenly realized, laughing as he said, this twisted explanation seems so natural, doesn't it? Oh well, I can't be bothered to explain to you guys. History is always written by the victors. With that, Chen Fan swiftly launched an attack without hesitation. Gan Yuwei also joined in, their fists colliding with a dull thud. They each stepped back more than 10 paces, and Chen Fan was surprised to find that his opponent was actually a mid-level expert in the Huoling realm. He hadn't expected the great Chin to spare no expense to deal with him, which was somewhat unexpected. He exerted all his strength, unleashing the power of the tenfold vigor, but could only fight evenly with his opponent, who clearly hadn't fully exerted himself yet. Gan Yuwei was completely absorbed in this, even forgetting to continue attacking Chen Fan. If there was a connection between Wen Ji Money House and General Meng, things could become even more complicated. He keenly sensed the political conspiracy behind this, which could even lead to turmoil in the Qin Dynasty court. Chen Fan didn't hide anything, even proudly promoting the Wanji Money House, stating, he paid a price, including the tenfold vigor, and we gave him 100 years of life. Gan Yue scoffed, can life be traded like this? Do you think you can deceive a three-year-old? And you are in Lingyun County, while General Meng is in the Qin capital. When did you two meet? Finally, Gan Yue sneered and said, It seems you are not planning to tell the truth. Chen Fan shrugged helplessly and said, Since you don't believe me, then we'll have to fight. He nonchalantly welcomed the challenge, saying, Even if you are a female ghost puppet, you are no match for me. Swish, Gan Yue drew a soft sword from his waist, pointed it diagonally towards the ground, and said coldly, That was just a minor incident. Now, I suggest you show all your cards, or, you won't have a second chance. Although knowing that he might not be able to beat his opponent, Chen Fan smartly chose to reveal his trump cards. He possessed a large number of fourth grade talismans. Despite his short time at the Ten Realms Money House, his resources far exceeded the general in front of him. Without hesitation, he dashed towards his opponent again. Gan Yue sneered disdainfully, and with a sudden flick of his soft sword, like a cunning snake, he stabbed towards Chen Fan at a deceptive angle. The sword in his hand was a spiritual weapon, enough to severely damage the female ghost puppet in front of him. However, Chen Fan had no intention of confronting head-on. As the distance rapidly closed between them, he directly threw a fourth-grade divine explosion talisman. Caught off guard, Gan Yue couldn't dodge in time, his moves were slow to change, unable to defend in time, and could only instinctively activate his spiritual power to resist. However, it was too late. His face was full of horror, completely losing his previous calm and confidence. The terrifying explosion instantly enveloped him, the shockwave spreading out, destroying the area within hundreds of meters in an instant. Dust filled the air. Chen Fan pinched his nose, his figure flickered, moving away from the explosion zone. While activating the fourth grade divine explosion talisman, he also activated the fourth grade divine shield talisman, unscathed and unharmed. However, Gan Yue and his subordinates disappeared completely from this world at that moment. A scene of devastation, Chen Fan shook his head and sighed, saying, the news will soon reach the ears of Prince Chen, another trump card exposed. Suddenly, he heard a large number of orderly footsteps rapidly approaching. He quickly arrived at the roof of an inn and saw countless Qin soldiers rushing towards the explosion area. Such a large number, there were at least a hundred thousand? Looking at the densely packed troops on the street, Chen Fan couldn't help but inhale sharply, murmuring, are they all here to deal with me? A general spotted Chen Fan's figure and immediately ordered a siege. Here to deal with me? Chen Fan shook his head wryly. Do you really think my Ten Realms money house is easy to bully? 
Are you afraid of the great Chin? His face darkened. He waved his hand, and 10,000 female ghost puppets appeared, commanding, kill them all. Under the leadership of the female ghost puppets with the strength of the early stage of the transformation realm, they silently carried out the order. A brutal slaughter immediately unfolded. Various forces and civilians in Lingyun County stayed hidden in their homes, not daring to show their faces. They knew the terror of the emissaries of the Ten Realms Money House and understood the power of the Great Chin Iron Cavalry. Who would dare to get involved easily? The slaughter began, and the female Yin puppet led by Chen Fan was exceptionally fierce, completely dominating the battlefield. However, the Chen army was not to be underestimated. Despite being outmatched in strength, they were organized and coordinated, not giving an inch. Seeing the unfavorable situation, Chen Fan immediately shouted a command. The female Yin puppets unleashed their full power, displaying mastery of their combat skills. Their goal was not just to gain the upper hand, but to crush their opponents. With successive heavy blows, shields were pierced through, some even sent flying with the shield itself. The once orderly Qin army formation quickly fell into chaos. In the unfavorable battlefield of Lingyun County, the Qin army couldn't fully utilize their strength and fell into a disadvantageous position. The situation took a turn for the worse. Chen Fan remained calm and ordered the female Yin puppets to start devouring spirit stones. He had prepared more than enough spirit stones for them, ensuring a continuous supply. No matter how long the battle lasted, there would be no shortage. Even with a hundred thousand or even a million Qin troops, they would find it difficult to resist. Fight on! Chen Fan issued the attack command once again. The battle raged on, a bloody feast. In just a quarter of an hour, Tens of thousands of bodies lay on the ground, blood flowing like a river. The Chen army was in disarray. Pursue. Chen Fan made the decision to exterminate every last Chen soldier, ordering an immediate pursuit. Arrows whistled. War drums resounded. Half an hour later, not a single one of the hundred thousand Chen troops survived. All perished within the city of Lingyun County. The city was shrouded in darkness, the smell of blood lingering in the air. Everyone felt awe and fear once again experiencing the might and dominance of the Wenji Qianzhuang. They deeply believed that once this news spread, the reputation of Wenji Qianzhuang would shake the entire Great Qin Empire. Even powerful entities like the Great Qin Dynasty would not dare provoke Wenji Qianzhuang recklessly. Cease the fighting, Chen Fan commanded, and the female Yin puppets disappeared without a trace, as if they had never appeared. Walking towards the general, Chen Fan approached him directly. The general knelt and begged for mercy, his voice trembling, pleading to be spared as he was just following orders. However, Chen Fan showed no mercy, taking up a soft sword and decisively severing his neck. Rest in peace, everyone involved in the siege against Chen Fan met the same fate, all slaughtered. Chen Fan fearlessly headed towards the location of the flying beast trade. Upon hearing the sounds of battle from within Lingyun County, the boss knew trouble was brewing. Without hesitation, he stood up, a hint of fear flashing in his eyes as he asked, Are you? Are you a messenger from Wanji Qianzhuang? Yes. Chen Fan nodded without hesitation, handing over the antidote to help the black feathered eagle resolve its poison. I have urgent matters to attend to and must leave this place quickly. The boss's gaze flickered, suspecting that Chen Fan might want to escape from reality. After all, Wiping out a hundred thousand Qin soldiers is equivalent to declaring war on the entire Great Qin Empire. It can be imagined that the King of Qin must be furious, and may even launch a war. If the boss helps Qin Fan at this moment, it will surely incur the wrath of the King of Qin, but if he doesn't help, he may face a quicker death. After a brief hesitation, the boss finally agreed. Soon, the poison in the Black Feathers Eagle's body was removed, restoring its former vitality. Just imprint the yin soul mark on its sea of consciousness, and you can completely control its life and death. The boss reminded. Chen Fan nodded in understanding, and after everything was done, he handed the boss a bag of one million spirit stones and then stood directly on the back of the black feathers eagle, flying into the sky. The mysterious force, the messenger of the interstellar money bank, leading a puppet army, wiped out a hundred thousand Chen soldiers. This news quickly spread again. The first to learn of the news, of course, were the King of Qin and the Crown Prince. The King of Qin was instantly furious, 
his terrifying killing intent released in an instant. The crown prince and others immediately knelt down, trembling uncontrollably. It must be noted that the King of Qin is a strong spiritual realm expert. Having long ruled the throne, with a majestic power, under his anger, the crown prince and others couldn't bear this oppressive force. Investigate the details of the interstellar money bank. I want to know who is behind this force. How strong are they? After a while, the King of Qin finally controlled his rage and ordered. Despite the burning anger in his heart, he also felt horrified. A hundred thousand Qin soldiers, led by Gan Yuwei, a mid-level expert in the spiritual transformation realm, were completely wiped out overnight. No, according to the reconnaissance report, it only took about half an hour in total. This kind of horror is chilling. He dared not act recklessly, realizing that the mysterious organization behind the interstellar money bank is extremely powerful. If he continues to offend them, it could lead to the downfall of the great Chin. Therefore, he must act cautiously. However, the Chin crown prince couldn't calm his anger, sternly saying, Father, the interstellar money bank has actually destroyed our great Chin's hundred thousand troops. General Gan Yue was also killed by them. If we do not severely punish them, how can our great Chin maintain its dignity? They are challenging the authority of great Chin. Please send troops to retaliate. The losses in this battle were severe, and he would not rest until he avenges them. Are you challenging my authority? The King of Qin's face turned cold. The Qin crown prince's expression changed, quickly and humbly stepping back. While kings may be powerful, in this world, strength is the most important. He understood that true strong individuals can ignore royal authority, and even destroy a nation. Therefore, he must handle this carefully. Chen Zheng and Meng Tian also learned of this news. Both of them were equally shocked. The interstellar money bank is indeed formidable. It must not be offended. Meng Tian took a deep breath and was the first to speak. Chen Zheng nodded in agreement. We not only cannot offend them, but we must also find a way to win them over to our side. However, Meng Tian shook his head, saying, The power of the interstellar money bank is too strong. We cannot incorporate them. They are hospitable and do not inquire about identities, as long as a price agreement is reached. Therefore, our task is to quickly defeat His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Cut off their transactions with the Bank of the Myriad Realms. Furthermore, confronting the Bank of the Myriad Realms will only weaken the strength of Great Chin. Upon hearing these words, Chin Zheng's eyes narrowed slightly, he pondered for a moment, and nodded solemnly. Chu Wuxuang, the Crown Prince of Chu is known as the most handsome man in Chu. He is handsome and charming, surpassing Panin in appearance, capturing the hearts of countless young girls and married women. However, he used to have ordinary talent, only a sixth-grade spiritual cultivator at the age of 18. Despite his outstanding looks, he was often questioned. In a world where strength is paramount, mediocre talent means that all efforts may be in vain, and even the position of the crown prince may be at risk. However, Ten years ago, he suddenly stood out, his strength soared. In just two months, he rose from a sixth-grade spiritual cultivator to an early-stage spiritual realm warrior. A year later, he reached the late stage of the spiritual realm, and three years later, he advanced to the early stage of the spiritual movement realm, surpassing all geniuses and finally becoming the top talent in Chu. Now, he is a top expert in the early stage of the transformation realm. Hailed as a once-in-a-century genius in Chu, renowned throughout the world, unmatched in prestige. Today is his wedding day, and his fiancée is Princess Changla of Da Wei. Da Wei is one of the six powerful countries in the eastern region, with strong capabilities. Chu Wuxuang marrying Princess Changla will surely gain the full support of Da Wei. The King of Chu has also announced that the crown prince will abdicate the throne after the wedding, relinquishing the throne. Chu Wuxuang, at the age of 28, will ascend to the throne, sharing the honor with his beautiful wife. With his wife's profound background, he is likely to help Chu rise, with unlimited prospects. However, Chu Wuxuang has worries in his heart because his talent was borrowed from the Wenji money bank. Three months ago, Princess Changla promised to marry him only if he reached the early stage of the transformation realm. And his contract with the money bank has expired. According to the agreement, he should return the three-grade talent. However, for the beloved Princess Changla, he breached the contract, 
breaking through to become a high-level expert in the early stage of the transformation realm, winning her heart. Even if the wedding is completed today, even if the talent and beauty are lost, Chu Wushuang doesn't care at all. Because at this moment, he will become the king of Chu, and Princess Chongla has become his wife. This fact cannot be changed. Chu Wushuang stood there, hands behind his back, gazing at the mountains and rivers of Chu, thinking to himself that in the future, Chu will prosper under his control, and no one dares to disobey his orders. Great Wei will not sit idly by while their daughter is wronged, they will definitely support him in revitalizing Chu. With this in mind, a sharp light flashed in Chu Wushuang's eyes. Even if the messenger from the Wenji money house comes, they cannot take away his third grade talent, let alone his appearance. His handsome appearance is undoubtedly captivating, although his expression is gloomy, he still exudes a unique charm, making the surrounding maids intoxicated. It's just in time. At this moment, Chen Fan has entered the capital of Chu. After learning about Chu Wushuang's legendary story, a thought flashed through his mind, marrying a beauty, reaching the peak of life. He knows he will be the winner of life. However, taking someone else's things without any guilt, did you have my consent? Without hesitation, he walked straight to the prince's mansion where the wedding was about to take place. 10,000 yin soul puppets. Several fifth grade godburst talismans. Dozens of fourth grade godburst talismans. These are his trump cards, ready to cause a stir in the capital of Chu. The wedding is about to begin. This is the most important event in Chu in recent years. The whole country is celebrating. It is rumored that this year's taxes will be reduced by half. The crown prince and the princess of Great Wei are definitely a perfect match. The princess of Great Wei marrying the crown prince will surely bring great benefits. For a while, people were talking and full of joy. Chen Fan listened quietly to the discussions around him, feeling the grandeur of this cross-national marriage. Meanwhile, inside the prince's mansion, guests filled the seats, joy and laughter abounded. Emissaries from various countries came to congratulate. Even the great Zhou dynasty sent envoys to attend. The enormous impact of this Wei Chu marriage can be seen. It is a recognition of the strength of Great Wei and Great Chu, as well as a confirmation of Chu Wushuang's talent. The King of Chu has arrived. The auspicious time has come. In full view of the public, the newlyweds began the wedding ceremony step by step according to the traditional customs of Chu. At the same time, Chen Fan finally arrived at the gate of the prince's mansion. Do you have an invitation? The guards at the door stopped him. No. Chen Fan shook his head. It's not convenient for outsiders to approach the crown prince's wedding. The guard frowned and said, I have urgent business. Chen Fan's voice was firm. What could be more important than the crown prince's wedding? The guard looked at Chen Fan in confusion. Although his face was obscured by a golden mask, his skin was like jade, and his figure was graceful, undoubtedly a peerless beauty. The guard couldn't help but speculate, could it be that the crown prince has caused trouble outside? He secretly looked at Chen Fan's abdomen, could it be that he is pregnant? I'm here to collect a debt. Chen Fan noticed the misunderstanding and said with a stern face. When questioned by the guards, Chen Fan's expression changed slightly, but he still firmly said, yes, I am here to collect a debt at the prince's residence. His voice carried a hint of determination and resolve. The guard became even angrier upon hearing this, furrowing his brow, trembling spear pointing at Chen Fan, and speaking more sternly, are you out of your mind? Today is the prince's wedding day, how could anyone come to collect a debt? Get out of here. Just as the tension was escalating, a young man in luxurious clothing suddenly appeared, smiling and raising his hand to stop the guard's actions. Today is a day of celebration, how can there be bloodshed? Young Master Chen, what debt are you talking about? The appearance of this young man made the guard immediately show respect as he recognized him as the eighth prince. He quickly bowed in reverence. Your Highness, you have arrived just in time. Chen Fan smiled slightly and looked at the eighth prince firmly. The debt I speak of is owed by your brother. The eighth prince scanned Chen Fan, with a hint of provocation and contempt in his gaze, as if questioning Chen Fan's intentions. Young Master Chen, what do you want by coming here? His tone revealed a hint of disdain and mockery. Chen Fan sighed inwardly, realizing that things may not go as smoothly as he had hoped. It seemed he would have to find another way. Chen Fan originally intended to collect debts peacefully and then leave, 
but now the situation has become more complicated. He found himself unable to enter the prince's mansion, and to his annoyance, he encountered a lecherous guy in front of the mansion. This person even had ill intentions towards his assistant, it was simply seeking death. Beauty, are you here to repay emotional debts? Before Chen Fan could finish speaking, the man reached out trying to grab him. Suddenly, Chen Fan made a move that left everyone in disbelief, he punched and shattered the man's Adam's apple. The man widened his eyes, hands covering his throat, fearfully took two steps back. He felt death approaching, how dare this woman try to kill him? Is she out of her mind? That's the eighth prince of Da Chu. How dare you lay a hand on the eighth prince? Seize her. The guards around panicked and immediately shouted. The surrounding Da Chu soldiers swarmed in. Xiao Yu. Chen Fan had no time to waste with these people, he thought. Chirp chirp. The black feathered eagle let out a long cry, then spread its wings and swooped down. Chen Fan exerted force on the ground, causing it to sink slightly, then his body shot up like a bullet soaring tens of meters high in an instant. As he was about to fall due to exhaustion, the black feathered eagle arrived right under his feet. Swish, the black feathered eagle then quickly ascended, flying towards the interior of the prince's mansion. There was chaos in front of the prince's mansion. Oh, someone is coming on a flying beast. Could it be a congratulatory visit? They look quite young. Which country's envoy is it? Although the prince's mansion was vast, it only took a blink of an eye for the black feathered eagle to travel from the front of the mansion to the grand wedding venue. The various countries envoys, Dachu's high officials, and ministers present immediately noticed Chen Fan and speculated about his identity. Swish, the black feathered eagle stopped a hundred meters above the ground. Chen Fan stood with his hands behind his back, looking down at the crowd. This scene caused dissatisfaction among the people present. Everyone was sitting. Why does he have the right to stand higher than us? Look down on us? Who are you? Someone asked loudly. If you are here to congratulate, please come down and join the ceremony. I am here to collect a debt from Chu Wu Shuang. Chen Fan said, not here to offer congratulations. What? How dare you? How could his royal highness the prince owe you a debt? For a moment, Da Chu's ministers and high officials angrily shouted. Chu Wu Shuang's face slightly changed. They're here. The people from the multiverse bank have indeed come, but the person in front of him is different from the one who signed the contract before, right? Could it be a new envoy? But they've come too early. Chu Wu Shuang's eyes darkened. I have not fully married the princess of Da Wei yet. I have not ascended to the throne of Chu King. Whether Chu Wu Shuang owes him a debt, one question will reveal. Chen Fan calmly looked at Chu Wu Shuang. This was his first time seeing Chu Wu Shuang and he had to admit that the other party's appearance was indeed flawless, one of the most handsome faces he had ever seen. Upon hearing this, the others suppressed their inner anger and involuntarily looked towards Chu Wu Shuang. Chu Wu Shuang's face was cold, filled with anger and disdain in her voice. Who are you, to come and cause trouble on my wedding day? Your actions have not only offended me, Chu Wu Shuang, but also the entire kingdoms of Da Chu and Da Wei. You know the terrifying power of the Wenji money house, that's why you tried to unite Da Chu and Da Wei against me. And now, someone has killed the 8th prince outside the mansion, it's you. It's you. Just then, the guards at the door rushed in to report and immediately identified Chen Fan as the culprit. Chu Wushuang angrily declared, How dare you come here to cause chaos? How dare you kill the 8th prince? Whoever you are, today you will pay for your actions. The crowd murmured and demanded the execution of this criminal woman to demonstrate the might of Da Chu. A general, with overwhelming momentum, stood up and knelt down to challenge her. The king of Chu nodded in agreement, and Chu Wushuang spoke up. Today is my wedding day, we should not shed blood. I want to capture this woman alive. The general stood up with great pride, staring at Chen Fan, demon woman, surrender now. With a swift movement. He displayed his advanced skills in the later stage of the Lingdong realm. Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, seeing through his strength at a glance. With a casual punch, she shattered his condensed spiritual power, then crushed his fist and struck his chest, causing blood to splatter as he fell to the ground. The onlookers were astonished as the powerful general was defeated with just one punch. A rune master pointed out, this demon woman used a third grade divine rune. 
Her strength is far beyond what we imagined. Everyone was surprised and expressed their desire to execute her to show the might of Da Chu. Chu Wushuang speculated that Chen Fan's strength was not strong, so she resorted to using divine runes. He decided to personally intervene to prevent Chen Fan from revealing his talents. In Chu Wushuang's eyes, Chen Fan must pay the price for causing trouble at his wedding. Wush, Chu Wushuang demonstrated the strength of an early stage Hua Ling realm expert, hovering lightly in the air for a moment. With a long sword in hand, he pointed it high towards Chen Fan, and the two confronted each other in midair. Chu Wushuang truly embodies the demeanor of the Prince of Chu. With the cultivation of the Hua Ling realm, he is capable of overlooking talents from all countries. The talent of the prince is considered a once-in-a-century third-grade talent in the eastern region. Even the prince of the great Zhou dynasty cannot be compared to him. With the prince taking action personally, he will surely defeat the demoness. The flatterers below immediately took the opportunity to praise. Chen Fan sneered and questioned Chu Wushuang coldly. It seems you are determined not to repay your debts. Have you considered the consequences? Knowing there are tigers in the mountains, you still choose to head towards the tiger's den. Chu Wushuang coldly snorted and fearlessly replied, I would rather die than submit. He then resolutely chose to face the battle. Seeing this, Chen Fan shook his head and took out a fourth grade divine explosion talisman. Chu Wushuang's expression changed instantly, his figure stiffened. The fourth grade divine explosion talisman is enough to destroy any Hua Ling realm expert unless he is equipped with a fourth grade divine shield talisman or a defensive spiritual weapon. However, on this wedding day, how could Chu Wushuang possibly carry these protective equipment on him? Chen Fan shook his head, put away the fourth grade divine explosion talisman, and said, It would harm Xiao Yu, and your handsome face is my collateral. I don't want to make a loss. Chu Wushuang's face changed unexpectedly not daring to launch an attack proactively. Whoosh, however, in his hesitation, Chen Fan took the lead. Activating the fourth grade divine power talisman, combined with tenfold power, the power was astonishing. Swish, Chu Wushuang's eyes gleamed, tightly gripping the long sword and fiercely thrusting forward, while shouting, Three Realms Sword Technique. He displayed the Three Realms Sword Technique, with surging sword intent, sharp edge, aiming straight at the sky. The people below watched with chilling hearts, seeing the sharpness of this sword. Clang! The fist and sword clashed, emitting a crisp impact sound. Puff! Chu Wushuang was sent flying like a kite with a broken string. The prince's three realm sword technique had reached its peak realm. It could actually severely injure a mid-stage Hua Ling realm expert? And, this demoness was unscathed. Everyone was dumbfounded to see this scene. How is this possible? But the fact was right in front of them. No matter how powerful the force was, it could not contend with the fourth grade divine power talisman. Fourth grade divine power talisman. Puppetry. King Chu flashed to rescue Chu Wushuang, then stood in the air, staring at Chen Fan. Warning, who are you? Why are you causing trouble here? King Chu's eyes were deep, not daring to act rashly. Obviously, the strength displayed by the woman in front of him made him extremely wary of the power behind her. I am the envoy of the Multiverse Bank. Chen Fan came here with the determination to collect debts. Chu Wushuang refused to repay the debt he owed, so he came to collect it, which was only natural. How could the matter of debt collection be distorted? The Multiverse Bank? Chu Wang furrowed his brow, obviously not familiar with this power. The deeds Chen Fan did in Da Chen had not yet reached Chu Wang's ears. After all, the two places were far apart, and Chu Wang had been busy with marriage alliances recently. Taking a deep breath, he continued to ask, What debt does Wu Shuang owe your multiverse bank? Are you finally willing to listen to my explanation? Wouldn't it have been better to end it earlier like this? Why resort to violence so easily? Chen Fan felt helpless and explained, Ten years ago, he borrowed three grade talent from the multiverse bank, which was due three months ago but has been overdue. Upon hearing this, everyone, including Chu Wang, was shocked. How is this possible? Can talent of the third grade be mortgaged? Isn't that nonsense? Is he insane? Talent is innate. How can it be mortgaged at will? People discussed one after another, expressing doubts about the matter. Yao girl, I see you coveting Wu Shuang's talent, don't you? At this point, the silent princess Dewei Changla spoke coldly. 
She had always been rational, with doubts about whether Chu Wushuong owed debts, but when she heard Chen Fan mention mortgaging the third grade talent, she immediately concluded that Chen Fan was lying. How could talent be traded? Wait, I haven't finished yet. If overdue, Wu Shuang has to give his own appearance as interest to the multiverse bank. Princess De Wei Chongla sneered even more after hearing this, completely disbelieving what Chen Fan said. How could someone's appearance be taken away at will? Although I have heard of methods to disfigure and human skin masks, I have never heard of taking away someone else's appearance. Princess De Wei Chongla said to Chu Wang, Chu Wang, why waste time talking to her? Just kill her. She has a prominent status. Even Chu Wang has to be polite to her, so she dares to be so arrogant when speaking to Chu Wang. Chu Wang's expression turned cold after hearing this, and he said coldly, Yao girl, are you provoking my great Chu? In the end, he chose to take action. Firstly, he had never heard of the multiverse bank, so it shouldn't be a significant power. Secondly, if what the Yao girl said was true, handing over Wu Wang's talent and appearance would inevitably damage the reputation of great Chu. Moreover, the marriage alliance with Dewey would also be ruined because of this. Thirdly, he did not want to see his son become a waste, especially since Princess Dewey Chongla had stepped forward and asked him to take action. If he did not take action, wouldn't it mean that the dignity of Great Chu was being trampled on? How could Great Chu stand firm in the Eastern Domain in the future? Buzz, in the next moment, a powerful aura emanated from Chu Wang's body. The terrifying killing intent enveloped an area of thousands of miles, locking Chen Fan and the Black Feathered Eagle tightly in place, a powerful expert in the spirit communication realm. Indeed, not in vain is his reputation. This kind of power was what he had always longed for. Die, Chu Wang shouted heavily, and then his palm surged with strong spiritual power, and a powerful spiritual aura emerged around him. A single blow in the spirit communication realm was enough to destroy a city. Facing such an attack, the difficulty Chen Fan was experiencing could be imagined. Swish. Then, he slowly took out a talisman from his chinkin bag and waved it in front of him, asking, Chu Wang, do you know what this is? Are you sure you want to continue to take action? Chu Wang's face instantly turned pale. The fifth grade god exploding talisman. King Chu showed a look of horror staring tightly at the rune in Chen Fan's hand that filled him with fear. The fifth grade god exploding talisman. Even a strong person in the later stage of the spiritual realm could be blown up. Although King Chu had multiple defense methods, he had just recently advanced to the spiritual realm, and compared to the strong in the later stage of the spiritual realm, the gap was significant. Once hit, he would definitely perish. Moreover, this is the capital of the great Chu kingdom. The explosive power of the fifth grade god exploding talisman is enough to turn the area for miles into ruins, completely lifeless. The high-ranking officials of the great Chu and envoys from various countries attending the wedding of the crown prince of Chu, especially the princess Chongla of the Great Wei, have distinguished identities. Once they are attacked, the great Chu will become the target of everyone's anger, becoming the object of retaliation for all countries. In addition, the great Chu will also suffer heavy losses powerless to retaliate, destined to be wiped out by history. What? The fifth grade god exploding talisman. Demoness, don't be impulsive. For a moment, the ministers of the great Chu below and the envoys of various countries were all shocked and changed color. Even the previously arrogant princess Chongla of the great Wei, at this moment, also changed color repeatedly, staring at the fifth grade god exploding talisman in Chen Fan's hand without daring to speak. You dare not. King Chu took a deep breath, forcing himself to calm down. Is that so? Chen Fan's mouth curled slightly, chuckling softly. You've also noticed, I'm just a slave of the master, even if I die, it's not important to the World Bank. But you, once you suffer a terrible explosive attack, you are doomed to a bad end. Want to give it a try? Speaking, Chen Fan shook the fifth grade god exploding talisman in his hand. Don't, don't be impulsive. The next moment, the envoys of various countries below all stepped back, looking at Chen Fan's fifth grade god exploding talisman in horror, then loudly warned. Princess Chongla of the Great Wei could not help but speak, King Chu, if I die here, the Great Wei will immediately trample on your Great Chu. King Chu's face darkened, being threatened by a princess of the Great Wei in his own territory undoubtedly made him feel embarrassed. 
but he was helpless. What do you want in the end? King Chu felt depressed. Although his aura was heavy and majestic, he was firmly controlled by the other party. In the end, he could only speak again, trying to seek a solution. I have already said, Chen Fan replied indifferently, I'm just here to collect debts and reclaim interest. King Chu's face darkened. Do I really have to watch helplessly as my son's talent is taken away, and his appearance is stripped away? Do you think what you said makes sense? Talent and appearance are innate qualities. How can they be traded? King Chu asked. The World Bank, trading everything. Chen Fan said. Ten years ago, Chu Wushuang's talent was originally mediocre, and the great Chu invested a lot of resources, but his strength improvement was quite limited. Suddenly, his strength skyrocketed, didn't anyone have any doubts? Hearing this, memories related to this flashed through everyone's minds. Someone once said that one must accumulate experience and skills over time, and great talents will mature late. But now it seems that this saying may not be appropriate. How does Chu Wushuang's talent relate to the idea of accumulating experience and skills over time, and maturing late? It seems that Chu Wushuang may have had some undisclosed dealings with the multiverse money bank. The envoys from various countries were discussing animatedly, and the high officials of Great Chu felt wary of the power of King Chu and Chu Wushuang. Although they dared not speak out, their eyes revealed a hint of suspicion. King Chu, how dare you and your son deceive our Great Wei Kingdom? Princess Chongla of Great Wei listened, her pretty face already icy, and said coldly, slander. She is slandering me. I did not borrow any third grade talents. Father, save me, save me. He just covets the talent on my body. Chu Wushuang, recovering from serious injuries, immediately began to defend himself, his face full of panic, no longer the arrogant and confident demeanor he had before. Great Wei no longer supported him, if Great Chu also abandoned him, he was doomed to be slaughtered. Chen Fan looked at King Chu and said indifferently, I have been delayed here long enough. Can I take away the talent and appearance, and I will know the truth? King Chu hesitated, but Chu Wushuang had already fallen into the edge of despair, begging desperately. Chen Fan no longer waited, leapt directly down, standing in front of Chu Wushuang. The people around scattered one after another, not daring to approach Chen Fan. Chu Wushuang struggled his face contorted with fear, blood constantly flowing. However, Chen Fan mercilessly pressed his hand on top of his head. Chu Wushuang trembled all over, as if his spirit was instantly drained. Even the arrogance in his bones disappeared completely, replaced by decadence and mediocrity. This sudden change surprised everyone. Could Chu Wushuang's talent really have been stripped away? You have taken away my talent. Please don't take away my appearance again. I beg you. Chu Wushuang felt doubly anxious. He was particularly concerned about his appearance, constantly pleading, but Chen Fan coldly shook his head. Your appearance is most precious to you. I don't care about other costs. Since you have breached the contract, you must pay the price you deserve. Otherwise, where is the dignity of the multiverse money bank? As Chen Fan uttered the last word, everyone watched as Chu Wushuang's once flawless face gradually disappeared. Chu Wushuang let out a piercing scream desperately covering his face, but to no avail. In the end, when Chen Fan withdrew his hand, Chu Wushuang's face had become completely unrecognizable, covered in wrinkles, becoming extremely ugly, like a demon from hell. Even with hands covering his face, he couldn't hide his hideousness. No, oh, Chu Wushuang screamed, touching his completely changed face in unbearable pain. Could it be? The crown prince Chu's face is a human skin mask? No, after removing the human skin mask, the original appearance should return, but his face has become completely unrecognizable. Swish, Chen Fan left, and the King of Chu ultimately chose to exercise restraint. He witnessed his son being stripped of his talents, losing his appearance, filled with anger, yet unable to act out of fear. He harbored fear, fearful that Chu would be destroyed because of this. Although Chu Wushuang was injured, and the reputation of Chu was damaged, all of that could be accepted as long as he was still alive. As long as the envoys of various countries and the Princess Chongla of Great Wei were still alive, it didn't matter. However, he underestimated the anger of Great Wei. Chu Wushuang's actions plunged Princess Chongla of Great Wei into an abyss, nearly ruining her entire life. It was deceitful, malicious, land cession and indemnities, 
the King of Wei was furious, and Chu voluntarily ceded 8,000 miles of territory and compensated with tens of millions of spirit stones. This was what saved Great Chu from destruction. Of course, this was just the beginning. Third grade talent, fusion. Chen Fan embarked on a journey away from the capital of Great Chu, with his first stop being the entry into the Wenji Bank without hesitation, merging his third grade talent into his own. In an instant, he felt a closer connection to this world. Practicing the Yin Soul technique, he eagerly wanted to experience the impact of the third grade talent on his cultivation speed. Chen Fan was extremely excited, set off. At the same time, he distributed a large number of Wenji tokens, searching for potential clients. King Chen. After days of investigation, he found no clues about the Wenji Bank. All the information only related to the activities of the Wenji Bank in Lingyun County before. What use was this? He still harbored fear and dared not continue to offend the Wenji Bank. Father, there are people within the country starting to question. Your son requests that you punish the Wenji Bank. It was the crown prince of Qin who spoke. No, however, at this moment, the ninth prince, Qin Zheng, stood up to oppose. Father, absolutely not. The Wenji Bank is too mysterious. Its background may be extremely powerful. We, Great Qin, are just one of the many eastern countries, far from being a match for truly powerful forces. Offending the Wenji Bank lightly could endanger Great Qin. Ninth brother, what are your intentions? Chin Crown Prince questioned coldly, are you trying to undermine the prestige of others? Big brother, as a leader, one should not act rashly. Chin Zheng said firmly, everything is for the good of Great Chin. Please be cautious, father. Are you teaching the king how to handle affairs? The Crown Prince of Chin challenged again. I dare not. Chin Zheng knelt and begged for mercy. I see. Chin King shouted sternly. The senior officials all knelt down. HMPH. Chin King snorted coldly, sweeping his gaze over everyone, finally fixing his gaze on Chin Zheng, squinting and asking, Ninth brother, what are your thoughts? This ninth brother seems to have changed recently. His confidence in speaking is stronger than before. He actually refuted the crown prince in public. What exactly does he intend to do? Chin King understood in his heart. But, how much strength does he really have? Father, why not consider trading with the Wenji Bank? Chin Zheng suggested. Impossible. The crown prince of Chin immediately retorted. We lost a hundred thousand troops to the Wenji Bank, and dozens of high-level experts like Gan Yue perished. Now you want to trade with them, isn't that bowing down to them? Chin Zheng, do you still have any backbone? The Wenji Bank, trading all things. They are just simple merchants, pursuing profits. How could they have any real enemies or friends? Chin Zheng calmly pondered, why not engage in trade with them? After all, this is not about demanding territory or reparations, so why sacrifice dignity? The crown prince of Qin was at a loss for words for a moment. But suddenly, the king of Qin broke the silence. Father, the crown prince wanted to continue persuading, but was interrupted by the king of Qin. He looked at Chin Zheng and said, since you proposed this trade, Go talk to the owner of the Ten Realms Bank and tell them that I am going to eliminate the 200,000 troops on the border of Da Chu. See what price they will demand. Chen Zheng's eyes flashed with a hint of light after hearing this, realizing that the king did not intend to help General Ming recover from his injuries. The news that Ming Tian was about to break through to the next realm was strictly confidential, known only to him and Ming Tian. It seemed that the king wanted to see General Ming perish. Chen Zheng took a deep breath saw through the true face of the king of Qin, and resolutely spoke up, Father, I heard that to trade with the Ten Realms Bank, one needs to possess the Ten Realms token to enter. And to obtain the token, the trader needs a strong desire and purpose. Even if you find the envoy, you may not necessarily get the token. The king of Qin frowned, what else? Qin Zheng continued, if the trade fails, it will require a huge price to obtain the token again for re-entry. He went on, as I cannot represent Great Chin, I think it would be more appropriate for father to negotiate with the owner of the Ten Realms Bank in person. Chin Zheng's words made the crown prince of Chin suspect whether he had ulterior motives. He hastily interrupted, Why do you know so much? Chin Zheng calmly replied, In Yan Cheng of Lingyun County, the envoy of the Ten Realms Bank mentioned this. As long as you pay attention, you can find out. The face of the crown prince of Chin changed. 
as he had not thoroughly investigated the background of the Ten Realms Bank in order to deal with them. A chill ran through him, and he hurriedly explained, Father, I. But the King of Chin had already disappointedly cut him off, you may leave. Feeling the King of Chin's cold gaze, the Crown Prince dared not say more and left in a hurry. However, in the depths of his eyes, there was endless resentment. The King of Chin turned to Chin Zheng and said, You may also leave. I will seriously consider the connection with the Ten Realms Bank. Chin Zheng left without saying a word, respectfully. At the same time, Chen Fan was completely unaware of the situation inside the imperial city of Great Chen, as he welcomed a new guest. A figure flashed into the Ten Realms Bank, and Chen Fan widened his eyes, exclaiming, So beautiful? The woman was dressed in a fiery red robe, with flowing long hair, cold and proud eyes, like a lofty fairy, with skin as fair as snow, exquisite features, perfect figure, unique temperament, almost like a fairy. The perfect blend of tranquility and enchantment creates a unique charm. Chen Fan was certain that she was the most beautiful and captivating girl he had ever seen in his three lifetimes. Even compared to the female celebrities on the screen in his first life, they couldn't hold a candle to her. Standing in front of the Wenji Money House, a mysterious woman appeared in Chen Fan's sight. She lightly parted her vermilion lips, her face cold and her tone indifferent, yet exuding an extreme elegance. Chen Fan's heart trembled, nodding in agreement. He could see that this woman must have had extraordinary experiences and stories. I seek revenge, no matter the cost. Her voice was cold, but it conveyed determination and resolve. Su Qingyu, such a melodious name. She is indeed beautiful and is hailed as the number one beauty of Da Chen. Not only that, her talents are outstanding, earning admiration from all. However, she comes from a humble background, with no connections, just a daughter of an ordinary mountain village family. Even before she rose to fame, her appearance was destined to be the target of various forces and strong individuals. Yet, she never succumbed to her fate. Countless scions of prominent families and powerful individuals have been resolutely rejected by her. Three days ago, Mo Tianlong, the young master of Saifeng Men, was once again rejected by Su Qingyu, and this time it was a public rejection. Mo Tianlong felt utterly humiliated. In order to win the heart of the beauty, he suppressed his anger and persuaded her once again, saying, Ching Yu, as long as you are willing to be with me, I guarantee you a bright future, no one will dare to harm you again. With the support of Saifeng Men, your strength will skyrocket, reaching the nascent soul realm will be a piece of cake. Your parents will also be brought to Saifeng Men, enjoying wealth and glory. I can even arrange for them to enter the court as officials. However, Su Qingyu still coldly refused. Mo Tianlong was completely enraged. He acted on the spot, killing Su Qingyu's parents and setting the entire village on fire. Su Qingyu herself was almost captured, but luckily, the pendant on her chest suddenly burst with immense power, repelling all of Mo Tianlong's men, narrowly averting disaster. After Mo Tianlong left, silence enveloped the surroundings like death. Su Qingyu looked at her parents' lifeless bodies and the despairing expressions, at the burning flames and the villagers' cries, her anger burning within. She kneeled in the sea of fire, her robe stained a sinister blood red. She knelt for three days and nights, until her homeland turned into ashes, a realm of utter silence. It was then that the token of the multiverse appeared before her. Multiverse Bank, trading all things. Su Qingyu unhesitatingly grasped the token. The rumors about the multiverse bank had long spread throughout Dachin, and even in a remote mountain village, she had heard of it. She wanted to use the multiverse bank to seek revenge. Originally named Long Yi, Su Qingyu was the legitimate daughter of the dragon family in the central domain of the Lingyun continent. Chen Fan looked at this stunning and mysterious girl before him, a hint of doubt rising in his heart. The dragon family in the central domain of the Lingyun continent? The dragon family in Dachin? Why did she change her name to Su Qingyu? Why hide in this place? Why are her parents so weak in power? Chen Fan immediately realized that this woman was far from ordinary. Do you seek revenge? Chen Fan asked. What price are you willing to pay? Su Qingyu coldly replied, seeming unwilling to say more. Su Qingyu possesses a first-class talent, unparalleled beauty, a perfect figure, 13 spirit stones, and a mysterious pendant in her hands. Chen Fan's mind was filled with a series of information. Spirit stones are so rare? 
It seems that the financial situation is indeed not very good. But his own capital is exceptionally attractive. A top-tier talent. Peerless beauty. Perfect figure. These three are all priceless treasures. A top-tier talent is the most top-notch ability in the spirit cloud continent. Enough to break through the saint realm and become a generation of saints. Peerless beauty and perfect figure are even more rare and precious. These are exactly the resources that the multiverse bank urgently needs. What kind of price do you think you can offer for the trade? Chen Fan took a deep breath and asked in return. Beauty, Su Qingyu said without hesitation, and then chuckled self-deprecatingly, don't all those men covet my looks. I am willing to exchange my beauty for a chance for revenge. A chance to end Mo Tianlong with my own hands. So, Chen Fan's mind floated with basic information about Mo Tianlong, Mo Tianlong, with advanced strength in the spirit realm, the junior master of the quadrant gate. The junior master of the quadrant gate? Chen Fan raised his eyebrows, then continued. The quadrant gate is the number one sect force in Dachen, second only to the royal family. And the sect master is a top expert with advanced strength in the transcendence realm. However, your beauty is of great value and can indeed be exchanged for a chance for revenge. It's just, with your talent, just hide for a few years, maybe you will have the opportunity to get rid of Mo Tianlong yourself. Why bother trading with me at the multiverse bank? After hearing this, a hint of coldness flashed in Su Qingyu's beautiful eyes, and even the temperature in the entire hall of the multiverse bank suddenly dropped. I hope he dies soon. I don't want him to live for even a moment longer. This resolute attitude made Chen Fan blink involuntarily. Okay, I'm willing to trade with you. Chen Fan nodded, but, I don't need your beauty. Su Qingyu frowned slightly and asked, then what do you want? Freedom, Chen Fan said. Huh, why? Su Qingyu was surprised. She thought that the owner of the multiverse bank would covet her beauty, body, and even be prepared for sacrifice. Unexpectedly, the other party only asked for her freedom? Your talent is extraordinary, with limitless prospects. That's exactly why Chen Fan asked for Su Qingyu's freedom. The multiverse bank currently has no special representatives, and he has to personally deal with every debt collection, which is really troublesome and tiring. If he uses this time to cultivate and become stronger, wouldn't that be wonderful? If Su Qingyu joins the multiverse bank and, with the resources she receives, she will surely become his capable assistant quickly. How many years of freedom do you want from me? Su Qingyu is currently not clear about her own identity. She only wants to complete her revenge, but after revenge, where should she go next? She feels confused. At the moment, being able to serve the multiverse bank might also be a good choice. For a lifetime, Chen Fan said. After hearing this, Su Qingyu fell into silence. Chen Fan was not impatient, waiting for Su Qingyu's decision. Since it requires a large amount of resources to train Su Qingyu, he cannot let her leave again. Okay, soon, Su Qingyu firmly gave her reply, but I have one condition. Oh, please say, Chen Fan was confident that Su Qingyu would agree. Although Su Qingyu knew clearly that she was the messenger of the multiverse money bank, she was not aware of this honor. Her heart was filled with hatred, and her rationality had long been eroded. At present, her only wish is for revenge. However, Chen Fan did not expect her to make a condition. I will never yield to your demands, Su Qingyu declared coldly. Chen Fan acquiesced. It was a soul contract. Once signed, it would take effect immediately. Although the previous transaction was not binding, without any written contract, becoming the messenger of the multiverse money bank required the signing of this contract. Once violated, both body and soul would perish. At the moment when Chen Fan signed the soul contract with Su Qingyu, a series of information flashed in his mind, triggering a side quest. With excitement shining in his eyes, Chen Fan always looked forward to rewards, eager to enhance his own strength and shape his physical body. Soon, another message appeared in his mind, making him ecstatic. The rewards came once again. He couldn't wait to check the reward contents, finding that they included the Sacred Fire Heart Sutra an advanced celestial level technique. After reaching the great perfection realm, he could transform into a sea of fire, cultivate the sacred fire, burning all things in the world, and a special item, the time card, which would make practicing fire-based martial skills twice as effective. The generous rewards made Chen Fan extremely excited. The preciousness of the sacred fire heart sutra was self-evident, 
and although 100 years of time was different from lifespan, it was equally valuable. Last time, he did not fully utilize the value of his lifespan, resulting in unsatisfactory completion of the transaction. This time, he was determined to make good use of these 100 years. Chen Fan shifted his focus to another special item, one he was very familiar with. Without hesitation, after using it, his cultivation quickly soared to the ninth level of yin spirit. Such rapid progress thrilled him. Although he still had a long way to go before reshaping his physical body, he believed that he would soon be able to return to the world. When he learned that the time card could help others in their cultivation, Chen Fan pondered on how to best utilize this resource. Despite having average talent, with 100 years at his disposal, he believed he could make significant progress. Just then, Su Qingyu asked when she could seek revenge, and Chen Fan immediately realized the best use of the time card. Without hesitation, he proposed to Su Qingyu to use the time card on her, to help her fulfill her revenge wish. Su Qingyu desired to personally kill Mo Tianlong, but Chen Fan pointed out that her strength was too weak, only at the third level of spiritual cultivation. Chen Fan said affectionately, however, I can give you 10 years to cultivate. I believe that with your talent and the resources of my Wenji Qianzhuang, you will be able to reach a terrifying level of strength in these 10 years. I've divided the 100 years into 10 parts. I have to be thrifty because my family background is not that strong. The other 90 years, I will use for myself and keep them for future needs. Upon hearing this, Su Qingyu furrowed her delicate brows and said, I want to kill Mo Tianlong immediately. She thought Chen Fan was going back on his word. You misunderstood. Chen Fan quickly realized Su Qingyu's misunderstanding and explained, These 10 years will only take a moment in reality. However, Su Qingyu's brows furrowed even tighter, clearly not understanding. You may not understand now, but just follow what I say. When Ji Qianzhuang is mysterious and unpredictable, you will gradually understand in the future. Get ready. This is a high-level TNJ technique, the Sacred Fire Heart Method. And this is a low level DG combat skill, Flame Palm. Take them both to cultivate. Chen Fan didn't bother to explain further and waved his hand. The Sacred Fire Heart Method and Flame Palm appeared in front of Su Qingyu. Before she could react, Chen Fan activated the time card on her. In an instant, Su Qingyu felt the environment around her change as if she was immersed in the ocean of time, motionless. Everything around her seemed to freeze. In front of her floated the cultivation scrolls of the Sacred Fire Heart Method and Flame Palm. Cultivate. She remembered the instructions of the owner of Wenji Qianzhuang and began to cultivate decisively, believing rather than doubting. Oh, I need spiritual stones too. Cultivation requires the assistance of spiritual stones to achieve twice the result with half the effort. Chen Fan was about to take out a large amount of spiritual stones when he hesitated then gritted his teeth and took out a spiritual vein instead. Su Qingyu, I've spared no effort. You can't let me down. I only have three spiritual veins, and I traded them hard with Ming Wang. With a thought, the spiritual vein surrounded Su Qingyu. Buzz. In the next moment, Chen Fan felt Su Qingyu's breath soaring. Fourth grade spiritual cultivation. Fifth grade spiritual cultivation. Early stage Ling Xuan realm. Mid stage Ling Xuan realm. Swish, Su Qingyu suddenly opened her beautiful eyes, her aura changed drastically. In her pupils, flames were flickering, becoming more eerie and noble, as if they could burn everything. Chen Fan even suspected that if she stared at him, she might spontaneously combust. Her blood-red robe was teeming with countless flame patterns, as if she were in a sea of fire. Or rather, she seemed to be surrounded by countless flame spirits. At that moment, Chen Fan had to admit that his heart skipped a beat. She truly deserved her first-rate talent. Prince Chu, Chu Wushuang, with a third-grade talent, only broke through to the early stage of the Huoling realm in ten years, and his cultivation level is higher than yours. But you have reached the mid-stage of the Tongling realm, Chen Fan said, looking at the powerhouse he had created, unable to contain his excitement. Fantastic, fantastic. Su Qingyu felt a glimmer of hope rising in her heart. Having a creditor with the strength of a mid-level spiritualist would undoubtedly make things much easier in the future. At this moment, her heart was filled with astonishment. She knew clearly that after a full decade of time passing, the power within her had also become stronger. 
What's even more remarkable is that all of this happened in the blink of an eye. Thank you so much, Master Zhuang. As she expressed her gratitude, her voice carried a hint of respect and gratitude. Su Qingyu knew clearly in her heart that her transformation was all thanks to the owner of the multiverse bank. It was this owner who gave her the power to seek revenge. She is now the ambassador of the multiverse bank, able to freely enter and exit the hall. After completing the revenge mission, she can immediately return and continue to collect debts. Chen Fan calmly accepted Su Qingyu's gratitude. He had paid a huge price to cultivate Su Qingyu. Su Qingyu disappeared on the spot, sighing about the advantage of having a first-class talent. Despite her achievements, understanding advanced celestial techniques still requires time and talent support. Previous talents may have taken 10 years to grasp the basics. Chen Fan watched Su Qingyu leave, feeling a myriad of emotions. Fortunately, he now has a third-class talent. He decided to spend 10 years cultivating and see how far he could improve the yin soul technique. Closing his eyes, Chen Fan began to practice. Initial understanding of the yin soul technique. Mastery of the yin soul technique. The first level of the yin god realm. The fourth level of the yin god realm. Opening his eyes, Chen Fan's eyes sparkled. The powerful yin soul filled him with fighting spirit. At the fourth level of the yin god realm, as long as he mastered soul techniques, he could rival early stage experts in the spirit master realm. Now, all he lacked was soul techniques. Although not as good as a first class talent, a third class talent was still quite good. In order to maximize benefits, Chen Fan decided not to use the remaining 80 years for now, waiting for a better opportunity to arise before using them. He believed that his current cultivation in the Yin Soul was enough to face challenges. Xiao Yu, let's go back to Da Chen. We are going to establish a multiverse bank here. Chen Fan said confidently. He remembered the task released by the system, which was related to his strength improvement. Da Chen was the place he was most familiar with, and the multiverse bank already had a certain reputation here, so choosing to establish it here was the wisest decision. Flying over the territory of Da Chen, Chen Fan closed his eyes, focusing on Su Qingyu's situation. As the owner of the multiverse bank, he could synchronously perceive the ambassador's sights and sounds, which was also the magic of the system, making the journey no longer boring. The moment Su Qingyu left the multiverse bank, she returned to the burnt-down small mountain village. Everything seemed unreal, and she was even a little confused. Raising her palm and seeing the flame mark, she confirmed her change. Feeling the power in her body, a cold light flashed in her eyes, and the fire of revenge ignited in her heart. She silently vowed, Mo Tianlong, today is your death day. In the next moment, a raging fire ignited within a few hundred meters around her, while she stood unscathed in the midst of it. Chen Fan watched this scene and couldn't help but be shaken. In his eyes, Su Qingyu was like a flame fairy, enchanting and captivating. As a young and strong lad, how could he not have feelings for her? He took a deep breath, steadied his emotions, and continued to observe, training his composure. As the owner of the Wenji Money Bank, one must have absolute self-control. Su Qingyu moves with agility, like lightning streaking across the sky, gracefully flying through the air. As a mid-level spiritualist, she has already acquired the ability to fly in the air. Although her small mountain village is a bit far from the four gates, for a mid-level spiritualist, it only takes half an hour to arrive. Wow, she is so beautiful. That blood-red robe looks absolutely stunning on her. She is soaring in the air. This is a mid-level spiritualist. Are there not just the Qin King as the only strong spiritualist in the Great Qin Empire? Who is this woman? What is her purpose in coming to the Four Gates? Su Qingyu landed in the martial arts square, paying no attention to the whispers around her. She is here to kill. Her outstanding temperament makes the proud disciples of the Four Gates feel fearful and dare not approach or question her. Mo Tianlong, come out and face your death. Su Qingyu's voice was clear and penetrating, echoing throughout the sect. At this moment, Mo Tianlong had already recovered from the shock three days ago and was flirting with a junior sister in a secluded corner. Junior sister fan, your salary for this month will be paid at the highest standard, rest assured. Junior sister fan was dressed in a light blue long dress, elegant and beautiful, evoking a sense of pity. The purple blood Dan is a second grade elixir, and obtaining it, is extremely difficult. Even I only have one. 
You know, it can help the late-stage spiritual realm warriors communicate with the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, increasing the chance of breaking through to the spiritual realm by 50%. This elixir is in high demand. Mo Tianlong's gaze roamed over junior sister Fan, seeming a bit audacious. Senior brother Tianlong, you have already reached the early stage of the spiritual realm. You don't need the purple blood Dan at all. Junior sister Fan blinked her eyes slightly and said softly, Ha ha, junior sister really understands me. Since you need it, I will consider it carefully. With that, Mo Tianlong couldn't help but grab junior sister Fan's delicate hand. Junior sister Fan trembled, wanting to break free, but Mo Tianlong held on even tighter. What do you think? Don't you want the purple blood Dan anymore? As far as I know, junior sister Fan, your talent is good but you were seriously injured a year ago, your foundation was damaged, otherwise you would have reached the early stage of the spiritual realm long ago. But with a damaged foundation, without good elixirs to assist, it's hard to break through again. Mo Tianlong spoke, resorting to various means to satisfy his own desires. Senior brother Tianlong, you know, junior sister Fan suddenly stopped struggling. Su Qingyu urgently needs to break through her current cultivation level and advance to the initial stage of the spirit realm. Only by demonstrating strong abilities and gaining recognition from the top echelons of the four gates can she protect the safety of her family. If she continues to be reserved, the family may face destruction, her parents may be in danger, and she herself may even be threatened. Even hiding within the four gates, Mo Tianlong will not spare her, as he is ruthless. Su Qingyu takes the initiative to meet Mo Tianlong, showing that she has made a decision. So, what is there left for her to hesitate about? Still pretending to be reserved? Taking a deep breath and making up her mind, she bravely approaches Mo Tianlong, displaying a charming and delicate demeanor. Mo Tianlong is overjoyed to see this scene. However, just at that moment, Su Qingyu's delicate shout suddenly rings out. The young master of the Shao sect has offended a powerful cultivator in the spirit realm? This news has made the atmosphere tense within the four gates. As discussions were underway, a sly and thin young man suddenly appeared at the scene. He was none other than the trusted assistant of the young master, He Qingyun. Although He Qingyun had not witnessed the appearance of the immortal, he fearlessly stepped forward. To his surprise, he found that the visitor was Su Qingyu. Her beauty and mysterious aura sent a shiver down his spine. Even though He Qingyun had seen Su Qingyu in a small village before, she seemed different now. He stood up, only to be met with cold indifference from Su Qingyu. Despite his burning anger, Su Qingyu did not act rashly. He became even more infuriated at being treated this way by a village girl. He decided to subdue Su Qingyu and hand her over to the young master for judgment. As he approached Su Qingyu, he Qingyun suddenly realized that she was the one he had betrayed to the young master. The look in Su Qingyu's eyes made him regret his actions. Su Qingyu's aura began to feel strangely eerie, causing a wave of heat to wash over He Qingyun. Even though he was no match for Su Qingyu, he refused to be underestimated by her. After a heated argument, Su Qingyu finally couldn't hold back and released a powerful surge of energy. He Qingyun's eyes widened suddenly with a look of shock written all over his face. Flames were actually burning in his eyes? Suddenly, he felt his body temperature rapidly rising, as if his blood and spiritual power were ignited and burning. The raging fire raged within him, consuming his whole body. He let out a piercing scream. The sound was ear-piercing and chilling. Suddenly, his body burst into flames, as if he had turned into a walking fireman. What is going on? Why did he Chinyan suddenly catch on fire? The fire was still spreading rapidly? Didn't He Chinyan know how to use his spiritual power for protection? He was clearly a master in the later stage of the spirit profound realm. The crowd around him grew larger and everyone's faces changed. This is the sacred fire. He Chinyan is just a master in the later stage of the spirit profound realm. He can't resist it at all. Chen Fan exclaimed never expecting that the first one to lose his life to the sacred fire would be someone in the later stage of the spirit profound realm. Oh no, as Chen Fan's voice rang out, He Qingyun rushed to Su Qingyu's side. However, by then, he had been completely consumed by the sacred fire, not even ashes remained. The sacred fire is merciless, it can burn everything to ashes. Not even the ashes are spared. 
Silence surrounded them. This scene was too eerie. It was beyond their imagination. Just then, Mo Tianlong finally arrived at the scene. He did not see the scene where He Qinyan was engulfed by flames, only saw the crowd staring at Su Qingyu in horror. He thought they were astonished by Su Qingyu's beauty and demeanor. However, seeing Su Qingyu again, he was also stunned by her beauty and demeanor. Three days apart, Su Qingyu seemed to have undergone a transformation. Three days ago, she was like a fresh white lotus flower, noble and dignified, making people yearn for her. But now, she was like a lofty fairy, awe-inspiring. Mo Tianlong almost instantly forgot about the bizarre events that had occurred earlier, completely captivated by her. Mo Tianlong, you killed my parents, destroyed my village. I will not rest until I avenge them. Su Qingyu's eyes were fixed on Mo Tianlong, with a raging fire burning in her eyes, her body temperature soaring again. Mo Tianlong, upon meeting Su Qingyu's gaze, couldn't help but shiver, but then realized the scrutiny of the crowd. As the young master of the Four Directions sect, how could he show weakness? How could he admit to such a charge? As the young master of the Four Directions sect, Mo Tianlong stood up and declared loudly, You demoness, how dare you slander me? You're asking for death. This is the territory of the Four Directions sect. How could he back down? Su Qingyu is only a third-ranked spiritual practitioner, while he is a master in the spirit realm. However, the hatred in Su Qingyu's heart was deep and unforgiving, and without hesitation, she unleashed the flame palm. She quickly cast a spell, surrounding spiritual energy surge, and a huge flame palm formed out of thin air, the terrifying spiritual power fluctuations causing the faces of those present to change drastically. With a whooshing sound, a flaming palm the size of a bear's paw fiercely slapped towards Mo Tianlong. Mo Tianlong, seeing the flaming palm attacking him, went from a confident expression to a look of fear in an instant, his face pale as he shouted for help, help me. Mo Tianlong felt a surge of fear of death in his heart. At this moment, he seemed to be in the fiery purgatory, trembling with fear. Suddenly, a deafening roar rang out, and everyone was instantly frightened, as if they had heard the thunderous voice of authority. It was the third elder of the punishment hall. Almost everyone present realized at the same time how familiar the voice was. Everyone felt the powerful aura of the third elder. The third elder quickly formed hand seals. A tiger roar resounded through the wilderness, and a colorful giant tiger appeared out of thin air. The colorful giant tiger let out a long roar and fiercely collided with Su Qingyu's flame giant palm. However, Chen Fan shook his head, convinced that the third elder was destined to fail. Although the appearance of the colorful giant tiger showed the extraordinary combat skills of the third elder, even reaching the realm of consummation, his strength was too weak. The colorful giant tiger seemed somewhat illusory and insufficient to resist. Before the colorful giant tiger even touched the flame giant palm, it fiercely collided with it, emitting a terrifying force that spread out in ripples. The weaker ones around were sent flying, seriously injured and coughing up blood. The stronger ones fought back with all their might. The colorful giant tiger let out a scream, its whole body ignited in flames, and quickly dissipated. The third elder was horrified to find out that the opponent was a powerful spirit realm expert. However, it was too late. The flame giant palm fiercely slapped him, and he was engulfed by flames, burning from the inside out into a fire person. He let out a piercing scream, twisted in pain, and finally jumped into the nearby artificial lake. However, even in the water, the flames continued to burn fiercely. Everyone saw the flames at the bottom of the lake consume the third elder. Everyone was extremely surprised, staring in astonishment at the bottom of the lake, in silence. Suddenly, footsteps sounded, and everyone's gaze turned to Su Qingyu. She was still beautiful and charming, but she showed a ruthless side. It was as if an additional label of, ruthless, was added to her forehead. Su Qingyu walked towards Mo Tianlong, who was so scared that he turned around to escape. Su Qingyu once again gathered a terrifying power, ready to unleash the flame giant palm again. But at this moment, a figure flashed by, and Mo Tianlong saw the sect master rushing over, feeling relieved and loudly calling for help. The sect master, a solemn-faced lady, introduced herself as the sect master of the Four Directions sect. Mo Tianlong's father, Mo Wuyan, also arrived and respectfully conversed with the sect master. 
Su Qingyu's terrifying power has shocked the four gates. Give Mo a three-day deadline to find out the truth and give an explanation. How about that? As for today's events, let's forget about them, Mo Wuyan said in a tone of discussion. However, Su Qingyu unhesitatingly declared that today, Mo Tianlong must die. This statement revealed determination and resolve. Mo Wuyan frowned upon hearing this, knowing the terrifying strength of Su Qingyu. His face turned cold, and without hesitation, he struck at Mo Tianlong's dantian with a loud bang. Mo Tianlong screamed, sending shivers down everyone's spine. Mo Wuyan resolutely disabled his own son's dantian. Is this matter settled now? Mo Wuyan looked at Su Qingyu with a heavy voice. He did not inquire about the cause, but directly disabled his own son's dantian, which was already a great concession. However, Su Qingyu remained unmoved, with an indifferent expression. Mo Wuyan did not expect Su Qingyu to be so dominant, his face turned cold. Do you think the four gates are defenseless? The next moment, Su Qingyu raised her hand, a terrifying flame giant palm instantly condensed, and then fiercely slapped towards Mo Tianlong. Seeing this, Mo Wuyan hurriedly made hand seals, shouting loudly, and made a full move. Then, several figures rushed over, one after another making their moves. Together with Mo Wuyan, there were a total of eight people, all of them top experts of the four gates, reaching the level of spirit transformation realm. Even if the opponent was a strong transmutation realm, they had no qualifications to act recklessly in the four gates. Mo Wuyan said coldly, the eight spirit transformation realm experts each displayed their combat skills, and the powerful spiritual power ravage, making the disciples of the four gates step back one after another. In comparison, Su Qingyu's flame giant palm seemed to weaken its momentum. For a while, it seemed like the situation was back under control by the four gates. The eight top experts of the spirit transformation realm joined forces to resist Su Qingyu. This momentum is truly extraordinary, Chen Fan said, but his heart was as calm as water. Su Qingyu cultivated a high-grade Tian rank technique and an earth rank combat skill, with her strength reaching the mid-stage of the transmutation realm. If they couldn't even defeat these old guys, they wouldn't deserve to be the envoys of the Wenji Money House. Just as Chen Fan was contemplating secretly, the attacks from both sides collided fiercely. Boom! Then, the attacks from both sides unexpectedly reached a stalemate. It seemed evenly matched, however. Suddenly, the attacks of the eight spirit transformation realm experts noticeably weakened. Look, the flame giant palm seems to be devouring their attacks. It's not devouring, it's burning. Burning their spiritual power. More and more disciples of the four gates also noticed this, their attacks being consumed by the raging fire, and continuing would deplete them. Go all out, as long as we break through, we will all be doomed. The master of the four gates shouted loudly, and the other seven elders also injected powerful spiritual power into their attacks. The flame giant palm began to gradually dissipate. The fire weakened. Both sides were in a standoff. However, if they could infuse spiritual power, why couldn't Su Qingyu? Moreover, Su Qingyu's spiritual power was purer and stronger, far surpassing the eight top experts of the four gates. However, she clearly had no intention of delaying. She wanted to end Mo Tianlong's life at the fastest speed possible. Her eyes suddenly blazed with flames. Following that, the power of the flame giant palm also increased. Then, the flame giant palm instantly broke through the joint attack launched by the eight powerful beings in the Huling realm, splitting into eight flame giant palms, swiftly padding towards the eight top experts of the four square gate. The speed was as fast as a rainbow. What? The turtle mountain shield. A fourth grade divine shield charm. The expressions of the four square gate masters suddenly change, immediately activating various life-saving measures. They never expected that Su Qingyu could break through their attack. They witnessed the tragic death of the third elder with their own eyes. Once hit by the flame giant palm, the consequences would be unimaginable. Swish. At this moment, a hand that seemed to cover the sky suddenly appeared, fiercely suppressing the eight flame giant palms. Instantly, it resolved Su Qingyu's fatal blow. Spiritual realm. Chen Fan raised his eyebrows slightly. Wasn't the strongest person in the four square gate only in the later stage of the Huoling realm? The situation was somewhat unexpected. 
Ancestor. Then, the master of the four square gate gave the answer. Ancestor. The other seven elders also respectfully saluted. Ancestor. Then, a group of disciples of the four square gate, who were initially confused, were filled with joy afterwards. It turned out that the four square gate also had strong people in the spiritual realm. Demoness. Do you want to destroy the foundation of my four square gate? The face of the ancestor of the four square gate was withered, extremely old, and his tone was extremely domineering. I only kill Mo Tianlong, those who block me, will die. Block time and time again. Su Qingyu was obviously furious. The temperature of her whole body suddenly soared. Under the high temperature, even the air became distorted. Hum. The next moment, the blood-red robe on her body suddenly moved without wind. The flame pattern on it seemed to have a life of its own, joyfully rushing towards all directions like a flame spirit. Wherever it went, a blazing fire ignited, burning everything. This, once again, everyone's faces changed drastically. They had never seen such a bizarre method. Even the ancestor of the four square gate, at this moment, looked solemn and serious. How dare you? You will die. If these flame spirits enter every part of the four square gate, the entire four square gate will probably be engulfed by the sea of fire. And water cannot extinguish it at all. The ancestor of the four square gate knew that the best defense is a good offense. To completely extinguish this terrible fire, it must be dealt with at its source. Hum, he once again extended his right palm. The spiritual energy of the heavens and the earth within a radius of thousands of kilometers instantly gathered forming a huge sky covering palm then fiercely slapped down dense and numerous covering the sky the space seemed unable to bear it all disciples of the four square gate follow the orders cooperate wholeheartedly the master of the four square gate immediately ordered not wanting to give su ching yu any chance yes countless disciples of the four square gate immediately obeyed the order and attacked together in their eyes su ching yu was bound to die without a doubt then, why would they disobey the master's order? Su Qingyu, you are too arrogant. The ancestor of the four square gate is my ancestor. He will definitely destroy you. Unfortunately, I have no chance to have such a stunning beauty like you. At this moment, Mo Tianlong stood with his hands behind his back, sneering. Shameless to the extreme, Chen Fan squinted his eyes slightly and said coldly, using the entire sect's power to besiege a woman is truly shameful. Su Qingyu, do you have the courage to face this? At that moment, Su Qingyu felt her whole body locked in place, as if under immense pressure that almost suffocated her. Suddenly, two flame wings emerged from her jade back, large and beautiful, making her look like an invincible and noble phoenix. The flame wings flapped violently, lifting her body off the ground in an instant, heading straight towards the giant palm in front of her. The flames in her eyes burned fiercely surrounded by a sacred fire, and then she turned into the sacred fire, colliding with the giant palm and countless attacks. She paused for a moment, then the sacred fire pierced through the numerous attacks, heavily hitting the chest of the leader of the four square gate, who let out a scream. Then, the flames on her body turned into countless fire sparks, raining down like a storm, turning the four square gate into a sea of fire. The scene was spectacular, but it was a disaster for the four square gate. Screams, chaos, and death filled the area below. Mo Tianlong witnessed it all, completely stunned. He sat paralyzed on the ground, watching his family, elders, and fellow sect members being engulfed by the flames, falling one by one. He was completely dumbfounded. What was even more shocking was that he was so scared that he wet himself. High in the sky, Su Qingyu coldly stared at Mo Tianlong, her eyes flashing with fiery hatred and disgust. She slowly uttered a word, die. Then, Mo Tianlong's body suddenly burst into flames. For a scum, the entire sect was sacrificed, which was extremely ridiculous. Chen Fan looked at the four square gate being engulfed by flames, shook his head indifferently, and no longer paid attention to it. Su Qingyu floated back to the hall of the Wanji money house, feeling refreshed. With her revenge accomplished, she no longer felt the immense pressure and appeared much more relaxed. Thousands of miles away, the region of the great Yan dynasty, Yan Dan, borrowed the Wanji money house's spiritual tool, the blood blade, and has not returned it on time. It has been overdue for 90 years, requiring nine spiritual veins as compensation. 
Get our things back. Chen Fan's tone was firm. I have only one request. A quick and decisive battle. There are many debtors waiting for you to deal with. Yes, Su Qingyu left again. Spending less than a minute in the hall of the Wenji money house before returning to the four square gate. Then, she quickly left. Meanwhile, Chen Fan continued to search for the best location to establish the Wenji money house, everything proceeding as usual. The news of the four square gate being destroyed by a mysterious woman has caused a huge sensation in Dachin. Rumor has it that the founder of the four square gate displayed extraordinary spiritual cultivation, and even with the combined efforts of the top experts in the eight transformations realm and all disciples, they were still unable to resist the power of this mysterious woman. The entire process took less than 10 minutes, as the number one sect in Dachin, second only to the royal family in strength, the fall of the four square gate is unbelievable. Many disciples of the four square gate hold important positions as county governors and city lords throughout Dachin, exerting significant influence on the political situation. So why did this disaster happen? Who is this mysterious woman? The crown prince of Qin is furious in the prince's mansion. The four square gate was his strong support, the most powerful force backing his ascension to the throne as the crown prince, but now it has been completely destroyed. His position as crown prince is now in jeopardy. Feeling helpless and anxious without the support of the four square gate, he learns that General Ming's injuries are healing, indicating that he may lose control of General Ming's military power. In order to compete for this power, he has offended General Ming and now finds himself in a dilemma. Faced with the current situation, the crown prince of Qin is extremely anxious. He must take action. Just then, a shining world token suddenly appears before him. The World Bank, trading everything. A majestic voice resonates in his mind. The World Bank? A hint of hesitation flashes in the Crown Prince's eyes. Despite his resentment towards the World Bank, his top priority now is dealing with Chin's political situation. He decides to go to the World Bank to see if he can solve this problem through trade. The moment he grabs the World Token, he instantly appears in the hall of the World Bank. This sudden change surprises the Crown Prince of Chin but it also gives him a deeper understanding of the World Bank. Chen Fan's voice suddenly rings out, what do you want to trade? He has already learned of the Crown Prince's identity, slightly furrowing his brow. It's a first for him to make a deal with an enemy. But business is business, and they have to negotiate. The Crown Prince of Chen decisively says, I want Chen's political downfall. The World Bank never gets directly involved, but they can help him achieve this wish. Chen Fan smiled knowingly, understanding why the crown prince of Qin wanted Qin Zheng's life. It was just a scene in the court struggle, something he wasn't interested in. He only watched for entertainment. He ran the multiverse bank for business. However, he couldn't help but curiously ask, what kind of price can you offer? In his mind, a system prompt flashed, listing the resources the crown prince of Qin possessed. 80 million spirit stones, the burning heaven technique, the profound iron palm, three fourth grade divine shield talismans, one fourth grade divine movement talisman, ten night pearls, and twelve western region beauties. These resources were simply staggering, especially the divine shield and divine movement talismans. Was he a person who treated life as grass? Chen Fan was speechless. Eighty million spirit stones, that's a lot. There must be many greedy people out there, right? Judging from these resources, the crown prince of Qin was not a diligent person, nor could he become an outstanding ruler. Of course, none of this concerned him. He only cared about those 80 million spirit stones and the fourth grade divine shield and divine movement talismans. That was what interested him. Suddenly, the crown prince of Qin said, one million spirit stones. Chen Fan was stunned. Are you kidding me? One million spirit stones for Qin Zheng's life? Qin Zheng is the ninth prince of Great Qin surrounded by experts and must have numerous life-saving talismans. This crown prince was only willing to offer one million spirit stones? Crown Prince Chin, you're trying to kill the ninth prince of Great Chin. Chen Fan questioned. The crown prince of Chin frowned arrogantly and said, in Great Chin, the surname Chin is the royal surname. Who dares to claim it if they are mere commoners? Either change your surname or die. And in the Chin family, there is only one named Chin Zheng, the ninth prince. Seeing the crown prince of Chin's arrogance, Chen Fan retorted, 
since you know that Chin Jung is a member of the royal family, respected by the entire great Chin, do you think his life is only worth one million spirit stones? After hearing this, the crown prince's frown deepened, his face turned ugly, and then he proposed, 1,500,000 spirit stones. How about that? Chen Fan chuckled lightly. Just an additional 500,000 spirit stones? The crown prince sensed the sarcasm, his face darkened, and asked, What are you laughing at? Let your master come out to talk. I want to see how daring your multiverse bank really is. I am the master. Chen Fan couldn't be bothered with more nonsense and stated directly, 80 million spirit stones, plus 3 4th grade divine shield talismans and 1 4th grade divine movement talisman. Otherwise, no deal. After hearing this, the crown prince's pupils constricted, surprised that the multiverse bank knew about his possession of 80 million spirit stones and the 3 4th grade divine shield talismans and 1 4th grade divine movement talisman. Are you crazy? The crown prince took a deep breath, trying to calm down, and sarcastically said, 80 million spirit stones? You might as well go rob a bank. Looks like we can't reach an agreement, can we? Chen Fan inquired again. The crown prince, as if giving alms, said, at most 2 million spirit stones. Displaying a lofty attitude. Seeing this, Chen Fan, unwilling to waste more words, decisively said, please leave. The crown prince hesitated, but was eventually interrupted by Chen Fan waving his hand. Subsequently, the crown prince disappeared from the hall of the multiverse bank. Prince Chen was furious. The other party was asking for such a high price. It was simply insatiable. Back in the study, his face turned ashen with anger. Although the deal had failed this time, he didn't regret it. The other party's demands were simply outrageous. Meanwhile, in the World Bank, Chen Fan watched the scene before him and shook his head. As the Prince of Chen, acting so narrow-minded and lacking courage, he was just a money grubber. Trading 8 million spirit stones, a few fourth grade divine shield symbols, and divine teleportation symbols to secure the demise of his biggest competitor and solidify his position as the crown prince. The future throne of Qin was within reach. What a lucrative deal. If he didn't trust the World Bank, he could have chosen to make a deposit for the transaction. But this prince of Qin was only willing to offer 2 million spirit stones. What else is there to discuss? It's simply a waste of my time and energy. Although Chen Fan still had some World Bank tokens in hand, the rewards he had received from the successful transactions did not include any World Bank tokens. Each one was extremely precious. He decided to block him. He was so angry that he immediately blacklisted the other party. However, at this moment, another guest arrived. The King of Chen. Looking at the guest in a yellow robe, tall and imposing, Chen Fan raised an eyebrow slightly. It seemed that this family were all astute individuals. Both father and son came to make a deal. Chen Fan took a deep breath, raised his spirits, and said, World Bank, where everything is traded. King Chen, what do you want to exchange? Hearing this, King Chen still looked skeptical and wary. With 200,000 Chu troops, I hope they disappear. Why did this father and son rely on the World Bank to deal with their enemies? Chen Fan sighed inwardly and decisively refused. The World Bank only deals in trades, not in muscle. I can give you time, or provide combat skills, or even assist you in breaking through, and then, you can decide for yourself. Give me time, help me break through? King Jin's suspicion deepened upon hearing this. How can time be given? He was only at the early stage of the spirit communication realm, lingering in this realm for a full eight years, yet still unable to break through. If it were that easy, he would have succeeded long ago. All talk and no substance. He labeled the World Bank with doubt. In addition, now is the perfect time to deal with the Chu state. Chen Fan continued. Chu Wushuang owes my World Bank a third grade talent, overdue and not returned. My female slave caused trouble, took away the third grade talent, and confiscated his appearance as punishment. He almost ruined the Princess of Wei, angering the King of Wei, putting the Chu state in danger. Now is the perfect time for Qin to expand its territory. Is this information true? King Qin's pupils slightly contracted. In less than three days, the news will spread to Great Qin. Do I have to deceive you? Qin Fan said lightly, the World Bank, why would it need to deceive a mere king of Qin? After hearing this, King Qin furrowed his brow. The king of Qin sat on his throne, 
with a proud expression that made people want to look down on him. He was eager to break through to the mid-stage of the spirit communication realm, but he was puzzled about what the Wenji Money House really wanted from him. He asked, concealing his dissatisfaction deep within, without revealing it. He still couldn't figure out the true intentions of the Wenji Money House, unsure if they were deceitful or a powerful mysterious existence beyond his understanding. Chen Fan examined the resources of the King of Chen, with a hint of strangeness in his expression. He was surprised to see that the Crown Prince of Chen had even more spirit stones than the King of Chen, which he found ironic. He calmly stated that the King of Chen immediately rejected, without hesitation. For the King of Chen, the four spiritual veins of Da Chen represented the hard-earned family fortune accumulated by generations of Chen kings. How could he easily give up three of them? Although the King of Chen generously offered half of the 40 million spirit stones, he hesitated at the conditions proposed by Chen Fan. Chen Fan continued to speak, making more demands. He pointed out that even though it was a good time for Da Chen to expand its territory, the value of these resources was negligible compared to the spiritual veins. The King of Chen could only offer up to 60 million spirit stones at most, indicating a willingness to cooperate, otherwise the deal would be off. The King of Chen's eyes were full of distrust, but Chen Fan remained indifferent and continued to negotiate. Finally, an agreement was reached, with the King of Chen providing 30 million spirit stones, and Chen Fan receiving 60 million spirit stones, various divine symbols, and ownership of the entire Lingyun mountain range. The conditions for establishing the Wenji money house at the peak of Lingyun Mountain were also confirmed. When the King of Chin heard the request for the peak of Lingyun Mountain, he showed hesitation and concern. He believed that building a large institution in such a place within half a month would be a huge challenge, requiring a huge amount of funds. He could only offer 30 million spirit stones, but all other conditions could be agreed upon. Chen Fan once again emphasized the necessity of 60 million spirit stones, and hinted that the King of Chen could make up for financial deficits by rectifying corrupt officials. In the end, both parties reached an agreement and began their transaction. The King of Chen arrived at the Wanji Money House, initially just wanting to test the strength and background of this money house. However, when he learned about the turmoil in the Great Chu, he immediately realized that this was a great opportunity an opportunity to make the Great Chin powerful, and he decided to seize it. He didn't care whether Wenji Money House lived up to its reputation, as long as he could uncover the mystery with just one transaction. Moreover, if this transaction could help him break through to a higher realm, then it would be very worthwhile. Of course, the premise was that he had to break through first. Chen Fan gave him 10 years, believing that with his talent and accumulation, 10 years would be enough for him to break through. Chen Fan didn't explain much, he directly bestowed the 10 years on the King of Chen. Buzz, in the next moment, just as the King of Chen was about to have doubts, the environment around him changed, and he felt as if he were in the ocean of time. Was this real or an illusion? He frowned, cautiously looking around, still harboring doubts. He closed his eyes, focusing on sensing the world around him. Chen Fan chuckled, with your talent and cultivation, trying to comprehend the laws of time? That's a bit too self-confident. Indeed, he found that he couldn't sense anything. The King of Chin started running, but all he saw was a vast expanse of white, and everything around him was still. Chen Fan's voice rang out like thunder, making it impossible for him to determine the source of the sound. The King of Chin felt a slight shock in his heart. The methods of the Wenji Money House's owner were so strange and powerful, leaving him no way out, and in the end, he could only choose to believe. One year passed, two years passed. Buzz, nine years later, the King of Chen's aura suddenly surged, finally breaking through. Chen Fan breathed a sigh of relief. I thought giving you ten years, you still wouldn't break through. If the King of Chen hadn't broken through, Chen Fan might have needed to provide other resources to help him, otherwise, this transaction would not be cost effective. In the last year, the King of Chen consolidated his cultivation. He originally wanted to practice martial skills, but he was worried about being stolen by the money house, so he chose to enhance his strength. When he opened his eyes again, he saw the Wanji money house and couldn't help but be stunned. He wondered if he had truly broken through. The surging spiritual power in his body left him with no doubt. He began to feel a hint of fear towards the Wanji money house, a fear that was indescribable. 
Chen Fan's voice rang out again. Now it's time for you to pay the price. The King of Chin respectfully accepted Chin Fan's gift, then disappeared on the spot. It was only when he returned to the Chin Palace that he truly believed that all of this was real. At the thought of it, a wave of astonishment surged in Chin Fan's heart. The interstellar bank, mysterious and awe-inspiring, made people feel intimidated at the mere sight of it. Moreover, the interstellar bank is going to be established in Dachin, which is definitely a superb opportunity. This is Dachin's chance. The gleam in the eyes of the King of Chen sparkled as he immediately summoned all the skilled craftsmen in the country to head to the summit of Lingyun Mountain. At the same time, he quickly notified the left and right prime ministers, as well as the ministers of the six departments, to come for an audience. Ding! The fifth transaction is completed, with an outstanding completion rate of 200%. Chen Fan received a generous task reward matching the completion rate. After the reward settlement, Chen Fan obtained a protective array for the interstellar bank, a fortune card, and a special item. The familiar system prompt sound rang out again, making Chen Fan unable to contain his joy. A great harvest, another great harvest, with a completion rate of 200%, the rewards are indeed generous. It just so happens that the construction of the interstellar bank is needed, and the protective array will come in handy. As for the fortune card, it seems to be extremely valuable and the special item is incredibly precious. However, just as he was eager to check the rewards, he suddenly discovered a problem, the fifth transaction? Does that mean the transaction with Su Qingyu also counts as one? Why didn't he receive a task reward after the successful transaction? Chen Fan felt puzzled. The only explanation could be that the rewards were already given when triggering the side quest. Regardless, check the rewards first. So, Chen Fan clicked to view the reward details and found that he had obtained a small interstellar bank protective array. A fortune card that can change the user's fortune value, with a rating of 5 stars, only usable for transactions, and a special item that can upgrade the Yin Soul Puppet with no side effects. The fortune card can only be used for transactions, meaning it cannot be used personally. The system actually restricts the host. As for the interstellar bank protective array, it can only be used after the interstellar bank is established. For now, use the special item. He immediately used the special item on Xiao Mi. Buzz. In the next moment, Xiao Mi, who originally had the strength of the late Lingdong realm, instantly soared to the level of the late Huoling realm. This special item completely ignores the level difference. Each use can boost her strength by a whole level. It's amazing. Chen Fan took a deep breath, filled with joy in his heart. As the special item continuously enhances Xiao Mi's strength, the more cost-effective it becomes to use it later on. Next, he hurried to the summit of Lingyun Mountain. Xiao Yu, give it your all. Chen Fan said, he would supervise the construction of the interstellar bank because, after all, this is the first interstellar bank, and for a considerable period of time in the future, he will be living there. As for whether the King of Chen will support him in establishing the interstellar bank, he was not worried at all. Although the King of Chin is tough, he is extremely wise. He does not easily believe in anything, but once he is convinced, he will go all out. His courage and wisdom far exceed that of the Crown Prince of Chin. The prosperity of Da Chin today is largely due to this man's credit. How could such a wise person possibly be an enemy of the Interstellar Bank? Moreover, the case of Chu Wushuang is there and Chen Fan believes that the King of Chen would not dare to go back on his word. A few days later, Su Qingyu strolled into the capital of the Great Yan Kingdom. Compared to the Great Chen, the Great Yan was more powerful and prosperous, with peace and stability throughout the country. However, over a hundred years ago, the Great Yan was on the brink of collapse. Constant internal strife and frequent external invasions posed a great threat. At that time, the Yan King passed away leaving behind a young crown prince who ascended the throne at the tender age of five. The future of the great Yan was uncertain, and people had little hope for it. In such a dire situation, the regent Yan Dan struck a deal with the Wenji Money House. He borrowed a spiritual weapon called the Bloodblade. The Bloodblade was a weapon with spiritual intelligence, extremely sharp and powerful. The stronger the wielder's spiritual power, the greater the power of the weapon. With this spiritual weapon, Yan Dan quelled internal unrest, repelled external enemies, 
intimidated all wrongdoers, and secured the territory of the Great Yan. After decades of development, the Great Yan gradually prospered. However, ambition quietly brewed in Yan Dan's heart. As the regent of the Great Yan, he had outstanding achievements, wielded great power, had trusted followers throughout the kingdom, and was full of self-confidence, believing that the prosperity of the Great Yan was all thanks to him. Why should he let the Yan king overshadow him? Thus, Yan Dan began plotting to usurp the throne. Despite his power, prestige, and mid-level spiritual strength, usurping the throne seemed like an easy task, but the Yan king was no ordinary person. Growing up under Yan Dan's shadow, the Yan king had been treated unfairly, even his trusted aides looked down on him, would he just sit and wait for his doom? At the age of 18, he began secretly expanding his influence. Although not extensive, his power was firmly in his hands. Most importantly, he had a special bond with the Great Zhou dynasty. To curb Yan Dan, the Great Zhou supported the Yan King, even marrying a princess to him and sending powerful spiritual experts to the Great Yan. These actions were aimed at protecting the Yan King, deterring Yan Dan, making him fear and hesitate to act rashly. When the repayment date arrived, Yan Dan was unable to repay the blood blade. Without the support of the spiritual weapon, how could he compete with the Zhou Emperor and the Yan King? He was in a desperate situation. Fortunately, the Wanji Money House seemed to have forgotten about this debt and did not come to demand repayment. Now, he had finally found an opportunity. He launched a coup, broke through in one fell swoop, became a spiritual realm powerhouse, with power rivaling the Zhou Emperor. Would the great Zhou have the strength to support the Yan King? It was fully engaged in a battle against the Great Ming. For the Great Zhou, allowing a second imperial power in the Eastern Domain was a direct challenge to its authority. Once the Ming Emperor declared himself Emperor, the Great Zhou would launch a war to eliminate the Great Ming. Today, Yan Dan is preparing to launch a coup. The time to act is now. My lord, everything is ready. A trusted minister exclaimed excitedly, We are willing to follow you, my lord and together we will create a prosperous era for Da Yan. Other loyal followers expressed their support one after another. The Lord showed a firm gaze and ordered, let's go. This moment had been long awaited by them. Immediately, the entire kingdom of Da Yan boiled with excitement, and blood flowed like a river. To ensure everything went smoothly, Yan Dan, holding a bloody blade, personally headed towards the imperial palace of Da Yan. Regent, what are your intentions? The king of Yan's face turned pale as he saw Yan Dan, already guessing what was happening. He roared angrily, You are my uncle, the brother of my father. Must we resort to arms? King Yan knew Yan Dan's intentions all too well, clenched his fists tightly, nails digging into his palms, blood dripping down, yet he remained oblivious. I don't want it to be this way, Yan Dan smiled, but you insist on taking what rightfully belongs to me, what choice do I have? King Yan retorted through gritted teeth, when did the throne ever belong to you, Yan Dan? Yan Dan's face darkened, swiftly appearing in front of King Yan, grabbing his neck and lifting him up, saying, everything you have now, I gave it to you. Without me, you are nothing. Even your life now is because of me. Taking back what is rightfully mine is only fair. King Yan's face turned crimson, suppressing his rage, he struggled to say, this is treason. Betraying the ancestors of Da Yan, Yan Dan sneered, Under my rule, Da Yan will undoubtedly thrive. If not for your opposition to Da Zhou all these years, Da Yan would have risen long ago to the top among the powerful nations. It's all because of you. You are the sinner of Da Yan, and your foolish father too. Without him, how could Da Yan have declined like this? You and your father are the ones truly unworthy of facing our ancestors. King Yan was infuriated blood oozing from the corners of his mouth, he gritted his teeth, you, you will pay for this. The great Zhou dynasty will not spare you. My queen is a princess of Da Zhou. Ha, Yan Dan found it amusing. Yesterday, the Zhou emperor sent all the powerful spirit realm experts who were protecting you away. To eliminate me, the Zhou emperor wants to plunge Da Yan into chaos again. He gave you an explosive talisman, isn't it on you now? King Yan's face changed abruptly. This can't be. I've been deceived. Suddenly, he looked at the eunuch beside him. It was you. Xiao Dezi. We grew up together. How could you betray me? 
The eunuch's face darkened, sneering. Some time ago, this slave tasted the flavor of Yang Guifei. He, he. A taste that intoxicates. The regent promised to help this slave regain his former glory, rewarding the position of chief secretary, something you cannot provide. The eunuch named Xiao Dezi solemnly took out a fifth grade divine explosion talisman from his bosom and gently handed it to Yan Dan. In the moment of passing the talisman, Xiao Dezi's eyes shimmered with determination and trust, as if conveying silent support and encouragement to Yan Dan. Yan Dan, trembling as he took the talisman, felt the full trust and expectation from Xiao Dezi, stirring a sense of responsibility and mission in his heart. At this moment, it seemed to be the intersection of their tacit understanding and trust, making their relationship closer as they faced the challenges of the future together. Yan Dan took the fifth grade divine explosive talisman handed to him by Xiao Dezi, with a slight frown on his face. He knew very well that this was a scheme by Emperor Zhou to incite internal strife in the great Yan. However, Xiao Dezi quickly changed his tone and looked flattering. Yan Dan nodded slightly in satisfaction and reached out to take the talisman. Suddenly, he, the king of Yan, and Xiao Dezi beside him all felt the arrival of the god of death. The fifth grade divine explosive talisman suddenly burst out with a dazzling light, revealing Emperor Zhou's conspiracy to eliminate the royal family of Great Yan. Yan Dan's face changed drastically, and he hurriedly activated his defense, but it was too late. A huge explosion swept over, engulfing everything for thousands of miles. Even the powerful Yan Dan was instantly blown to pieces. On the top floor of the Wangjong building in the capital of Great Yan, the Empress of Great Yan, Zhou Tianyao, stood tall in a phoenix robe alongside Princess Zhou Tianyao of Dazhou. She witnessed Yan Dan's army hunting down the King of Yan's confidants, witnessed everything Yan Dan did when he broke into the palace, as if she were detached from it all. However, when a violent explosion suddenly rang out in the Great Yan Palace, and the raging shockwave spread in all directions, a hint of indifference flashed in Zhou Tianyao's eyes. This explosion engulfed countless lives in Great Yan, but in her eyes, these lives were just her enemies, the enemies of Da Zhou. Whether it was Yan Dan or the King of Yan, they were all enemies of Da Zhou. Her only mission was to support her son in ascending to the throne, turning Great Yan into a part of the Da Zhou dynasty. Behind her, the crown prince of Great Yan watched in horror at the destruction before him, unaware of the change of power. Zhou Tianyao took the blood red blade, with a hint of a smile in her eyes, showing no fear. The blade seemed to flow in her hands as if it had a life of its own, and she coldly said, Is this the blood blade that rivals the national treasure of Da Zhou? Upon hearing the command from the queen mother, the crown prince of Dion felt a tremor in his heart. He lowered his head and softly replied, Yes, mother. However, deep resentment flickered in his eyes. He was not a fool. Why did the regent prince Yandan put his father in a desperate situation and send him to his death? With victory in hand, why did the queen mother insist on taking him to the Wangjong Tower today? The powerful spiritual practitioners sent by Dajo all gathered here without exception, and the situation was clear. His father had been loving towards him but ruthlessly abandoned by the queen mother becoming a pawn in the power struggle. The mastermind behind all this was his never-met grandfather. However, he felt powerless, helplessly witnessing everything unfold before his eyes. Was everything in Dion going to be taken away by Dajo like this? This made him feel extremely frustrated. Just then, a fiery red figure suddenly appeared out of thin air. The person had a standard oval face, willow eyebrows, a straight nose, cherry lips, long flowing hair, skin fairer than snow, a well-proportioned figure, and a cold demeanor. The blood-red robe on the person's body added to the mysterious aura. Could it be? A fairy? The crown prince had seen countless beauties, but this peerless beauty was a first for him. He was awestruck for a moment. Powerful spiritual practitioner, who are you? Zhou Tianyao lightly furrowed her delicate eyebrows, her pretty face indifferent. Behind her, the four powerful spiritual practitioners were ready for battle. The messenger from the multiverse bank was named Su Qingyu. Su Qingyu said indifferently, I've come to collect a debt. Zhou Tianyao shook her head and said, I, as a princess, do not owe any debts. Perhaps you have mistaken the target, esteemed messenger. Su Qingyu explained, The one in debt is the regent prince Yandin of Dian, 
who borrowed the spiritual weapon Bloodblade from our multiverse bank. Zhou Tianyao's pretty face darkened as she gripped the Bloodblade and said coldly, So you've set your eyes on the Bloodblade. In the Eastern Domain, no one dares to oppose the great Zhou dynasty, let alone snatch our belongings. Kill her, she ordered without hesitation to attack. Su Qingyu faced the siege of the four powerful spiritual practitioners, the situation was critical. Inside the multiverse bank, Chen Fan noticed Su Qingyu's plight. A resolute look flashed in Su Qingyu's eyes as the holy fire burned, and the power of the flame palm increased significantly. Flame palm? From the great Ming? Seeing this extraordinary skill, Zhou Tianyao's face darkened as she wondered, is the great Ming trying to use the blood blade to challenge our great Zhou's national spiritual weapon? She retorted, I do not know of any Ming king. I am a messenger from the multiverse bank here to collect a debt. Su Qingyu calmly said, Hand over the blood blade, and I can let you go. Zhou Tianyao sneered, You also want to kill me? Kill this woman. As soon as the words fell, the attacks from both sides quickly intertwined. Suddenly, a powerful attack swept through, instantly destroying the magnificent Wangjong Tower, causing it to collapse. This scene was heart-wrenching, as if the whole world was trembling. At that moment, the protagonist felt hopeless and sorrowful, as if all hope had been lost. The once glorious and magnificent building had now turned into ruins, making people sigh at the merciless passage of time and the transience of all things. Standing amidst the wreckage, the protagonist's eyes revealed deep sadness and resignation, his heart as shattered as the ruins around him. In that moment, he felt the fragility and unpredictability of life, as well as the ruthless and cruel nature of time. On this desolate ruin, the protagonist seemed to see his own reflection, pondering on the meaning and value of life with emotions running high. Despite facing a tremendous blow, the protagonist did not give up, knowing that only by facing it with strength could he rebuild shattered dreams and reshape a broken life. Su Qingyu possesses formidable combat strength, and the holy fire she practices is a terrifying technique cultivated at an advanced level. Coupled with the flame palm, her killing power is substantial, surpassing her peers by far and even comparable to late-stage spirit realm experts. However, she is currently facing four spirit realm experts, one of whom is a mid-stage expert. In comparison to Su Qingyu's flame palm technique, these four spirit realm experts possess various defensive techniques, talismans, and attack methods, making their overall strength equally formidable. Therefore, both sides are locked in a stalemate, with no clear advantage. Chen Fan, observing the situation, furrowed his brows slightly and said in a deep voice, however, the impact of fourth grade talismans on the battle situation is immense. If Su Qingyu continues to struggle on the opponent's territory, she will undoubtedly be at a disadvantage, and defeat is inevitable. Su Qingyu's forehead was already wet with sweat, and this battle was indeed challenging for her, but she continued to fight with all her might. I must complete the mission. This is the first task given to me by the master, and I cannot fail. She felt grateful to Chen Fan because without him, she would not have been able to seek revenge or find a purpose in life. Chen Fan not only helped her seek justice but also gave her a mission, allowing her to rediscover the meaning of life. Determined to give her all, even at the cost of injury, Su Qingyu's beautiful eyes gleamed with unwavering determination, her pretty face showing a resolute expression as she released the flame palm without hesitation, charging towards the mid-stage spirit realm expert. However, her attack was blocked by the opponent's fifth-grade divine shield talisman, and she was heavily injured in return. Zhou Tianyao sneered and commented, it's a pity your tactics are too single-minded. If you had a fourth-grade divine power talisman, he would have long been defeated. Su Qingyu spread her wings of fire, steadied her posture, and launched another attack, her face filled with determination and madness. Zhou Tianyao sneered coldly, brandishing her blood blade and threatening, do you want the blood blade? Today, I will use it to end you. She decided to take matters into her own hands with her four spirit realm guards by her side. Initially, the odds were even with four against one, but now, with Su Qingyu injured and facing five opponents, including Zhou Tianyao with a spiritual weapon, it seemed like Su Qingyu was in a dire situation. However, she remained undaunted, displaying loyalty and courage. Seeing this, Chen Fan knew that Su Qingyu was on the brink of life and death and had to intervene. With a thought, 
a token from the multiverse disappeared from the Hall of the Multiverse Bank, adding a twist to the impending battle. The Multiverse Bank, where endless trade is possible. Suddenly, a majestic voice resounded in the ears of everyone. Oh, Zhou Tianyao furrowed her beautiful brows and couldn't help but sneer, thinking, do you think such a small trick can stop me? You at the Multiverse Bank are too confident. Just a waste of time. Blood Blade Spirit. Heed my command. Invincible attack. Cut off all enemy heads. As she spoke, the blood blade in her hand trembled violently, the blade surging with a bright red liquid. Suddenly, a blood red light tore through the sky, causing the heavens and earth to change color, as if shrouded in a blood cloud, the land turning blood red. Meanwhile, Su Qingyu stood still in the void, staring at this eerie scene without moving. She knew in her heart that the owner of the bank had intervened. She firmly believed that the woman before her and the four powerful spiritual realm experts would be destroyed. Here's your last chance. Hand over the blood blade, along with the nine spiritual veins, and you and your people can live. Su Qingyu spoke again. Despite harboring hatred and a drastic change in temperament, she was not a wanton taker of innocent lives. How dare you, at this moment of life and death, still speak such words? Zhou Tianyao sneered, as if hearing a joke. I don't need your chance. I only need your life. Demoness, perish. With that, she fiercely swung the blood blade in her hand. Oh, Su Qingyu sighed. Buzz, the blood red light swept down immediately. In the next life, remember not to provoke the great Zhou imperial family. Oh, at the next moment, Zhou Tianyao's face changed drastically, because the overwhelming blood light was attacking her and her guards. Impossible. How is this possible? I clearly just successfully recognized the master. The blood blade should belong to me. Demoness, what kind of sorcery did you use? Oh, in the next instant, the overwhelming blood light cut through her waist. Bisected. Oh, oh, the familiar sound of tearing was followed by a piercing scream. Thud, thud, Zhou Tianyao and the others fell to the ground one after another. Whoosh, Su Qingyu slowly landed in front of Zhou Tianyao and the others. Help, help. I'm willing to give you anything. Zhou Tianyao begged in pain, the agony in her expression indescribable, blood continuously gushing from her wound. Even if she tried to seal it with her strong spiritual power, she couldn't stop the passing of life. The Grim Reaper has arrived. Su Qingyu said calmly, I once gave you a chance, but you didn't cherish it, reaping what you sow. All, perish, all of you perish, even if I'm doomed, I will drag you down, involving the surrounding people. Seeing no way out, Zhou Tianyao took out a large number of fourth-grade godburst talismans from her bosom, falling into madness. Mother, no. Prince Yan's face changed drastically. But Zhou Tianyao ignored his existence. You are of great Yan, die without regrets. I will make great Yan chaotic. Since I can't survive, can't control great Yan, then I will utterly destroy this last rightful heir. Let great Yan remain in chaos never become a threat to great Zhou. Mother, you, Prince Yan seemed to hear something unbelievable, momentarily stunned. Boom, Zhou Tianyao grinned, letting out a roar. Suddenly, dozens of explosions echoed through the sky. Those were grade 4 god-blasting talismans, powerful enough to defeat experts in the spiritual transformation realm. A large number of grade 4 god-blasting talismans were detonated simultaneously making it difficult even for a mid-level spiritual communication realm powerhouse to escape unscathed. This kind of power was second only to grade 5 god-blasting talismans. It's imaginable that once the explosion spread, everyone around would meet a tragic end, including Su Qingyu. Even areas hundreds to thousands of miles around would be affected, with living beings suffering. Zhou Tianyao's face was filled with a crazy expression, radiating a fierce aura. While Prince Yan was full of despair and resentment, however, in the next moment, a blood-red light suddenly enveloped Zhou Tianyao. Oh no, Zhou Tianyao's face instantly turned pale. However, it was already too late. The explosion occurred. Her body was instantly blasted into pieces, not even leaving a trace, completely disappearing from this world. The power of the explosion caused the blood-red light around Zhou Tianyao to quickly dissipate. However, the spiritual weapon still held the upper hand. As the explosion vanished without a trace, the blood-red light immediately merged into the blood blade. Buzz! Immediately after, 
the blood blade fell into Su Qingyu's jade palm. Snap, seeing this scene, Prince Yan breathed a sigh of relief, slumping on the ground, his body already drenched in sweat. The debt of Yan Dan, repaid by the Yan Kingdom. Su Qingyu looked indifferently at Prince Yan, calmly saying, the blood blade is now in hand, only nine spiritual veins are left. This prince, this king will give them to you. Prince Yan immediately nodded, not daring to resist. Moreover, with Great Yan suffering heavy losses today and the national treasure, the blood blade, being taken away, it had lost its former glory. Holding on to nine spiritual veins would only lead to them being taken by other forces. With a total of ten spiritual veins in Yan Kingdom, relying on his reputation and power in Yan, he could only retain one. Therefore, at this moment, letting go was not a painful decision for Prince Yan. However, what Prince Yan cared about were the items in the bag of holding from the Great Zhou Dynasty and the treasures in the treasury of Great Yan. These were the keys to him regaining the pinnacle of power. I only take things that belong to the Interrealm Bank, Su Qingyu said. Prince Yan's face lit up with gratitude, saying, thank you. Moments later, Su Qingyu tightly held the Interrealm token and stepped into the Interrealm Bank. Master, here are the Bloodblade and Nine Spiritual Veins. She presented the Bloodblade and Nine Spiritual Veins. Good, truly worthy of a spiritual weapon. Chen Fan stored the Nine Spiritual Veins in the warehouse, took the Bloodblade, and said playfully, Next, it just needs to be nourished with spirit stones or even spiritual veins, and its power will continue to grow. Su Qingyu did not respond but said, This time, it was my fault for not handling things properly, making the master personally take action. Please punish me, master. Huh? Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, looking at Su Qingyu, and said, This matter is not your fault. However, this battle has also exposed your lack of strength, master. Just then, Su Qingyu interrupted Chen Fan and continued. I have comprehended a defensive combat technique based on the sacred fire and spiritual power as guidance. Chen Fan pondered, thinking, is this a first rank talent? Always able to create new combat techniques? He made a resolution in his heart that if the opportunity arose, he must obtain a first rank talent, or even a more extraordinary talent. At this moment, Chen Fan couldn't wait to deal with the debt issue. He handed Su Qingyu three overdue loan contracts, all within the Eastern Domain, for her to handle. After Chen Fan informed Su Qingyu about the information regarding the loan contract, Su Qingyu hurriedly left and headed towards the place where the debt was to be collected. Subsequently, he rode a black feathered eagle and flew to the peak of Lingyun Mountain. After a difficult journey, he finally arrived at his destination one day later. The scene before him was shocking. A large gathering of craftsmen and powerful warriors at the peak of Lingyun Mountain. The speed of the Qin King's actions was truly impressive, and Chen Fan felt satisfied with the attention they were giving him. Dealing with intelligent people always made things easier, but dealing with the crown prince of Qin would probably be more challenging. Suddenly, footsteps approached, and Chen Fan was filled with anticipation, wondering about the identity, resources, and needs of this visitor. The footsteps stopped and in front of him stood a young man with sharp features and a determined expression, emitting an aura of depth. This young man, named Long Zan, a powerful expert in the spirit master realm, was troubled by love. Chen Fan was surprised when he recalled the basic information about Long Zan, realizing that a super powerful expert in the spirit master realm had come to the 10,000 realms bank for a transaction. In the entire Lingyun continent, the strongest were only in the later stages of the Emperor Spirit Realm, while the Spirit Master Realm was far superior to the Emperor Spirit Realm. The terror of such a powerful expert was chilling. What was even more astonishing was that this young man in front of him was of similar age. Chen Fan was shocked inwardly, finding it hard to believe that such a powerful being existed in this place. Long Zan spoke without hesitation, his voice urgent, and his anxious expression made Chen Fan feel his inner anxiety. When Chen Fan learned that Long Zan was willing to exchange everything for his wife's life, he had a moment of enlightenment. Long Zan was not referring to his own life, but to the talents he possessed. At the 10,000 Realms Bank, everything was negotiable, and saving a life was not difficult. All that was needed was to transfer Long Zan's lifespan to his wife. However, what Long Zan urgently needed was top-tier talent. Having reached the spirit master realm at a young age, 
He must possess extraordinary talents. This was what he desired most. Trading what one most desired for what the other most desired was a mutually beneficial transaction. Long Zan was a lone cultivator, without any background to speak of, but with his exceptional talents, he quickly rose to prominence in the Lingyun continent, becoming a dark horse. Ten years ago, he fell in love with Chen Yanren, the daughter of the top power in the Lingyun continent, the Chen family. At that time, he was penniless and had no background, and their relationship faced strong opposition from the Chen family. However, Chen Yanren chose to elope with Long Zan, standing firm in their love. To prove that Yanran's choice to be with him was correct, and to prove to the Chen family that he was the best match for Yanran, Long Zan practiced tirelessly day and night. His cultivation continued to improve, gradually earning the approval of the Chen family. Three days ago, while in seclusion for cultivation in the eastern region, he was on the verge of breaking through to the spirit master realm. However, he was attacked by enemies at this critical moment, and Chen Yanren tragically lost her life while protecting him. Long Zan successfully broke through, killing all his enemies in a ruthless manner, but he could not bring back the life of the woman he loved. Due to breaking through, Long Zan didn't even see his wife's last moment before her death. If his own safety hadn't been threatened, he probably wouldn't have woken up. Yanren, at this moment, he suddenly felt like a big piece was missing from deep inside, empty. The joy that should have come with the breakthrough also completely dissipated at this moment. What did I break through for? To become stronger. To become stronger for a better life for Yanren. But, because of my pursuit of strength, Yanren died. Thinking back on the past 10 years, Yanren followed him, always on the run, taking care of him all day, never having a good day, and what about him? All he cared about was cultivation. Endless cultivation. Where was the sincere companionship for Yanren? When longing floods like a river, you can come by boat, and love is the same. His regret and love at this moment reached a peak of a certain obsession, to the point where he was even willing to trade his life for Yanran's awakening. Even if, just to see her one last time, the bank of the ten thousand realms, trading all things. When that supremely majestic voice sounded, he hesitated to grab it. Then, he arrived at the bank of the ten thousand realms. Okay, I'm willing to use my talent to save my wife. Upon hearing Chen Fan's words, Long Zan readily agreed. Good, Chen Fan didn't hesitate either, and said directly, your wife just passed away, her soul lingering in the body. Now take these two tokens of the ten thousand realms back, then let your wife hold the tokens and bring her over. As he spoke, two tokens of the ten thousand realms were already floating in front of Long Zan. Okay, in the next instant, Long Zan grabbed them directly and disappeared. In just a moment, he appeared again, holding his wife who had just passed away in his arms. Your wife's soul is too weak, in another three minutes, it will dissipate and return to the nine heavens. Inside the bank of the ten thousand realms, Chen Fan is like a god, he immediately saw the state of Chen Yanren at this moment. What to do next? Long Zan urged. Three minutes, in an instant, he became more and more anxious. Three minutes is enough, Chen Fan said confidently. First, hand over your talent. Okay, Long Zan agreed without hesitation, and urged anxiously, please, master, take action. Buzz, immediately, with a thought from Chen Fan, Long Zan's brows furrowed. A terrifying sense of detachment came from his head, the whole process taking just a moment. Then, Long Zan's entire demeanor changed. His eyes became lifeless, his soul devoid of vitality. Done. Chen Fan immediately sealed his talent in a jade box, looking ecstatic. How do I save my wife next? Please fulfill your promise, master. Long Zan didn't care about his own changes, speaking up. Chen Yanren. Chen Fan could feel Chen Yanren's soul weeping, trembling, clearly witnessing her husband's great sacrifice for herself. She was heartbroken. You saw everything Long Zan did. He only wishes for you to live on, to be together with you. I hope you can pull yourself together. Chen Yanren is a kind-hearted and brave girl. When the cultivation method of Yin Soul technique entered her soul, she chose to cultivate without hesitation, showing extraordinary talent and determination during the process. As time passed, her Yin Soul soared continuously, surpassing Chen Fan, which was truly astonishing. Long Zan anxiously watched Chen Yanren's body, unable to sense her Yin Soul, filled with worry. In the final decade, 
Chen Yanren had to break through the Yin Saint and reach the level of human soul in order to be reborn through her original body. After arduous cultivation, Chen Yanren finally broke through the first level of human soul at the last moment, achieving the goal of being reborn through her original body. When 50 years had passed, Chen Yanren's Yin soul opened her eyes, emitting a powerful force that put pressure on everyone present. Chen Fan could sense the strength of Chen Yanren's Yin soul, feeling excited and hopeful. He guided Chen Yanren into her original body, starting the process of being reborn through her original body. Although Long Zan had the cultivation of spirit venerable realm, he could only nervously wait. In the end, Chen Yanren successfully completed the process of being reborn through her original body and reappeared in front of everyone. Long Zan embraced her excitedly, vowing never to part again. Chen Yanren was also full of happiness, and the reunion of the two touched everyone. However, Chen Fan, watching the two cuddling, felt happy but also a bit awkward. He cleared his throat to break the scene, reminding them that they were in a public place. Chen Yanren realized this and blushed, feeling a bit embarrassed. Ultimately, the three of them became aware of their surroundings and awkwardly smiled. Chen Yanren looked gratefully at Chen Fan, knowing he was her savior. Though they came from different worlds, they met again due to fate, filling their hearts with emotion. Long Zan was full of joy and thanked Chen Fan respectfully. Chen Fan replied calmly, it was just a fair trade, a mutually beneficial transaction. Chen Yanren, upon hearing this, tightly held Long Zan's hand, with a worried and caring expression. Long Zan understood her feelings and comforted her with a smile, don't worry, I am at peace now, and you are the most important person to me. Besides, my cultivation has reached the spirit sovereign realm, enough to protect myself. Chen Yanren gently stroked Long Zan's face and said affectionately, Zan Ji, let me protect you from now on. Long Zan smiled and responded, All right, I also want to experience being protected. In this cheerful atmosphere, Chen Yanren generously handed over the method of practicing the Yin Soul Needle to the Wenji Money House and refused to accept any payment. Chen Fan, grateful for her gesture, declined, How can I let the innkeeper pay a tip? The Yin Soul Needle is a high-level soul technique of the Earth Tier, used for attacking Yin spirits. He gratefully accepted the cultivation method and invited Long Zan to visit the Qin family in the central domain to show the hospitality of a landlord. Watching the two leave, Chen Fan couldn't help but sigh inwardly, is Long Zan planning to rely on others for his future? But I also envy them. Chen Yanren said, let's go home, Zan Ji. Long Zan nodded and the two headed towards the central domain without hesitation. In the future, Long Zan may indeed need Chen Yanran's protection. Although Chen Yanran's strength is inferior to Long Zan, only at the spirit realm cultivation level, her yin soul power is formidable, unmatched in the Lingyun continent. Moreover, she possesses a first-grade talent, with limitless potential in the future. In contrast, Long Zan, despite his strong spirit sovereign realm power, has average talent and cannot advance further, destined to remain stagnant and wait to be surpassed. Therefore, in the future, Long Zan may not be as good as Chen Yanren. The transaction was completed with a completion rate of 200%, earning a generous reward of 100 Wenji tokens and a bronze sword. Chen Fan was slightly puzzled by the seemingly sparse reward. Could there be something extraordinary about this bronze sword? Upon inspection, he discovered that it was a sword embryo that could become a powerful spiritual weapon after nurturing. Chen Fan eagerly integrated his soul imprint into the sword embryo, ready to embark on a new journey with the spiritual weapon. The sword embryo seemed as fragile as a baby, at this moment it seemed to have a strange connection with Chen Fan, no longer a cold weapon, but full of vitality, warm and emotional. Since you choose to follow me, you must enjoy the taste of wine and spice. So, without hesitation, he generously placed 10 million spiritual stones around. Oh, however, the next moment, he couldn't help but feel a slight tremble at the corner of his mouth. Isn't this speed a bit too fast? 10 million spiritual stones piled up like a small mountain, but they were rapidly shrinking before his eyes at a visible speed. The speed of devouring the spiritual stones, it's simply unbelievable. Another 10 million spiritual stones. Chen Fan understood that the current 10 million spiritual stones were definitely not enough, probably not enough to last an hour. Without hesitation, 
he took out another 10 million spiritual stones. Since he decided to cultivate a spiritual weapon, he must pay the price. And, at the sword embryo stage, the more you invest, the more powerful the spiritual weapon will be. In order to create an extraordinary spiritual weapon, the wealthy Chen Fan gritted his teeth and even took out a spiritual vein. The blood blade is too fierce, not suitable for himself. Plus, Su Qingyu's heritage is too weak. If he can successfully cultivate the Qingming sword, he can give the blood blade to Su Qingyu. Chen Fan already had a plan in mind. Next, he integrated the immortal grade talent into his own talent. So, he took out the jade box containing the immortal grade talent. In an instant, the integration of talents was successful. The current talent includes the immortal grade talent, the third grade talent, and his own talent, even surpassing the immortal grade talent. The cultivation speed will surely be fast. Then, inside the Wenji money bank, he practiced the yin soul technique, testing the current talent effect, while paying attention to the state of the sword embryo. A day passed. Breakthrough. Fivefold yin god. Truly worthy of the immortal grade talent. In just one day, he broke through from the fourth to the fifth level of the yin god. Chen Fan opened his eyes, feeling the changes in the yin soul, extremely joyful. Yesterday, he witnessed Chen Yanren, with a first grade talent, taking a full 10 days to advance from the 4th to the 5th level of the Yin God. And he, only took 1 day. The cultivation speed is 10 times that of a 1st grade talent. What if he uses a time card? Chen Fan raised his eyebrows. Just as he was about to spend 10 years practicing, he suddenly stared in shock. Sword Embryo. You're eating too much, aren't you? Chen Fan felt a sharp pain in his heart. What did he see? A whole spiritual vein completely disappeared. The previous 20 million spiritual stones were also about to be exhausted. Cultivation knows no bounds. Fortunately, I broke through, opened my eyes, otherwise, wouldn't the sword embryo star? But, it's eating too voraciously. I'm afraid I can't afford it. Chen Fan hurriedly took out another spiritual vein, his fingers slightly trembling. He knew that nurturing the sword embryo could take as little as a month, or as long as hundreds of years. With his wealth, how could he support it for so long? At most, he can hold on for 10 days. From now on, he will no longer boast of being a local tyrant, no longer think he's rich and powerful. Chen Fan frowned, casting his gaze on the Wenji token, with an unprecedented sense of urgency. Without money, he can't be lazy, he must trade quickly. Make money, feed the sword embryo. This time, Chen Fan threw all the remaining tokens of the 10,000 realms without hesitation. He was not worried about having too many transactions, instead, he was looking forward to keeping busy. Observing the slowing pace of the tokens in finding customers recently, Chen Fan speculated that this was a way to filter out the quality of customers. This actually worked in his favor, as it could help avoid unnecessary trouble and increase the success rate of transactions. However, he hoped that these tokens of the 10,000 realms would be enough to attract more customers quickly. Otherwise, his wealth would definitely be depleted. Taking a deep breath, Chen Fan resisted the urge to look at the sword embryos, spirit veins, and spirit stones beside him, so as not to be distracted. Cultivate. Give me 10 years. He immediately immersed himself in cultivation. Yin God Sixth Layer. Yin Emperor Initial Stage. Yin Venerable First Layer. Yin Saint First Layer. Human Soul First Layer. Human Soul Sixth Layer. When Chen Fan opened his eyes again, his yin soul had become exceptionally powerful, reaching the realm of the human soul. At this moment, he was no longer ethereal, but had a physical form. However, I still cannot stay in the sunlight for a long time now, only able to move about at night. The realm of the human soul can only be reborn through the main body, but my main body has long disappeared, so I still cannot reshape my physical body. Chen Fan was not in a hurry. With the advancement to the human soul sixth layer, he decided not to use the remaining 10 years for now. What if the upcoming transactions require this 10 years? It would be troublesome if it's not enough by then. How to obtain spirit veins and spirit stones? Now, the primary task is to cultivate the sword embryos. Afterwards, he left the 10,000 realms bank, paused cultivation, and prepared to go out and familiarize himself with the surroundings of Lingyun Mountain. After all, it's not good to stay at the 10,000 realms bank for too long. Bang! 
he entered Xiao Mi's body, leapt off the black feathered winged eagle, and arrived in the mountains. Xiao Yu, play by yourself for a while. Take a good rest. Chen Fan waved his hand. The black feathered winged eagle had been flying in the air these days without much rest, and was already exhausted. Chirp chirp. The black feathered winged eagle spread its wings and flew away. Swish, swish. Xiao Mi had reached the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm. Although not as strong as experts like Long Zan, she was definitely a top notch expert in Da Chen. In other words, she was safe and worry free. Chen Fan quickly searched the surroundings, collecting a wealth of information after several hours. Firstly, there was no one living around here, only some hunters and warriors who came here to hunt. Secondly, there were many wild beasts, and even spiritual beasts. They were extremely attractive to hunters and warriors so killing here was not uncommon. Spiritual beasts could devour the spiritual energy of heaven and earth, convert it into spiritual power through a special breathing technique, and use it to strengthen themselves. This led to a surge in their combat power, and even the most powerful spiritual beasts could unleash spiritual power in battle, comparable to human soul realm warriors or even spiritual realm warriors. As for higher level spiritual beasts, there was no record in the books that Chen Fan had consulted. Although Chen Fan did not rush into the inner area, he was filled with curiosity and anticipation for the unknown. In the vast and sprawling mountains, spiritual beasts were everywhere, so he decided to capture some spiritual beasts first and enjoy the taste of the food. Despite the lack of world-class seasonings, the aroma of spiritual beast meat was still mouthwatering. Suddenly, he heard a movement beside him, his eyes lit up, and he spotted a spiritual rabbit. He quickly made a move and easily captured the spiritual rabbit, enjoying a delicious barbecue feast. Chen Fan watched the aroma of the barbecue drifting, tasting it satisfactorily, while his companion Xiao Mi was eager to try. Xiao Mi not only could eat spiritual stones but also enjoy spiritual meat, having a similar experience to humans. The physical sensations were borne by Chen Fan because Xiao Mi housed his yin soul inside. The scent attracted wild beasts and a giant tiger rushed over, but Chen Fan showed no fear. Although the tiger was imposing, Chen Fan did not want to fight it, hoping to peacefully enjoy the food. However, the giant tiger was not deterred and Chen Fan had to use his yin soul cultivation to suppress it. The giant tiger fled in fear, and Chen Fan continued to enjoy the food, relaxing to his heart's content. The day passed comfortably and leisurely, making him feel relaxed while also advancing his cultivation. He deeply understood that life needed a balance between tension and relaxation to cultivate and live better. As night fell, Chen Fan decided to rest in the mountains, preparing for the new day. Suddenly, a sound of breaking through the air rang out. Chen Fan frowned slightly, filled with curiosity and vigilance. Chen Fan encountered a rare spirit beast, with strength comparable to the early stage of the spirit realm. He decided to capture it. With one punch, he knocked the spirit beast down, easily defeating it as it offered no resistance. Chen Fan looked at the demon ape spirit beast in front of him and thought he couldn't finish it all by himself, so he decided to feed it to Xiao Yu, who was still in the growth stage. Xiao Yu had weaker strength and needed to improve, or else he would be eliminated. Before Xiao Yu arrived, Chen Fan was surrounded by a dozen figures. These people felt both wary and impressed by his strength. The middle-aged leader expressed interest in the demon ape spirit beast and hoped to purchase it. Another young man proposed protecting Chen Fan in exchange for the spirit beast's body. Chen Fan felt the hot gaze of the other party and was displeased. Chen Fan was originally considering whether to discuss the sale of spiritual beasts with the other party. After all, he did not urgently need the flesh and blood of spiritual beasts, and with his own strength, it was entirely possible for him to capture more powerful spiritual beasts. Since the other party was in urgent need, if the price was fair, the transaction could be possible. However, the current situation was somewhat unsatisfactory. Chen Fan decisively refused without hesitation. Oh, a hint of determination flashed in the young man's eyes, as if he was not planning to give up easily. He inquired, Miss, what are you unsatisfied with? Should I add an extra 10,000 spirit stones as compensation? It's not a lack of spirit stones. Chen Fan looked coldly at the young man and calmly stated, It's just. I'm not interested in you. I don't want to make any deal with you. 
Upon hearing this, the proud young man's face immediately turned livid, as if his bottom line had been touched, and he was burning with anger. And his attendant immediately stood up, threatening, Do you know who my young master is? He is Xie Wenlei, the eldest son of the Xie family in Lingyun City. Not familiar, Chen Fan replied calmly. You, the attendant's expression stiffened. Then a fierce look appeared on his face, warning, Miss, I advise you not to refuse. Otherwise, you will bear the consequences. Spare me the talk, Chen Fan impatiently interrupted, expressing his attitude directly. Just then, Xiao Yu finally arrived. Chirp chirp, it landed next to Chen Fan, vigilantly staring at Xie Wenlei and his group, apparently sensing their hostility. Is this your trump card? Xie Wenlei's eyes lit up with greed when he saw the black feathered eagle. Originally, he was wary of Chen Fan's strength, hesitating whether to take action. But at this moment, he was ready to make a move. A flying beast of such value, coupled with the extraordinarily beautiful woman in front of him, she was simply the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. Other women paled in comparison to her, completely eclipsed by her beauty. Greed, desire, and arrogance clouded his mind. No, Chen Fan said, this is just a flying beast I raised. With that, he handed the corpse of the demon ape spiritual beast to the black feathered eagle, saying, Xiao Yu, this is your food. Chirp chirp, the black feathered eagle let out a pleased cry and began to feast. Yu, seeing this, Xie Wenlei could no longer contain his patience and prepared to give the order to attack. However, the middle-aged man beside him tried to dissuade him. Young master, she killed that demon ape spiritual beast. Did you see it? No, I didn't. The middle-aged man shook his head. It's impossible. How could she defeat a demon ape spiritual beast with the initial stage of the spiritual movement realm in such a short time? There must be a trick to this. Xie Wenlei, full of confidence, decided to probe the truth. If this continues, the corpse of the demon ape spiritual beast will be devoured by this damn bird. The middle-aged man couldn't argue back. Attack. Xie Wenlei immediately ordered the attack. Swish. Just then, Chen Fan, who had been listening to their conversation, smiled faintly, his figure flickered, and he disappeared without a trace. Where did he go? Xie Wenlei and the others frowned. Before their eyes, everything was blurry, and Chen Fan's figure had vanished without a trace. The black feathered eagle knows nothing about its owner's intentions. Obediently staying in place and continuing to enjoy the demon ape spirit beast, the bloodier the better. Xie Wenlei furrowed his brows. Just moments ago there were people around, how did they suddenly disappear? He had heard that people had died in this deep mountain wilderness, including a beautiful woman, what do you think? Just then, a servant's face turned pale, starting to have wild thoughts. He was timid and started to scare himself. Others also paled, especially seeing the black feathered eagle nonchalantly enjoying the demon ape spirit beast. The scene was extremely bloody. Especially the horrifying chewing sound, sending chills down the spine. Suddenly, a howling wind sounded in the mountains, with an eerie feel. The servant's feet turned cold, trying to grab the arm of the person next to him to ease his inner fear. But, why couldn't he grab it? He tried, only to find his hand passing through the other person's arm. Chen Fan slowly turned his head, smiling. Oh, the servant screamed, panicked and ran away, causing chaos among the others. Xie Wenlei was also startled, but didn't see anything, so he just kicked the servant in annoyance. By now, the servant was weak and scared, staring fixedly at the spot where Chen Fan had stood just now, but, there was no one there anymore. A ghost, a ghost, the servant screamed again. Xie Wenlei slapped him, waking him up. Young master, just now, he hesitated, then another scream was heard. Young master, there was someone there just now. I'm sure it wasn't one of us. He smiled at me, and then disappeared. The man speaking was a bald man, usually brave, but now cowering, looking terrified as if he had seen something dreadful. Even those who were not easily convinced began to feel panic. Even Xie Wenlei had the thought of retreating. Watching the scene of the black feathered eagle enjoying itself, the eerie surroundings, he nervously bit his lip. It must be that woman playing tricks. Where did this terrifying thing come from? Miss, why resort to these unspeakable means? We can talk things out. The middle-aged man furrowed his brows, the situation becoming strange. 
it must be the woman who disappeared earlier causing trouble. He was confident in his judgment. However, the next moment, Chen Fan appeared again, this time in front of everyone, and asked, are you looking for me? Oh, everyone screamed, then turned and fled. Who had the mind to care about anything else? Truly cowardly. Watching all this, Chen Fan shook his head and said, however, the effect of the yin soul in the human realm is indeed quite impressive. Wandering in the mountains at night is truly frightening. He had just tested the effect of his yin soul materialization, and it worked well, successfully frightening everyone. Chen Fan felt the powerful killing power of the yin soul needle and decided to start practicing this skill. Just then, the Black Feathers Eagle finished eating the body of the demon ape spirit beast and let out a joyful cry, as if saying it was delicious and thanking its master. Chen Fan stroked the Black Feathers Eagle's head, mounted it, and rode away. When they flew to a hundred meters high, Xie Wenlei and the others appeared again in their original position, realizing they had been fooled. Watching Chen Fan and the Black Feathers Eagle disappear into the distance, they became even more convinced of their speculation. Xie Wenlei shouted angrily, Don't think you can escape, coward. Are you only capable of using despicable means? Chen Fan ignored their roar and decided to leave. This group of people had provoked him, and he responded with a joke, not bothering to argue with them. Look at my sword embryo. Then, he entered the Wenji money house and found that the spiritual vein had not been completely absorbed yet, so he asked the Black Feathers Eagle to stop and rested. As morning approached, Chen Fan woke up feeling refreshed. He quickly went to check the spiritual vein and found that it was almost completely absorbed. He took out another spiritual vein. This was the third one. There were still eight more to go. With no customers at the moment, Chen Fan focused on Su Qingyu, who seemed to have a problem with the spiritual veins in the debt contract she was about to handle. Su Qingyu finally arrived at the debt location, Qingyun Sect. This was a secretive sect that had borrowed three spiritual veins a thousand years ago and now wanted them back double. As Su Qingyu was about to take action, a Wenji token suddenly appeared, indicating that the owner wanted to see her. She took the token, disappeared instantly, and reappeared in the hall of the Wenji money house. The owner wants to see me? Su Qingyu wondered. Chen Fan instructed her to take the blood blade and ensure the successful handling of the debt contract, not accepting failure. Su Qingyu took the blood blade, determined to infiltrate Qingyun sect. The sect patriarch of Qingyun wanted to use the sect protection array against her, but she easily defeated him, causing chaos in Qingyun sect. Su Qingyu didn't take anything more, handed the spiritual vein to Chen Fan, and continued on to the next debt location. Chen Fan looked at the six jade boxes, sighed in relief, and knew he could last another six days. Chen Fan spent several days exploring near the Lingyun Mountain Range, expanding the search area, before returning to the peak of Lingyun Mountain. To his surprise, Chen Zheng had arrived here several days ago and was personally supervising the construction project. The King of Qin attached great importance to this, and the Ninth Prince, Chen Zheng, also showed his ability to seize opportunities. Chen Fan jumped off the back of the Black Feather Eagle and walked towards the construction site of the Wenji Bank. The scene before him was a bustling construction site, with tens of thousands of people working efficiently. Surprisingly, the physical labor here was being done by some martial artists in the spirit realm, and they seemed to be from the military. Chen Fan once again felt the King of Qin's attention, as he had directly mobilized the army to come and work on the project in order to quickly complete the task, including some martial artists in the Lingxuan realm working hard. He was very satisfied. In just a few days, the entire project had begun to take shape, and at this rate, it would probably be completed in less than 15 days. Chen Fan did not rush to find Chen Zheng, but instead wandered around to see more. Meanwhile, Chen Zheng was personally supervising the construction project. A few days ago, the king suddenly ordered the construction of the Wenji Bank, which surprised Chen Zheng. He immediately discussed with Meng Tian and immediately guessed that the king and the Wenji Bank had a deal. And one of the items in the transaction was likely the establishment of the Wenji Bank. The king of Qin issued three orders at the time. First, he would personally lead the royal carriage into battle, without bringing any soldiers from the great Qin Empire, only taking some top guards from the palace to the front line between Qin and Chu. This news must be kept secret. At the same time, 
the six departments were to fully allocate supplies to the front line. Secondly, the construction of the Wenji Bank. The Ministry of Works must treat this as the top priority. Spare no resources and build the Wenji Bank on the peak of Lingyun Mountain within 15 days. To show his importance, the King of Qin decided to send a senior official to supervise the work. Thirdly, staying in the capital, responsible for overseeing the overall situation and ensuring the normal operation of all affairs of the Great Qin. The Crown Prince volunteered to stay in the capital, and he was also the most suitable candidate. The ministers and the King of Qin had no objections, and even Qin Zheng did not oppose. What was even more strange was that Qin Zheng chose to personally supervise the project. The crown prince naturally supported this. Without Qin Zheng's interference in the capital, he could act more freely, even taking the opportunity to eliminate some of Qin Zheng's supporters. So, Qin Zheng rushed to the peak of Lingyun Mountain, fully supervising the project, and even sparing no effort to use his own resources, working diligently every day, showing an unprecedented level of attention. His purpose was very clear, to let the owner of the Wenji Bank see his efforts to have better cooperation in the future. Although his intentions were clear, the efforts he put in were tangible and could not be ignored. Suddenly, several spirit realm soldiers from the Qin army began to struggle to move a highly dense boulder. Seeing this scene, Qin Zheng rolled up his sleeves without hesitation and said, let me do it. Then, to the astonishment of everyone present, he alone moved the huge boulder to its destination. This scene was uplifting for everyone present. If the ninth prince personally took action, what reason did they have to slack off? Obviously, the level of attention to this project from above far exceeded their imagination. For a moment, everyone was talking about it. The ninth prince Qin Zheng, with his noble status, unexpectedly personally participated in the work. This action undoubtedly highlighted his high demands for efficiency from everyone. Encouraged by him, everyone quickly got to work with high spirits. Qin Zheng boldly shouted, Today, we still feast on lavish food and drinks. Upon hearing this, everyone hastened their pace of work. Not only could they eat and drink well, but they also received generous payment as a reward. Such treatment was truly rare to come by. In addition, Chen Zheng announced an incentive measure. Within a 15-day deadline, for each day the task was completed ahead of schedule, they would receive an additional reward of 100 gold coins. This news inspired everyone present as if they had gained an endless source of motivation. Qin Zheng, seeing everyone full of vigor, finally breathed a sigh of relief. He was well aware that paying out millions of gold coins in rewards was no easy task, let alone if the task could be completed two days ahead of schedule, which would amount to an expenditure of over 10 million gold coins. Although the value of gold coins was not as high as spirit stones, they were still an indispensable resource in this world. At this moment, the lord of Lingyun City, the head of the Xie family, and Xie Wenlei arrived with a large number of spirit beasts and other supplies, expressing a token of goodwill towards the ninth prince. Qin Zheng's days swept over the numerous supplies, finally resting on dozens of spirit beasts. He nodded faintly in thanks, feeling grateful for this generous gift. The value of these supplies was self-evident, and it was not easy for Lingyun City and the Xie family to come up with so much. Qin Zheng couldn't help but sigh inwardly. These people had truly put their hearts into it. The lord and the head of the family were eagerly looking forward to the ninth prince, showing extremely respectful attitudes, while Xie Wenlei remained silent, always maintaining a humble demeanor. He knew full well that the distinguished ninth prince of Great Qin was powerful and not someone he could afford to offend. If he could make friends with him, it would greatly benefit his future career path especially with the upcoming martial imperial examination, which was crucial for him. If he could gain the ninth prince's favor, even with just a word, he would have the opportunity to enter the prestigious Great Qin Academy for further studies. The Great Qin Academy only admitted outstanding students, and upon graduation, their strength would be at least at the spirit manifestation realm, with unlimited potential in the future. Xie Wenlei deeply understood that this was an extremely tempting opportunity that must be seized. In this situation, Xie Wenlei became even more humble, knowing that he should not bring up the matter actively, but simply wait quietly. He believed that the ninth prince was intelligent and wise, and would surely see the deeper meaning behind it. If his heart was moved, he would definitely provide guidance.
This was also what his father had instructed him before coming, and Che Wenlei deeply agreed with it. Since their first meeting, he had always behaved very appropriately, showing maturity and composure beyond his 17 years. Your Highness, the Ninth Prince. Che Wenlei respectfully approached and saluted. Chin Zheng nodded slightly and praised. Seventeen years old and already at the spirit profound realm, your future is limitless. Upon hearing this, Xie Wenlei and his father were overjoyed. Prince Juyu, Prince Xie Wenlei's performance in Lingyun City has always been admirable, and he is hailed as the top genius of the entire Lingyun County. This time, hearing that Prince Juyu personally came to supervise the work, it further ignited his fighting spirit. He personally delved deep into the mountains, chasing and hunting spiritual beasts. The Lord of Lingyun City, seeing all this, couldn't help but feel deeply moved. Oh, are all these spiritual beasts hunted by him? Jin Zheng furrowed his brow slightly, finally paying special attention to Xie Wenlei. Upon hearing this, Xie Wenlei felt secretly delighted. He had intended to be modest and show a cautious attitude to highlight his humility. However, just as he was about to speak, suddenly there came a rustling sound nearby, as if someone was playing around. This unexpected disturbance put Xie Wenlei's performance into an unexpected dilemma. Wang Quanyuan saw a familiar figure from afar. Xie Wenlei couldn't help but furrow his brow, immediately realizing it was his follower Wang Quan. He thought to himself, what is this guy up to again? Don't let him delay the important matters I'm about to deal with. Jin Zheng, noticing the situation, inquired unhappily about what was happening. After all, the construction of the Wanji money house was crucial, and any issues could not be tolerated. If a riot were to suddenly break out and affect the progress of the construction, wouldn't all the previous efforts be in vain? Xie Wenlei saw Chen Zheng's change in expression and felt nervous, glancing anxiously at his father. However, before his father could notice, Chen Zheng preemptively said, Let's go, take a look. With that, he stepped forward, followed closely by the others. Oh? Isn't that the attention-seeking woman? Upon closer inspection, Xie Wenlei immediately recognized Chen Fan, feeling a wave of gloom in his heart. It's truly hard to explain, I thought I would never see you again, and now. Thinking back to the night he was played by her, he felt ashamed and angry. Although she was as beautiful as a fairy, she should receive the punishment she deserves. Wait, beautiful? His gaze turned to Chen Zheng. According to his father and the city lord's investigation, this prince of great chin seemed to have a penchant for beautiful women. Not only was his wife exceptionally beautiful, even his concubines were all stunning beauties. Enviable, as expected, he then noticed that Chin Zheng's expression had changed, staring intently at that glamorous woman. Such a beautiful woman, too bad he couldn't have her. However, when he reaches the pinnacle, what woman can he not have? A man is worth nothing without power, influence, and money. Just then, a middle-aged official hurried over to report, Your Highness, there's a problem with the foundation, please take a look. As it concerned the grand plan of the construction, Chen Zheng naturally had to handle it personally. However, his gaze fell on Xie Wenlei and Wang Quan again, his brow furrowed. Your Highness, these two are commoners, there might be a misunderstanding, should we? Let the commoners handle it. Seeing this, Xie Wenlei immediately spoke up. Only by helping the master solve the problem can one be considered a loyal and devoted subordinate. He wouldn't miss this opportunity. His father and the city lord were slightly worried, as this was not part of their plan. If things went unexpectedly, the consequences would be unimaginable. However, seeing Xie Wenlei's confident demeanor, they felt a bit relieved. Moreover, Xie Wenlei had taken the initiative. Oh, resolve it quickly. Don't delay the construction process. Upon hearing this, Chen Zheng raised an eyebrow, stopped in his tracks, and nodded in agreement. Your Highness, rest assured, I will handle it properly. Xie Wenlei promised solemnly, feeling excited inside. If he could successfully resolve this disturbance, at least it would leave a better impression on Chen Zheng. If he handled it even more outstandingly, he silently hoped that Chen Fan would see reason, benefiting both sides. Otherwise, HMPH. Subsequently, Chen Zheng left, followed by Xie Wenlei's father and the city lord. Shortly after, Xie Wenlei strode towards Chen Fan and Wang Quan. Chen Fan felt a bit helpless, 
Unexpectedly encountering someone difficult to deal with here? What a coincidence. As expected, Xie Wenlei's men came looking for trouble. Seductive young lady, what are you doing here? Don't you know where this is? How do you explain the prank you played on us a few days ago? Wang Quan's face was fierce, exuding a domineering aura. Let me tell you, if your explanation doesn't satisfy us, you will regret it. In Lingyun Mountain, my master's word is law. Wang Quan's expression was unfriendly, his attitude tough. I have nothing to explain. I have important matters to attend to, no time to waste with you. Get lost. Chen Fan slightly furrowed his beautiful eyebrows. Although he had no transactions to conduct at the moment, and Su Qingyu's side was going smoothly, he didn't want to waste time on someone like Wong Quan. With so much time on my hands, I might as well get some beauty sleep, cultivate, or go collect Su Qingyu's debt, wouldn't that be more meaningful? Wong Quan's anger surged. You've already said that before. Chen Fan responded calmly, with a hint of playfulness. Can you phrase it differently? Wong Quan was infuriated by these words. Who said that a pretty woman can do anything and get away with it? Can be forgiven? He felt like he was about to explode with anger, almost ready to act against the beauty in front of him. However, he remained rational, knowing that the glamorous woman in front of him was cunning and not easy to deal with, and there was the ninth prince present as well. If something happened, it would affect his master's plan. What's going on? Xie Wenlei walked over at this moment. Young master, Xi, Wang Quan was about to speak, but Xie Wenlei interrupted him directly, then turned to Chen Fan and said, Miss, there was a misunderstanding before, I apologize to you here. Wang Quan was puzzled, not understanding Xie Wenlei's intentions. No need, because I never took you seriously. Chen Fan replied indifferently. Wang Quan immediately became furious, seductress, don't get cocky. My young master has never apologized to anyone, you are the first. Do you think you're so great? Even Xie Wenlei's expression was extremely ugly at this moment. It's because he has already apologized that I forgive your previous rudeness. Otherwise, you might not be alive right now. Chen Fan said calmly, with a hint of authority in his tone. But, if you continue to be fake here, I don't mind ending your sinful life myself. Wang Quan was burning with anger, wanting to erupt, but seeing the calm beauty in Chen Fan's eyes, he inexplicably felt a chill in his heart, and immediately stopped the impending outburst of anger. At the same time, Xie Wenlei struggled to steady his emotions and said, Miss, do you know who that gentleman is? He gestured towards Chen Zheng with his eyes, not daring to point directly at him. Him? I don't know. Chen Fan replied frankly. He is the ninth prince, Chen Zheng. Xie Wenlei explained. Oh, so he is the ninth prince, Chen Zheng? Chen Fan nodded, understanding the special treatment Chen Zheng received here. Prince Zhou Zheng, the name is so noble, as if one can call it out directly. Have you never encountered such an identity in your lifetime? Xie Wenlei asked, are you feeling excited deep down? Chen Fan, what does this name represent? Why suddenly mention Chen Zheng? What message do you want to convey? I have no extra time to waste on you as a follower, nor do I want to waste time in conversation with you. Upon hearing Chen Fan's words, Xie Wenlei was almost driven to the point of spitting blood. The calmness he had just managed to regain was now replaced with a surge of agitation. However, for the sake of his own future, he suppressed his emotions, took a deep breath, and tried to maintain his composure. All right then, no more beating around the bush. You're here just to find the ninth prince, right? Xie Wenlei put on a look as if he saw through everything. In reality, Chen Fan wanted to inquire about the progress of the Wenji Money House's construction, and finding the ninth prince Chen Zheng, the overseer, was indeed the best choice. Silently mocking himself for initially thinking she was a chaste woman, Xie Wenlei was surprised to find out she was actually someone who sought power and prestige. Despite his inner disdain, he remained calm on the surface and asked, I can introduce you, but, what can you offer me in return? With ulterior motives in mind, he thought of a win-win situation. As he spoke, he scrutinized Chen Fan's figure intently, unable to resist the desire in his heart. Although Chen Fan was the ninth prince's woman, technically, he shouldn't have any feelings for her. But wouldn't it be more exciting to pursue a prince's woman? Taking a deep breath, his eyes sparkled with a strange excitement as he lowered his voice and said, if the ninth prince doesn't want you, 
then you'll have to spend a night with me next. Considering the scenario where Chen Fan was not accepted by the Ninth Prince, he didn't have anything to fear since she wouldn't be under the Ninth Prince's protection anymore. Naturally, he saw her as his forbidden fruit. Beside him, Wong Quan's pupils shrank, a mix of shock and excitement in his eyes. Just the thought of it was thrilling. Meanwhile, Chen Fan, who initially didn't want to bother with him, suddenly turned serious. His eyes narrowed slightly as he coldly said, If you seek death, then I shall grant it to you. With that, he took out a small brown medicine bottle from his chinkin bag and asked, Do you know what this is? Xie Wenlei furrowed his brows, his gaze fixed on the medicine bottle. He noticed that the brown color inside wasn't due to liquid but because there were numerous long brown worms wriggling and coiling inside, giving the bottle its color. His face instantly turned pale. You want, uh, you. Xie Wenlei's attempt to speak was cut off as Chen Fan swiftly shoved the entire bottle into his mouth, sliding down his throat into his stomach. Immediately, Xie Wenlei's face turned ashen, fear filling his eyes, unable to maintain his previous arrogance and composure. He began to vomit uncontrollably. Enraged, he roared for Wang Quan to help him retrieve the bottle. Quick, help me, Wang Quan. Wang Quan hurriedly stepped forward to assist. Unfortunately, Chen Fan's strength and accuracy are unparalleled. The medicine bottle has slipped into his stomach and can no longer be expelled. Don't move. Chen Fan's sexy lips curled slightly, with a hint of teasing in his tone. You will only make the bugs in the bottle escape faster. By then, he paused, his eyes flashing with a noticeable cunning. Your body temperature will continue to rise, and then from the inside out, your whole body will start to decay, eventually turning into ashes. Even your skin will turn into dust. Xie Wenlei shuddered all over, fear overflowing in his expression, imagining the terrible outcome that was about to come. How could he not be afraid? Give me the antidote. Otherwise, even if I have to try my best, I will make you pay the price. Even if I die, I will drag you down with me. Xie Wenlei was already on the brink of despair, the shadow of death enveloping him, leaving him no room for anything else. His voice immediately caught the attention of Chin Zheng and others. Chin Zheng frowned, didn't say much, and continued with his own affairs, while Xie Wenlei's father and the lord of Lingyun City's expressions became solemn. What's going on? Can't even handle such a small matter? They had already noticed the dissatisfaction of the Ninth Prince. If Xie Wenlei couldn't quickly resolve the issue, it could very well incur the wrath of the Ninth Prince. Xie Wenlei's father took a deep breath and politely said, Your Highness, please allow me to check the situation. Chen Zheng nodded and said no more. Xie Wenlei's father immediately turned and left. However, as he approached, he suddenly saw his son pounce on an extremely beautiful and well-endowed woman, his face darkening. How dare you start a fight here? He was about to intervene when he saw his son suddenly stiffen, pupils dilate, and hands clutch his throat violently. Wenlei, what's happening? Xie Wenlei's father immediately realized the urgency of the situation, and at this moment, Xie Wenlei felt the medicine bottle in his stomach shatter. Bugs several times smaller began to wriggle inside his body at a surprising speed. He desperately tried to mobilize the spiritual power within his body to stop them, but to little avail. The bugs quickly occupied his spiritual senses and deprived him of his strength. Soon, he felt his body heating up. The temperature soared visibly. No, save me, father, save me. At this moment, Xie Wenlei was completely panicked, fully aware that the enchantress in front of him was not joking. He could feel that in just a minute, his body would not be able to withstand the high temperature and would start to decay. What's happening, Wenlei? Xie Wenlei's father, though sensing the urgency of the situation, was not clear about the specifics. Catch that woman, she has poisoned me. She must have the antidote on her. Poisoned? Xie Wenlei's father's face darkened, staring at Chen Fan, his tone stern. Bring out the antidote, otherwise, you will never leave Lingyun City. Chen Fan chuckled lightly at the words. You two are really birds of a feather, speaking in the same tone. The scorching heat made Xie Wenlei feel restless. He nervously grabbed his father's hand and urgently pleaded, Father, please hurry. Bring back the antidote quickly. I feel like I can't hold on much longer. I don't want to die like this. Hearing his son's cry, Xie Wenlei's father's face turned pale. Without hesitation, 
he turned towards Chen Fan and Chen Zheng, determined to fight for a chance for his son. He had only one belief in his heart, that his son's life was more important than anything else. However, just as he was about to approach Chen Fan, a powerful force struck him instantly, leaving him no time to react. He fell to the ground with his eyes closed forever. Xie Wenlei's father, a mid-level expert in the spirit realm, appeared powerless in front of Chen Fan, like a lamb to the slaughter. He couldn't even see the opponent's movements clearly before his heart was fatally struck in an instant, ending any chance of survival. The patriarch of the first family of Lingyun City was thus publicly punched to death by Chen Fan. Wang Quan, witnessing this scene, was scared stiff and finally realized the enormity of the powerful entity he had provoked. At this moment, Xie Wenlei's body temperature has reached an unbearable 70 to 80 degrees. Even as a spirit profound realm warrior, he couldn't endure such torture, screaming in agony, unable to express the grief of his father's death. Suddenly, Chen Zheng and others arrived at the scene. Faced with such a huge commotion and the death of the patriarch of the first family in Lingyun City, how could they ignore it? The lord of Lingyun City glared at Chen Fan and demanded, Who are you? How dare you kill the head of the Xie family? The death of the head of the Xie family is of great significance and must be dealt with. Save me! Save me! Before Chen Fan could speak, Xie Wenlei had already collapsed on the ground once again suffering from the high temperature, screaming in agony, burning all over, his face red, eyes bloodshot. Young master of the family is poisoned. Ninth prince, city lord, save our young master. Wang Quan knelt down and begged, quickly recounting what had happened, deliberately avoiding mentioning anything unfavorable to Chen Fan, shifting all the blame to him. What, just because the young master of the Xie family had a bad attitude, you poisoned him? and killed the head of my Xie family? The lord of Lingyun City's face darkened, coldly questioning Chen Fan. Although you are powerful, Lingyun City cannot deal with you, but by causing trouble here, you have offended the ninth prince. This will affect the progress of building the mansion, can you bear the responsibility? He wisely mentioned the ninth prince, obviously aware of Chen Fan's strength, who had just killed the head of the Xie family with one punch, knowing he was no match. Save me! Save me, no more nonsense. She has the antidote on her, I can't hold on much longer. Xie Wenlei screamed again. In just a few seconds, a faint mist began to rise from Xie Wenlei's body. This was due to the large amount of water evaporating from his body. And this mist was extremely hot, indicating that his body temperature had exceeded 100 degrees. Chen Fan looked at Xie Wenlei's painful appearance, expressionless. Xie Wenlei's current situation was entirely self-inflicted, without a trace of guilt. The lord of Lingyun City raised his voice, saying, Miss, it's a matter of life, can you please give the antidote first? Other matters can be discussed later. Chen Zheng was not stupid, he could see that Wang Quan was hiding the truth. For no reason, who would poison someone for no reason? There must be hidden motives. Chen Fan answered calmly, even if there is an antidote, I won't give it. He offended me, this is the punishment he deserves. How dare you defy the will of the ninth prince? The lord of Lingyun City shouted angrily, indifferent. Chen Fan furrowed his brows slightly, his gaze sharp, staring at the lord of Lingyun City. Lord Lingyun, the city master, felt a chill all over his body, as if he had been drenched with ice-cold water, immediately startled, even sensing the shadow of death. He sternly questioned, what exactly do you want to do? Your Highness, the Ninth Prince, this demon woman is causing trouble here, publicly killing people, obstructing the construction of the Wanji money house, and should be executed immediately. Lord Lingyun shouted angrily. At this moment, Chen Zheng also noticed that everyone's attention was focused here, furrowing his brows. Obviously, this situation would affect the progress of the Wanji money house project, so he spoke up, Miss, may I ask what offense the father and son have committed against you? If there is indeed such a matter, I'm afraid you won't escape death today. If there is something suspicious, I will make sure to get justice for you. Lord Lingyun immediately interjected, Your Highness, this demon woman is causing chaos, and if this continues, Xie Wenlei's life is in danger. Xie Wenlei let out another cry of pain, blood gushing from his mouth, his body turning red, as if he could explode at any moment. Jin Zheng was in a dilemma, without knowing the true facts. He couldn't just watch Xie Wenlei die. Moreover, 
Xie Wenlei had just provided a large number of spirit beasts and resources. Miss, please quickly bring the antidote, Chen Zheng decisively decided. Immediately, the surrounding guards stepped forward, staring at Chen Fan, ready to act at any moment. Lord Lingyun did not back down, drawing his sword directly at Chen Fan, shouting sternly, hurry up. Bring out the antidote. The situation became extremely tense. However, Chen Fan remained calm, calmly taking out a Wenji token, saying, please put away your sword, I dislike being pointed at. Lord Lingyun thought Chen Fan had taken out some insignificant token, but upon closer inspection, he couldn't help but be puzzled, what is this? It says Wenji? He had never seen this kind of token before, let alone heard of it. In Dachin, apart from the highly anticipated mysterious Wenji money house, the Dachin royal family was the most powerful authority, and he was very familiar with the royal family's tokens. Just pretending. He sneered disdainfully, trying to scare someone with a fake token. Wait, at this moment, Chin Zheng's face changed, immediately stopping the action, staring at the Wenji token in Chen Fan's hand hesitantly asking, are you, are you from the Wenji money house? He had seen the Wenji token before, and the one in front of him was definitely real. In addition, he had exchanged information with Meng Tian and knew that the owner of the Wenji money house was male, and the woman in front of him could not be the owner. However, he also learned that a female slave from the Wenji money house had appeared in Yenqing and Lingyun city. Could it be? The owner of the female slave is the owner of the Wenji money house. Chen Fan could only continue to pretend to be a female slave. After all, he was currently in the identity of a girl. Prince Chen Zheng of Dachin had met the messenger of the Wenji money house. Hearing this, Chen Zheng's pupils shrank, bowing respectfully, showing extreme humility. While Lord Lingyun stared wide-eyed, full of shock and disbelief. The stunning lady in front of me is actually the representative of the Interstellar Bank? I've heard of the Interstellar Bank's reputation, but this sense of fear is unprecedented. Watching the esteemed Prince Jola of Great Chin bowing respectfully to her, his attitude exceptionally deferential, he felt his whole body trembling, fear written all over his face. Chen Fan wore a disdainful expression, causing the Lord of Lingyun City to turn pale with fear. He quickly sheathed his sword made a hasty bow, and his attitude underwent a dramatic change. Meanwhile, Xie Wenlei writhed in pain on the ground, knowing that his situation was dire. He stood up frantically, his face twisted with resentment, and lunged towards Chen Fan, shouting, go to hell, in a hoarse and piercing voice. Suddenly, Wang Quan kicked Xie Wenlei to the ground, reprimanding him, shameless scum. The onlookers were impressed by Wang Quan's decisive action marveling at how skillfully he carried out the act of betrayal. After being kicked down, Xie Wenlei's eyes filled with anger, blood starting to seep from the corners. His vision gradually blurred, despair creeping into his heart as he had to bow down in submission. However, it was too late. His body began to decay, then melt, his skin deforming and forming terrifying holes. The onlookers shuddered, the lord of Lingyun City and Wang Quan unable to believe what they were seeing fearing that Chen Fan might turn on them next. Trembling legs, profuse cold sweat, and lingering fear enveloped them. Chen Fan walked into the courtyard with disdain, followed closely by Chen Zheng. The Lord of Lingyun City and Wang Quan were escorted away by guards, fearing execution and wishing for death over life. Chen Fan had no interest in dealing with these insignificant individuals, fully focused on the construction of the Wenji money house. Chen Zheng respectfully explained the layout of the money house, and Chen Fan nodded in satisfaction. Although similar to the Wenji money house in the system, it incorporated distinctive features of Great Chen, such as well-equipped storage rooms and soundproof partitions, showing his meticulous attention to detail. Chen Fan requested the establishment of a teleportation array, pondering the purpose behind the system's directive to build the Wenji money house in the past few days. Apart from honor and reputation, Trade is the most important thing. With the continuous expansion of the Wenji Bank, spread across the eastern region and even the entire Lingyun continent, can it be that each bank can only communicate with each other by walking or riding flying beasts? This is too slow. Even flying through the air, the speed is still not enough to meet the demand. The eastern region is so vast that teleportation arrays have become the inevitable choice. 
When Chen Zheng heard the proposal of the teleportation array, his pupils contracted slightly and immediately agreed. Teleportation arrays consume huge resources, and Dachin simply cannot afford to build them. Even in the entire eastern region, only the Great Zhou Dynasty has teleportation arrays internally. Moreover, the array maps of the teleportation arrays are extremely rare and difficult for outsiders to obtain. Even for array masters, without the array map, they cannot build teleportation arrays. Therefore, the construction of teleportation arrays is extremely difficult. The fact that the Wenji Bank can build teleportation arrays is giving Chen Zheng a deeper understanding of its strength. In reality, Chen Fan currently does not have the ability and resources to build teleportation arrays, but he firmly believes that he will achieve this goal soon. Subsequently, Chen Fan arranged for Chen Zheng to leave, while he himself entered the interior of the Wenji Bank. Upon entering, he immediately felt that the sword embryo had undergone a change, becoming sharper and more powerful. This change made him feel unusually comfortable and satisfied, as the sword embryo even expressed gratitude towards him. Just as he was focused on the sword embryo, a voice suddenly sounded in his mind. Could it be that the sword embryo has acquired intelligence? According to ancient records, only after becoming a spiritual weapon can one possess intelligence. Is it going to become a spirit weapon? Is my sword embryo going to grow directly into a sacred weapon? Chen Fan thought to himself, his pupils constricting, his face full of joy. Throughout the entire Lingyun continent, sacred weapons are rare. If he could possess a sacred weapon now, he would definitely be able to dominate the eastern region. Therefore, without hesitation, he took out a spiritual vein and fed it to the sword embryo without any reluctance. The sword embryo had already formed, and according to the system prompt, it could only become a spiritual weapon. So what is happening now? Chen Fan scratched his head, looking puzzled. At this moment, he deeply felt the pain of illiteracy. He decided that he would find some books to study when he had the chance. However, the world at present is so vast, the eastern region is just a part of the Lingyun continent, and it is said that there are other continents beyond the Lingyun continent, and even the existence of the demon realm. Chen Fan frowned. The information he obtained from the Chen family in Yancheng was fragmented and vague which still left him with an incomplete understanding of this world. Nevertheless, he was clearly aware that this world was definitely broader than he had imagined, involving various professions such as alchemists, array masters, symbol masters, and artifact masters. The breadth of knowledge was astonishing, he couldn't explore them all. If only there was an encyclopedia about this world. Chen Fan thought to himself, if he could access any information, it would be very convenient. It would only be possible to obtain this encyclopedia through trading. Maybe the system would reward him with one. However, all of this depends on the system. Even though he is the host of the system and the owner of the Wenji Bank, the outcome still remains uncertain. He then turned his gaze towards Su Qingyu, who was being pursued for debt repayment. Su Qingyu stood there, looking worried with a furrowed brow. He noticed her trembling hands, but her eyes were firm and resolute. This contradictory display couldn't help but evoke a sense of pity in him. In this unfamiliar city, Su Qingyu seemed so lonely and fragile, yet she displayed an unyielding will and strength. He felt like he could understand her inner anxiety and helplessness. Perhaps they were both lonely travelers in the city, silently resonating with each other. In that moment, he decided to help her, not just because of her beauty and strength, but because he was deeply moved by her courage and perseverance. So, he walked up to Su Qingyu and gently said, let me help you. Su Qingyu looked up, her eyes shimmering with gratitude and surprise. She didn't speak, but the slight trembling of her lips revealed her inner joy and gratitude. From that moment on, they established a special connection, a pure emotional bond that transcended material interests. In the bustling city, they became important figures in each other's lives, pillars of support and reliance. They faced difficulties together and shared the joys of life. This experience strengthened their appreciation and cherishing of each other, and taught them the value of friendship and sincerity. The process of collecting debts by Su Qingyu went smoothly as usual, making Chen Fan's World Bank Vault even more abundant. However, the World Token has yet to choose a master, causing him some anxiety. It has been closed for several days now. Just when he was feeling extremely anxious, suddenly, a guest appeared at the door. Wang Dabao, a wandering cultivator, 
possessed extraordinary A-level talent and had been diligently cultivating. With his own efforts, he broke through to the early stage of the spirit communication realm before the age of 25. However, recently, he had been plagued by misfortune. First, a lump of bird droppings fell on his head, causing his breakthrough to fail and preventing him from advancing to the mid-stage of the spirit communication realm. Then, at an auction, the elixir he had set his heart on was snatched away at a high price by a mysterious individual, leaving him empty-handed. Later, while cooking at his residence, he entered a state of enlightenment but accidentally let the fire get out of control, only waking up when the flames were about to engulf him, rushing to put out the fire. The state of enlightenment was a once-in-a-century opportunity, but now he had recklessly ruined it, leaving him extremely regretful. Looking at the desolate surroundings, feeling depressed, his mouth twitching, he lamented, why am I so unlucky? It's worse than being cursed. He then decided to give up on his training and return to his family. However, upon arriving at the Wong family, he found that none of his family members had survived. Filled with anger, he vowed to exterminate the mastermind behind it all. With his formidable strength, he quickly identified the enemy and personally eliminated them. However, to his surprise, the person he killed had a remarkable identity, implicating a powerful sect. This sect, disregarding his explanations, directly challenged him, acting arrogantly. To protect himself, he had to fight alone against the entire sect. In the end, he successfully destroyed the sect, only to unexpectedly discover that there was a prince of the great Zhou dynasty among them. At that moment, he realized that he had offended the entire great Zhou dynasty, feeling despair. Turning to leave, he knew he was powerless against the might of the great Zhou dynasty. Now, on the path of escape, he looked up to the sky and howled, filled with grievances, shouting, Why? Despite my efforts, am I destined to be struck down by this misfortune? Can I really be so weak? He knew that on the path of cultivation, apart from talent, hard work, and strength, luck was also an indispensable part. In the past, his cultivation had soared rapidly, and his luck had been equally glorious. However, now, alas, he knelt down on the ground, praying devoutly, O oh God, please show mercy, bless me with a helping hand. Wang Dabao humbly begs for your kindness. Just at that moment, the world token suddenly appeared, the world bank, where all things are traded. A majestic voice sounded in his mind, shaking Wang Dabao's spirit, and he immediately seized this rare opportunity. The next moment, he had already appeared in the hall of the world bank. Shopkeeper, is anyone here? Waiter? Wang Dabao was first surprised, then completely dropped his guard and caution, acting as if he owned the place, and directly voiced his opinion. How come there's no seating area here? The whole hall is empty. Where's the counter? Chen Fan couldn't help but feel a bit speechless. Ahem. He cleared his throat twice, then spoke, World Bank, trading everything. Wang Dabao, what do you want to trade? Chen Fan already had all the basic information about Wang Dabao, knowing that he had been having a streak of bad luck recently and came to the World Bank to change his luck. Luck, I've been having bad luck recently, can the owner help me? Help that doesn't involve money, Wang Dabao said. Chen Fan, can't. Hearing this, Wang Dabao shrugged, as if he had expected it, and then said, Indeed, in this world, only I am still helping others, selflessly giving. Chen Fan, you're so unlucky, and you still have the heart to joke around? Wang Dabao said indifferently, What else can I do? Cut my wrist? Hang myself? Cry and make a scene? Is it useful? No. Chen Fan said, Your attitude is good. But, a deal is a deal. I never do a losing deal. All right, let's talk business then. Wang Dabao said, Can you make me less unlucky? Have a bit better luck. Sure. Chen Fan thought of the luck card. A perfect solution to Wang Dabao's problem. Except, he didn't know how much luck the luck card could bring to Wang Dabao. I have a treasure that can improve a person's luck, but, it varies from person to person, and the effect cannot be determined. Chen Fan said truthfully, the World Bank never engages in deceitful deals or false advertising. Oh, quite honest. Then please tell me, what would it be like to have good luck after using your treasure? Wang Dabao was quite curious, and at the same time, he became very interested in the World Bank. With good luck, you can randomly buy a ring in the market or on the street, and inside there will be a powerful old man who will teach you alchemy and help you improve your strength, 
like getting a cheap master for free. Chen Fan said. Wang Dabao was very receptive, with a look of expectation, really? I'm tired of struggling alone. Can I meet an old lady? No, a beautiful lady. And help me solve major life issues. Chen Fan. Are you here to change your luck or find a girlfriend? Willing to make a deal? He continued to ask. Upon hearing this, Wang Dabao immediately nodded and said, Of course I'm willing. Only a fool wouldn't be. Don't you want to ask what the average luck would be like? Chen Fan kindly reminded. Wang Dabao immediately waved his hand, with a look of indifference, as if he wasn't afraid of anything. Could it be worse than my luck now? Thinking of Wang Dabao's situation, Chen Fan nodded. With the deepening of the luck card, Wang Dabao's luck would definitely not be worse than it is now. All right. What price do I need to pay? Wang Dabao then asked. Wang Dabao, one heavenly sword, 130,000 spirit stones, heavenly secret art, ghost step, sevenfold blade. A message appeared in his mind. Hum, is that all? Chen Fan looked at Wang Dabao, who seemed full of confidence, as if he had billions of spirit stones in his pocket, and couldn't help but twitch his mouth slightly. This guy acted really well. He almost got fooled. What is your most precious thing? When Wang Dabao heard that he needed to exchange his most precious possession, he immediately furrowed his brow in alert. Various worries and doubts surged in his mind. Chen Fan nodded and firmly stated that it was necessary. Wang Dabao sighed, took out a jade pendant from his pocket, his eyes revealing a reluctance as he hesitantly said, This was obtained by my mother when she personally went to a sacred Buddhist site to pray for me when I was born. Although it's not considered valuable, it has been with me for over 20 years and is the most cherished thing to me. I hope you will treat it well. Chen Fan took the jade pendant, listened to Wang Dabao's explanation, and understood his sentiment. He patiently explained, although this jade pendant is not of high value in the system, it is priceless to you. I am not playing a trick on you, but value your sincerity and authenticity. Wang Dabao felt slightly embarrassed after hearing this realizing he had misunderstood Chen Fan's intentions. Chen Fan continued, I am not interested in your sky-slicing saber or spiritual stones, but I hope to gain your lifelong freedom. Wang Dabao furrowed his brow upon hearing this. He had always cherished his freedom and was unwilling to be constrained by any power. Chen Fan's honesty made him feel a bit nervous, realizing his situation was not good. If he was caught by the experts of the great Zhou dynasty, the consequences would be unimaginable. At this moment, Wang Dabao began to reevaluate this stranger proposing the trade, feeling a hint of awe rising in his heart. Wang Dabao has always lived as a lone cultivator, well aware of the hardships of such a life. Chen Fan described to him the benefits of joining the Multiverse Bank, which intrigued him. Chen Fan's voice carried a magical charm, convincing and persuasive. Wang Dabao hesitantly asked, How can I trust you? Chen Fan solemnly assured him that the Multiverse Bank strictly adheres to the spirit of contracts and has an excellent reputation. Although Wang Dabao was not very familiar with the Multiverse Bank, he was won over by Chen Fan's eloquence. In the end, he expressed his willingness to join without hesitation. Chen Fan saw potential in Wang Dabao's strength and talent, deciding to win him over. Despite being a smooth talker, Wang Dabao was actually quite strategic and cautious. Chen Fan felt a bit weary, but ultimately decided to make Wang Dabao an envoy of the Multiverse Bank. After signing the soul contract, Wang Dabao felt a certain connection with Chen Fan. Chen Fan immediately changed his fortune, making him feel comfortable and happy. Chen Fan was determined to take care of this new envoy and ensure he wouldn't easily fall. Deep down, he still held a glimmer of hope that the fortune card could alter the destiny of that poor soul, bringing a positive change to his life. Ding! The seventh transaction is completed flawlessly. Chen Fan couldn't help but marvel at the fact that the completion rate this time reached 100%. The magical power of the luck card truly opened his eyes. It seems that he underestimated the power of the luck card during the last lifespan transaction. Chen Fan felt somewhat helpless, but considering that Wang Dabao had already become the messenger of the Interstellar Bank, he didn't feel like he had lost out. However, Judging from the result of this transaction, the luck card's enhancement of luck value is indeed significant, and that scoundrel Wang Dabao made a huge profit. Chen Fan didn't rush to check on Wang Dabao's situation but quickly looked at the reward, 
a bottle of bloodline elixir. This reward seemed extraordinary as it could enhance the purity of a spirit beast's bloodline. This was perfect for the black feathery eagle resting nearby. Chen Fan looked at the black feathery eagle with affection, gently stroked its head, and asked, Xiao Yu, your current strength is too weak. Master wants to help you. Are you willing? The black feathery eagle immediately roared joyfully, brimming with delight. Without hesitation, Chen Fan used the bloodline elixir. Ding! Black feathery eagle, an ancient beast clan, bloodline purity 0.01%. Basic information about the Black Feathery Eagle emerged in Chen Fan's mind, revealing that it was actually a member of an ancient beast clan. Although his knowledge in this area was limited, he knew that the bloodline of ancient beast clans was rare and powerful. With a bloodline purity of 0.01% for the Black Feathery Eagle, he considered it a decent achievement. Chen Fan decided to see how much the bloodline purity could be increased. He then saw the Black Feathery Eagle's bloodline purity rapidly rise to 0.05%, 0.25%. The speed of increase pleasantly surprised Chen Fan. For beast clans, bloodline purity signifies talent. They do not need to deliberately cultivate. Their strength will increase with age, and the speed of improvement depends on talent. Therefore, the higher the bloodline purity, the stronger the talent. When the Black Feathery Eagle's bloodline purity reached 10%, Chen Fan couldn't help but nod in approval as this effect far exceeded his expectations. He sensed a noble aura emanating from the Black Feathery Eagle, a kingly demeanor that made him even feel a hint of awe. With joy, Chen Fan said, Xiao Yu, congratulations. One day, I will help you raise your bloodline purity to 100%, even surpassing your ancestors. He was confident in this and believed that as the owner of the Interstellar Bank, there was nothing he couldn't achieve. Taking a deep breath, Chen Fan returned to the Interstellar Bank to observe Wang Dabao's situation. After Wang Dabao walked out of the bank, he was somewhat surprised, clearly not expecting the owner to send him away so decisively, without even a word of warning. Suddenly, he was sent back to the original place. Does this mean he will once again face the pursuit of powerful spiritual practitioners from the great Zhou dynasty? Swish, swish, before he knew it, he immediately felt three terrifying auras rapidly approaching. And the owners of those auras were indeed from the great Zhou dynasty. Could it be that what the previous host said about improving luck was all a scam? Wang Dabao muttered to himself, preparing to escape immediately, faced with opponents whose strength he could not match. The wise choice was to evacuate quickly. However, Chen Fan completely believed in the power of the system. After all, the value of the luck card was so high, it would definitely change Wang Dabao's bad luck. Swish, swish. Sure enough, at this moment, three equally terrifying auras appeared from the side, heading straight for the great Zhou dynasty spiritual practitioners who were chasing them. Oh, it's actually people from the great Ming dynasty? Isn't this too much of a coincidence? Wang Dabao was instantly overjoyed. Currently, the Great Zhou and Great Ming dynasties are in a state of confrontation, with frequent conflicts erupting between them. Although a full-scale war has not yet broken out, small-scale battles occur frequently. When the people from the two countries meet, they immediately start fighting. Unexpectedly, they met Wang Dabao here. It's really lucky. It seems that the host didn't deceive me. The Multiverse Bank is indeed well-deserved of its reputation. My insight is quite unique, Wang Dabao said proudly. Chen Fan couldn't help but twitch the corner of his mouth. Wang Dabao's thick skin was simply unbelievable. What was even more unacceptable was that this guy seemed to be indifferent to his situation. Swish. Then, Wang Dabao decisively joined the battle group, standing without hesitation on the side of the great Ming dynasty. Four against three. Although Wang Dabao was penniless, he was close to the mid-stage of the spiritual realm coupled with excellent swordsmanship and footwork, making his combat power absolutely formidable. Soon, one of the three spiritual practitioners from the great Zhou dynasty was defeated, and the remaining two, seeing the situation was not favorable, immediately fled the battlefield. Don't chase, we are not far from the border of the great Zhou dynasty, pursuing them might lead to unexpected events. Wang Dabao cautiously reminded, the three spiritual practitioners from the great Ming dynasty looked at each other, nodded in agreement, and then divided the spoils of the defeated enemy. Unfortunately, 
Among the spoils were three pills that could help a spiritual practitioner at the initial stage break through to the mid-stage. It seemed that the breakthrough items that the defeated enemy had prepared with great effort had ultimately become the spoils of Wong Davao and the others. Each of you take one, and the rest is mine, how about that? The only mid-stage spiritual practitioner present spoke up. Wong Davao and the others had no objections. Afterwards, the three great spiritual practitioners from the great Ming dynasty invited Wang Davao to join their team, but were politely refused by Wang Davao. In the end, both sides went their separate ways. Although the Ming dynasty was powerful, how could it compare to the Wenji money house? Wang Davao is the envoy of the Wenji money house, how could he possibly defect to the Ming dynasty? After the three powerful Ling Rome experts of the Ming dynasty left, Wang Davao looked proud, muttered to himself, then with a face full of admiration, said to the owner, you are truly amazing. I am just so lucky. Not only did I receive help from the experts of the Ming dynasty, but also got the elixirs I needed for breakthrough. You are my idol. You are my faith. Upon hearing these words, Chen Fan couldn't help but feel a bit annoyed. He couldn't figure out if this person was treating him as an idol or an enemy. He knew that some crazy fans might do something out of line. Without waiting for any opportunity for a breakthrough, he decided to directly take the elixir, confident that with his strength and experience, he could break through at any time. After Wang Dabao expressed his admiration for himself, he immediately began to swallow the elixir without hesitation, fearing that he might encounter unforeseen circumstances when trying to break through again after his good luck ran out, quickly finding a secluded place. Half an hour later, a powerful aura emanated from the hidden cave. Mid-stage of the spiritual communication realm, Chen Fan's eyes narrowed. He knew, Wang Davao had successfully broken through. His luck was off the charts. Surviving in a short period of time, obtaining the elixir needed for the breakthrough, and now successfully breaking through. Will there be more good luck to come? Chen Fan felt that although Wang Davao's luck was good, it was not enough to reach 100% completion in his transactions. The potential of the luck card had not been fully unleashed. Haha. Ha. Meanwhile, Wang Dabao was extremely satisfied. The feeling of good luck was really amazing. Becoming a strong mid-stage spiritual communication realm cultivator, he was more confident. At least he wouldn't be chased by the great Zhou dynasty like a destitute person as before. Suddenly, when Wang Dabao tried to demonstrate his power, he accidentally found that the rocks behind him were shaken loose by his laughter, causing a series of chain reactions, with rocks shattering one after another. Wang Davao dashed out of the cave, afraid of being buried inside. Did I almost get buried just by laughing a little? Did my good luck end during the breakthrough? Wang Davao felt a bit disappointed. His suspicion of good luck instantly shattered. The feeling was really amazing. Now, why is my luck so bad? Wait, is this a passage? In the next moment, Wang Davao's pupils dilated. The falling of the cave walls stopped, revealing a passage that only allowed one person to pass through pitch black, unable to see the situation inside. A mysterious cave? Seeing this scene, Wang Dabao's joy soared. Chen Fan also squinted his eyes, thinking to himself, indeed. The luck card still has value. This mysterious cave must hide precious things that can help Wang Dabao. However, Wang Dabao hesitated. Could it be that once I enter the passage, my good luck will disappear, and then be buried? Or are there traps inside? Poison gas? Formations? Fatal? Chen Fan almost stumbled in place, looking at the conflicted Wang Dabao, feeling a bit impatient. Fortunately, Wang Dabao did not hesitate, gritting his teeth and deciding, fortune favors the brave, misfortune lurks behind good fortune. Opportunities always come with dangers. We cannot retreat because of danger. Hearing this, Chen Fan nodded, and his mood also eased. Wang Dabao spoke again, full of faith saying, Master Zhuang, you must bless me. I believe in you. It is because of this belief that I dare to step in here. Please bless me. Chen Fan, upon hearing this, felt a tremor in his heart, as if an old blood was about to gush out. He thought to himself, as the owner of Wenji Money House, not a monk, Wang Dabao's chanting behavior was really amusing. If it weren't for Chen Fan's interest in the treasures in this cave, he might have already lost interest and gone to find Su Qingyu, the beautiful female accountant. So, Wang Dabao cautiously entered the depths of the cave, 
After a few minutes of exploration, he suddenly exclaimed, Wow! There are so many treasures hidden here. Chen Fan was also startled by the exclamation, showing a look of surprise. What did he see? Spirit stones, gold coins, talismans, elixirs, even martial arts and techniques. Everything was there, a sight to behold. It was like an incredibly precious treasure trove. The owner of this mysterious cave was named Mu Li, a powerful figure from a thousand years ago, a strong and solitary cultivator. Chen Fan soon noticed the introduction in front of the skeleton, realizing that the resources here were comparable to those of a sect. However, he frowned slightly because he found a request left by this powerful figure Mu Li. If a person of destiny wanted to take away the treasures here, they must swear to help him seek revenge. And this Mu Li's enemy was named Zhou Qian, from the great Zhou dynasty. It turned out that Mu Li and Zhou Qian were once sworn brothers, as close as brothers. However, they both fell in love with the daughter of a powerful force, and Zhou Qian, in order to win her over, resorted to despicable means to attack Mu Li. Mu Li, seriously injured, had to flee, and his injuries worsened day by day, eventually disappearing from people's sight. However, Zhou Qian did not let him go, hunting him down everywhere under the guise of finding his brother, but actually wanting to end it all. Mu Li remained hidden, never to be found. Later, Zhou Qian married the daughter of that powerful force, his power increased significantly, his influence overwhelming, and he even wiped out Mu Li's family. Mu Li watched helplessly as his loved ones were killed, filled with grief and anger, eventually passing away with resentment. Zhou Qian? Wasn't he the carefree king of the great Zhou dynasty? Unexpectedly, he had such a despicable past. Wang Davao, apparently more knowledgeable about the great Zhou dynasty than Chen Fan, frowned, looking troubled, and said, Zhou Qian reached the late stage of the spirit communication realm a hundred years ago, and now his strength is unfathomable. He may even have broken through to the spirit control realm. In the great Zhou dynasty, he holds a prominent position, highly respected. Even the emperor treats him with courtesy. And his wife is the daughter of a powerful force. Once he is eliminated, it will surely provoke a backlash from that force. It's really not easy to deal with him. After hesitating for a moment, Wang Dabao took a deep breath and decided resolutely, seeking wealth amidst danger, let's go all out. I, Wang Dabao, am willing to eliminate Zhou Qian at the cost of Mu Li's predecessor's resources. If I break this oath, my martial path will be cut off, with no hope of advancement. Ohm, as the sound reverberated, he suddenly felt a faint fluctuation of spiritual energy around him. His expression changed instantly. It was a formation. A cold sweat broke out on his back involuntarily. Without swearing, he might not be able to leave here. Even though he was a strong mid-level practitioner in the spirit communication realm, he knew the power of the killing formation, which was simply overwhelming. He could only describe it as terrifying. Senior, I will definitely avenge you. Wang Dabao emphasized again. Seeing this scene, Chen Fan twitched his mouth, seeming not to care too much. As long as he wanted to save Wang Dabao, even in the killing formation, he could still rescue him. Swish. Next, Wang Dabao collected all the treasures here and then took out the token of the myriad realms from his body, holding it tightly. Swipe. In the next moment, he was already standing in the hall of the Myriad Realms Bank. Master, you are amazing. My admiration for you is as surging as the river. Do you know? My luck is simply off the charts. Wang Dabao was ecstatic. All right, as long as you're satisfied. Chen Fan immediately interrupted him. Otherwise, this guy might never stop talking. So, Master, do I need to turn in the resources I just obtained? Wang Dabao asked, covering his chink and bag with his hand looking somewhat reluctant. Seeing this scene, Chen Fan was speechless and said, Don't worry, I'm not interested in your stuff. You underestimate the Myriad Realms Bank. However, you need to help me collect debts next. The debts and interest earned must all be returned, without damaging the reputation of the Myriad Realms Bank. Otherwise, I will clean house. Hearing these words, Wang Dabao felt a chill from the bottom of his heart. He immediately realized that the Unseen Master possessed huge resources and absolute strength that should not be underestimated. With a serious expression, he said, Master, rest assured, although I, Wang Dabao, may joke around, I still value the spirit of the contract. 
Chen Fan nodded, also believing that Wang Dabao would not betray him. Then he continued, The Myriad Realms Bank has sent a messenger named Su Qingyu to collect debts in the Eastern Domain. But, it's too tiring for her to travel back and forth alone. And the Eastern Domain is too vast. So you need to help share the burden. Fortunately, there are not many debt contracts in the Eastern Domain, only a dozen or so. With your help, the debt collection should be faster. These are the debts you will need to recover next, among. Wait, Master. Wang Dabao was puzzled at first, then smirked and said, Can our Myriad Realms Bank messengers also participate in major life events? This time, it was Chen Fan's turn to be puzzled. He finally realized and gave Wang Dabao a strange look. This guy's thoughts were really unique. Then he said, If you can catch up to her, then you're capable. Handsome or not? Wang Dabao asked. Chen Fan nodded and said, Of course, she's beautiful. She is currently handling a debt and will return here after completing it. You will see her then. Really? Wang Dabao felt a little hopeful. His excitement caused his chubby cheeks to tremble. And he asked, Master, are there any more handsome clothes here? I want to change into one. Wang Dabao looked embarrassed and said, Chen Fan, don't you have any yourself? The one I'm wearing is the least fragrant. You really embody the true essence of a man. Chen Fan smiled and replied, A real man should not be bothered by trivial matters. If a house is not clean, how can it clean the world? The master is truly talented. Every word he says is so profound, Wang Dabao sighed. Just as Wang Dabao was about to speak, Su Qingyu's figure appeared in the hall. She glanced at Wang Dabao, then looked away calmly, showing no interest in him. Su Qingyu placed the debts that were due in the hall and said, Master, here are the debts to be collected this time. Chen Fan was satisfied and collected the debts. Wang Dabao finally came to his senses, staring at Su Qingyu's profile, looking nervous and no longer boastful as before. Curious, Chen Fan asked, Wang Dabao, what's wrong with you? You were just. Wang Dabao hastily interrupted, introducing himself. Hello, I'm Wang Dabao, the newly joined envoy. Please take care of me in the future. Su Qingyu nodded in response without saying much. Wang Dabao seemed not eager to communicate with Su Qingyu either, then quickly asked, Master, how do you distribute the debts in the eastern region for collection? I just joined and can't wait to prove myself. Chen Fan, knowing Wang Dabao's determination to help Malili seek revenge, advised, there's no rush. That matter won't be resolved in a day or two. Wang Dabao waved his hand, thinking that when Ming and Zhou completely clashed and bloodshed erupted, he would only need to face Zhou Qian alone, as the Zhou dynasty might not have much energy to help him, giving him a chance for revenge. During this time, he still needed to continue to improve his strength, as he was too weak. All right, let's divide it by region to save you from running back and forth and wasting too much time on the road. Chen Fan began to distribute the debt contracts. Moments later, Su Qingyu left with the new debt contracts, and Wang Dabao, lagging behind, was asked by Chen Fan, Why were you so hesitant just now? I thought you would launch a fierce attack. Come on, master. She's just too beautiful and elegant, especially in that blood-red robe. I can't handle it, Wang Dabao sighed. Go and collect the debt quickly. After joining the Wenji Money Bank, you'll have bread, strength, and even a girlfriend. Chen Fan advised, regarding your first debt, it might be a bit challenging. I suggest you first understand the situation on the ground before taking action. Don't rush into it, as it may lead to failure in the first battle. Will I really get a girlfriend? Wang Dabao asked in disbelief. Hurry up and go, you. Chen Fan urged with a smile. After Chen Fan forcefully made Wang Dabao leave, he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, as if the whole world had returned to peace. Over the next few days, he immersed himself in practicing the yin soul technique, tirelessly nurturing the sword embryo, keeping a close eye on the progress of the building, and waiting for the arrival of the transaction. During this time, the aura of the black feathered eagle owl continued to strengthen, surpassing expectations, and the power of bloodline began to show signs. Until one day, while he was practicing, he suddenly opened his eyes. With a swoosh, the yin soul directly left Xiao Mi's body and entered the hall of the Wenji Bank. The Azure Ghost Sword was finally about to make its debut. He stared intently at the sword embryo, his heart surging with excitement. During this time, 
The Azure Ghost Sword had devoured ten spiritual veins, and at this moment, it was about to transform into a treasure that could suppress all spiritual weapons. The sword embryo spun rapidly, dazzling the surroundings as the spiritual stones and remnants of spiritual veins' spiritual power quickly poured into it. With a swoosh, Chen Fan took out another spiritual vein without hesitation. Buzz, the speed of the sword embryo's rotation increased, absorbing the spiritual power of this vein, and was about to deplete in the blink of an eye. Swoosh, this time, Chen Fan took out two spiritual veins to invest. As he watched the Azure Ghost Sword about to make its debut, he hesitated not. He would not allow any mistakes in the final step. Otherwise, all previous efforts would be in vain. Buzz, swoosh, successive investment of several spiritual veins, until the eighth spiritual vein was invested. The speed of the sword embryo suddenly slowed down. The true appearance of the Azure Ghost Sword gradually emerged in front of Chen Fan. The sword embryo stopped rotating completely, the eighth spiritual vein was completely swallowed, and a long sword that seemed to pierce the sky completely appeared in front of Chen Fan. He could feel that this azure ghost sword was full of unruly spirit, extremely sharp, and even exuded the aura of a king. Could it be? The sword king? The king of spiritual weapons? In an instant, he was moved. The azure ghost sword actually willingly fell into Chen Fan's hands, without any resistance but instead appeared extremely close. When Chen Fan grasped the hilt, it was as if he held the entire world in his hands. Pointing the sword at the sky, overlooking the world, I want to dominate, who dares to contend with me? At this moment in the Wanji Bank, one sword, one soul, was like the Zhonghu. The blood blade here is a brother. Chen Fan gently caressed the Azure Ghost Sword and murmured softly to himself. The Azure Ghost Sword kept buzzing as if saying, Master, please do not compare me with those inferior spiritual weapons, you are insulting me. Chen Fan, good, huh? Just then, his eyebrows raised slightly, a hint of a smile on his lips, and he said, I never expected that just as you appeared, someone would be willing to blood sacrifice for you and unleash your sword edge. Buzzing, the Azure Ghost Sword was extremely excited. Go, find the one who is hiding and planning to attack me. Immediately, Chen Fan left the Wenji bank and returned to Xiao Mi's side, with the Azure Ghost Sword in his hand. Swoosh, the Azure Ghost Sword flew out, like a joyful child, disappearing into the night. Watching this scene, Chen Fan smiled, shook his head without stopping, and left calmly, saying, It seems that someone knows me quite well, actually wanting to invite a Yin Soul expert to deal with me. Just now, Chen Fan's soul was wandering in the hall of the Multiverse Money Bank, unharmed and could even sense the attacks on his soul from the other side. Chen Fan's soul cultivation has reached a high level, even without any defense, he would not be harmed, compared to the opponent's soul cultivation. It's like night and day. Chen Fan's spiritual cultivation is already enough to make him overlook all the heroes on the spirit cloud continent. How could Dachin have anything powerful enough to threaten his soul existence? Suddenly, a scream came from the distance. Found already? Chen Fan was surprised that Qing Qing Sword had found the hidden enemy so quickly, and he quickly flew towards the direction where Qing Qing Sword was. After a moment, Chen Fan found the attacker, an old man, dressed elegantly and luxuriously, thin as a stick, with sharp eyes, showing a powerful soul strength, but at the moment, he looked a bit embarrassed. He was pierced in the forehead by Qing Qing Sword, hanging on a tree swaying, already dead. Qing Qing Sword seeing its master arrive, immediately drew out its body, dancing joyfully around Chen Fan, obviously showing off its achievements. Chen Fan originally wanted to inquire about the identity of the person and the mastermind behind the scenes, but this person had been killed by Qing Qing Sword, and the truth could no longer be known. However, he did not blame Qing Qing Sword, because this was something he had not clearly stated, instead he praised, Xiao Qing is really amazing finding the bad guy who attacked me so quickly. At the same time, he was also amazed by the power of Qing Qing Sword. No traces of battle, not even causing any anomalies. This soul master of at least the level of soul transformation was killed with one blow. It was just too easy. Qing Qing Sword, being praised, became even more excited, then trembled twice and stabbed towards the distance. Want to go out and have some fun? Sensing the emotion of Qing Qing Sword, Chen Fan nodded and said, go ahead, but, do not harm the innocent. 
Immediately, Ching Ching Sword politely nodded its tip, then flew away, sometimes rising and falling, even rotating around a towering tree without touching a single leaf. Incredibly agile, the control of power was also very precise. Watching this scene, Chen Fan felt relieved, then picked up the body on the ground, returned to the multiverse money bank, and found Chen Zheng. After careful consideration, he decided to ask Chen Zheng. This deceased elder was obviously not an ordinary person. With Chen Zheng's position in Da Chen, he should have some knowledge about him. Isn't this Mr. Chen? Chen Zheng recognized this person at a glance, and quickly introduced, Mr. Chen, a third grade symbol master in Da Chen, honored by the royal family, with a distinguished status. His master, Master Fang, is even a fourth grade symbol master, the national teacher of Da Chen. Highly regarded by the emperor, with extraordinary power. How could he die here? Chen Fan explained, he came to assassinate me. What? Chen Zheng's face changed drastically. I have no grudges with him. He couldn't have come to assassinate me for no reason. There must be a mastermind behind him. Chen Fan reiterated. After hearing this, Chen Zheng immediately understood the intention of the envoy from the multiverse money bank in front of him. Chen Fan was curious about the reputation value. What kind of standard is it exactly? Is it like the popularity of the multiverse bank? And how is that mysterious 100 points determined? Besides, he asked for an encyclopedia before, but ended up being rewarded with another one? Could it be that the system decides the rewards based on his wishes? If that's the case, it's simply amazing. Just as he was about to check the contents of this encyclopedia, Chen Zheng walked over and respectfully invited the master. The ancient hunting grounds are about to open in Da Chen, are you interested? If so, Da Chen can serve as a guide. It is rumored that the ancient hunting grounds are the remains of an ancient battlefield, where countless ancestors perished, with a dense aura of danger inside. However, it also contains the relics of ancient powerhouses, such as rare resources like various techniques and martial skills, which are highly sought after. Each time it opens, people rush in, but most never return. This has been the case for thousands of years. This has led to more precious resources being left behind, attracting people to enter and seek opportunities. In the end, the ancient hunting grounds have evolved into a place where various forces select geniuses. To ensure fair competition, the strong in Zhangzhou have set up a large array, allowing only the younger generation under the age of 20 to enter, with limited quotas allocated according to strength. It is said that many have gained great opportunities here and risen to fame. Chen Fan curiously asked, Yes, the ancient hunting grounds open once every three years, and almost all the geniuses from the eastern region will enter. Chen Zheng said, The great Chu crown prince who was punished some time ago, Chu Wushuang, once entered and gained a lot, reportedly obtaining a mid-level earth rank martial skill. Twelve years ago, a genius from Dachin entered a mysterious tomb and greatly increased his cultivation. There are many other examples too, but only the geniuses from the eastern region and Zhangzhou are qualified to enter, the other seven regions have no chance. After listening, Chen Fan nodded. He understood that for the eastern region, the ancient hunting grounds were a great opportunity to stand out, while for Zhangzhou, it was just a place for experience. So, what significance does it have for me to go in? although he didn't want to compete with a group of geniuses, but I can select some geniuses and bring them to the multiverse bank. In the system tasks, there are two items, expanding reputation and recruiting messengers. This is a gathering place for outstanding geniuses, a great opportunity to gain fame and recruit messengers. Chen Fan understood that despite the recent attention on the multiverse bank, in such a vast eastern region, most people knew nothing about it. Even Dachin might not be well known to everyone. I will go, but I won't participate. Chen Fan said calmly, the multiverse bank will announce that they are recruiting messengers from the ancient hunting grounds, with no limit on the number. It is said that the interdimensional bank is looking for new messengers, which suddenly made Chen Zheng's mood complicated. Becoming a messenger of the interdimensional bank means that he will be closely connected to this huge institution, which is undoubtedly a rare opportunity that excites him. However, he also feels uneasy inside, worrying whether this new identity will have a negative impact on his governance of Great Chen. Therefore, he decides to first discuss with General Meng, weigh the pros and cons, and then make a decision. After Chen Zheng left, 
only the lonely Chen Fan remained at the top of Lingyun Mountain. At this moment, he found himself in the library of the multiverse, starting to explore the encyclopedia. The encyclopedia held endless wisdom, but accessing it required the activation of spiritual veins. Chen Fan's heart stirred slightly, delighted to find that this might solve his dilemma of knowing nothing. Without hesitation, he activated the encyclopedia, and a simple, ancient book caught his eye, prominently labeled, Encyclopedia, exuding a profound sense of weightiness. Chen Fan examined the book and realized he needed to spend more time studying it, so he sat down quietly, turning to the first page. Buzz, in an instant, a whole new world unfolded before him. He seemed to have gained a godlike perspective, overlooking the kingdom within the book. In this world, countless characters were living various lives, some hurriedly bustling about, some engaging in conversations, some serving their pregnant wives, and children playing and frolicking. All these scenes left Chen Fan dumbfounded. Was this just a book? Why did it contain such a rich variety of humans and creatures? Not just humans, but also dogs, kilins, phoenixes, golden toads, and even thieves. Chen Fan's amazement grew stronger. This was simply a complete world. Various characters and events emerged endlessly. He even witnessed a wedding scene. Bowing respectfully to the heavens and the earth. Bowing respectfully to the ancestral hall. Chen Fan was completely absorbed, being able to hear the dialogues of the characters in the book. The bride was beautiful and scholarly. The groom handsome and wealthy, almost like a scion of a wealthy family. Were all these virtual characters in the book? After observing for a long time, Chen Fan finally speculated that these characters all originated from the book. Did they collectively make up the ecosystem of this world? Then, was he the master here? Chen Fan was a bit uncertain about his identity and role, and at the same time, he wondered if there was a manager here. Just then, he noticed a woman standing at the top of the mountain, bowing to him in greeting. The Library of the Multiverse? Chen Fan's pupils contracted slightly, surprised to find the building of the Library of the Multiverse behind the woman. And in the entire world within the book, only the Library of the Multiverse existed independently. Did she know about his arrival? With doubts in his mind, Chen Fan resolutely flew into this world. After entering this world, he felt an unprecedented sense of harmony, as if he had seamlessly merged with this world, without any sense of discord. The master, the woman gracefully bowed, her voice gentle and ethereal. Chen Fan finally saw the face of the woman in front of him clearly. She was exceptionally beautiful, with delicate features that seemed to come to life, and skin as smooth as silk. She was dressed modestly, exuding a quaint and ancient charm, like a girl next door. She possessed a unique charm and confidence, radiating all kinds of talents. Every smile, every move, carried profound wisdom, making Chen Fan restless, deeply captivated by her. Chen Fan hesitated and asked, Who? Who are you? I am the book spirit of the encyclopedia. The encyclopedia itself, I am the encyclopedia. You can call me Xiao Bai, the book spirit said softly. Chen Fan withdrew his gaze and looked out at the vast world below the mountain, extending endlessly beyond sight. He dared not look at Xiao Bai again, because everything about her was full of wisdom and knowledge, worthy of his study and contemplation. He felt that if he continued to gaze, he could continuously absorb knowledge endlessly. However, staring at a girl for a long time was impolite, even though he could learn a lot. So, he decisively averted his gaze. Xiao Bai, extraordinarily intelligent, seemed to understand her master's thoughts, smiling as she introduced, This is the world of the encyclopedia, with a measurable size. It is inhabited by various characters, animals, rivers, buildings from the encyclopedia, who intermarry and give birth over the long years, representing the fusion of different characters from the book. Their descendants represent new perspectives and knowledge. Here, life and death exist equivalent to the elimination of incorrect knowledge and viewpoints. As long as your knowledge is correct, you can prolong your life. Therefore, the residents here mostly have long lives, leading to an ever-increasing lifespan. To better serve you, I have some assistants living in the Wanji Money Bank, ready to help me with learning experiences and knowledge. Chen Fan waved his hand to interrupt, I think I understand. In such a vast world, it seems there is no central governing force? What restrains the vast majority of people? Without rules, it may fall into chaos. The heavenly Tao, 
Xiao Bai replied with a light laugh, and Chen Fan inadvertently turned his head, drawn in by her smile. That smile, it seemed to have seen through more emotions, witnessed countless touching stories. If delved deeper, ahem, he quickly averted his gaze, reminding himself once again not to look at Xiao Bai. Even though he could gain knowledge, can I give you a new name? Chen Fan asked, feeling that the name encyclopedia seemed somewhat lacking in elegance. Xiao Bai smiled and replied, I only belong to the master. Whatever the master says, I am. These words shook Chen Fan's heart, inexplicably feeling a surge of excitement. He quickly suggested, then let's call you Yan Ruyu, how do you feel about that? Xiao Bai gladly accepted, this is the new name of this servant. Ah, Chen Fan left the kingdom in the book, filled with shock and disbelief. He gained many insights from the book and discovered the golden house where Yan Ruyu lived. All of this left him wide-eyed and amazed. Yan Ruyu living in a golden house didn't seem extravagant at all. Instead, it exuded a natural and harmonious aura, as if everything followed the laws of nature. After leaving the kingdom in the book, Chen Fan's heart was shaken by these experiences and he needed some time to digest it all. After a moment, he finally managed to regain his composure, murmuring to himself, it's unbelievable, it completely subverts my understanding. The existence of the World Bank system seems to be challenging all kinds of knowledge. It not only subverts the perception of this world but also my own. Previously, Chen Fan thought that in his three lives on earth, he had embraced advanced thoughts and knowledge, but at this moment, his sense of superiority was completely gone. Knowledge, endless knowledge, I need to focus on learning. The principle of lifelong learning is indeed true. Thinking of the biggest social phenomenon revealed in the book, that is reading. From childhood to adulthood, whether ordinary people, thieves or bandits, everyone is constantly learning, constantly striving. It is not just a social custom, but because only by constantly increasing knowledge can they live better. For them, knowledge is a necessity of life. Without learning, they will be marginalized in society, or even lose the ability to survive. Chen Fan shook his head, hesitated, realizing that it might take several days to tell everything about the kingdom in the book because these experiences were just too rich and colorful. He took a deep breath, organized his thoughts, and started thinking about a practical problem. To acquire the knowledge needed from the encyclopedia, there are only two ways. One is to directly consult Xiao Yu, but this way can only provide surface-level knowledge because everything is just Xiao Yu's oral account. The other is to personally visit relevant fields and communicate with the people there to gain a deeper understanding of the required knowledge. Superficial exploration and in-depth research complement each other. Even Xiao Yu needs to continue learning, especially for newborns. Thinking of this, Chen Fan set a rule for himself, to spend more time in the kingdom in the book and learn more. Furthermore, the world in the book is only a part of the open areas, with many regions sealed off, and even for Xiao Yu, the knowledge there is unknown. Unsealing requires the help of spiritual veins. It seems, he needs to work even harder. With intense thoughts swirling, Chen Fan gradually calmed down after a moment of contemplation. Then, he left the World Bank system, setting up a protective array he obtained around him to ensure his safety. This way, at least he could prevent people or wild animals from intruding at night. Although the small array had limited power, it was better than nothing. At this moment, a flying beast with the cultivation of the spirit profound realm suddenly had the idea of landing on the roof of the Wenji money house. However, it triggered the defensive formation, preventing it from carrying out this idea, so it had to hurriedly fly away. Suddenly, Chen Fan, who was preparing to cultivate, showed a look of joy on his face. Although the Qinghong sword does not require the nourishment of spiritual veins, the encyclopedia does. What other items will require spiritual veins in the future? So, he immediately returned to the Wenji money house system. A heavy footstep sounded, and Chen Fan looked towards the source of the sound, only to see a general. He looked exhausted, covered in blood, and the sword in his hand was full of cut marks, indicating that he had just experienced a fierce battle. Chen Fan keenly sensed the anger in his eyes and felt a looming burst of violent emotions. At the same time, Information about this general surged in his mind, in Zhangguo, mid-level cultivation in the Huoling realm, general of the Da Han dynasty. The Da Han dynasty, a country quickly declining. The monarch is incompetent, and corruption prevails. 
only relying on the heritage of Da Han and Njongwo can support it to this day. Njongwo, true to his name, loyal to his country, fighting for Da Han all his life, achieving military success repeatedly, he was a prominent figure from a young age, a key figure in the revival of Da Han. He once single-handedly defeated 10,000 enemies, unparalleled in martial arts, led 18 close guards to kill 30,000 enemies, outstanding in strategy, led troops to battle, annihilating a nation. If not for the intervention of strong individuals sent by the Da Zhou dynasty at its peak, Da Han's territory would have doubled. His military achievements were illustrious, invincible in every battle, truly deserving of the title of Da Han's undefeated general. Unfortunately, with great success comes great jealousy. At the peak of his career, he was stripped of his military power by the king, who believed slander. Although Njongwo bore no complaints, he voluntarily withdrew and protected his family. However, he remained concerned about national affairs, never gave up preparation, only to serve the country again one day. A phrase he often said was, born as a Da Han person, die as a Da Han soul. Hearing of the incompetence of the Da Han monarch, various countries tried to win over Njongwo but were rejected. Just a month ago, the Da Wu dynasty, with a million soldiers, took advantage of Njongwo's dismissal and attempted to invade Da Han's territory. The 10,000 border troops of Da Han were annihilated by the enemy due to the fleeing of the main general. One incompetent general can ruin a thousand soldiers. In the urgent situation on the border, Njongwo was once again summoned. When he bid farewell, he watched his wife and said, Amidst the flames of war, my lady, do not look back. This journey is dangerous, and I hope you patiently await my return. And Zhang Guo's wife, understanding the righteousness, a wise and virtuous wife, replied, If you return with scars, please remember the warmth of home remains. I will wait quietly for the day you lay down your armor and return home, to talk about everyday life and wait for the rain to stop. General and Zhangguo made the decision to leave, standing at the ferry waiting for his beloved to eagerly anticipate his return, but could only watch him hurriedly depart, filled with hope that one day he could cross the river again, hand in hand with her to grow old together. They both believed in his words, but they did not expect the billowing smoke and spreading warfare on the opposite bank. Despite their past vows, he dared not forget his promise, only hoping that he would not forget his original intention and return victorious in the future. And Zhang Guo's wife watched her husband's departing figure, tears streaming down her face, unable to stop herself from expressing her thoughts. However, she knew deep down that she was only a small part of his life, and what mattered most to him was the people of the world. She could not stop him from embarking on his expedition. Returning to the army, his prestige instantly calmed the hearts of the soldiers, even though they were just newly recruited soldiers. He ordered, those with parents, stay behind. Those with wives and children, stay behind. Those with only sons, stay behind. If fathers and sons are together, the son stays behind. If brothers are together, the younger brother stays behind. The rest, follow me into battle. The soldiers' morale soared, shouting, kill the enemy. Kill, kill, kill. The army was in high spirits for a moment. However, those who stayed behind were not weak, shouting loudly one after another, general. I am Zhao or Go with a wife and children at home. After my death, my wife can remarry, and my son can inherit my armor to fight for the country. I am Li Ran, the only son at home, but also a subject of the country. I am Wang Shuang, my father and I are on the battlefield together. If my father sacrifices for the country, I am willing to do the same. General, please let us go into battle. The morale rose again, and the battle began and Zhang Guo led 30,000 new soldiers to charge into battle, unstoppable, fighting fiercely against the million-strong army of Da Wu. After a month of fighting, with excellent command and military skills, and Zhang Guo unexpectedly held his own against the million-strong army of Da Wu, even gaining the upper hand. The king of Wu unknowingly fell into his trap. Just as the net was closing in, a family retainer rushed in, gasping for breath, kneeling to report, General, the madam. The madam and young master have been imprisoned. They will be executed in three days. And Zhang Guo's face changed drastically. He had always remained calm, even facing a million-strong army without panic. But at this moment, he was in extreme panic. 
the retainer informed him that Zhao Gagong falsely accused the general of colluding with the enemy, intending to cooperate with Da Wu to destroy Da Han. The king had already decided on the charge of treason, and the madam and young master had been imprisoned, to be executed in three days. General, this is outrageous. You have fought and risked your life, but the king believes in slander and wants to push you into a dead end. It's so unfair. The soldiers and personal guards were furious and could not contain their anger. General and Zhang Wo slowly raised the sword in his hand, gazing at the figure of King Wu in the distance. His voice came low and steady. To slay King Wu not only clears the injustice on my name but also resolves the great trouble of the kingdom of Wu once and for all. The soldiers, upon hearing the command, responded in unison, and the sound of war drums echoed through the sky. After a day of fierce battle, General and Zhang Guo nearly captured King Wu alive. If King Wu hadn't been so powerful, reaching the initial stage of soul manifestation, he wouldn't have been able to escape. As the last enemy fell, General and Zhang Guo, catching his breath, found only a hundred soldiers left behind him. Just as victory seemed within reach, a figure rushed over in haste, his face filled with panic as he delivered the news, General, it's bad news. Madam and young master have been poisoned by Zhao Gagong in the prison. Upon hearing this, General and Zhang Guo felt as if all strength had been drained from his body, almost stumbling in shock. Leaning on his sword, he stood amidst the blood-soaked ground and countless corpses, forming a tragic scene. Suddenly, he looked up to the sky and laughed heartily, Ching'er, I have won this battle, I have defended this country, but, where are you, my most cherished one? The surroundings fell silent, the soldiers filled with anger and sorrow. The bank of the ten thousand realms, trading all things. General and Zhang Guo firmly grasped the bank token in his hand without hesitation. After hearing the whole story, Chen Fan felt heavy-hearted and full of respect for General and Zhang Guo, asking, this is the bank of the ten thousand realms, what kind of transaction do you wish to make? General and Zhang Guo replied hoarsely, to destroy Da Han. Chen Fan was shocked to hear that the country he had dedicated his life to protect was to be destroyed by himself. Such a choice must come with immense pain. However, perhaps it was the only right decision. After listening, General and Zhang Guo showed a pained expression and continued, Da Han has already decayed beyond recognition. Since the world rejects me, I will overturn everything. Ching'er, wait for me to avenge you, and we will reunite. Chen Fan sighed, understanding that loyal subjects rarely have a good ending. General and Zhang Guo was both fortunate and unfortunate. Fortunate to have lived in a good era, but unfortunate to face a foolish monarch. What price are you willing to pay? Chen Fan asked directly. General and Zhang Guo's resources flashed through Chen Fan's mind. The Nine Transformation Body Refining Technique, Thunderous Fist, and 132 spirit stones. 132 spirit stones? This number felt ironic to Chen Fan. A general so loyal, dedicating his life to the country, yet receiving such meager rewards. His wife and children were tragically killed, adding to the tragedy. Chen Fan angrily declared, I want your freedom. Become the ambassador of my bank of the 10,000 realms, and I will help you enhance your cultivation and bestow upon you generous rewards. With his talent and leadership ability, as well as his prestige within the Great Han territory, Chen Fan believed that the destruction of Great Han was just around the corner. However, when An Zhang Guo proposed this plan, Chen Fan's brow furrowed involuntarily. He knew An Zhang Guo's intentions and felt a hint of unease in his heart. Are you suggesting that I commit suicide? Chen Fan asked calmly, and Zhang Guo took a deep breath and replied firmly, Yes, I can't promise you anything right now. But, if you can find the bodies of your wife and children, or even keep their spirits, I believe that someday in the future, I can help you bring them back to life. Chen Fan fell silent for a moment, then slowly said, Thank you, and Zhang Guo. When An Zhang Guo heard this proposal, he was filled with mixed emotions, as if he had just experienced a pleasant surprise. Without hesitation, he nodded in agreement to take on the challenge and swiftly signed the soul contract. He solemnly promised that even if he couldn't save his family, he would wholeheartedly become the envoy of the Manor Lord, dedicating himself to serving the Lord to the best of his abilities. He firmly stated that his word was his bond, vowing not to go back on his word. This bold declaration brought great comfort to the Lord. 
The Lord placed high hopes on Njongwo, believing that despite his plateaued strength, with his talent and determination, he would surely make breakthroughs in the next decade. The Lord entrusted Njongwo with 10 million spirit stones, hoping he would make full use of these resources. The Lord inquired about the level of Njongwo's cultivation technique, the Nine Revolutions Body Refining Art. Njongwo was slightly surprised, as only the royal family could possess a low-grade earth tier technique, and the fact that he had obtained a high-grade mysterious tier technique was solely due to his extraordinary luck. The Lord deemed this level not high enough as the level of the technique directly affected the speed of cultivation. He decided to help Njongwo find a more suitable technique. Opening the encyclopedia, the Lord searched for a technique that would be better suited for Njongwo's cultivation. In the end, he found the Nine Revolutions Body Refining Art and the Nine Revolutions Golden Body Art, a very powerful technique that, when cultivated to the extreme, would grant an invincible body capable of withstanding all attacks. The Lord decided to have Njongwo cultivate this technique, feeling joyful in his heart. He knew that with the support of the encyclopedia, he would have unlimited cultivation resources, as long as there were enough spiritual veins. The last time the system rewarded him with prestige points was to encourage him to continue developing the multiverse bank and expand its influence. Therefore, he needed to recruit more envoys to assist him. The book spirit Yan Ruyu was somewhat puzzled by the Lord's decision considering that the Lord was currently in a ghostly state and might not be able to cultivate the Nine Revolutions Golden Body Art. She speculated that the Lord might be planning to trade or gift it to someone else. The Lord smiled faintly upon hearing this, acknowledging Yan Ruyu's guess and agreeing for her to personally inform and Zhongguo of the suggestion for better understanding. Chen Fan was surprised to learn that this kingdom was not just for him. Yan Ruyu nodded and explained, Yes, I can come and go freely. Chen Fan asked with some confusion, can other characters from encyclopedias enter as well? Yan Ruyu smiled and replied, no, only I, as the spirit of the encyclopedia, can. Chen Fan couldn't help but feel amazed by the existence of such a world. Yan Ruyu gently reminded him, master, to make progress, you must maintain a passion for learning and a thirst for knowledge. Chen Fan understood and nodded in agreement. Yan Ruyu gracefully flew out and suddenly transformed into a beautiful girl standing beside him, dressed in ancient attire, with an otherworldly charm that was enchanting. Chen Fan quickly averted his gaze, fearing he might once again become entranced by knowledge. Yan Ruyu pointed to Njongguo, who was cultivating, and asked, Is that him? Chen Fan nodded and handed Njongguo a secret manual for practicing the Nine Revolutions Golden Body Technique. And Zhongguo closed his eyes to begin cultivation. With a gentle touch, Yan Ruyu transferred the cultivation method into An Zhongguo's mind. Chen Fan decisively imparted the last 10 years of time to An Zhongguo, allowing him to gain more growth in his cultivation. And Zhongguo was shocked but immediately devoted himself to cultivation. Chen Fan reminded him, the 10 years here pass in an instant, so do not waste them. And Zhongguo followed the instructions and immersed himself fully in cultivation. After completing the task, Yan Ruyu flew back to the world of encyclopedias, leaving Chen Fan watching An Zhongguo in cultivation. When An Zhongguo finally opened his eyes, he exuded a powerful aura and knelt, proclaiming, I am An Zhongguo, the envoy, paying respects to the master. Chen Fan was astonished to find that An Zhongguo had reached the later stage of the spirit communication realm and even had the potential to break through to the spirit control realm. He inquired about his cultivation progress, and An Zhongguo proudly replied, I have reached the peak, and my thunderous fist has also reached perfection. Despite An Zhongguo's relatively slow cultivation speed, achieving such a level in his early 30s was commendable. Chen Fan gifted him with talismans and encouraged him to keep striving. And Zhongguo returned to the battlefield, as if in a dream, yet the surging power in his body told him that all of this was real. The late stage of the spirit communication realm, a fierce fire ignited in his heart, vowing to single-handedly turn the tide and completely destroy Da Han. And Zhongguo's eyes were firm, surrounded by a strong murderous aura, he shouted angrily, kill. Da Han owes me a debt, today I will make them pay the price. Chinger, I will avenge you over mountains and across ridges, unstoppable. Behind him, the 108 warriors shouted in unison, kill, kill, kill. For a moment, the world changed color, 
the sword energy sword, and the killing intent filled the air. And Zhang Wo calmly led his 108 warriors, heading straight for the capital of Da Han. Chen Fan knew deep down that Da Han's calamity was imminent. They traveled day and night, without stopping, encountering no obstacles along the way. The outposts were slack, the checkpoints weak, and wherever and Zhang Wo and his men passed, only destruction remained. Even those who tried to stop them were no match for in Zhang Wo's mighty strength in the late stage of the spirit communication realm. After all, the King of Han was only at the early stage of the spirit communication realm. They approached like a raging storm, and in a blink of an eye, they had arrived at the capital of Da Han. Finally, they faced a well-organized and disciplined regular defense army. The gatekeeper was Zhao Gagong's trusted general, the eastern general of the east, who was quite surprised to see An Guo suddenly appear, refusing his entry and questioning, General In, as a commander, how could you flee the battlefield? He scrutinized An Guo, clearly just returned from the battlefield, arriving overnight. Since An Guo had just returned directly from the battlefield, he was unaware of the situation on the front lines. And Zhang Guo frowned and glared angrily, the other party's words arousing his killing intent. Being reprimanded, the eastern general's face changed slightly. However, knowing that Zhao Gagong had already ordered him to be declared a traitor, what did he have to fear? And Zhang Guo, how dare you betray your country and join the enemy, unforgivable crime. Still dare to show up? The eastern general coldly questioned. And Zhang Guo responded with a cold smile. Tens of thousands of troops from Great Wu have penetrated deep into Da Han, traveling thousands of miles to come here, and you are still unaware? Dare to question me? The eastern general's face darkened, the strange gazes around him making him feel ashamed and angry, so he ordered, whoever does not move. This is a traitor, capture him. However, who among his soldiers did not know of An Guo's military exploits? Who dared to step forward? This was the military god of Da Han the invincible general. Hesitation and awe made them hesitant. The eastern general's chest filled with anger, roaring, those who disobey military orders, shall be killed without mercy. However, he was full of fear and felt inadequate. As a novice in the spiritual realm, who had not set foot on the battlefield for many years, how could he possibly be a match for An Guo of An Guo? Moreover, the deep-seated fear of An Guo in his heart could not be concealed. Just as everyone hesitated, and Zhang Guo leapt without hesitation, standing high above, as if standing in the sky. This scene changed the face of General Jingdong abruptly, spirit realm. When did you? When did you advance to the spirit realm? And Zhang Guo answered indifferently, you are not qualified to know yet. With that, his figure flickered, flying in the air, and in the blink of an eye, he was already in front of General Jingdong. General Jingdong's face changed abruptly. How dare you? Bang! A punch hit, and An Zhang Guo directly crushed his skull. And Zhang Guo fulfilled his mission, defeating a million troops, only to be betrayed by the treacherous officials of the foolish monarch, and his family was brutally murdered. Now, he has returned for revenge. Following that, and Zhang Guo's voice resounded through the nine heavens, spreading across every corner of the capital of De Hong Guo. At this moment, the entire capital of De Hong Guo fell into silence with everyone looking in awe at the towering figure standing in the sky. This man once defended De Hongguo. Now, is he going to destroy De Hongguo? Zhao Gagong's political ambitions were extremely strong, manipulating the Han king in the palm of his hand. Under Zhao Gagong's control, the political power of De Hongguo was almost monopolized by him, while the Han king indulged in pleasure, oblivious to it all. Because, the Han king always believed that the foundation of the country lies in power. As the only spirit realm powerhouse in De Hongguo, even if he were to give up power, what harm could it do? Who would dare to oppose him? Now, Zhao Gagong presented a Hu tribe saintess to the Han king, who was overjoyed and entertained his courtiers. However, in the midst of revelry, suddenly came the voice of An Guo. One can imagine how intense the Han king's anger must have been. Outrageous. The Han king immediately leapt up. Zhao Gagong, on the other hand, slightly curled his lips, revealing a barely noticeable smile. This in Zhangguo, unmatched in military talent, a lone figure in the martial world, but somewhat foolish in political wisdom, openly speaking such rebellious words this time, is simply seeking his own death. 
Fight. It would be best to fight to the death, so this humble official can reap the benefits. He actually hoped that an Zhongguo would become even stronger. Otherwise being defeated by the Han King would only enhance the Han King's reputation, thus destroying the influence he had established in the common people and the court. The King of Han originally thought an Zhongguo was still a powerful expert in the previous Waling realm, but he didn't expect that he could now stand freely in the air. Has he actually reached the connecting spirit realm? And Zhongguo, when did you break through? Suddenly realizing something, his face darkened, and he said coldly, could it be that the assistance of Da Wu helped you break through? You have truly betrayed Great Han and colluded with the King of Wu. And now you still want to put me in a desperate situation? You deserve the heavenly punishment. Not only will I wipe out your entire family, but I will also exterminate all your relatives and quarter you into pieces. Infuriated, and Zhang Guo's aura suddenly exploded. This is the king of Han. The king worth defending even at all costs. Is it worth it? Is it worth risking everything for such a king of Han? Damn it. Damn it. King of Han, right and wrong will eventually be judged. Since you are unreasonable, don't blame me for not being accommodating. And Zhang Guo's aura continued to rise, and a strong killing intent shrouded half of the capital. HMPH. Guards, leave no one alive under An Zhongguo's command, annihilate them all. Do not disfigure them, find out their families behind them. I want to exterminate all the relatives of these traitors. Facing this scene, the King of Han was furious. The 10,000 feathered forest army marched with resolute steps, bravely advancing, surrounding the 108 warriors behind An Zhongguo. They formed a formation, showing no fear, moving forward courageously. Chen Fan observed intently, furrowing his brows, amazed at the uniqueness of this formation. He saw a fierce killing intent emanating from the formation of the 108 warriors, even faintly seeing a visible butcher's knife in the void. He asked Yan Ruyu, what kind of formation is this? Yan Ruyu explained, this is the blood slaughter formation, a formation specifically designed for slaughter, with formidable power. Although these 108 warriors can only form a small blood slaughter formation, with their unwavering will and the assistance of the master's talisman, they can unleash great power. If a large-scale formation is truly established, it will condense a blood cloud, with even more terrifying power, depending on the will and strength of the people in the formation. Chen Fan's eyes lit up with excitement, powerful. I want to learn formations too. He suddenly realized that An Zhongguo's ability to defeat the Great Wu's million-strong army with only 30,000 new troops, and even repel the early-stage spiritual king of Wu, was all thanks to this blood slaughter formation. An Zhongguo and the Han king had already begun a fierce battle. The outcome of a late-stage spiritual realm against an early-stage spiritual realm could be seen immediately. Although the Han king had a large number of talismans, and Zhongguo practiced the Nine Revolutions Golden Body Technique, a high-level TNJ technique. He could easily crush the Han King. And Zhongguo shouted loudly, his Nine Revolutions Golden Body shining brightly, earning everyone's respect, even causing some Han citizens to kneel and praise the arrival of the saint. Then, with a fierce punch, he hit the Han King's arms, breaking his sternum, blood gushing out. The Han King flew backward crashing heavily onto the dragon seat, barely breathing. This scene was terrifying, showcasing the power of An Zhongguo. The once majestic and aloof Han prince now appeared utterly disheveled, like a lost lone wolf. He struggled to speak, only to cough up blood incessantly, his eyes filled with fear. An Zhongguo stood silently before him, expressionless, listening to the prince's defense. Han Prince attempted to explain that the crimes of killing General An's wife and children were all orchestrated by Zhao Gagong, claiming he had been deceived. He begged for General An's forgiveness, promising to hand over power and swearing to punish Zhao Gagong. However, An Zhongguo remained unmoved, coldly asking, where are the bodies of my wife and children? He did not immediately kill the Han Prince, as he needed him to reveal the whereabouts of his family. The prince claimed ignorance, blaming everything on Zhao Gagong's plot. Suddenly, he stopped speaking, fearfully gazing at the sword in front of him, his face filled with terror. As the king of Da Han, he was unwilling to die, torn by his attachment to the Hu tribe's sacred woman and the 3,000 beauties in the harem. However, and Zhang Guo turned mercilessly towards Zhao Gagong, each step he took exuding determination and ruthlessness. Trembling in fear, 
Zhao Gagong knelt down, begging for mercy, claiming everything was under the Han prince's orders. And Zhang Guo ignored him, crushing Zhao Gagong's hand underfoot, causing him to scream in agony and reveal the fate of En's family. Upon hearing that his wife and children were buried in a mass grave, and Zhang Guo's face darkened, and he immediately went there. At the mass grave, he witnessed beasts tearing at the corpses, filling his heart with anguish. With one swift blow, he shattered Zhao Gagong, then examined each body, searching for his beloved. Finally, he found the lifeless body of Wu Shuang, kneeling in agony as he cradled her and wailed. This sight filled Chen Fan with a sense of foreboding, and Zhang Guo, his towering figure trembling, eventually knelt down, cradling Wu Shuang's body in inconsolable grief. The child's body lay there, cold and lifeless. What broke in Zhang Guo's heart was that the child was covered in broken flesh and tattered clothing. This scene filled him with immense pain, causing his whole body to tremble uncontrollably. When he discovered two severed palms beside the child, his body shook violently, unable to express his grief. To protect the child, the mother held him tightly, miraculously escaping unscathed in this desolate graveyard, while their son in Wushuang. Unfortunately, and Zhang Guo's wife was brutally attacked by wild dogs and beasts. As he held the familiar palms, the calluses on his hands twisted his heart. Once, and Zhang Guo's wife was a virtuous lady, her delicate hands never touched dust. But since marrying and Zhang Guo, she silently bore the heavy burden of the family. And Zhang Guo was incorruptible, often rewarding his subordinates with his own salary and even giving to the families of fallen soldiers in war. Meanwhile, and Zhang Guo's wife had to fend for herself, struggling to support the family. In the end, it all led to a tragic fate. No, Ching Er, and Zhang Guo roared to the sky, tears in his eyes, his voice echoing across the land. And Zhang Guo's heart was surging with anger, burning like fire. However, even so, he still maintained his composure. Despite the raging anger in his heart, he endured the pain tightly holding onto his son's cold body with one hand and gently cradling his wife's remaining hands with the other, hurriedly returning to the Wenji money house. He knelt on the ground, pleading with the master of the house to lend a helping hand and save his family. And Zhang Guo's eyes were filled with earnestness. After hearing this, Chen Fan slowly spoke, your son may still have hope, but as for your wife's condition. He didn't finish his sentence, but the implication was already clear. And Zhang Guo understood. Please, master, save my child. He is the embodiment of the love between me and Ching Er. I am willing to pay any price to save him. As for Ching Er, and Zhang Guo closed his eyes in pain, took a deep breath, and said with difficulty. Then, he suddenly opened his eyes, set down his son's body and his wife's hands, and stood up slowly, saying word by word, Master, I will seek revenge. Rest assured, I will find a way to treat your wife and child. Chen Fan waved his hand, and a Wanji token appeared in front of Anjongguo once again. He knew that the anger in Anjongguo's heart was hard to extinguish. He was going to hunt down those who harmed his wife and child. At the moment Anjongguo left, Chen Fan did not pay any more attention, but turned his gaze to An Wushuang, lying peacefully there, and the pair of hands beside her. Xiao Yu, come over and see if there's a solution, he said, opening the encyclopedia. Yan Ruyu walked over, gazing at An Wushuang and the pair of hands, furrowing her brows slightly, then said, Master, An Wushuang can use the soul summoning technique to recall her yin soul, then cultivate the yin soul technique to strengthen her yin soul to the level of a human soul, thus being reborn. As for An Zhangguo's wife, it's temporarily impossible to perform the technique, but there should be a solution in the encyclopedia, it just requires permission to access. Chen Fan nodded preserved in Zhang Guo's wife in a jade box to prevent decay, and said, show me the soul summoning technique. Yan Ruyu nodded, okay. However, it's best for the soul summoning technique to be performed by a close relative whom the yin soul relied on heavily, preferably at the place of their death, making it easier to recall the soul. And Wu Shuang's yin soul is extremely fragile and may have already dissipated, unable to condense into a yin soul. Understood. Chen Fan nodded and began learning the soul summoning technique. With his immortal grade talent, learning progressed smoothly, and with Yan Ruyu's guidance, his progress in the technique was rapid. When An Zhangguo returned, he had already mastered the soul summoning technique. 
he immediately imparted the relevant information and cultivation methods to Njongwo. Njongwo devoted all his efforts to cultivation. Although his immortal grade talent made progress slightly slower, with Chen Fan's guidance, he made astonishing progress. In less than a day, he had grasped the essentials, hurriedly leaving within Wushuang's body. He realized the urgency of the situation, fearing that his son's soul had already dissipated, so he seized every moment. And Wushuang's soul power is too weak. It seems that it will take a full 49 days to successfully return. Chen Fan watched as An Zhongguo performed the soul summoning technique, but still did not see An Wushuang's soul appear. He realized that to call back An Wushuang's soul, he must build a soul summoning altar and go through the long process of 49 days to have a glimmer of hope. During this time, any disturbance is not allowed. However, the current situation in Da Han is extremely unstable, almost described as being on the brink of disaster. His brow furrowed, with the king of Han dead, and Zhang Wo devoted himself wholeheartedly to saving his wife and children. The country will inevitably be in turmoil, and the historical rebel forces will surely rise again. The surrounding countries will not miss this excellent opportunity. Perhaps they will start with probing attacks observing and Zhongguo's reaction, but once they find him unresponsive, they will definitely launch a full-scale invasion. At that time, whether it is the rebel forces or foreign powers, occupying the capital of Da Han, will it affect and Zhongguo's soul summoning process? All of this is unknown, and Zhongguo obviously had concerns as well. While building the altar, he decisively reorganized the forces of the capital, firmly grasping control between the 108 generals. He then ordered these 108 generals to fully defend the capital. They must persevere for 49 days. Zhu Yu, during these long days, no matter what means you use, you must protect the capital of Da Han. And Zhang Guo instructed one of his generals. This general was tall, 1.83 meters, with a slender figure, bright eyes, a resolute face, and had reached the later stage of the spirit realm. Yes, General, Zhu Yu immediately responded. I have my ancestral blood slaughter formation, which can surely guard the capital of Da Han. In the past, 30,000 new troops could confront the king of Wu's million troops head on. 108 generals are enough to repel the 100,000 Yulin army of Da Han. Now, he controls nearly a 100,000 Yulin army and tens of thousands of city defense forces. How could he be afraid? No wonder there is no blood slaughter formation in the system resources. It turns out to be in Zhang Guo's ancestral method. Seeing this scene, Chen Fan suddenly realized. But why hasn't the reward appeared for this transaction yet? Is it because the system deems this transaction unsuccessful? Or is it waiting for in Zhang Guo's wife and children to be resurrected? Or, has in Zhang Guo's heart not returned yet? He furrowed his brow, speculated for a while, but still couldn't figure it out. So he shook his head, no longer entangled. The system has its own judgment criteria, and further contemplation is futile. Next, he decided to continue practicing, delve into the encyclopedia, and enrich his knowledge. In a moment of thought, he began to plan his next steps, execute the trades. In addition, the opening of the ancient hunting ground is also in the plan, starting to select envoys. This is the first time he publicly stated recruiting envoys for the Wanji Bank, which is related to the reputation of the Wanji Bank so caution is necessary. With the strength of the later stage of the spirit realm, little M.I., together with Xiao Qing, should be able to handle the task. Thinking of this, he did not hesitate, immediately summoned Xiao Qing and Xiao Yu, and flew to the opening location of the ancient hunting ground together. The opening of the ancient hunting ground is a grand event that occurs once every three years for the entire eastern region. Various forces will send outstanding young people under the age of 20 to participate and many geniuses from the central region will also come to experience. With the attention of major powers in the eastern region and forces like the Lingyun sect in the central region, more and more eyes are now focused on this land, all hoping to discover contemporary geniuses. As the ancient hunting ground is about to open, more and more martial artists are gathering in the land of Dachin. Against this backdrop, Chen Fan finally arrives in the Black City, weary from his journey but filled with anticipation and longing for the future. His eyes betray determination and decisiveness, as if silently reminding himself to press forward no matter the challenges. The narrow and crowded streets of Black City bustle with people of various backgrounds, their energies mixing together. 
Chen Fan absorbs this unique atmosphere, feeling a surge of excitement and expectation. He knows that this will be the stage for him to showcase his strength and the starting point for his great achievements. Every corner of Black City is filled with challenges and opportunities. Chen Fan takes a deep breath, calming his inner self, ready to face whatever lies ahead. He believes that with hard work and dedication, he will eventually carve out his own place in this mysterious land. After leaving the Wenji Money House on the top of Lingyun Mountain, Prince Chin Jung of Great Chin hurriedly made his way to the camp of the Chin King to report on the situation at the Wenji Money House. Upon learning that the Wenji Money House had handed over a Wenji token to Chin Jung, the Chin King was overjoyed. The master of the Wenji Money House was cunning and unpredictable. He could only be appeased, not offended. You performed remarkably well, Ninth Prince, praised the Chin King. He knew that with the information from the Wenji Money House, he launched a preemptive attack on Da Chu and, through the transactions with the Wenji Money House, his strength reached the mid-stage of the Lingling realm, catching Da Chu off guard and gaining fruitful results. Now, he had two reasons for staying outside. Firstly, there was a rebellion within Da Chu, and he needed to pacify the rebels and stabilize the situation. Secondly, there was internal unrest in Da Chu, with various forces exerting pressure, and he wanted to see if there was an opportunity to profit from Da Chu again. Thank you for your praise, Father King, Chin Zheng respectfully replied, secretly delighted. He sensed that the king was beginning to favor him. You don't need to return to the capital immediately, head to the Black City instead. Receive the various forces at the ancient hunting grounds and make sure they are satisfied, ordered the Chin King. Chin Zheng's pupils dilated as he heard this, his eyes gleaming with joy. In the past, such major events at the ancient hunting grounds were handled by the crown prince, but now the king was sending him, what did this mean? Father King, your child will do his best and not fail the mission, Chin Zheng promised solemnly. Very well, nodded the Chin King looking pleased at Chin Zheng. Recently, he had followed Chin Hai's advice to confront the Wenji money house, resulting in the annihilation of a hundred thousand troops and heavy casualties, putting Great Chin in jeopardy. Then, he followed Chin Zheng's advice to cooperate with the Wenji money house, expanding the territory and greatly increasing the strength, enhancing the prestige of Great Chin. How could he not notice such a huge change? This also exposed the gap between Chin Hai and Chin Zheng. He was even considering whether to change the position of the crown prince. Let's see how the ancient hunting grounds performance this time. Higher, this is your last chance. I hope you don't disappoint me, the Chin King decided in his heart. At that moment, Chin Zheng hesitated for a moment, but still told the king about Chin Lao's attack on the envoys of the Wenji Money House. This matter involved the Wenji Money House and had to be reported truthfully. Chin Zheng said firmly, How dare you? The Chen King's face changed suddenly, becoming extremely angry. Chen Hai. He immediately thought of Chen Hai. As the king of Great Chen, he was well aware of the close relationship between Chen Hai and Chen Lao, so he naturally suspected Chen Hai. Was it Chen Hai who instigated this? If so, he would not hesitate to remove Chen Hai from the position of crown prince, even punished severely. Chen Hai had offended the Wenji money house. This was a path to self-destruction. The Chen King narrowed his eyes, his expression darkening. Chen Hai was filled with anger and suspicion, starting to doubt whether Chen Zheng intentionally put him in a difficult situation. After all, Chen Zheng was the one who directly benefited. Chen Wang ordered a thorough investigation into the matter, vowing to punish the mastermind behind the scenes. With his trusted aides by his side wielding the Shangfang sword, personally overseeing the investigation, Chen Zheng secretly reveled in his success. Although he did not directly harm Chen Hai, all of this was the result of his careful planning. He knew he had sinned beyond redemption. Leaving Chen Wang and hurrying to the Black City, Chen Zheng immediately sought out Meng Tian, excitedly saying that he had originally planned to frame the crown prince, but did not expect the prince to fall into their trap. Truly a stroke of luck for them. Meng Tian also smiled as the crown prince's mistake had almost secured their victory. However, the crown prince had not yet lost, so they could not let their guard down. Meng Tian reminded Chen Zheng that the crown prince's participation in the ancient hunting grounds might attract the attention of forces like the Lingyun sect, and Chen Wang might not necessarily depose the crown prince. 
The Lingyun sect was a top power on the continent, influential and powerful, with an impact on countries like Dachin. Chen Zheng noted Mengshan's concerns but did not pay much attention to them, asking if the king would support the Lingyun sect. Meng Tian affirmed this, even suggesting that the king might side with the Lingyun sect. If the crown prince could not become their disciple, he would face mortal danger. Chen Zheng realized the gap in strength between himself and the crown prince, which would affect the outcome of the ancient hunting grounds. He began to consider whether to make a deal with the Wanji money house to enhance his chances. Meanwhile, Chen Hai angrily suspected whether the king was weakening his power, his gaze fixed on Chen Wang's direction, filled with anger and dissatisfaction. He felt belittled, even suspecting whether the king wanted Chen Zheng to replace him. His rage was uncontrollable, exuding a fierce aura all around him. Your Highness, there is no need to worry, for in the Great Chen Empire, no one is qualified to compete with you for the position of crown prince, not even the ninth prince, Chen Zheng. Just then, a venerable voice suddenly spoke. The favor Chen Wang shows to Chen Zheng originates from the support of the Wenji Money House. For the crown prince of Chen, the choice between joining the Lingyun sect or offending the Wenji Money House is not a difficult decision. He listened to the advice of an elderly man in a black robe, feeling suddenly enlightened. He knew his father, the king, values interests above all else, never considering emotions only focusing on weighing the pros and cons and making decisive decisions. Between the Lingyun sect and the Wanji money house, the king would undoubtedly choose to support the Lingyun sect. Therefore, he decided that he must join the Lingyun sect. At that moment, he finally understood why the elderly man in the black robe had helped him break through before. Chin Zheng, I will make sure you are forever trapped in the ancient hunting grounds. Don't even think about contending for the throne of Great Chin with me. Wenji Money House, wait for me to step out of the ancient hunting grounds and join the Lingyun sect, that will be the moment of your downfall. After arriving in the Black City, Chen Fan let Xiao Yu play freely while he put on a golden mask and walked the streets, ready to assess the qualities of this group of geniuses. At the same time, he also wanted to understand the character of these geniuses. Recruiting messengers to serve the Wenji Money House must not be taken lightly. The Black City was originally an inconspicuous small city in the Great Chin Territory, but since the discovery of the ancient hunting grounds nearby, it had overnight gained great fame. The entire Great Chin attached great importance to it, immediately expanding it tenfold, and it is still expanding to this day. Now, the city's size is several times larger than before. From afar, it looks like a giant beast coiled on the ground. Even so, the city is still bustling with people and all major inns are packed. In other parts of Great Chin, spirit profound realm warriors are already rare, spirit agile realm warriors are even rarer, and experts in the spirit transformation realm are extremely rare. But here, spirit profound realm warriors are abundant, spirit agile realm warriors are numerous, and even experts in the spirit transformation realm occasionally appear. Only the strong in the spirit communication realm have not been heard of. Chen Fan walked with mixed emotions, couldn't help but sigh that Great Chen still appears weak. The Wanji Money House cannot be confined to this place and must expand quickly. Take advantage of this ancient hunting ground to gain fame once and for all. His eyes flickered slightly as he walked towards a tea house. The ancient hunting ground was about to open, and the population of the Black City was rapidly increasing, making tea houses, inns, and taverns the most crowded places. To gather information, this was undoubtedly the best choice. That lady must be very charming. When Chen Fan entered the tea house, he immediately attracted everyone's attention. Even though he wore a golden mask that covered his face, he couldn't hide his tall figure and unique aura, naturally becoming the center of attention. Despite his aloof demeanor, as if a sign saying, do not disturb, was written on his forehead, no one approached to bother him. Chen Fan was already accustomed to such stares, as long as he didn't cause trouble, he could just enjoy the attention. He calmly sat down at a recently vacated table, ordered a pot of tea, and prepared to listen to various news. A group of male warriors began to raise their voices, trying to attract the attention of the new beautiful women. Chen Fan felt a bit helpless as he watched the men's actions under their masks, secretly sighing. These men, they really have it tough. Although he is also a man, theoretically, men should understand each other 
but his orientation is quite normal. Even though this ancient hunting ground is hosted in Dachin this time, in reality, there are only 10 spots available for use by the Dachin country. In comparison, other major countries have dozens or even hundreds of spots. As the top dynasty in the eastern region, Dajo has a thousand spots. Even some small countries reserve a spot to discover talents. People were discussing animatedly, and Chen Fan also started listening, trying to gather the information he needed. With so many geniuses gathered together, the scene was spectacular. He couldn't help but wonder, who would stand out and outshine everyone in this ancient hunting ground? Princess Tang Yuyu of the Tang Dynasty not only had a stunning appearance, but also reached the early stage of the spirit realm in strength. She excelled in body techniques, with extremely fast speed, making it impossible for warriors of the same level to catch her figure. However, in Chen Fan's eyes, Prince Song Miaosai of the Song Dynasty was even stronger than her. Song Miaosai was proficient in array formations, the only young array master in the eastern region. The power of array formations should not be underestimated, and Prince Zhu Gorui of the Ming Dynasty was renowned for his unparalleled hard martial arts. It was said that he had trained his body to be as tough as metal, making it difficult for blades and spears to penetrate, with defenses stronger than puppets. Only spiritual weapons could break through his defense. Chen Fan became very interested in this. These highly anticipated geniuses were undoubtedly the top talents in the eastern region, and they were the targets he wanted to compete with. Did they understand the talents from the central region? Knowing the enemy is the key to winning a hundred battles. Unfortunately, the intelligence on the central region was still mysterious and unpredictable. Every time, the central region was a strong opponent to the top talents of the eastern region, and this time was likely no exception. However, this time might be different. Have you forgotten about Prince Ji Han of the Dajo dynasty? He had a natural icy physique, cultivated the Dajo dynasty's national martial art, the frozen ice art, and his cultivation had advanced by leaps and bounds, with astonishing combat power and unparalleled icy spiritual power. Maybe he wouldn't lose to the talents from the central region. There's also Sword Blind of the Sword Dynasty. His swordsmanship was amazing, hailed as the top swordmaster of the younger generation in the eastern region. Six months ago, with the cultivation of the later stage of the spirit profound realm, he killed a warrior in the early stage of the spirit realm with one sword. Now, he has been out of sight for half a year, and no one knows his true strength. Ji Han, Sword Blind, Tang Yu Yu, Chen Fan kept them firmly in mind while also paying attention to the talents from the central region. It sounds like their talents are also extremely outstanding. Rumor has it that Song Miaosai has a special affection for Tang Yuyu, but whether this news is true or false, no one can say for sure. Tang Yuyu is known for her exquisite beauty, which naturally attracts admirers. Could this beauty be the rumored Tang Yuyu? The likelihood seems slim, doesn't it? How could Tang Yuyu possibly be here? However, Everyone seems to be debating who is more beautiful and who has a more charming figure between her and Tang Yuyu. As the conversation veers into more absurd topics, he can't help but feel a bit displeased. Are men only capable of discussing women when they gather together? The beautiful girl, what is her name? As a prince of the Great Sui Dynasty, he was one of the top three geniuses, possessing powerful strength in the later stage of the spiritual realm. Full of confidence, he walked up to her without hesitation and asked, can you tell me your identity? She is from the Wanji Money House. Chen Fan elegantly raised his teacup, his rosy lips slowly parting as he tasted the tea. The prince of the Great Sui Dynasty looked at her, a flame ignited in his heart, making him bolder. When he heard the name Wanji Money House, although he had never heard of it before, he speculated that it might not be a powerful force. So he suggested, Are you interested in joining our Great Sui Dynasty for an adventure together? He believed that the foundation of the Great Sui Dynasty was enough to protect the people of Wenji Money House. However, she politely declined, saying, No need, I'm just here to recruit apprentices, not planning to enter the ancient hunting grounds. Hearing this, Chen Fan smiled faintly, ignoring his provocation, just placing a few gold coins on the coffee table and then leaving directly. The prince of the Great Sui Dynasty frowned, wondering why she suddenly left. His face turned ugly especially feeling the strange gazes of the warriors behind him. He sneered, Wenji Money House? Why have I never heard of it? 
He disdained such a force, thinking they were not worth mentioning. Although Chen Fan heard his words, he just smiled lightly, not caring. He had long been indifferent to such provocations. However, his Qingla sword at his waist seemed somewhat dissatisfied. It flew out of its scabbard quickly, circled around the prince of the Great Sui Dynasty, and then quietly returned to the scabbard. Meanwhile, the prince of the Great Sui Dynasty was still mocking, what a pity for such a beautiful woman, Sai. That skin. Just now I took a closer look, really, hum? What's wrong? He then noticed that his companions and the surrounding warriors were all chuckling. Perplexed, he furrowed his brow and followed their gazes, only to find that his clothes had been cut into two round holes, and his lower body was completely exposed, extremely embarrassing. Several female warriors passing by immediately scolded, isn't this the prince of the great sway? Behaving so shamelessly, how disgraceful. The prince of the great sway dynasty was overwhelmed with shame, quickly covering his private parts, his face flushing red. Others also cast him strange looks, so he hurriedly left. Seeing this scene, Chen Fan smiled helplessly and said to the Qinglaw sword, Xiao Qing, didn't I tell you not to unsheathe easily? The Qinglaw sword vibrated as if expressing its dissatisfaction. Bullying the master is absolutely not allowed. Chen Fan reassured softly, All right, all right. However, in this place, where experts abound, it's better for us to keep a low profile. They understood each other's thoughts and were perfectly in sync. Across the tea house, a mysterious figure squinted slightly, staring at the green sword at Chen Fan's waist. It was a spiritual weapon. Could it be from the middle domain? He quickly disappeared from the spot, aware of everything happening in the tea house. As a mid-level expert in the spirit communication realm, he keenly caught the trail of the green sword. Faced with such a precious spiritual weapon, he couldn't help but feel a desire to seize it. Chen Fan, as a yin soul at the level of human soul, immediately sensed that he was being targeted. However, he did not rush to take action, but instead wandered around the black city, gathering intelligence, and then decided to leave. After leaving the city gate, he chose a deserted mountain path and soon found a suitable open space for battle. Standing still, he turned to the figure behind him and said, You've been following for so long, aren't you ready to make a move? Immediately, a terrifying aura of the mid-level spirit communication realm quickly locked onto Chen Fan. A middle-aged man rose into the air and looked down at him, praising, Your perception is good, the yin soul is powerful. Chen Fan calmly replied, What do you want from me? The middle-aged man squinted, not sensing any nervousness but instead smiled and said, If you're interested in joining my organization, I need to assess your potential and character. Chen Fan retorted, I don't think you are recruiting me. The middle-aged man paused for a moment when he heard about the boundless money bank, then smiled and said, This organization must be some insignificant force from a small country, right? How could I be interested in it? Chen Fan nodded and calmly replied, Guess why I'm here? The middle-aged man brazenly assessed Chen Fan and speculated, Since it's not to join the boundless money bank, you must be here to seek death. Chen Fan calmly said, You want my spiritual weapon, don't you? The middle-aged man chuckled, changed his mind, and said, I've decided to keep you and serve me well. Then, he displayed a powerful spiritual shield, ready to engage in battle with Chen Fan. After all, he was facing a spiritual weapon. In an instant, the green sword mercilessly pierced through the seemingly indestructible iron mountain shield. Contrary to expectations, there was no sound of impact as the green sword effortlessly penetrated the shield, showing no signs of resistance. The middle-aged man's expression was filled with horror, No, I am a royal subject of the great Zhou dynasty, you cannot treat me like this. However, the grim reaper had arrived, and the green sword ruthlessly pierced through his heart, ending his life then and there. The green sword trembled slightly, as if boasting its power. Chen Fan felt a slight surprise, not because of who he had killed, but because of the ruthless efficiency of the green sword. With just one strike, there were no ripples, and the opponent had already turned into dust. He had worried about causing a commotion, but now realized he had been overly cautious. Chen Fan realized that the power of the green sword far exceeded his imagination. He then decided to take the middle-aged man's bag of holding and left. Three days later, the ancient hunting ground opened. Chen Fan stood on the back of the Black Feathers Eagle, overlooking the hunting scene of the crowd. 
spirit realm powerhouses worked together to break the formation, while geniuses rushed in with special tokens in hand. Chen Fan practiced the Yin Soul technique with crossed legs, or immersed himself in the world of encyclopedias, absorbing wisdom. Seven days later, the Wanji Bank welcomed new customers once again. After entering the ancient hunting ground, geniuses were randomly placed in different locations. Chen Zheng had already figured out the situation, as the hunting ground was filled with a large number of fierce beasts with condensed malevolent energy. Killing these beasts could absorb the malevolent energy, strengthen their power, and temper their will. He hid in the shadows, observing a battle, with a mind for opportunism. He targeted the powerful beasts, as they contained a stronger malevolent energy, leading to more significant power enhancement. Chen Zheng's goal was to be among the top 1,000 on the giant spirit steel, enter the ladder to heaven, and become a top genius. However, his ultimate goal was to join the Wenji Bank. To ensure success, Chen Hai must be eliminated. Determination shone in Chen Zheng's eyes as he decisively made his move. The battle ahead is coming to an end, and Chen Zheng has thrown himself into the hunt, working tirelessly and even breaking into the top 1,000 at one point. However, the ancient hunting ground is filled with geniuses and powerful individuals, where Chen Zheng's talent and strength seem somewhat lacking, and his cultivation techniques and combat skills are not on par with others. On the third day, he was pushed out of the top 1,000, while Chen Hai continued to soar in the rankings. Feeling unable to keep up, Chen Zheng worried about being left far behind, realizing he couldn't continue like this. Exhausted and covered in wounds, he found a secluded spot to rest, contemplating his situation. Reluctantly, he turned his attention to the heaven and earth token in his hand. This passive acceptance left him feeling frustrated, as he preferred to take the initiative. Inside the Wenji Bank, Chen Fan noticed Chen Zheng and immediately sensed his defeat. Chen Zheng surveyed the splendid hall around him, his heart filled with complex emotions. Chen Fan bluntly asked about Chen Zheng's performance, learning that he had limited resources, Despite possessing valuable items like the boundary breaking blade, his talent seemed somewhat inferior. Chen Zheng hoped to enhance his talent, realizing it was the key to becoming stronger. Chen Fan understood Chen Zheng's needs but felt that the boundary breaking blade was not enough. Feeling helpless as his talismans were depleted in the previous day's battles, leaving only a four star divine shield talisman, Chen Zheng felt he had nothing substantial to offer in exchange. Chen Fan then made a request, asking for Chen Zheng's freedom, a full 100 years of freedom. This condition shocked Chen Zheng, but he also understood it was an opportunity. Perhaps this kind of freedom was what he needed to truly become powerful. Upon hearing this news, Chen Zheng's heart was filled with waves of excitement. He eagerly asked, If I agree, does that mean I will become the emissary of the Multiverse Bank? Chen Fan hesitated slightly before replying. I'm sorry, but no. Your character is good, but with your current talent and strength, you are not qualified to be the emissary of the Multiverse Bank. Even though the bank is short-staffed now, they cannot recruit casually. They have strict selection criteria. Chen Zheng's face darkened immediately. His talent became a constraint. Wait a minute, can't the bank owner help me improve my talent? If it is enhanced, can it meet the standard? A glimmer of hope flashed in Chen Zheng's mind. Chen Fan shook his head and said, No, I can only give you a third grade talent, but to be an emissary, you need a first grade talent. Even if you are willing to sacrifice your lifelong freedom, you cannot exchange it for a first grade talent. Chen Zheng, however, persisted and asked firmly, What if I am willing to exchange my lifelong freedom for a first grade talent? Chen Fan once again refused gently, It's impossible because your lifelong freedom cannot be exchanged for a first grade talent. Chen Zheng's mood plummeted. After a moment of contemplation, Chen Fan asked, Why do you want to become the emissary of the Multiverse Bank? Chen Zheng replied without hesitation, I want to challenge Chen Hai and compete for the position of Crown Prince. Chen Hai has a fifth grade talent, and has even advanced to the early stage of the spiritual realm. With his abundant resources, he will surely perform outstandingly in the ancient hunting grounds, and even have the opportunity to enter the Spirit Cloud Sect. At that time, his position as crown prince will be in jeopardy. Chen Fan nodded after hearing this, and after a moment of thought, he said, although you cannot become the emissary, you can become an apprentice of the bank. Based on your future performance, 
you may be promoted to the position of branch manager of the bank, assisting in managing the multiverse bank on the top of Mount Lingyun in Great Chin. Chin Zheng widened his eyes, the previous disappointment vanished, replaced by ecstasy. Becoming a branch manager was equally significant to him, even comparable to being an emissary. He couldn't wait and asked, what do I need to offer as conditions? Chen Fan listed, first, lifelong freedom, second, the boundary-breaking blade, and also, full assistance in collecting and constructing the materials needed for the teleportation array. In return, you will receive a third-grade talent and become an apprentice of the multiverse bank. Chen Zheng agreed without hesitation, handing over the boundary-breaking blade to Chen Fan. Having a third-grade talent and becoming an apprentice would undoubtedly be of great help to him. Besides, he was already in a predicament. Chen Fan immediately said, Good, this is a soul contract. Once signed, you will be an apprentice of the multiverse bank. Chen Zheng accepted without hesitation, the soul contract entering his forehead and forming a contract with his soul before returning to Chen Fan's hand. Watching the soul contract, symbolizing their agreement, Chen Fan nodded, put it in a jade box, and stored it in the warehouse. Then, he stripped off his own third-grade talent and infused it into Chen Zheng's talent. Chen Zheng's eyes sparkled with excitement, and he felt like a new person, as if the problem that had been bothering him had been effortlessly solved. He bowed to the master of the manor and said, Master, rest assured, Chen Zheng will never let down the title of apprentice of the Wenji Money House. My third-grade talent will not be wasted on me. Filled with joy, Chen Zheng left the Wenji Money House with full confidence. As the sound of a ding rang out, the ninth transaction was completed, reaching 100% completion. The task reward was immediately received. He obtained a diagram of a teleportation array. Just as I expected, 100% completion. Chen Fan was not surprised. While the boundary-breaking blade is precious, a third-grade talent is truly invaluable. By taking Chen Zheng, who already possesses a third-grade talent, as an apprentice of the Wenji Money House, Although it deprived him of his freedom, it ensured the successful completion of the task. The rewards given by the system were also quite generous, and the teleportation array diagram was exactly what I needed. Chen Fan secretly rejoiced. The materials needed to build the teleportation array include the diagram of the teleportation array, the boundary-breaking blade, the void shuttle, and the foundation stone, of which two have been obtained. Looking at the ordinary white jade dagger in his hand, Chen Fan felt the immense power contained within it, as if it could tear through space. Although the boundary-breaking blade is not a spiritual weapon, its sharpness is unparalleled, making it a rare and valuable weapon. After pondering for a moment, Chen Fan stored it in the warehouse and then focused on studying the diagram of the teleportation array. This diagram can be used to build the teleportation array, making it a good time to learn. Chen Fan has always been eager to learn array formations including alchemy and runic manufacturing. So, he began to study the diagram of the teleportation array, gradually mastering many basic knowledge about array formations. Array formations are an extremely profound art, with a difficulty comparable to martial arts cultivation. Even with Chen Fan's outstanding comprehension, progress was still slow. He secretly hoped to obtain another time card. However, he did not relax. Instead, he worked even harder. As the saying goes, diligence can make up for clumsiness, and he was determined to make the most of every moment. Meanwhile, after obtaining the third grade talent, Chen Zheng's cultivation soared rapidly. Spiritual apertures within his body continued to open. Originally, it would take a month to open one spiritual aperture, but now it only took a day. Such speed was truly astonishing. Seven days later, the last spiritual aperture opened, and Chen Zheng's eyes emitted a determined light. All 108 spiritual apertures were fully opened. Next, he just needed to find the breakthrough opportunity to advance to the initial stage of the spirit realm. The remaining 16 days must be treasured. Despite his growing strength, there was still a huge gap between him and the top 1000 records in front of the giant spirit steel. Simply waiting for the opportunity to come was foolish, so Chen Zheng decided to seek the breakthrough opportunity through continuous killing. Upon hearing Chin Hai's words, Chin Zheng's heart sank. He never expected the crown prince Chin Hai to plot against him at this moment. However, Chin Zheng was not discouraged. Despite his recent breakthrough, he showed no signs of weakness. 
Instantly, he emanated a strong aura of the early stage of the spirit realm, as if he had broken through long ago, completely without the traces of a novice. Jin Bowan's expression turned extremely unpleasant upon seeing this, but since he was already here, he shouldn't expect to leave easily. Jin Zheng launched his attack without hesitation. Jin Buhan threatened. Jin Zheng, let us go, or the great Jin dynasty will be at odds with your great Qin dynasty. Jin Zheng sneered. You do not represent the great Jin dynasty. Then, he launched a fierce attack. Moments later, Jin Buhan and his comrades all fell to the ground, becoming lifeless bodies. Jin Buwan's white clothes stained red. After taking the Qinkin bag, Qin Zheng decisively left. In the following days, Qin Zheng's ranking remained in the bottom 10, holding steady until the final day arrived. Suddenly, the giant Ling monument in the sky stopped rotating. The heavenly stairway is about to open. All geniuses watched in shock. The trial is about to come. Qin Zheng's eyes were determined as he stepped onto the heavenly stairway. This was just the first step. True glory needed to be demonstrated on the heavenly stairway. In the next moment, a mysterious change occurred in the formation of the ancient hunting ground. Qin Zheng disappeared in the blink of an eye. When he came to his senses, there was a hundred-level heavenly stairway in front of him, surrounded by 999 geniuses. Qin Hai was the first to notice Qin Zheng, with a gloomy expression and a violent aura. You really broke through to the early stage of the spirit realm. You must have encountered a great opportunity, right? You're so lucky. Qin Zheng, fearless, coldly replied, To tell you the truth, I have become an apprentice of the Multiverse Bank. The breakthrough was all thanks to the Multiverse Bank. Qin Hai was stunned after hearing this. Jealousy giving way to mockery, you are truly lucky. To value a force like the Multiverse Bank. Qin Zheng, burning with anger, felt furious. Qin Hai sneered, Your realm is not even stable, yet you dare to be my enemy? This dispute caught the attention of other geniuses who hoped for the two to fight and reduce their competition. Suddenly, a voice came, Chin Hai, what's there to talk about with a newly breakthrough waste at the early stage of the spirit realm? Go challenge the heavenly stairway first. Upon hearing this, Chin Hai's expression changed instantly, and he replied with a flattering tone, of course, your highness the crown prince. Song Miao Sai, isn't the person next to him the crown prince Ji Han of the great Zhou dynasty? It is rumored that Song Miaosai has always been Ji Han's follower, so it seems that there is some truth to it. Does this mean that Qin Hai is the little brother of Ji Han's little brother? It's simply ridiculous. The surrounding discussions were in full swing, and Qin Hai's face instantly darkened. He glared at the speaker angrily, then his expression changed. Those geniuses from the middle domain. Qin Hai often interacted with Ji Han, Song Miaosai, and others and often heard about the geniuses from the middle domain. How dare he provoke them? He could only bury his anger deep in his heart. Taking a deep breath, he resolutely stepped onto the ladder to the sky, under the gaze of the public. Seeing this scene, Chen Zheng became even more disdainful of his elder brother. He turned out to be just a self-righteous guy. The reason why Song Miaosai let Chen Hai be the first to climb the ladder to the sky was simply to test the situation. In other words, Qin Hai was nothing but their touchstone. If such a person ascended to the position of the Qin King, the Millennium Foundation of Great Qin would be in jeopardy. Qin Zheng's gaze was firm, determined to seize the position of the Crown Prince of Qin. Step by step, Qin Hai steadily moved forward. As a fifth-ranked talent with the initial stage of the spirit realm, it would be difficult for him to stop in a short time. According to past experience, Climbing the ladder to the sky was a comprehensive test for geniuses. Only those with outstanding talent and willpower could reach higher levels. The ladder was divided into five levels, with the first 30 steps being the first team, of moderate difficulty, but eliminating most geniuses. Steps 31 to 60 were the second team, with greater difficulty, also eliminating many geniuses. Steps 61 to 90 were the third team, extremely difficult and those who could reach this far were famous in the East Domain and had the opportunity to enter the outer gate of the Spirit Cloud sect. Steps 91 to 97 were the fourth team, extremely challenging, only the top talents of the East Domain had the chance to step in, and once they did, they had the opportunity to become inner disciples of the Spirit Cloud sect. As for the last three steps of the ladder, 
It had been a long time since anyone had set foot in them, right? Once someone reached them, they would undoubtedly become the successor of the Spirit Cloud sect. Would anyone climb the last three steps of the ladder this year? The discussions continued, and finally, people began to pay attention to Chen Hai. This little brother of Ji Han was still moving forward? He's already on the 30th step of the ladder, right? Is he going to challenge the 31st step and enter the second team? Hearing the skeptical voices, Chen Hai was extremely angry and couldn't help but accelerate his pace. Step by step, the 59th step of the ladder. This Chin Hai is so powerful, he's about to enter the third team. Below, more and more geniuses turned their eyes to Chin Hai. At this moment, Chin Hai felt his feet getting heavier, and as he looked at the one step ahead of him, he exerted all his strength to step up again. By now, he was panting, his consciousness blurred, and his will about to collapse. Helplessly, he sat down on the 60th step of the ladder, with no more strength to move upward. The person in front of him was walking very fast. Obviously, he was influenced by the discussion below and wanted to prove himself. Such behavior is really foolish. His goal is to enter the spirit cloud sect, not to compete with others. Chin Jung suddenly felt that Chin Hai was not even worthy to be his competitor. This mindset, this performance, this demeanor, none of them are his match. Swish, step, then, a large group of geniuses began to climb the ladder to heaven. After being taught by Chin Hai, everyone climbed steadily. As expected, most people stayed in the first and second echelons, they will be favored by the third-rate forces of the central domain, or return to their own dynasties. About a few hundred people entered the third echelon, they have the opportunity to join the spirit cloud sect. The second-rate forces of the central domain will also compete for these talents. Tang Yu Yu, Zhu Gorui, Song Miaosai, and other central domain geniuses are in the fourth echelon. Chen Zheng was not impatient, but continued to observe and adjust his state. These geniuses from the central domain are indeed worthy of being from the central domain. The weakest of them are in the fourth echelon. Now, besides him, there are six people who have not stepped onto the ladder to heaven. Ji Han, Jian Xiaozi, and four other geniuses from the central domain. Just then, there was suddenly a debate in the crowd. The blue-clothed geniuses from the central domain began to taunt, saying, Is this the level of talent from the eastern domain? All being trampled under our feet? Not a single one can win? The geniuses from the eastern domain immediately retorted, Are you blind? We also have many talents in the fourth echelon. The blue-clothed genius sneered and continued, There are distinctions between strong and weak in the fourth echelon, right? Where are your eastern domain talents on the 97th level ladder? I think you shouldn't call yourselves geniuses, waste suits you better. You, we still have Ji Han and Jian Xiaozi. One is a sissy, the other is blind, so what's the big deal? Suddenly, emotions ran high. Swish, swish, immediately, Jian Xiaozi and Ji Han made their move. Swish, 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 almost at the same time as the three geniuses from the central domain, they stepped onto the ladder to heaven. Step, step. Then, these five individuals seemed to be competing, none willing to fall behind. First echelon, second echelon, about to enter the fifth echelon? All the geniuses' pupils contracted, their gazes focused. These five people almost represented the top level of all the geniuses present. Moreover, many eastern domain geniuses were secretly cheering for Jian Xiaozi and Ji Han, hoping they could surpass the central domain geniuses. From the beginning, this group of central domain geniuses looked down on the talents from the eastern domain, never taking them seriously. At first, they felt aggrieved, but even talents of the caliber of Tang Yuyu, Zhu Gorui, and Song Miaosai were surpassed. They could only pin their hopes on Ji Han and Jian Xiaozi. Step, the five of them joined forces and stepped onto the 98th level ladder to heaven. Today is the last day the ancient hunting ground will be open. Chen Fan did not continue to cultivate, but left the 10,000 realms bank and stood on the head of the black feathered eagle owl, arriving at the high altitude of the ancient hunting ground. Due to Little Yu's ancient bloodline purity reaching 10%, it has undergone a surge in the past month. Its size has doubled, exceptionally domineering, and its aura continues to rise, now reaching the level of spiritual connection. Chirp chirp. Therefore, as soon as it appeared, 
The flying beasts ridden by other forces around immediately felt fear. Like Chen Fan, who attracted numerous geniuses from various forces, most of them came from the central domain. There is also a part from the great Zhou dynasty. In the eastern domain, many countries are vying for hegemony, each with their own opposing forces and geniuses. They are unlikely to cooperate easily with each other because they are afraid of being seen as spies and fear betrayal. The representatives of these forces mostly have reached the stage of spiritual transformation realm, and the strong ones in the soul transformation realm are relatively rare. The most powerful representative among them is Zhao Yi, who has reached the late stage of the soul transformation realm, from the spirit cloud sect. Zhao Yi looks proud, as if indifferent to everything. The representatives of other forces usually revolve around him, flattering and flattering. Zhou Qi is the representative of the great Zhou dynasty. He flattered and said, Envoy Zhao, your white feather eagle is truly purebred, flawless, and quite valuable, isn't it? Zhao Yi smiled faintly and replied, This was a gift from someone else. I am not sure about its specific value, but it has recently broken through to the early stage of spiritual transformation realm. Zhou Qi was stunned after hearing this and exclaimed in amazement, Flying beasts are usually in the spiritual profound realm. Flying beasts with the strength of the spiritual dynamic realm are already very rare. Those in the spiritual transformation realm are even rarer, and it's hard to find one in the entire eastern domain. Even the flying beast owned by the Zhou Emperor is only in the late stage of the spiritual dynamic realm. Zhou Qi's words were clearly deliberate flattery towards Zhao Yi, and Zhao Yi, upon hearing this, was quite pleased, smiling and saying, I think its flying speed is too slow. I am planning to replace it. Zhou Qi secretly thought to himself, such a show off. Other representatives of the forces also praised one after another, saying, Envoy Zhao's white feather eagle's bloodline should be very pure, it should have just matured, right? There is still a lot of room for growth in the future. Truly worthy of being the envoy of the spirit cloud sect. Listening to these words of praise, Zhao Yi became even more complacent and even the white feather eagle under his feet appeared extremely proud, looking down on the surrounding flying beasts and constantly emitting screeching sounds. Stay away from yourself. It seems that getting too close to oneself will devalue it. It is a kind of blasphemy towards oneself. Swish. At this moment, the black feathered eagle, twice as large as the white feathered eagle, flew in at an extremely fast speed, exuding the aura of an initial stage spirit communication realm, as if a king had descended. At the same time, the suppression from the bloodline made the face of the white feathered eagle drastically change, immediately lowering its proud head and shivering. Zhou Qi and others flying beasts were even more unbearable, retreating one after another, descending hundreds of meters, not daring to fly at the same height as the black feathered eagle. Zhou Qi and others, who were fawning just now, suddenly felt diminished, unable to communicate normally with Zhao Yi, and immediately became angry. As for Zhao Yi, his face turned black as well. If he hadn't tightly controlled the white feathered eagle beneath him, it would have already descended below. This made his face burn. Just a moment ago, he was boasting about how powerful his flying beast was, but now it was being suppressed by a suddenly appearing black feathered eagle, unable to lift its head, even having to submit. Where is his dignity? Who are you? Zhou Qi keenly sensed Zhao Yi's dissatisfaction and immediately knew that his chance to perform had come. As long as he served Zhou Qi well, the number of geniuses from the great Zhou dynasty joining the spirit cloud sect would increase. By then, Zhou Huang would also be pleased, and his rewards would naturally be greater. So, without hesitation, he stepped forward, staring at Chen Fan and reprimanding, Who are you? Do you understand the rules? Do you know who the person in front of you is? He is the envoy of the spirit cloud sect. Get down quickly. Upon hearing this, Chen Fan breathed a sigh of relief. Finally, no one is paying attention to my beautiful face and devilish figure. To avoid causing trouble with my appearance, he wore a golden mask, but his figure attracted countless covetous glances. This time, he directly put on a black robe to perfectly conceal his figure. Now, it looks good. Chen Fan did not take the disrespect of these people to heart, but the black feathered eagle was furious. How could it allow its master to be insulted? Immediately, a domineering roar sounded, as if it could pierce eardrums. Swish. Then, 
the white feathered eagle and the flying beasts under Zhou Qi and others all fell, descending hundreds of meters again. This, Zhou Qi and the others' faces changed drastically. A black feathered eagle with the strength of the spirit communication realm? How is this possible? For a moment, Zhou Qi and the others instantly realized that they had kicked the iron plate. The identity of the man and the eagle in front of them was definitely not simple. They had to first figure out the other party's identity and background before deciding whether to continue flattery. Who are you? Zhao Yi's face was extremely ugly at this moment, his eyes staring at Chen Fan with a dark expression. Especially when he had to look up at Chen Fan while speaking, he was burning with anger. He could lower his head in the central domain, but in a small eastern domain, he still had to bow to others. In this remote place, shouldn't he be unbridled? In this eastern domain, if you don't give face to the spirit cloud sect, you will be the first. This envoy will see which force you represent. Feeling the gaze of Zhou Qi and the others, he couldn't retreat further. Otherwise, how would these people view him, Zhao Yi? How would they view the spirit cloud sect? Spirit cloud sect? Upon hearing these three words, Chen Fan finally showed a hint of interest, raising his eyebrows slightly and calmly saying, In the multiverse bank, I am just a female slave. Zhao Yi's heart was burning with anger. The Qianzhuang of the Ten Thousand Realms? He racked his brain quickly, trying to recall all the top forces and hidden families in the central domain, but he couldn't remember ever hearing about this name. He suppressed his inner fury and carefully scrutinized Zhou Qi, trying to figure out just who this Qianzhuang of the Ten Thousand Realms really was. After all, a female slave who could control a flying beast with spirit realm strength must have an extraordinary master behind her. Then, he saw the answer in Zhou Qi's eyes. It turned out that this Qianzhuang of the Ten Thousand Realms was nothing but a small insignificant force. Zhao Yi couldn't help but mock, Oh, the Qianzhuang of the Ten Thousand Realms, what an impressive title. This lord thought it was a powerful force, but turns out, it's just a nobody. Our Qianzhuang of the Ten Thousand Realms was indeed established not long ago, Chen Fan explained lightly. Upon hearing this, Zhou Qi and the others breathed a sigh of relief, their faces darkened, and anger burning fiercely. The representative of the other forces spoke first, with a tone of arrogance, Oh, so you guys have just been established recently? Seems like you're just a small, insignificant role. No wonder you dared to argue with the envoy from the Zhao clan. Perhaps you don't understand the terror and power of the spirit cloud sect? As the number one force in the central domain, we have powerful emperor realm experts. Do you small fries even deserve to provoke us? Although Zhou Qi was not the first to speak out, his tone was sharper, and he sternly shouted, it seems like you're only asking for trouble. Control the beasts under your feet. If you can't, you might as well hand them over to the Zhao envoy. Only someone with the status and strength like the Zhao envoy deserves to have powerful flying beasts in the spirit communication realm. The representatives of the other forces regretted not speaking up earlier and felt that Zhou Qi's words were more appropriate and aligned with the intentions of the Zhao envoy. Why didn't they think of saying that? Zhao Yi hadn't considered this initially, but upon hearing Zhou Qi's words, a glint of determination flashed in his eyes as he stared at the black feathered eagle and nodded. If you hand over the black feathered eagle to me, I can overlook the offense just now. The group of people continued to talk among themselves, and Chen Fan, who had initially ignored them, found it somewhat amusing. He looked down at Zhao Yi and asked, Do you even deserve to have little feather? Zhao Yi's eyelids twitched, and he immediately became furious. How dare you speak to the Zhao envoy like that? The representatives of the major forces became agitated. Chen Fan felt extremely irritated, and with a thought, little feather's bloodline suppression instantly reached its strongest point. With a roar, the aura of a king was fully released. Oh, you're looking for death. The representatives of the major forces riding their flying beasts one by one fainted and fell from the sky. The transforming spirit realm experts were shocked, while the spirit communication realm powerhouses were furious, activating their spirit power to fly in the air. Zhao Yi's white feathered eagle also let out a mournful cry and dove straight to the ground. Zhao Yi was almost exploding with anger, gathering a violent attack, his figure flickering as he charged towards Chen Fan. Other spirit communication realm experts also made their moves. Chen Fan calmly uttered a single word, leave. His jade fingers held a five-grade divine explosion talisman, 
gently flicking it. Five grade divine explosion talisman. Do you? Do you dare to detonate it? Zhao Yi and the others instantly froze, no longer daring to advance, gritting their teeth as they warned, considering yourself superior, using my life to exchange for yours, I won't lose out. What do you think? Chen Fan retorted. Zhao Yi clenched his teeth but dared not make any reckless moves. He felt an unprecedented humiliation. As an envoy of the Spirit Cloud Sect, he was actually intimidated by a small force. What's more, he didn't even have a five-grade divine shield talisman. Once hit by the five-grade divine explosion talisman, death was certain. He still had many good times ahead of him and certainly wouldn't die here. The Wanji Money House is excellent. Zhao Yi was filled with resentment, secretly thinking, you originally came to attract my disciples, didn't you? I, Zhao Yi, must see how you recruit talents for my Lingyun sect. No matter who you are interested in, my Lingyun sect will take the lead. Finally, peace descended, with no annoying noise. Chen Fan could finally focus on observing the situation on the stairway to heaven. When Zhao Yi and the others heard Chen Fan's words, they almost couldn't help but erupt in anger. In the end, they glanced at the five-ranked divine explosive talisman in Chen Fan's hand, but held back their anger, though their expressions showed extreme displeasure. Ji Han, sword blind, and three other geniuses from the central region stopped at the 98th step of the stairway to heaven, unable to move down another step. Sword blind, relying on his strong will, tried but when he stood on the 99th step of the stairway, the immense pressure forced him to kneel down and return to the 98th step. Silence surrounded them. Although Sword Blind failed, he was the only one among the five who had the strength and ability to attempt the 99th step of the stairway. Even Chen Fan couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. At the moment, the only one that caught his attention was Sword Blind. Ji Han's performance was decent, but his willpower was inferior to Sword Blind, and, although he had the strength to attempt the 99th step of the stairway, he gave up the opportunity to avoid embarrassment. Chen Fan shook his head. These were not the people he pursued. Overestimating one's abilities. Just then, at the foot of the stairway, the only genius from the central region who hadn't stepped onto the stairway, calmly uttered four words, displaying his arrogance. His name was Su Kaiming, from a certain family in the central region, who came to the ancient hunting grounds just to train himself, extremely arrogant. He also had a nickname, the Genius Butcher. In the past 20 days, he had killed over 500 people in the ancient hunting grounds, all of them talented individuals from the eastern region. Arrogant and conceited, at least Sword Blind had the strength to attempt the 99th step of the stairway, while your so-called geniuses from the central region didn't dare to challenge it. Indeed, I believe that your so-called geniuses from the central region are just a bunch of talkative geniuses. The geniuses from the eastern region sided with Sword Blind, especially when they saw that Su Kaiming was speaking they retorted one after another. A group of ignorant frogs at the bottom of a well. Su Kaiming sneered. Without wasting words, he stepped directly onto the stairway. Step, step, Su Kaiming moved forward step by step. First team, second team, fourth team, step, Su Kaiming didn't hesitate. He directly stepped onto the 98th step of the stairway. All eyes were on Su Kaiming. They wanted to see if this arrogant guy had the corresponding strength. Ji Han's eyes flickered slightly. He could feel that the difficulty of each of the last three steps of the stairway had greatly increased. The 98th step of the stairway had almost exhausted all his strength. Could Su Kaiming climb the 99th step of the stairway? Step, in front of everyone, Su Kaiming paused for a moment, then lifted his foot again, stepping onto the 99th step of the stairway, his body sinking, kneeling on one knee. But then, he steadied himself. Wow. The faces of the geniuses from the eastern region changed drastically, and Ji Han's pupils also contracted. In the Middle Kingdom, there is a young prodigy with exceptional talent. He often wears a smug smile on his face and enjoys provoking others with sarcasm and mockery. A group of young people from the eastern realm, referred to as frogs at the bottom of the well, by those from the central realm, live in a relatively confined space and are considered followers of the geniuses from the central realm. Initially, they held their heads high with confidence, but the geniuses from the central realm did not miss the chance to mock them. They ridiculed the eastern realm geniuses as destined to fail, with only sword blind still striving. 
Despite the taunts, Sword Blind remained calm on the surface but with a determined gleam in his eyes, vowing to climb the 99th step of the heavenly ladder. The geniuses from the Central Realm laughed at the Eastern Realm geniuses as a group of weak failures. The Eastern Realm geniuses were silently angry, hoping for Sword Blind's success to uphold the dignity of the Eastern Realm. Each time Sword Blind fell, he would resolutely stand up, determined to reach the 99th step of the ladder to the heavens. Meanwhile, Chen Zheng quietly embarked on the path to climb the ladder, steadily surpassing others. Sword Blind stood up firmly, moving forward resolutely, never giving up, knowing that failure is not terrifying, but losing the courage to try is. This time, as he was about to slip, he made a desperate effort to hold on and successfully pass the 98th step of the ladder. Joy flashed in the eyes of the Eastern Realm geniuses, while the geniuses from the Central Realm frowned. Just as cheers were about to erupt, Su Kaming's boot ruthlessly stomped on Sword Blind's hand, preventing him from reaching the 99th step of the ladder. Su Kaiming looked down arrogantly at Sword Blind, declaring that the Eastern Realm geniuses belonged beneath his feet. This scene caused a stir, escalating the conflict between the two sides, turning the previously peaceful atmosphere into tension. This ancient hunting ground was destined to become a powder keg, and the confrontation between the geniuses of the eastern and central realms would intensify. Currently, Su Kaming's actions are like igniting a powder keg, angering the majority of the geniuses in the eastern region, and they have become hysterical. Only the weak would let out feeble roars and roars. A faintly indifferent smile played at the corner of Su Kaming's mouth as he looked down arrogantly at the numerous geniuses of the eastern region, then viciously twisted his toes, causing Sword Blind's palm to bleed. His high-profile declaration clearly shows his confidence in his advantage on the ladder to heaven, even disdaining to engage with others. Chen Fan, looking down from high above, furrowed his brow slightly. Su Kaiming has good talent and temperament, but his character is too proud. He looks down on everyone. Chen Fan shook his head, not interested in such a genius. Last time, a group of incompetent people from the eastern region actually joined forces to besiege my brother causing him to lose the opportunity to climb the ladder to heaven. This time, I'm just giving you a warning. Next, I will find those who participated in besieging my brother, punish them one by one, and avenge my brother. Su Kaming's tone was indifferent, always calm, only the icy eyes revealed a chilling light, making people feel fearful. Get lost. Then, as if he had had enough fun, he suddenly kicked Sword Blind's head. If this kick hits, Sword Blind will definitely be injured. He may even lose his life. Everyone's expressions change. No one expected that Su Kaiming would dare to make a move on the ladder to heaven, and even against the prince of the Sword Dynasty. The Sword Dynasty, with strong national strength, is full of fanatical swordsmen who only seek to become stronger, with a strong desire for battle. Although its overall strength is not as good as the Great Zhou Dynasty, even the Great Zhou Dynasty does not want to provoke it. This Su Kaiming, actually publicly killed the Prince of the Sword Dynasty, isn't he afraid of provoking the entire Sword Dynasty's retaliation? Bang! At this moment, a fist hit Su Kaiming's foot hard. Is it you? Su Kaiming frowned, his eyes slightly narrowed, a murderous intent arising. Step! At this moment, Chen Zheng stood steadily on the 99th step of the ladder, then helped Sword Blind up, turned to look at Su Kaiming, and said lightly, do you still think the geniuses of the eastern region are useless now? Any genius who can step on the 99th step of the ladder, if called useless, then everyone here, is useless. Including Su Kaiming. Su Kaiming's face instantly turned extremely ugly. Song Miaosai's face also sank. Before everyone stepped on the ladder to heaven, he had mocked Chin Zheng as a waste who had just advanced to the initial stage of the spirit realm. Ji Han's eyes flashed with a hint of jealousy. He has always been recognized as the number one genius in the eastern region, but at this moment, there are two eastern region geniuses standing on the 99th step of the ladder. At the same time, the minds of others were blank, dumbfounded. Who is this person? How could someone from the eastern region climb to the 99th step of the ladder? Why does he look so familiar? Below, Chen Hai's face changed drastically, his eyes narrowed, and he shouted in shock, stammering, Chen Zheng. This, this is impossible. Hearing this, everyone instantly woke up. At that moment, the geniuses from the eastern region were all overjoyed, 
unable to contain the surging joy in their hearts. They couldn't help but shout out loud. Our geniuses from the eastern region have finally shown their brilliance. Who says we are only worthy of being stepped on by Su Kaiming? This time, not only one of us has climbed to the 99th level of the heavenly ladder, but two of us have. It seems that the geniuses from the central region are not as impressive as they thought. Immediately, the geniuses from the central region looked at each other in silence, unable to respond. Standing firm on the 99th step of the heavenly ladder does not mean you can rule here. Only a few hours left until the end of this ancient hunting ground. Su Kaming's eyes flashed with determination. The raging power within his body wreaking havoc in his meridians. He stared at Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi, not hiding the killing intent in his heart. Chen Zheng, hearing his words, furrowed his brow slightly. Although he had just advanced to the early stage of the spirit realm, Su Kaming's aura had already reached the mid-stage of the spirit realm. Clearly in a different league. You people in the East are just synonymous with cowards. Now, I'll give you two choices. Either accept your fate or get out of here. Su Kaiming announced coldly. Chen Zheng felt a powerful aura lock onto him in an instant, the shadow of death looming over his heart. Faced with Su Kaming's threat, he did not hesitate to raise his sword, confronting Su Kaiming head on, expressing his determination through action. Good, very good. I have never unleashed slaughter on the heavenly ladder before. Now, let the cowards of the East witness how I trample the geniuses in their minds. Su Kaiming swiftly made his move. The fierce attack made Chen Zheng feel as if he were in an ice cave, sensing the approach of death. However, his blood was also surging. Even in the face of death, he must bravely resist. Attack, he roared lowly, giving it his all. The two attacks collided fiercely. Then, Chen Zheng inevitably took more than ten steps back, his face pale while Su Kaiming showed no signs of backing down, launching another attack. His speed was as fast as a ghost, directly targeting the unsteady Chen Zheng. It should be an honor for you to be defeated by me. Ha ha, Su Kaiming burst into wild laughter, as if he could already see Chen Zheng falling, even savoring the intoxicating taste of victory. And the taste of blood, a touch of madness flashed across Chen Zheng's face, even if he died in battle. He would make Su Kaiming pay a heavy price. Attack as ordered. However, just then, a white light flashed, swiftly piercing towards Su Kaiming. Su Kaiming's face changed drastically, forced to change his attack to block the fatal blow. However, he underestimated the speed of the opponent's sword strike, unable to defend himself in time, his arm being cut off. He grunted, retreating several steps, his face pale. Blood gushed out continuously his breath starting to become erratic. One strike, severely injuring him. You, he glared angrily at Jian Xiaozi, full of resentment and disbelief, roaring, how is this possible? You haven't even stood firm on the 99th step of the heavenly ladder. How could your sword strike be so fast? Jian Xiaozi said calmly, I have only practiced basic swordsmanship in my life. I started practicing swordsmanship at the age of three, performing 10,000 sword strikes every day and have been persisting for 15 years. A hint of surprise flashed in Su Kaming's eyes. The person in front of him was truly a sword art fanatic. Good, very good. I, Su Kaiming, will never let you go. With a flicker of his figure, he charged straight towards the 98th step of the heavenly ladder. Facing two opponents, he had no confidence. Moreover, he was already seriously injured at this moment. Ji Han, leave. Su Kaiming stared coldly at Ji Han, roaring angrily. Standing on the 98th step of the heavenly ladder, Ji Han found himself in a disadvantageous position compared to the four talented individuals from the central domain. Feeling aggrieved, he had no choice but to retreat to the 97th step. However, even on the 97th step, it was still dominated by the talents from the central domain, and they were once again expelled from the competition. Not only Ji Han, but also Tang Yuyu, Song Miaosai, and Zhu Gorui were all pushed to the 90th step, struggling to hold their ground. The entire fourth team was occupied by the talents from the central domain, with Su Kaiming coldly accusing Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi of sowing discord. Ji Han and Song Miaosai felt a sense of unease. If it weren't for Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi pushing Su Kaiming to the 98th step, how could they have been expelled to the third team? 
the top talents from the Eastern Domain unexpectedly fell to the third team, all thanks to the trouble stirred up by Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi. Despite the unpleasant expressions on Zhu Gorui and Tang Yuyu's faces, they directed their grievances towards Su Kaiming and the others. Su Kaiming's mind was intricate, and Chen Fan noticed a slight change in his expression. The situation had clearly stabilized, but some may still hold thoughts of revenge. However, this was not his concern. At this moment, he turned his gaze towards Jian Xiaozi. Chen Zheng's performance was as expected, effortlessly surpassing the entire field with his third-grade talent fused with his sixth-grade strength. Although Jian Xiaozi's talent was slightly inferior, possibly not reaching the level of a third grade, he stood at the same height as Chen Zheng with his willpower and courage. Especially that sword, precise and stunning. Chen Fan clearly saw Jian Xiaozi's outstanding performance and couldn't help but admire. Such a genius perfectly fit the standards of the 10,000 Realms Bank apprentice. Jian Xiaozi, would you be willing to join the 10,000 Realms Bank? Chen Fan straightforwardly asked. Instantly, the gazes of all the geniuses on the ladder converged in the sky, forgetting the previous unpleasantness. After all, wasn't their purpose here to join the force they admired? However, what kind of force was the 10,000 Realms Bank? Why had they never heard of it before? Was Jian Xiaozi willing to accept? After all, he was now standing at the top of the 99th step of the heavenly ladder. The geniuses below were discussing heatedly, with Zhao Yi and Zhou Qi showing disdainful expressions. A rising force dared to compete with the spirit cloud sect for disciples? Zhou Qi promptly stepped forward and began to flatter skillfully. Envoy Zhao. I bet he won't recruit a genius this time. Zhao Yi, feeling extremely pleased after hearing this, sneered and put on an aloof demeanor, not even sparing a glance at Chen Fan. Although you have the black feather eagle with spiritual realm strength, this time you are here to recruit disciples. If you can't recruit a disciple, the Wanji money house will become a laughingstock on the spirit cloud continent. Envoy Zhao Yi of the spirit cloud sect, Zhao Yi stepped forward arrogantly completely devoid of the previous depression and grievance suppressed by Chen Fan, and asked, Blind swordsman, would you like to join the spirit cloud sect as a disciple of the secret transmission? Immediately, there was a burst of admiration and discussion from below. Indeed, with the performance of the blind swordsman, he is bound to become a secret disciple of the spirit cloud sect. As long as he becomes a secret disciple, the future is limitless he will definitely become a strong practitioner of the spirit realm. He may even reach the emperor spirit realm. The blind swordsman will surely choose the spirit cloud sect. What kind of force is the Wenji money house? Why have I never heard of it before, yet it wants to recruit talents like the blind swordsman? Zhao Yi, feeling even more delighted after hearing this, couldn't help but raise the corners of his mouth, even casting a glance at Chen Fan. Thinking to himself, just wait and see. Next. I will definitely poach the talent you have your eyes on, making you busy for nothing, becoming the biggest joke on the entire spirit cloud continent. Blind swordsman, what do you want to gain by joining our force? At this moment, Chen Zheng saw the blind swordsman hesitating and immediately asked. To practice swordsmanship, to obtain resources for better sword practice, to gain freedom for better sword practice, the blind swordsman replied. Chen Zheng's mouth twitched. This guy is truly a sword practice fanatic. He took a deep breath and said, Although the spirit cloud sect is powerful, it has complex internal factions with deceit and intrigue. After joining, you may not be able to focus solely on sword practice. Zhao Yi frowned upon hearing this, worried that the blind swordsman would be influenced by conflicting thoughts, and quickly said, Chen Zheng, you have enough talent and willpower. You can also become a secret disciple of our spirit cloud sect. How about it? I will personally recommend you to the elders. Hearing this, the talented individuals cast envious glances, especially those from the central domain. They understood what it meant for an envoy to personally recommend someone. It would definitely receive full support from the sect. Moreover, secret disciples also have different levels of importance and attention. Chen Fan found it somewhat amusing. Chen Zheng has already joined the Wenji Money House, signed a soul contract, and you still hope to poach him? He kindly reminded Envoy Zhao. Chen Zheng is with our Wenji money house, so don't waste your efforts. After hearing this, Zhao Yi, Zhou Qi, and others exchanged strange looks. 
Zhou Qi sneered disdainfully and sarcastically said, Are you trying to make fun of me, Wen Ji Money House? Jin Zheng's performance this time was outstanding. With the opportunity to enter the Ling Yun sect and personally recommended by Zhao Messenger to become a disciple of the secret transmission. Why would he choose Wen Ji Money House? What makes you so confident? The talents below also joined in the mockery. Why is Wen Ji Money House so full of themselves? I've never heard of it before, must be a small role, right? Too arrogant. Song Miaosai even coldly chuckled and called them jumping clowns. Chen Fan couldn't help but feel helpless upon hearing these taunts, after all, no one would believe them. Zhao Yi couldn't be bothered with Chen Fan anymore, thinking she was just an arrogant person. Why bother arguing with her? It would only tarnish his status. So, Zhao Yi straightforwardly said, Chen Zheng, if you choose to join the Lingyun sect, I personally will give you an additional 10 million spirit stones, how about that? With Chen Zheng's talent, this investment is definitely worth it. Besides, what's 10 million spirit stones? This time he came to the Eastern Domain to recruit disciples, and has already collected over 80 million spirit stones. And he doesn't value spirit stones, he wants other resources. Otherwise, the number of spirit stones will double or more. I'm sorry, Zhao Messenger. Just when everyone thought Chen Zheng would accept, he shook his head and rejected Zhao Yi's invitation. Suddenly, everyone quieted down. Did they mishear? Or did Chen Zheng misspeak? You. Zhao Yi's face darkened, his expression becoming extremely unpleasant. Are any top forces in the central domain interested in you? Chen Zheng shook his head again. Zhao Yi coldly asked, which force present is more attractive than our Lingyun sect? Only our Lingyun sect can give you a better future, right? However, Chen Zheng once again shook his head and uttered a name that shocked everyone. I have already joined Wenji Money House. When mentioning Wenji Money House, his attitude became extremely respectful, becoming an apprentice of Wenji Money House. Before, he was proud to join the Lingyun sect. However, when he truly joined Wenji Money House, obtained a third grade talent, and easily suppressed a group of talents with this talent. He understood that Wen Ji Money House was much more powerful than the Ling Yun sect. Especially when he thought that Wen Ji Money House gave General Meng 100 years of life. It further solidified his determination to follow Wen Ji Money House. Does the Ling Yun sect have such magical means? Absolutely not. These two are simply not on the same level. His previous hesitation was truly laughable. You actually joined Wen Ji Money House? And just as an apprentice? Zhao Yi couldn't believe it. A blush of embarrassment rising on his face, trembling as he confirmed, Is that true? Chen Zheng nodded. Wow. Suddenly, the whole world erupted into even louder clamor. The top talent of the eastern region actually joined a relatively unknown and newly established power? And he has to be an apprentice in it? How ridiculous. Zhao Yi immediately felt ashamed and angry, blaming himself in his heart. Why did he join the Wenji Money House? Just to count money and pour tea for guests? He realized the absurdity of his words, but why did he still join Wenji Money House? Don't talk to me about freedom. In this world, strength is the most important thing. To gain strength, you need resources. A large amount of precious resources can help you gain strength. Once you have strength, you can get anything you want. By then, freedom will be easily within reach. Was Wenji Money House forcing you to join? Hearing this, Chen Zheng shook his head again and admitted, no. I voluntarily requested to join. In this tranquil world, a ancient hunting competition has once again stirred up a huge wave. On the first day of the competition, everyone was shocked and amazed once again. Zhao Yi unexpectedly volunteered to join a rather inconspicuous and newly established force. At this moment, a blush appeared on Zhao Yi's face, as if he had just been slapped hard. Previously, he was complaining about not being able to recruit disciples for the Wenji Money House. But now not only did he recruit one, but also attracted a talented genius. What's even more surprising is that this top talent actually volunteered to join the Wenji Money House and willingly serve as an apprentice. Zhao Yi roared in his heart, full of resentment towards the Wenji Money House and Chen Zheng, burning like flames of hatred. Dare to offend him, Zhao Yi? Dare to offend the Lingyun sect? It's simply seeking death. Jian Xiaozi, what about you? Have you thought it through? Are you willing to join my Lingyun sect? I can personally recommend you to the elders of the Lingyun sect and make you a disciple of the secret transmission. 
Zhao Yi's anger soared as he stared at Jian Xiaozi, his tone filled with strong hostility. Jian Xiaozi originally wanted to join the Lingyun sect, but frowned upon hearing Zhao Yi's words. He thought to himself, as a strong cultivator cultivated by the Lingyun sect, showing such disappointment in quality and character. He asked, if I join the Wenji money house, what will my status be? Everyone was puzzled and confused. Zhao's messenger asked you a question, but you are talking to the Wenji money house? Is there someone else who wants to join the Wenji money house? Chen Fan replied calmly, an apprentice. Everyone gasped in unison. However, what surprised them even more was that Chen Fan continued, Based on your current performance, you are only qualified to serve as an apprentice. Everyone was stunned, still in shock. Jian Xiaozi nodded, indicating his willingness to join. Everyone was stunned, incredulous. How could they give up the opportunity to become a disciple of the secret transmission of the Lingyun sect, and go to a mysterious and unpredictable Wenji money house? And still as an apprentice. In fact, Chen Fan was also somewhat surprised. Although he believed that Jian Xiaozi joining the Wenji Money House was the right choice, Jian Xiaozi did not know the mystery and danger of the Wenji Money House. Is it because of Chen Zheng? Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, already guessing the answer in his heart. It is clear that Jian Xiaozi was attracted by Chen Zheng's talent and decided to join the Wenji Money House. There must be well thought out reasons behind this decision. After all, Chen Zheng had helped him before, so he made this choice. However, despite this, Jian Xiaozi still had some hesitation in his heart. The Wanji Money House is after all a rising power, and he always felt somewhat uneasy about it. Nevertheless, Jian Xiaozi's character made him willing to take risks. He felt disappointed by the performance of the Lingyun sect, so he decided to try joining the Wanji Money House. Even if he failed, he had enough confidence to rely on himself to create his own legend in the central domain. That's where his confidence lies. When Zhao Yi threatened Jian Xiaozi, his brow furrowed even more, feeling even more disappointed in the Lingyun sect. This kind of threat only strengthened his determination not to join the Lingyun sect. As for the threat to the Sword Dynasty, he didn't care. The Sword Dynasty has always been unafraid of external threats and challenges. They even hoped for major powers to come and provoke them, so they could have a good fight. Zhao Yi clearly didn't understand the people of the Sword Dynasty. They are all brave and fearless warriors. Jian Xiaozi fearlessly responded that he would never join the Lingyun sect. Full of confidence, he didn't need to rely on any power. He challenged, saying, let the battle begin. The Sword Dynasty is ready to fight at any time. The geniuses of the Sword Dynasty responded one after another which made Zhao Yi burn with anger. How could a young man in the spirit profound realm dare to confront him? This made him furious, so he raised his palm, ready to launch an attack. However, he forgot about the powerful defensive formation of the ancient hunting ground, his attack couldn't even harm it. The formation would also rebound the attack, and as a result, Zhao Yi was hit by his own attack and flew out in a sorry state. This time, he really lost face, and could only leave in embarrassment, filled with anger. Ji Han and the others were stunned. They couldn't help but wonder if the Lingyun sect was really still recruiting disciples. They couldn't understand the choices of Qin Zheng, Jian Xiaozi, and others. They had originally thought that the other party had some strength, but now it seems not so. Su Kaiming sneered, taking the geniuses of the central domain with him, leaving behind a resentful gaze. Ji Han and Song Miaosai snorted coldly resentfully looking at Jian Xiaozi and others, then also left. Zhou Qi and the others, seeing this, also followed suit and left. Let's leave as well, they were filled with disappointment. Despite witnessing Zhao Yi being severely beaten, a strange sense of satisfaction welled up inside. However, the people present were not fools. They knew that Zhao Yi was burning with rage and would surely use all means to seek revenge. With Zhao Yi already gone, who dared to stay here and recruit disciples? Once Zhao Yi was provoked, the consequences would be unimaginable. So, the various factions began to leave one after another, leaving behind the geniuses from the eastern region. What reason did they have to stay? They dispersed, afraid of being targeted by the Wenji Bank in the future. After all, if the envoy from the Lingyun sect held a grudge against them, the consequences would be dire. However, 
These geniuses did not consider that even top talents like Jian Xiaozi and Chen Zheng could only become apprentices at the Wenji Bank. Would Chen Fan accept them? In a moment, the once lively scene became quiet and deserted. The recruitment of disciples in the ancient hunting competition was interrupted for the first time due to unforeseen circumstances. However, all of this had nothing to do with Chen Fan. The talents he wanted to recruit had already joined the Wenji Bank, and his goal had been achieved. At this moment, what he cared about was whether Jian Xiaozi would become an apprentice at the Wenji Bank and whether this could be considered a trade-off. Would the system reward him? After all, he did not receive any additional resources from Jian Xiaozi. Jian Xiaozi, this is the Wenji token, representing the sole contract to enter the Wenji Bank. Immediately, Chen Fan waved his jade hand, and a Wenji token appeared in front of Jian Xiaozi. Ding! The tenth transaction is completed, with a completion rate of 90%. Chen Fan heard the prompt from the system, not surprised, but the completion rate of this task reached 90%. The potential of sword blind shouldn't be underestimated, and the system also appreciates him. As for rewards, Chen Fan received 100 Wenji tokens and 10 fourth grade talismans. He subconsciously checked the rewards and found that there was an additional function introduction for the Wenji tokens, allowing access to the Wenji bank system. This means that the system is quietly improving itself, without the need for additional resources for upgrades, which relieved Chen Fan. As for the 4th grade talismans, there were two extra 4th grade weakening talismans, a type of talisman that Chen Fan had never encountered before. In the process of learning various knowledge, he had never heard of 4th grade weakening talismans. When he asked Yan Ruyu, she was also clueless. Chen Fan decided to keep the talismans and use them when encountering strong enemies. Yan Ruyu suggested that he use the Spirit Vein Nurtured Encyclopedia to expand his access rights, and Chen Fan unhesitatingly gave her three spirit veins. Yan Ruyu thanked her master for his generosity, and Chen Fan looked at her smile, feeling touched. Besides the ultimate truth, beauty is also a fascinating existence. Chen Fan couldn't help but ponder the definition of beauty, feeling a longing and appreciation for beauty. He shook his head and sighed, I just want to appreciate beauty, but you've managed to create so many things for me, which is a bit disappointing. In an instant, she noticed the slight curl of her owner's lips, radiating a playful charm with her rosy and delicate mouth. Chen Fan quickly dismissed her and then turned his gaze towards Sword Blind bidding farewell to the genius of the Sword Dynasty. This time, Sword Blind fearlessly refused the invitation from the Spirit Cloud Sect, and the geniuses of the Sword Dynasty unanimously supported him, showing no face to Zhao Yi, which would surely provoke Zhao Yi's retaliation. Although the Sword Dynasty's powerful escorts for these geniuses were strong, reaching the mid-stage of the spirit communication realm, they could not afford to be careless. However, the mid-stage Sword Dynasty powerhouse seemed to have doubts about the strength of the Wenji money house. He doubted whether the young genius of the Sword Dynasty, Sword Blind, could have a better development in the Wenji money house. Suddenly, he floated over to Chen Fan and asked, Jian Liasheng. Chen M. I. Chen Fan fabricated a name on the spot, calling her a female slave who was the owner of Wenji Money House. How strong is the overall strength of Wenji Money House? Jian Liusheng bluntly asked, We, the Sword Dynasty, have concerns about the Crown Prince following you. Chen Fan raised his eyebrows in surprise, not expecting the Sword Dynasty to be so straightforward, truly living up to the reputation of the Sword Dynasty's strong, not beating around the bush. He asked with great interest, how can we make the Sword Dynasty feel at ease? What is your cultivation level? Jian Liasheng inquired. Chen Fan claimed to be a Yin Soul Puppet with the strength of the late stage of the Soul Transformation Realm. Jian Liasheng frowned, apparently unfamiliar with this type of puppet, but did not dwell on it, saying directly, As long as you can withstand my attack, I will let the Crown Prince follow you. I will do my best. Chen Fan shook his head, You misunderstand. Jian Liasheng's eyes narrowed, and the black pupils flickered with sword shadows. Chen Fan felt a strong sense of sword intent piercing his heart. What I mean is, if you can withstand my attack, I won't take sword blind away, Chen Fan said lightly, revealing a hint of arrogance. Jian Liasheng's pupils contracted, staring at Chen Fan intensely, and said coldly, All right. 
I want to see what a late-stage soul transformation realm expert is capable of. Daring to say that I can't withstand a blow. Chen Fan smiled, his brow trembling, and a yin soul needle burst out in an instant, turning into thousands of silver needles, heading straight for Jian Liasheng. Jian Liasheng's face changed slightly. The soul technique was rare and powerful. A slight negligence would result in a double loss. He felt the breath of death. He condensed his sword intent, locked his brow, and protected his yin soul. As a mid-stage spirit communication realm powerhouse, he was the third strongest in the sword dynasty and also had a place in the eastern region. He devoted his life to the sword path. His sword intent was unfathomable. However, the sword intent was easily pierced by the yin soul needle. In the next moment, his face suddenly turned pale, his eyes filled with fear, unable to react, only able to watch as thousands of soul-piercing needles flew towards him. The chilling feeling that seemed to pierce the soul made his spirit tremble uncontrollably. He knew deeply that once struck, he would be in mortal danger. However, just as he was about to face the desperate situation, those soul-piercing needles were only three inches away from his body surface, unexpectedly frozen in place, as if they had stopped in an instant from high-speed motion. This mysterious technique was unbelievable, and it made him realize that his opponent had not yet gone all out. Jian Liasheng looked at the woman in front of him in disbelief, his eyes showing astonishment and reverence. Now, he began to doubt whether the Wenji money house could give him a bright future. Chen Fan waved his hand lightly and thousands of soul-piercing needles disappeared without a trace. Jian Liasheng felt sorry for offending Miss Chen. Please forgive me, he faced failure calmly, without fear. Seeing this scene, Chen Fan appreciated him even more, nodded, and then rode the black-feathered eagle towards Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi. Let's go back to the Wenji money house. Their current strength is not enough to go after debts, so it's better to let them follow along with me for safety. Yes. Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi immediately flashed and climbed onto the back of the Black Feathered Eagle. Then, the Black Feathered Eagle spread its wings and flew high, disappearing in the blink of an eye from the sight of Jian Liasheng and others. It was only then that Jian Liasheng secretly breathed a sigh of relief. He noticed that his back was already soaked with cold sweat. Let's go, the ancient hunting competition is over. The Lingyun sect has been suppressed by an emerging power. Two geniuses have joined the Wenji Money House one after another, even willing to serve as apprentices. These news spread like thunder in the eastern region, rumors spreading rapidly as if they had grown wings. Representatives of various forces in the eastern region contacted Zhao Yi. Although the ancient hunting competition had stopped, the plan to recruit disciples was still ongoing. Zhao Yi held the power. Qin Zheng and Jian Xiaozi were unwilling to join the Lingyun sect. Some geniuses wanted to join, and some forces hoped to cooperate with the Lingyun sect. However, Zhao Yi never showed up, only going to the Great Zhou Dynasty without leaving. Suddenly, a rumor spread that whoever could destroy the Wenji Money House or destroy the Sword King Dynasty could have the geniuses under his command join the Lingyun sect. The Sword King Dynasty was like a sword piercing the sky, sharp and powerful, causing harm when touched. While the Wanji Money House was just a little known force, it was clear what choice to make. Representatives of various forces began to inquire about the location of the Wanji Money House. When King Chin learned of the news of the ancient hunting competition, his face couldn't help but darken. Oh, King, Chin Zheng is leading Chin towards self-destruction by provoking the powerful and vast Lingyun sect. If they are angered, Great Chin will cease to exist. The Millennium Foundation will be destroyed in an instant. Chin Hai rushed to the side of the king, launching a verbal attack on Chin Zheng and the Wanji Money House, giving up the opportunity to become a disciple of the Lingyun sect, and choosing to become an apprentice at the Wanji Money House. Utterly foolish, your majesty, I suggest erasing Chin Zheng from the Great Chin genealogy and issuing a nationwide warrant to show the determination of Great Chin. To avoid disaster. The king listened with a furrowed brow. He understood Qin Hai's intentions. To eliminate any possibility of Qin Zheng becoming the crown prince. He knew that if he agreed, more demands would follow, such as going to the peak of Lingyun Mountain to destroy the Wanji money house. The king weighed the pros and cons, his eyes slightly closed. Why hesitate any longer, your majesty? Once the envoys from Zhao redirect their anger towards Great Qin, 
It will be too late. Jin Hai urged anxiously. Zhao Yi does not represent the Ling Yun sect. The king opened his eyes again, having made a decision. Ling Yun sect will not use resources against the Wanji money house unless Zhao Yi dies. He believed Zhao Yi would use the power of the Ling Yun sect against the Wanji money house, while the Sword Dynasty would not interfere for now. Therefore, he decided to wait and see the true strength of the Wanji money house. The king's decision was the most cautious, neither supporting nor opposing, pretending to be ignorant and not revealing his stance. However, this was not the outcome Qin Hai had hoped for. With the power of the Ling Yun sect, even a slight gesture could destroy the Wanji money house. There was no need to wait. This would only miss the opportunity. Opportunity? The king narrowed his eyes, gazing at Qin Hai, questioning, what opportunity do you speak of? Is it the opportunity to show loyalty to Zhao Yi? Higher, you are too impatient. The king interrupted Qin Hai decisively, making a decision. That's how it will be done. You will return to the capital immediately and fulfill your duties. Qin Hai left silently, his eyes flashing with intense resentment and stubbornness. Wait and see, perhaps the king has grown old and senile. How could he miss such a perfect opportunity? Oh, king, great Qin must not be destroyed because of your and Qin Zheng's foolishness. Qin Hai's expression grew darker. A few days later, news arrived. The Wanji money house was at the peak of Lingyun Mountain within the territories of Great Qin. At the same time, the capital received several messages. Firstly, Qin Zheng was expelled from the Great Qin genealogy and a nationwide warrant was issued. Secondly, a million troops were mobilized to attack the Wanji money house. Thirdly, Qin Hai declared himself as the king. The Great Qin rebellion was about to erupt. Turmoil was brewing, and bloodshed was imminent. Creek, Creek, representatives of various forces appeared one after another, heading straight to the peak of Lingyun Mountain, fearing being outstripped by others. Afraid of missing the opportunity. After all, the Wanji money house was the only target. It seemed, whoever arrived first would be able to destroy the Wanji money house. In the midst of the turmoil in the Great Qin Kingdom, Chen Fan and his two companions remained unaffected. Despite the whole country being in turmoil, the King of Qin remained unusually calm, only pausing the war with the Kingdom of Chu. They stood at the summit of Lingyun Mountain, gazing at the Wenji Qian Zhuang. At that moment, Qin Fan's gaze turned to Qin Zheng and he spoke slowly, Qin Zheng, the master thinks your Shuanta palm is of low rank and lacks power. Therefore, he has created an improved martial art, of advanced level, named Xuanming 18 palms. His voice carried a tone of admiration and anticipation. Qin Zheng's face lit up with joy. The master actually casually created a high-level ground-ranked battle technique. This made him deeply feel the power of the master. Qin Fan looked at Qin Zheng, smiling and said, Master has also created an improved version of the Burning Heaven technique. Hasn't decided on a name yet. Let's just call it the Burning Heaven technique for now. It's also high-level ground-ranked. The powerful celestial talent allowed Chen Fan to understand Chen Zheng's cultivation process with just one look, and after some contemplation, he casually created high-level ground-ranked techniques and battle skills. If he was willing to spend time, he could even create techniques and battle skills at the celestial level. Chen Zheng immediately thanked him with a respectful and even excited expression. High-level ground-ranked techniques and battle skills were extremely precious gifts to him. Jian Xiaozi the cultivation technique you practice is called the spirit sword technique, beginner level ground ranked. The master has created an improved version of the spirit sword technique for you, high level ground ranked. Chen Fan turned to Jian Xiaozi and added, as for battle skills, you probably don't need them, but, although your sword speed is fast, your body movement is a bit slow. The master has created the star extreme step, high level ground ranked, for you to practice. Jian Xiaozi paused for a moment, then thanked him with a bow. Chen Fan orally explained their respective cultivation techniques, battle skills, and body techniques to them, and then guided them in their cultivation. Suddenly, Chen Fan's brows furrowed, and he immediately sat cross-legged, his soul entering the Thousand Realms Bank. Seeing this, Jian Xiaozi and Chen Zheng tactfully took a few steps back and stopped disturbing Chen Fan, focusing on cultivation in the distance. Wang Davao entered the Thousand Realms Bank and asked, I heard that your female slave offended the messenger of the Lingyun sect. 
Chen Fan nodded in response. Wang Dabao grinned and said, I've been with you for so long, how come I've never heard of the existence of a female slave under your command? Is she beautiful? Single? Chen Fan was amused by Wang Dabao's teasing. He didn't mind this playful friend. Su Qingyu had already resolved six debt contracts and was rushing back with all her might. What about you? There were only four debt contracts in total, and you haven't completed them yet? Chen Fan's tone was slightly stern. Wang Dabao quickly explained, Master, I definitely didn't slack off. The main reason is that the other party is too strong. I need to take it slow. I'm using this. With that, he pointed to his own head. Chen Fan smiled wryly and shook his head, knowing that although Wang Dabao was playful, he was still serious about his work. Just then, Su Qingyu's voice sounded, Chen Fan, are you suggesting that I don't use my brain when I work? Chen Fan chuckled at her words. These friends, each with their own quirks, were indispensable to him. Wang Dabao felt the icy killing intent coming from behind, his body trembling with fear. Startled, he couldn't help but swallow hard, his throat rolling a few times before awkwardly coughing twice, hastily explaining, No. I promise, I absolutely didn't mean it. Su Qingyu ignored his words and calmly asked, Master, do you need my help? Wang Dabao immediately straightened up, somewhat forcedly continuing, Master, all factions are converging on the Wanji money house, do you need me to intervene? Chen Fan, helpless, asked in return, Do you need your help? Can you come back? Wang Dabao quietly retorted, Su Messenger is not here either, why don't you blame her? Chen Fan shrugged and explained, Su Messenger has already arrived in the Great Qin territory and will soon reach the top of Lingyun Mountain. Wang Dabao felt embarrassed and quickly changed the subject, saying, Master, I can provide talismans and elixirs, and I can offer other resources. Chen Fan, looking at Wang Dabao's reluctant expression, couldn't help but chuckle and said, hurry up and complete your task. With that, Chen Fan waved his hand and sent Wang Dabao directly out of the Wenji Money House Hall. Su Qingyu, come back as soon as possible. Those who dare to challenge the Wenji Money House will be destroyed. Yes, Su Qingyu immediately left, rushing towards her destination at full speed. Just as Chen Fan had left the Wenji Money House, he furrowed his brow, sensing someone approaching the top of Lingyun Mountain. They're here so fast. Chen Fan smiled faintly. Blind Swordsman was practicing the body technique bestowed upon him by the master, his speed getting faster and faster, and in a short time, he had already grasped some tricks. Swish, swish, his talent may not be as great as Chen Zheng's, but he has an astonishing insight. It's no wonder he can bravely confront his opponents even when he is at a disadvantage. Suddenly, his ears twitched, sensing the imminent danger approaching. A ghostly figure instantly lunged towards him, wielding a sharp long knife, aiming straight for blind swordsman's neck as if to sever his life. Faced with a formidable enemy in the later stage of the nascent soul realm, blind swordsman's expression changed slightly, but he did not retreat. Instead, a hint of madness flashed in his eyes as he decisively thrust his sword towards the opponent. Confronting an enemy stronger than himself, he decided to go all out, give it his all perhaps still having a chance to win, otherwise, once hesitated, destined to perish. Seeing the people from the Wenji Bank so arrogant, the expert in the later stage of the nascent soul realm sneered disdainfully, as if he had already seen the scene of Blind Swordsman's defeat. His target has always been Blind Swordsman and Qin Zheng, because they dared to challenge Envoy Zhao. If he could kill them, he would surely gain Envoy Zhao's appreciation. However, just as he was about to succeed, Suddenly his speed slowed down. What's going on? The next moment, his expression changed drastically. How could blind swordsman miss this opportunity? Without knowing what had happened, he decisively aimed his sword at the opponent's vulnerable throat. The expert in the nascent soul realm seemed slow to react, unable to dodge in time. In an instant, the sharp sword pierced through his throat and neck. He passed away without understanding, never realizing what had happened. Is this the fourth rank weakening talisman? Inside the Wenji money house, Yan Ruyu couldn't help but blink as she saw the scene before her. This kind of talisman can weaken all aspects of the enemy's strength. Even the Yin spirits cannot escape the weakening effect. It can even weaken the enemy to the point where they cannot match up to the Lingdong realm in the later stage of the Huoling realm. Exactly. 
Chen Fan nodded and said, The effect of the fourth rank weakening talisman is beyond my expectations, especially when suddenly used in battle, it can completely achieve unexpected results. Swish. At the same time, Jian Blind, who had weakened the enemy, picked up their chinkin bag, then flashed back to the Wenji money house, standing in front of Chen Fan. Sister M.I., they're here. Swish. Immediately after, Chen Zheng also flashed back. His luck was good, being the first to discover the enemy's whereabouts and not being ambushed. Swish. Swish. In the next moment, several figures had already appeared in front of the gates of the Wenji money house. Huh? Just then, Chen Fan raised his eyebrows slightly, here for a trade? What a coincidence. Delay them. Without hesitation, Chen Fan took out a large number of fourth-ranked talismans and led them into the Wenji money house. Trading is crucial. Now, with the Wenji tokens becoming more and more selective in choosing trading partners, each trade is exceptionally valuable and cannot be missed. Ao Ziqing, ridiculed since childhood, when he was very young, there was a big fire in his family, and his parents died trying to save him, leaving his face completely burned. Since then, his status in the family plummeted, enduring daily humiliation and living a life without dignity. However, he still lived tenaciously. Nobody knew the meaning behind his perseverance. Everyone thought he would endure a lifetime of undignified life. Father, mother, your child has finally found out who killed you. On the anniversary of his parents' death, heavy rain poured down, almost blinding his eyes. But Ao Ziqing stared at his parents' tombstone, sneering, you would never have guessed. It's the patriarch, the patriarch of our Ao family, Ao Shan. For ten years, I have endured humiliation for ten years, finally uncovering everything. Unfortunately, my talent is mediocre, burned by the fire, physically weak, unable to avenge with strength. What should I do? What should I do? This world, how unjust. How unjust. Finally, he roared to the sky, hysterical, the scars left by the burns twisted on his face, looking ferocious and savage like a wild beast. But in reality, he was just a weakling without cultivation. Swish, Wenji Money House, where all things are traded. The metallic texture exuded a cold and mysterious Wenji token suddenly appeared. He grabbed it without hesitation. Welcome to the Wenji Money House, Ao Ziqing, what do you want? As Ao Ziqing stepped into the Wenji Money House, information about him flashed through Chen Fan's mind, causing him to furrow his brow. This was a man filled with hatred, completely consumed by revenge, living only to avenge his enemies. Just like Su Qingyu, he lived to avenge his parents. From a young age, he was meticulous in his thoughts, burying his hatred deep inside, enduring humiliation for a decade. His character had long been twisted and distorted, becoming a slave to hatred, controlled by it. His heart was filled with the desire to kill Ao Shan and his family. Ao Ziqing's expression was unusually calm, but Chen Fan could feel the strong killing intent emanating from him, cold and intense. What can you offer in exchange? Chen Fan asked, considering Ao Ziqing's resources, including a mysterious pendant, 78 spirit stones, the yellow tier low-level cultivation technique yellow stone technique, and the yellow tier low-level martial skill army body fist. Chen Fan frowned, feeling puzzled as to why the system had chosen this low-value customer for the trade. He decided to be good at uncovering the potential value of each customer. Ao Ziqing openly stated, I don't have anything valuable on me. But, I can offer my remaining years in exchange for the death of my enemy. Surely, my lifespan should be quite valuable to the World Bank, right? Chen Fan raised an eyebrow, sensing that this was a good bargaining chip. However, he presented two conditions. First, they would not act as hired thugs, only providing resources. Second, Ao Ziqing's physical condition was not good, and his lifespan might not be long. Therefore, the value of his lifespan needed to be considered. Ao Ziqing's way of thinking was unique, as he made a different request, I want a youthful appearance. Chen Fan was puzzled and asked, what use is a youthful appearance? Ao Ziqing explained, the southern princess chooses her spouse based on looks, and I need a perfect appearance to leverage her influence. Chen Fan suddenly understood and agreed to Ao Ziqing's proposal but demanded 10 years of his lifespan and the pendant as exchange and insisted that the youthful appearance was only lent to Ao Ziqing. If he were to die as a result, he would bear the consequences. Ao Ziqing furrowed his brow, 
pondering over this trade. Faced with such a tough decision, he hesitated inside. The ten years of his life didn't seem to be his biggest concern. Even in the face of death, he could find a chance for revenge, a chance that made him willing to take the gamble. However, the pendant hanging on his chest made him pause. It was a precious heirloom left by his parents, something he cherished deeply. As their child, he had a duty to avenge them. In a sudden moment, his eyes grew determined, and without hesitation, he took off the pendant from his chest, wearing a fierce expression as he said, I'm willing to make this trade. Ao Jiqing's originally youthful body suddenly began to rapidly age, with 10 years of life being taken away in an instant, leaving him with the appearance of a 16-year-old. Despite being at the prime of his life, he was now frequently coughing and even spitting out blood, indicating his life was in grave danger. Chen Fan mysteriously bestowed upon Ao Jiqing the perfect appearance of Chu Wushuang, transforming his once distorted and ugly face into a handsome and charming one, albeit with a sickly allure. Chen Fan handed Ao Jiqing a token from the Ten Realms, instructing him to return the appearance to the Ten Realms bank when his life was on the line. Ao Jiqing eagerly explored his new appearance, even pulling and tugging at it to confirm it wasn't a mask. When he saw himself in the mirror, he was left dumbfounded. Suddenly, he became frenzied, a look of resentment appearing on his beautiful face as he coldly expressed his desire for revenge. This disturbed Chen Fan, as he realized that this person had become twisted and evil, causing him extreme unease. Chen Fan escorted Ao Jiqing out of the Ten Realms Bank, completing his mission and receiving a reward. Meanwhile, a group of people arrived at the bank's entrance, preparing to launch an attack on Chen Zheng, Jian Xiaoz and Chen Mi. Jian Xiaoz wasted no time in using his divine speed talisman to swiftly pierce the enemies, targeting their vital points and leaving them powerless to resist, resulting in their instant death. The others, witnessing this scene, showed expressions of fear and shock. It seems that the history of the Sword Dynasty is indeed unfathomable. A strong expert in the late stage of the Transformation Realm launched an attack without hesitation, activating both a fourth grade divine shield talisman and a fourth grade divine power talisman. Obviously, he intended to defeat Sword Blind in one fell swoop. With a swoosh, another figure swiftly flew towards Chen Zheng. The others focused their attention on Chen Mi. Just then, a black feathered eagle suddenly descended from the sky at lightning speed. Taking advantage of the negligence of a mid-stage transformation realm expert, the black feathered eagle used its sharp beak to pierce through his skull. Bang! Subsequently, everyone swarmed to attack the black feathered eagle. However, the black feathered eagle was not foolish and knew that a head-on collision would result in defeat, so it chose a clever evasion strategy, using its flying advantage to entangle its opponents. Chen Fan just glanced at the battlefield indifferently, then turned his attention to the fourth grade weakening talisman in his hand. This talisman could weaken the strength of Transformation Realm cultivators, allowing them to reach the level of spiritual cultivators in a short period of time. The power of the fourth grade weakening talisman was unexpectedly strong. It could instantly reduce a master in the Transformation Realm to a weakling in the spiritual cultivation realm. Chen Fan had originally thought that this talisman could only weaken the strength of Transformation Realm cultivators to the level of spiritual profound realm, but its power was astonishing. The acceleration card could significantly increase the speed of cultivation, providing great assistance in enhancing strength. Curiously, Chen Fan wondered how much time this acceleration card could actually save. For someone like him who had already reached the peak of cultivation, it seemed to have little use. However, just because it was not very useful to him did not mean that the acceleration card was worthless. Chen Fan's gaze finally fell on Sword Blind, Chen Zheng, and Xiao Yu. At this moment, Chen Zheng and Sword Blind were clearly at a disadvantage. Despite having a large number of fourth grade talismans, they were inferior to their opponents in agility, combat skills, and techniques, as their opponents had decades or even hundreds of years of experience as seniors. Coupled with their inferior physique, they were in a passive position. Sword Blind and Chen Zheng were already covered in wounds, especially Sword Blind, whose opponent was obviously no pushover. Chen Fan decided to use the acceleration card on Sword Blind, and then, a breakthrough? Sword Blind had felt a bottleneck in his star extreme steps, unable to break through, but suddenly, everything became clear, and his speed suddenly increased. 
Swish. Subsequently, he narrowly avoided the attack of the expert in the late stage of the transformation realm in front of him. His agility has broken through? That is truly amazing. However, even though his agility has improved, his speed still cannot compare to mine. Currently, he is using a fourth grade divine movement symbol. As a master in the transcendence realm, he is naturally much faster than Sword Blind, who is also using the same symbol. Swish, swish. However, what caught him off guard was that Sword Blind's agility seemed to suddenly reach its peak, getting faster and faster, almost like he had activated a booster. Whoosh, puff, this, impossible? In a certain moment, the expert with the strength of the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm was unexpectedly pierced through the left arm by Sword Blind, and blood gushed out instantly. His face was full of astonishment, with a thousand doubts in his heart. How did your body technique progress so rapidly to such a level? Moreover, to what peak has your body technique reached? How did it allow your strength to soar to such a degree? His body technique was already at the high level of the profound rank, relying on his own strength in the late stage of spiritual transformation realm. His speed was astonishing. But to be injured by sword blind? Even sword blind himself was caught off guard. Why did many of the difficulties that had troubled him before suddenly be resolved now? He knew that in the few moments of their recent exchanges, not only did he completely comprehend the star extreme steps, but he also perfected the improved version of the spirit sword art bestowed by the host. Therefore, he seized the opportunity, exchanging injuries for injuries, and finally succeeded in stabbing the expert in the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm in front of him. This person, is the host. How wise he is. At this moment, he speculated who was assisting behind the scenes. Buzz. The next moment, he keenly seized the opportunity for a breakthrough. Then, his breath began to rise rapidly. Mid-stage of the spiritual dynamic realm, his combat power increased again. Die. Immediately after, his figure flickered, once again without hesitation. He activated two four-grade talismans, the four-grade divine movement talisman and the four-grade divine shield talisman. Whoosh. The previous four-grade divine movement talisman had lost its effect. Similarly, the opponent in the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm, who used the four-grade divine movement talisman, also vanished into thin air. Call for help. Call for help. Immediately after, the opponent in the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm, his face changed drastically. The speed of the four-grade divine movement talisman was actually comparable to the strength of the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm. Coupled with Sword Blind's body technique and sword speed, he had no way to defend himself. Puff. The next moment, the one who had just tried to turn and flee was pierced through the heart by a sword. Dead. This sudden turn of events shocked everyone. What a situation. A young man with the strength of the early stage of the spiritual dynamic realm actually suppressed an expert in the late stage of the spiritual transformation realm? Everyone was clueless about what had happened, feeling incredulous. Sword blind, come and help me. At this moment, Chen Zheng was in a sorry state. If it weren't for the protection of the four-grade divine shield talisman, he would have perished long ago, and even so, his injuries were severe. He was also surprised by Sword Blind's progress, but he had no time to think about it, urgently calling for help. Whoosh! Sword Blind's figure flickered and had already arrived by his side. Puff! Then, with terrifying speed, coupled with his cunning and swift sword skills, he killed the expert in the mid-stage of the spiritual transformation realm who was fighting against Chen Zheng, instantly killing him. This, the ending came too quickly, making it difficult for Chen Zheng to react. You are truly powerful, Chen Zheng exclaimed. Weren't we evenly matched just now, and now you suddenly overwhelm me? It all seems a bit unbelievable. It turns out the host lent a helping hand. Chen Zheng suddenly realized as he witnessed Sword Blind's actions. However, Xiao Yu felt puzzled in her heart. Why did the master choose to help others instead of helping himself? Suddenly, the blind swordsman's joining changed the situation, and the tide turned instantly. The side that was originally at a disadvantage quickly turned the tables, making both sides evenly matched. Chen Zheng displayed amazing resilience, with numerous fourth grade runes on his body. He activated the fourth grade divine movement rune and once again charged towards the enemy. At the same time, 
Xiaoyu chose to face the battle directly to prevent early stage spiritual realm experts from attacking the blind swordsman and Qin Zheng. With its swift speed and powerful physical attributes, it firmly suppressed the opponents. Xiaoyu, with ancient bloodlines as a beast, had astonishing defense, especially with those sturdy wings that were almost indestructible by attacks. Being a flying creature, its speed far surpassed creatures of the same level, completely overwhelming opponents in one-on-one -on -one duels. The situation began to favor the side of the Wenji Qian Zhuang. At a critical moment, Xiao Yu seized the opportunity and fiercely pierced the enemy's head with its sharp claws. Without the interference of spiritual realm experts, others were like lambs in front of Xiao Yu, waiting to be slaughtered. The enemies had no choice but to retreat with no hesitation. If it continued, they would undoubtedly die. However, Xiao Yu angrily pursued, refusing to let them escape. Like lightning, it quickly approached the fleeing enemies. The sounds of wailing were heard one after another, and the battlefield was in chaos. Just as Xiao Yu was about to catch up with the last high level expert in the late stage of the nascent soul realm, suddenly two figures rushed out from the side and back. Moreover, they had both reached the nascent soul realm level, with one even in the middle stage of the nascent soul realm. They had been hiding quite well. Chen Fan furrowed his brow slightly. These two individuals were experienced, clearly observing the situation and targeting the weak spot in Xiao Yu's wing defense launching an attack at the first opportunity. Xiao Yu was caught off guard. Chen Fan had originally planned to use two fourth grade weakening runes, but was surprised to find out. Xiao Yu had broken through. Xiao Yu broke through once again, reaching the middle stage of the nascent soul realm. Both speed and reflexes were greatly enhanced. Although able to withstand attacks from early stage nascent soul realm experts, it couldn't resist the attacks from mid-stage experts. However, to Xiao Yu's surprise, the mid-stage expert who could almost bring it to its demise suddenly slowed down, with weakened attacks, even inferior to the early stage expert beside him. Xiao Yu urgently dodged, successfully blocking the attacks of the two with its wings. The claws launched a counterattack, and the wings, sharp and hard like weapons, swept towards the two figures. Once hit, they would surely be torn apart. The battle erupted once again with Xiao Yu breaking through to the middle stage of the spiritual realm, her combat power soaring. Despite facing two opponents, she still held a clear advantage and quickly killed one of them. The weakened middle stage spiritual realm expert was defeated. The strongman at the early stage of the spiritual realm looked bewildered, surprised to find that the opponent was stronger than himself, and had actually fallen first. He was at a loss unable to understand why his opponent was so powerful while he himself had become so weak. However, he had no time to figure it out now and could only hurriedly turn and flee. If he didn't escape now, he would perish here. At this critical moment, a uniform and rhythmic sound of footsteps suddenly came. Xiao Yu looked up towards the direction of the sound, only to see a large army surging before her eyes. Chen Fan's eyes gleamed with determination as he faced the densely packed Chen army disdainfully taunting, Chin Hai, how foolish of you to seek your own death. I have never taken Chin Hai seriously before, and even more so now. He shook his head, ignoring Chin Hai and instead focusing his gaze on Ao Ziching. However, Chin Hai remained indifferent to Chin Fan's contempt. At this moment, Chin Fan was full of confidence. Ever since leaving his father's military camp, he had vowed to launch a coup, seize the throne, and decisively returned to the capital of Great Chin to discuss strategies with the royal advisor, Feng Laosheng. With Feng Laosheng's strong support, he secretly prepared a plan to overthrow the king. At the same time, he received news that the Wenji money house was located at the peak of Lingyun Mountain in Great Chin. Riding a flying beast, he personally went to the Great Zhou Dynasty to meet with the envoy of the Lingyun sect, Zhao Yi. Zhao Yi greatly admired him and promised, I will definitely recommend you to the inner door of the Lingyun sect in the future. Chen Hai was ecstatic and grateful to Zhao Yi. Following Zhao Yi's instructions, he secretly spread the news that the Wenji money house was located at the peak of Lingyun Mountain in Great Chen, declaring himself as the king and honoring the Chen king as the emperor. At the same time, he removed Chen Zheng from the family genealogy and issued a nationwide warrant. To please Zhao Yi, he led a hundred thousand troops with Feng Laosheng and marched towards the peak of Lingyun Mountain. Although not the first to arrive at the destination, 
they arrived in time. Seeing that the Wenji Money House still stood tall at the peak of Lingyun Mountain, he breathed a sigh of relief, glad that the Wenji Money House had not been destroyed. Chin King, representatives of more than 20 major forces from the eastern region are willing to join us in attacking the Wenji Money House, said royal advisor Feng Laosheng. The weakest among them is at the elemental realm, and the strongest is at the mid-spiritual realm. Chin Hai was overjoyed to hear this. With their help, they would surely be able to eliminate the Wenji Money House. Spread the order. Annihilate the Wenji Money House. Kill. Chin Hai roared excitedly. Kill. 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 The 10,000 Chin troops charged towards the peak of Lingyun Mountain like a tide. Swish. Swish. Representatives from more than 20 major forces in the eastern region also joined the fray. For a moment, the flames of war raged. A black feathered eagle soared into the sky letting out a long cry before diving down without hesitation. Its speed was so fast that it was hard to catch, its wings like blades, cutting down all the Chin troops in its path. A strongman at the mid-spiritual realm shouted angrily and met it head on. Two other strongmen at the early spiritual realm followed closely behind, realizing that the black feathered eagle was not easy to deal with and deciding to join forces. Bang! Clang! The fierce battle began. Chin Jung witnessing this scene, was burning with anger, wishing to retaliate against Chin Hai's audacity immediately. These warriors in the armor of the Great Chin were once the elites of the Great Chin, but they unknowingly offended the Wenji Money House and are now destined to find their final resting place in the Lingyun Mountain Range. The owner of the house will not spare them. They will become the nourishment of the mountains. Chin Zheng, who chose to become an apprentice of the Wenji Money House, probably didn't expect to end up like this today. He could have easily crushed his opponents and seized the position of the crown prince, but he made a mistake by offending the Lingyun sect and the envoy from the Zhao clan, giving Chen Hai an opportunity. At this moment, Chen Hai is feeling extremely pleased. All the previous suppression has been released, and he sneered, saying, both you and the Wenji money house will be trampled by the iron cavalry of the great Chen. Whoever brings me the head of Chen Zheng will be promoted three ranks, rewarded with 10,000 gold, and a million spirit stones. Chen Hai's anger soared as he pointed at Chen Zheng, issuing a thunderous roar. Under his command, a large number of Chen soldiers charged towards Chen Zheng without hesitation. Chen Zheng clenched his fists tightly, his eyes filled with killing intent. At the same time, blind swordsmen rushed forward without hesitation. Chin Zheng gritted his teeth and chose to fight back, but his gaze remained locked on Chin Hai. He activated the fourth grade teleportation charm, moving at lightning speed that no one could stop, including those generals. A hint of surprise flashed in Chin Hai's eyes as he looked at Feng Lao and thought to himself, this bounty might fall into your hands. Feng Lao, draped in a black robe, hoarsely said, thank you, King Chin, but the national teacher has ordered to leave them alive. Chin Hai coldly ordered, yes. Feng Lao disappeared in the blink of an eye. Chin Zheng sensed the danger and his eyes narrowed, national teacher. He also activated the fourth grade shield charm, preparing to defend himself. Feng Lao calmly said, it seems that the background of the Wenji money house is not to be underestimated, but I am a fourth grade charm master. Then both sides engaged in fierce combat, and Chin Zheng found himself at a disadvantage once again. Blind swordsmen joined the battle to protect Chin Zheng but was surrounded by experts from the eastern region. Meanwhile, a large number of Chin soldiers attacked the peak of Lingyun Mountain, launching a fierce assault on the Wenji Money House. However, their strength was limited and they could not break through the formation. A great Chin general with the strength of the Lingdong realm stepped forward, wielding a large iron hammer, charging ahead. The other soldiers made way for him but he was knocked flying by a mysterious woman and disappeared into the air. The Chen soldiers were dumbfounded, amazed by her strength and even more amazed by her stunning beauty. Chen Zheng's heart sank, and he ordered, kill them all. At this very moment, a soft voice suddenly rang out in the world bank, with a swoosh, the figure of Su Qingyu flickered, a surge of killing intent emerged, and her journey of slaughter began. Su Qingyu is a woman with endless killing intent hidden deep within her heart her eyes revealing a cold sharpness, as if able to penetrate everything. In the seemingly peaceful place of the World Bank, she showed a completely different side. When that faint voice entered her ears, 
A strong desire surged in Su Qingyu's heart. She yearned to conquer everything with her own power. Her delicate body moved as if an enraged beast, about to embark on a hunt. The smell of slaughter filled the air. With only targets left in Su Qingyu's eyes, she ruthlessly launched attacks. Each swing carried a ruthless sharpness, sending shivers down one's spine. In this moment, Su Qingyu revealed that cold and ruthless side deep within her heart. Her path of slaughter is destined to be filled with bloodshed and cruelty, and she will mercilessly tread this path until she conquers all. In the Bank of Ten Thousand Realms, those who commit crimes will face severe sanctions. In the blink of an eye, Su Qingyu had broken through to the late stage of the spirit communication realm, killing all the soldiers of the Great Qin on the top of Lingyun Mountain. She stood alone on the mountain top, with a cold expression, emanating a mix of fire and ice, like a queen looking down on the Qin army and strong warriors below. Suddenly, an arrow shot through the sky, aiming straight for Su Qingyu's eyes. But she seemed unfazed, only igniting the arrow when it was ten meters away. Flames flickered in her eyes, spreading in all directions, and in an instant, the mountain was ablaze with fire rising high into the sky. The sacred fire avoided the trees, only consuming the enemies, and the Qin soldiers on the mountain were engulfed by the sacred fire, screams echoing through the valley. One soldier sensed the danger, turned to flee, but the fire swiftly devoured him, despair and agony engulfing his body. The power of the sacred fire was astonishing, burning fiercely on Lingyun Mountain like hell itself. The weaker Qin soldiers turned to ashes in an instant, while the stronger ones resisted for a while unaware that the sacred fire could penetrate their spiritual defenses. A great Qin general, realizing the danger, tried to escape and put up a defense, but the sacred fire quickly enveloped him, even burning through his protective charms. He resisted for only two seconds before turning into ashes. Qin Hai was shocked and pale, his confidence and arrogance shattered. His guards urged him to flee, while Feng Lao did not hesitate to run away, ignoring Qin Hai's pleas. Chen Hai called out for help, but even the national teacher could not assist in time. The Grand Master completely ignored him. Chen Hai, seeing this, his face turned dark, roaring in anger, I will never let you go. Never. Suddenly, a strange and powerful flame soared into the sky, incinerating all his guards. The defense line, consisting of thousands of spirit profound realm experts, was unexpectedly shattered. Chen Hai was just one step away from death. Qin Zheng, ninth brother, save me. Qin Hai looked towards Qin Zheng, even kneeling in panic and fear. Qin Zheng halted the battle, as his opponent was fiercely resisting the mysterious flame. Qin Hai, how dare you betray and willingly become someone else's lackey, nearly pushing great Qin to its doom. What a waste of you, Qin Zheng said sternly. You, even if I die, I will take you down with me. Die, die, all, all. Oh, four-star god explosive talisman. He suddenly took out four-star god explosive talismans, even producing eight, yelling at Chin Zheng, Chin Zheng, let's die together. However, as he activated the four-star god explosive talismans, his body suddenly trembled, a sword tip piercing out of his forehead with flesh and blood. Chin Zheng, you talk too much. Blind swordsman's voice echoed in the valley. He is after all the crown prince of Great Chin, my elder brother. Chin Zheng looked at Chin Hai's resentful expression, closing his eyes involuntarily. Obviously, witnessing his elder brother being killed had an impact on him. Especially hearing the cries of the Great Chin soldiers, he fell silent even more. Soon, the cries of the last mid level spirit profound realm expert echoed in the valley. Except for the black feathered eagle and Chin Zheng. Everyone on Lingyun Mountain had perished. Over a hundred thousand lives turned to ashes, drifting in the wind, nourishing the mountains and forests. The situation, which was on the brink of collapse, suddenly reversed, with all enemies wiped out, unbelievably so. They fought hard but were annihilated by a single strike from the mysterious woman in the red robe, a stark contrast that was shocking. Subsequently, the three of them, along with the black feathered eagle, returned to the world treasury. Let me introduce you. Chen Fan slowly stood up and said, This is Su Qingyu, the first envoy of the World Treasury. These two are our apprentices, Chen Zheng and Blind Swordsman. This is the Master's Mount, Little Feather. I am the Master's Maid, you can call me Chen M.I. 
Chen Zheng and blind swordsmen looked moved after hearing this. It turns out that the envoy of the world treasury is so powerful. They no longer resent their apprentice status. Wait, could you be the mysterious woman who destroyed the four square gate? Chen Zheng looked at Su Qingyu in astonishment. She single-handedly destroyed a gate. This time, a whole country may not escape calamity. The speed of her progress in strength is simply terrifying. Just as they were introducing each other, news of the representatives of various major powers in the eastern region, the King of Qin, and the 10,000 Qin troops being completely wiped out on Lingyun Mountain began to spread. After days of effort, the great Zhou dynasty has finally gained widespread recognition. The reputation of the Multiverse Bank is also spreading far and wide. As time goes by, the reputation of the Multiverse Bank continues to soar. Every time I hear the sound of, ding, my prestige value breaks through 200 points. 400 points, 700 points. With the continuous growth of prestige value, the reputation of the Multiverse Bank is reaching its peak, becoming the center of attention for all. Ding, Chen Fan's reputation has reached 1,000 points, and the Multiverse Money Bank has also gained some small fame as a result. The rewards this time are really generous. A large-scale guarding formation for the Multiverse Money Bank, a special item, 10 5th grade talismans, 1 6th grade talisman, and a reset for the Multiverse Money Bank. When Chen Fan heard this news, his eyes instantly lit up, feeling exceptionally excited. Special items have always been rare treasures. And this time, to reward 10 5th grade talismans, including 1 6th grade talisman, is simply too generous. However, what does it mean to reset the Multiverse Money Bank? Chen Fan couldn't wait to click and check the reward content. The Multiverse Money Bank guarding formation turned out to be a large-scale formation. The special item is a tool to upgrade the Yin Soul Puppet, with no side effects after use. The 10 5th grade talismans include the Shield Talisman, the Explosion Talisman, the Power Talisman, the Movement Talisman, and the Weakening Talisman. There is also a 6th grade talisman, the power talisman, enough to deal with strong practitioners in the spirit realm. This reward is truly surprising. Joy surged in Chen Fan's heart, looking at the magnificent hall around him. Chen Fan suddenly felt a bit empty. So, without hesitation, he used the special item on Xiaomi. In an instant, Xiaomi's strength soared to the late spirit connection realm. Now, with more and more envoys recruited by the Multiverse Money Bank, Xiaomi, as a spokesperson, is no longer enough with the Late Spirit Connection Realm strength, but the Late Spirit Connection Realm strength can handle some challenges. As for resetting the Multiverse Money Bank, what changes will it bring? Chen Fan was full of expectations. Ding! Resetting the Multiverse Money Bank. The system's prompt sounded, and in the next moment, Chen Fan was forcibly teleported out of the Multiverse Money Bank hall. It seems that the process of resetting the Multiverse Money Bank is indeed not simple, as it also sent him out. He was full of anticipation for the changes in the future. Next, he began to sense the power of Xiaomi in the late spirit connection realm. The entire East Domain is closely watching the movements of the Great Zhou Dynasty. When the envoy from Zhao heard about the Great Zhou Dynasty, he was furious. The words of the Zhao envoy made the people around him uneasy. According to the scouts' report, on that day, there was a demon fire that appeared, taking the lives of 100,000 soldiers from the Great Chin in just a few breaths. Even the mid-level spirit connection realm experts could not hold on for a minute. Such terrifying power must come from the masters inside the multiverse money bank, most likely from that mysterious owner. Zhou Qi took a deep breath, trying to calm the anger of the Zhao envoy, and said, perhaps it was the owner of the multiverse money bank who took action. At these words, a cold light flashed in the eyes of the Zhao envoy. Ji Han stepped forward, handing a bag to the Zhao envoy, and said softly, Zhao envoy, please calm down. When Zhao Yi took over the universe bag, he was filled with anticipation and excitement. Upon exploring its contents, he found a million spirit stones and a fifth grade divine shield charm inside. This made his eyebrows raise in surprise, dissipating much of his anger. If he had this 5th grade divine shield charm earlier, how could he have been afraid of the 5th grade divine explosion charm in the hands of the owner of the Wenji money bank? He wouldn't have been suppressed so miserably. Zhao Yi secretly felt fortunate that the owner of the Wenji money bank was incredibly powerful, almost unbeatable, 
except for a strong expert at the spirit realm level who might be able to kill him. Ji Han told him that the emperor had recently been caught up in too many matters with the great Ming dynasty, too busy to intervene personally. Otherwise, he would definitely have lent a hand to help Zhao Yi settle the affairs of the Wenji money bank and dispel Zhao Yi's grievances. But in reality, this meant that the emperor would not personally take action and could only let Zhao Yi handle it on his own, with great Zhou only providing assistance. Holding the universe bag in his hand, Zhao Yi thought about the emperor's recent breakthrough and actions against the great Zhou dynasty. He knew in his heart that the emperor had too many things to deal with, so he could only nod and say, wait. I have issued a sect summons, and all Lingyun sect disciples will come to support. By then, it will be the time for the destruction of the Wenji money bank. Let them be arrogant for a while longer. The system's voice sounded in Chen Fan's mind, and he immediately entered the Wenji money bank without hesitation. However, when he appeared, he found himself no longer inside the hall but standing outside the main gate. Before him was a grand and ancient two-story building, with flying E's and intricate carvings, a plaque bearing the four characters of Wenji Money Bank emitting a mysterious and dignified aura, making it intimidating to look directly at. The previous luxurious atmosphere had now transformed into a low-key luxury and high-end atmosphere. As the owner of the Wenji Money Bank, Chen Fan felt extremely happy. He couldn't wait to enter the hall and found several sets of tables and chairs, obviously for receiving guests. The second floor was divided into a warehouse and a living room, making the Wanji money bank more complete. Chen Fan was very satisfied with this arrangement, feeling that he would no longer feel lonely when cultivating here. Suddenly, his eyebrows raised as Njongwo's soul summoning was successful. He immediately shifted his attention to Njongwo, only to see him holding his son's body as he arrived at the Wanji money bank, seizing the opportunity for his son to be reborn. When Njongwo arrived at the entrance of the multiverse money house, the scene before him took him by surprise. He had never seen the exterior of the multiverse money house before, and the sight before him at this moment stirred something inside him. Stepping into the hall, he was once again astonished by the changes he saw. He glimpsed the newly added tables and chairs, feeling a bit flustered, but at that moment, his mind was only on his son. Njongwo knelt down, gently lifting his son's body pleading, Master, please save my son. And Wushwang's weak and fragile yin soul, struggling with learning and the challenges of practicing yin soul techniques, needed patience and time to grow. Chen Fan observed in Wushwang's yin soul, calmly waiting for the rescue operation. And Zhang Wo did not despair, but instead showed a glimmer of hope because he believed his son could be saved. However, Chen Fan reminded him that his son's yin soul could dissipate at any moment so they needed to find the right treasure to nourish it. And Zhongguo looked anxious, but Chen Fan said, You are lucky. I have just obtained a mysterious pendant containing a small world rich in yin energy, which can nourish the yin soul and help it grow. You can carry the pendant, teach him, guide him in his cultivation, and your own yin soul can also enter it to accompany him. Chen Fan handed in Zhongguo the yin soul technique and the mysterious pendant, instructing him to teach his son how to cultivate. And Zhang Guo was tearful with gratitude. Chen Fan stopped him from thanking him, encouraging him to live well and perhaps reunite with his beloved wife. Just focus on the task at hand, no need for thanks. And Zhang Guo nodded earnestly, promising to do his best. Chen Fan left the yin soul technique and the mysterious pendant, temporarily taking care of his son's body and his wife's hands, waiting for the right moment to resurrect them. He arranged for Njongwo to go to the Great Jin Dynasty to help resolve Wang Dabao's debts. After Njongwo agreed, a familiar voice came from outside. Oh, so this is the legendary multiverse money house. Master, your taste is truly impeccable. Hearing the voice, Chen Fan smiled knowingly as Wang Dabao entered and saw Njongwo, exclaiming in surprise, Are you the master? Njongwo introduced himself as the messenger of the multiverse money house. And Zhongguo greeted Wang Dabao, calling him by his name, and it seemed like they had known each other for a long time. Wang Dabao casually responded, as if he already knew about Zhongguo's heroic deeds. Introducing himself as the second in command at the Wanji Money House, Wang Dabao was interrupted by Chen Fan, who cleared his throat and urged him to quickly introduce the situation in Daejin and resolve the debt issue. Wang Dabao sat down without hesitation 
inviting An Zhongguo to join him for a discussion. After some hesitation, An Zhongguo finally sat down. Wang Dabao addressed him as Old In, which puzzled An Zhongguo. Wang Dabao explained that the reason Daejin hadn't repaid the debt was not his fault, but rather due to their opponent's strong power, possessing fourth and fifth grade talismans, numerous guards, and elusive whereabouts, making it difficult to track them down. He asked An Zhongguo for advice on how to deal with the situation. With a worried expression, Wang Dabao continued, but Chen Fan couldn't help but sarcastically comment that Wang Dabao looked like he was constipated. Wang Dabao claimed to have made great sacrifices, even sacrificing his charm, in his efforts to recover the debt. He passionately stated that he had tried to approach the king of Daejin and even seduced his beloved daughter, Princess Yongle, only to be rejected. Wang Dabao became angry but suddenly fell silent. Chen Fan impatiently interrupted him and temporarily silenced him. Trembling with fear, Wang Dabao nodded like a pecking chicken, and Chen Fan released his mouth. Wang Dabao continued, determined to fulfill the tasks assigned by the master without giving up. Eventually, he came up with a plan that provided a solution to the problem. With a mysterious tone, Wang Dabao asked Chen Fan to guess, but Chen Fan expressed frustration saying he talked too much and mostly nonsense. Wang Dabao stopped himself, claiming not to be impulsive but rather a highly intelligent being. He shifted his focus to a new target, arousing An Zhongguo's curiosity. In the Palace of Jin, there is a highly respected grand internal supervisor named Xiao Gagong. He is a loyal and diligent person, earning the trust and admiration of An Zhongguo and Chen Fan. Xiao Gagong has always been diligent, meticulous in handling every trivial matter, never slackening. His work attitude is rigorous and serious, earning great admiration from others. And Zhongguo and Chen Fan praise Xiao Gagong endlessly, considering him an indispensable figure in the Palace of Jin. Not only does Xiao Gagong handle affairs methodically, but he is also cautious and thoughtful in his approach, never careless. He works diligently, constantly contributing to the prosperity and stability of the Palace of Jin. Xiao Gagong's dedication and efforts have been highly appreciated by An Zhongguo and Chen Fan, who are grateful and deeply aware of his value and importance. In the Palace of Jin, Xiao Gagong's presence is like a solid fortress, guarding the peace and order of the entire palace. His spirit and work ethic are undoubtedly valuable assets of the Palace of Jin, making him the most reliable and trustworthy assistant for An Zhongguo and Chen Fan. An Zhongguo's heart was restless. But he suppressed his anger and curiously asked, How did I end up having a relationship with a servant? He glanced at Wang Dabao inadvertently, thinking to himself about his physique. Could it be that the servants nowadays prefer this type? But that's not the point. The point is, I have sacrificed too much to complete the master's task. It hasn't been easy all the way. Wang Dabao's helpless expression made An Zhongguo feel a chill creeping up his back, and his eyes became strange. Seeing this, Wang Dabao quickly explained, Laoan, why are you looking at me like that? I have nothing with that servant Xiao Gagong. I was just talking casually. If it wasn't to see Prince Jin, how could I sacrifice myself for no reason? Wang Dabao was about to continue explaining when An Zhongguo simply nodded, taking the lead to say, I have understood the situation. Thanks for informing me, Wang Dabao. With that, he stood up, respectfully leaning against the door of Wenji Money House bowing slightly and saying, Master, I will resolve this matter within three days. Da Han is very close to Da Jin, separated only by one country, which is why Chen Fan sent me to help Wang Dabao. All right, I will wait for your message, Chen Fan said. Laowen, when you arrive in Da Jin, remember to find me. I am familiar there. Before Wang Dabao could finish his sentence, and Zhang Guo had already turned and left Wenji Money House. Master. Wang Dabao wanted to say something, but Chen Fan sent him directly out. Finally quiet, Chen Fan sighed in relief. The system prompt sounded. The eighth transaction is completed, with a completion rate of 90%, receiving corresponding task rewards. After the reward settlement, he obtained a purple gold alchemy furnace. And Zhang Guo's trade reward finally arrived. A completion rate of 90%? Not bad. In order to recruit in Zhang Guo, Chen Fan paid a great price, 10 years, the 9 transformations golden body technique, 1 million spirit stones, and promised to help him save his wife and children. 
especially the promise to save his wife and children, the price is extremely high. But it has not been fulfilled so far. Now he has taken out the soul summoning technique, the mysterious pendant, the yin soul technique. It's like a bottomless pit. However, the system judged the completion rate to be as high as 90%, indicating in Zhang Guo's huge potential. Check the reward. Chen Fan saw the information showing, purple gold alchemy furnace, specially designed for alchemists, can improve the success rate of alchemy. Alchemist exclusive? It looks like I need to take some time to learn alchemy. Then prepare the necessary materials for refining. Otherwise, this purple gold alchemy furnace will be wasted. Alchemy has a huge role, can make various elixirs, Chen Fan has always longed for it, and now is the perfect opportunity to practice. Xiao Yu, come and teach me alchemy. With that in mind, Chen Fan opened the encyclopedia and began to study alchemy in depth. Watch the operations of some master alchemists. Since in Zhang eliminated the King of Han and the servant Zhao, the whole Da Han has fallen into chaos. The surrounding countries have launched attacks one after another, and bandits are rampant within Da Han, with rebel forces wreaking havoc everywhere, causing great suffering to the people. Da Han is now in chaos, with various factions constantly fighting, but the capital remains calm thanks to the steadfastness of Nzhang At this moment, Nzhang gathered his 108 warriors, with a solemn expression, and announced, I will go to Da Jin to carry out a mission. You all, this band, here are 30 million spirit stones, dozens of fourth grade talismans, hundreds of third grade talismans, thousands of second grade talismans, and some precious elixirs and resources, all confiscated from the Zhao family's mansion. Take your share. The 108 warriors, with anxious expressions, all looked towards Zhu Yu. General, Yu, Zhu Yu spoke slowly, and Zhang Guo is no longer the general of Da Han, but an envoy of the multiverse money bank, a status far from ordinary. And Zhang Guo waved his hand, interrupting, envoy of the multiverse money bank? Zhu Yu raised an eyebrow in surprise at the rumors he had heard about the multiverse money bank, never expecting in general to be an envoy. And Zhang Guo briefly explained the situation of the multiverse money bank, leaving everyone shocked and silent. The general has found his place, but what about them? General, all our families have been harmed by Zhao Gagong, we are destitute and have no one to rely on. Are you also going to leave us behind? Zhu Yu spoke again. We know we cannot integrate into the multiverse money bank. We only wish to follow the general in this life, to fight on the battlefield, to be cannon fodder, and to die without regrets. We are willing to follow the general into battle, willing to be cannon fodder, and to die without complaints. Immediately, the other warriors knelt down one by one, shouting in agreement. And Zhang Guo looked at the kneeling figures, took a deep breath, and passionately said, Good. Follow me into battle. You do not disappoint me, and I will not disappoint you. Zhu Yu, prepare the flying beasts immediately. We are heading to Da Jin. And Zhang Guo began his cultivation, understanding the origin of the Prince of Jin, knowing his strength, difficult to deal with. If he can break through to the spirit realm, he will surely achieve twice the result with half the effort. Zhu Yu was very efficient in his work, and on that day, he prepared more than a dozen flying beasts. The group embarked on the journey and flew to the capital of Da Jin. One day later, they arrived at the capital of Da Jin. And Zhang Guo stood on top of the flying beast, overlooking the palace of the Prince of Jin, and calmly said, Prince of Jin, you owe the multiverse money bank a resplendent youth pill, with a deadline of a thousand years, overdue by a hundred years, with a hundred years of life as interest. Now, you are eight hundred years overdue. Hand over the resplendent youth pill and 800 years of life immediately. And Zhang Guo's voice spread throughout the entire royal city, and for a moment, the capital of Da Jin fell silent, everyone looked up in astonishment. The prince owes a debt? And it's a resplendent youth pill? Can life be used to repay debts? Suddenly, a powerful aura of the mid stage spirit realm quickly rose, followed by a thunderous shout, Who dares to be arrogant in the capital of Da Jin? And Zhang Guo, and Zhang Guo calmly replied, Yes, the general of Da Han. HMPH, and Zhang Guo, how dare you be so presumptuous here? This is not where you can act recklessly. Get out at once. Swoosh, swoosh, figures rose into the air from various parts of the great Jin capital, all of them at the spirit communication realm level. 
This scene made Zub Yu's pupils shrink, and he immediately gave a low shout, commanding the formation to be set up. Swoosh, swoosh. Following that, a dozen flying beasts began to fly side by side, at the same height, forming an aerial platform, and the blood slaughter formation was instantly formed. The terrifying killing intent condensed into a giant slaughter knife in the sky, enough to sever the enemy's will. Inside the Wenji money house, Chen Fan watched quietly and calmly said, but this is far from enough. The will of the spirit communication realm experts is resilient, how could it be easily weakened? Unless, and Zhang Wo sits at the eye of the formation, elevating the power of the entire formation by several levels. Faced with these eight spirit communication realm experts, victory will be easily achieved. Just as Chen Fan finished speaking, the eight strong spirit communication realm experts of Great Jin immediately took action. They had realized the strangeness of this formation, its power far beyond imagination, and they could no longer delay. However, it was already too late, and Zhang Guo's figure flickered and had already arrived above the eye of the formation. Hum, the next moment, the power of the entire blood slaughter formation surged. The most astonishing change was that the giant slaughter knife in the void actually materialized. Floating above everyone's heads, and Zhang Guo made a full move. The eight spirit communication realm experts of the great Jin dynasty saw this scene. Their faces changed drastically. With a solemn expression, they fully displayed their strength without reservation. They were like eight meteors, attacking from eight directions, unleashing a destructive offensive. World annihilating blade. And yet, and Zhang Guo remained calm, extending his right hand to directly grasp the giant slaughter knife above his head, creating a stark contrast. So, this knife is called the World Annihilating Blade? Well, it lives up to its name. Chen Fan narrowed his eyes, looking at the eight spirit communication realm experts around him with even more solemn expressions. He knew that the World Annihilating Blade had brought immense pressure to them. Slash, just as the attacks of the eight spirit communication realm experts were about to land, and Zhang Guo gripped the knife with one hand and fiercely slashed forward. Hum, the next moment, the previously surging offensive was instantly cut off, without any hindrance. Impossible. The faces of the eight spirit communication realm experts changed dramatically. The shadow of death instantly enveloped them, and they screamed in terror. Puff, puff. However, they were already too late to evade. All eight of them were cut into two pieces by a single slash, none spared. What's even more incredible is that their souls were completely annihilated. Chen Fan's pupils shrank. His soul was incredibly powerful, so he immediately noticed the anomaly in these eight experts. With their strength, even if their bodies were cut off, they should not have immediately perished. At least their consciousness should have been preserved for a while, but the reality was. Their eyes lost their vitality in an instant. The terror of the world annihilating Blade's power. At this moment, even Chen Fan couldn't help but feel a bit envious. The entire capital of Da Jin was shrouded in a dead silence, leaving the court officials, military generals, commoners, and wealthy merchants all speechless. When will the Da Jin king show up? And Zhang Guo coldly stared at the Da Jin palace, raising his world-destroying blade once again, and a terrifying aura began to spread, instantly enveloping the entire palace. The imperial guards, eunuchs, palace maids, concubines, and princes inside the palace were all intimidated by this terrifying presence, stepping back in fear, their faces filled with horror. Isn't Zhang Guo going to destroy the entire palace? They panicked, hoping that the Da Jin King would come forward and not die in vain. Swish, without hesitation, and Zhang Guo's mind moved, and 18 flying beasts swooped down towards the Da Jin Palace like arrows. The speed increased rapidly, the killing intent grew stronger and the scent of death became more prominent. Thud, thud, people inside the palace began to tremble, kneeling down, their faces filled with pleading and despair, as if they could feel the approach of the grim reaper. Thud, thud, following that, a large number of imperial guards also knelt down. Annihilate, and Zhang Guo shouted, swinging his world-destroying blade abruptly. Buzz, at that moment, an extremely terrifying aura suddenly emanated from deep within the palace. Stop, a thunderous shout rang out, instantly relieving the pressure on everyone in the palace. Swish, immediately after, a handsome young figure dashed out, pressing his palms tightly against the blade of the world-destroying blade, 
preventing it from moving forward. Powerful spiritual power surged between his palms. Blocked? At that moment, everyone was stunned, then showed ecstatic expressions. Long live the Da Jin King! Long live the Da Jin King! Cheers echoed inside the palace, spreading throughout the entire capital of Da Jin. However, and Zhang Guo's expression remained calm and terrifying. In the next moment, the world-destroying blade struck again. Initially slow, the speed increased rapidly, about to escape the control of the Da Jin King in the blink of an eye. Silence fell once again. The situation changed too quickly, didn't it? Swish. Then, the world-destroying blade completely broke through the defense of the Da Jin King, aiming directly at his face. Lao En, spare him. Zhu Yan Dan and his lifespan are not in your hands yet. Just then, a familiar voice sounded. Buzz. Following that, the world-destroying blade suddenly turned, slashing past beside the Da Jin King. Thud. Thud. The terrifying attack split the Da Jin Palace in half, leaving a scar several meters deep that made one's heart tremble. Everyone caught in the attack perished, none survived. Bang! Subsequently, and Zhang Guo didn't give the Da Jin King a chance to catch his breath, delivering a punch. Thud! The Da Jin King immediately spat out a mouthful of blood, flying backwards, crashing through numerous halls and pillars, eventually being buried in the ruins of a large hall. Swish! In the next moment, the Da Jin King suddenly rushed out, escaping at an extremely fast speed. Huh? And Zhang Guo furrowed his brows, preparing to chase after him. Bang! Just then, a figure appeared suddenly at a crucial point where the Da Jin King had to pass, striking out with a punch, sending the Da Jin King flying sideways. The Prince of Jin has suffered a heavy blow, severely wounded and unable to resist any longer. Prince of Jin, do you still have any thoughts of escape? Are you aware that over the past dozen days, I have put in tremendous effort to eliminate you, even risking losing myself? Finally, I have successfully captured you. Wang Dabao immediately recognized the speaker as Chen Fan. He couldn't help but wonder, what did this guy eat to appear so mysteriously here? Despite being over a thousand years old, Chen Fan still looked youthful and elegant. He rescued the Jin King from the ruins and gently manipulated the king's body as if playing with a doll excitedly exclaiming about the miraculous effects of the treasures from my Wenji money house. Not only can it maintain eternal youth and beauty, but also keep the body in a youthful state. Impressive. However, this treasure doesn't belong to you. It belongs to my Wenji money house. Why have you been keeping it for yourself and not returning it? Do you look down on my Wenji money house? With me, Wang Dabao around, I dare anyone to owe debts and not repay. Where is the resplendent beauty pill? Hand it over. Suddenly, the Jin King suffered severe internal injuries, and as he was shaken, blood spurted out. Subsequently, a emerald green bead was coughed up and rolled onto the ground. Wang Dabao's eyes lit up as he eagerly examined it, sensing the vibrant life force flowing within. However, the Jin King's youthful appearance instantly turned into a withered, aged state, shocking him. The effects are too obvious. Spare me. Don't take away my lifespan. I can exchange it for spirit stones, spiritual veins, or other resources. The Jin King pleaded desperately. Losing 800 years of lifespan would mean he would die for sure. Dream on. Wang Dabao's eyes gleamed as he inquired, Can we exchange for spiritual veins? Can we exchange for martial arts and combat skills? Yes, everything can be exchanged. The Jin King, grasping at the last strand of hope, quickly offered, Royal Envoy, didn't you want to marry my daughter, Princess Yongle, a few days ago? I can help make it happen. Wang Dabao's face lit up, saying, what do you mean? I am not acting for personal gain. Everything you offer belongs to Wenji Money House. The Jin King nodded hurriedly. Yes, yes. Seeing the Jin King's cooperative attitude, Wang Dabao promised to fight for him. With that, Wang Dabao swiftly moved to An Zhongguo's side, smiling and saying, Lao En, you arrived just in time. I thought you were coming tomorrow. I even prepared to welcome you in my best state. I took a bath this morning and took a nap to refresh myself. Luckily, I heard some commotion outside and found out it was you who had arrived. If I hadn't shown up in time, that Jin King guy would have killed you, and then how could I have obtained his lifespan? Also, thanks to my intelligence, I anticipated that the Jin King might try to escape, 
so I set up an ambush in advance, bringing everything to a splendid conclusion. Chen Fan couldn't help but feel speechless after hearing Wang Dabao's words. He thought that Wang Dabao's statement was simply unacceptable. Was he just an assistant, with most of the credit going to Wang Dabao? And Zhang Guo also felt helpless and decided to confront the issue, saying, No. The Prince of Jin is already in a terrible state. If we let him continue like this, he probably won't even live for 800 years. If we forcibly extract his lifespan, it might lead to his death, and he might not even get the full 800 years. If such a situation truly occurs, we should inform the master and follow the master's decision. Wang Dabao's eyes lit up, and he whispered, Lao An, the master is very busy. As his most trusted assistant, we should learn to share his burdens. If even such trivial matters make the master worry, wouldn't it show our incompetence? Chen Fan couldn't help but frown upon hearing this and couldn't resist commenting, Thank you for your consideration, but what you're doing is making unilateral decisions. Lifespan is extremely precious. The Prince of Jin has suffered a loss before and has gained experience. Wang Dabao and Zhongguo lack this experience and might make a costly trade. Moreover, such decisions absolutely cannot be made unilaterally. Important and high-value transactions must be approved by the master. And Zhongguo stuck to his opinion. Lao An, why are you so rigid? Think about it, if. Before Wang Dabao could finish, and Zhongguo directly used the token of the multiverse and disappeared on the spot. Wang Dabao felt puzzled. Did he make a decision without seeing the master first? He also took out his token of the multiverse, preparing to persuade the master at the multiverse bank. However, just as he was about to leave, and Zhongguo appeared again. How come you're back so soon? Didn't you see the master? Wang Dabao asked in confusion. And Zhongguo replied, the master has already spoken. First, extract 800 years of lifespan without negotiation. If it's not enough, use other resources to make up for it. With that said, he went straight to the Prince of Jin and ruthlessly pressed his palm on the Beiwi acupoint on the Prince of Jin's head. The Prince of Jin had no time to react. Let go of me. The Prince of Jin felt his life rapidly draining before his eyes, organs deteriorating rapidly, a terrifying experience. He could see himself approaching the edge of death, but he had betrayed the spirit of the contract and would undoubtedly pay the price. However, in this state, he was unable to break free from Njongwo's control. Those around him were shocked to see the Prince of Jin aging rapidly, horrified. Could such a bizarre thing really exist in this world? Subsequently, the Prince of Jin's life came to an end, with 780 years of lifespan extracted. And Zhongguo took the Prince of Jin's bag of holding and headed straight to the Great Jin Treasury. Wang Dabao understood that An Zhongguo must have received instructions from the master and would determine how many resources to exchange for those 20 years of lifespan. The master's word was final. It seemed that in the future, such matters would require the master's approval. After this incident, Wang Dabao had a clearer understanding of similar situations. Just then, a crisp voice rang out, Wang Dabao? Upon seeing the figure of Princess Yongle, Wang Dabao couldn't help but feel a stir in his heart. He furrowed his brow slightly and asked, Is there something you need from me? With the internal turmoil in the Great Jin Kingdom and the loss of many strong individuals, Princess Yongle, as a woman, especially a beautiful woman, urgently needs a powerful supporter to rely on. Otherwise, her remaining years will be filled with hardships. Even if the person in front of her is the enemy of her father, there can be no development between them. You were cold and heartless to me yesterday. Today I make you falter. Wang Dabao inadvertently uttered a classic saying, Dabao, is there still hope between us? In the next moment, a coquettish voice rang out. Wang Dabao, do we still have a chance? Upon hearing this, Wang Dabao's expression changed slightly, especially when he saw the twisting figure of Xiao Gagong, the seductive gaze in his eyes, and the orchid he was holding between his fingers, which made him feel nauseated. In the hall of the Wenji money house, and Zhang Guo cautiously reported to the owner about the results of the journey to Daijin. A resplendent youth pill, 780 years of lifespan, 10 spiritual veins, and 10 million spiritual stones. Owner, this is our harvest. He waited expectantly for the owner's reward. Wang Dabao added nervously, I was almost caught by that Xiao Gagong just now. I had goosebumps all over my body, and I almost vomited yesterday's meal. Trembling, 
he clearly suffered some serious injuries. If you don't punish him, he'll really think he's the owner. Wang Dabao couldn't help but complain when he saw Chen Fan. Chen Fan coldly responded, I haven't settled accounts with you yet, and you're already asking for rewards? He decided to let Wang Dabao cool off in the punishment room for a day. You like to talk, don't you? I'll let you stay there alone later and see if you can talk to yourself. Wang Dabao was scared into silence and dared not speak again. Chen Fan then continued, The debt contracts in the Eastern Domain have been settled. Your task now is to collect the Foundation Stone and the Void Shuttle. Wang Dabao asked in confusion, What are those? They sound like materials for building formations. He sarcastically added, Owner, are you also a master of formations? Why not let me do the manual labor? But before he could finish, he was silenced. And Zhang Guo, seeing this, breathed a sigh of relief, seemingly feeling satisfied. Wang Dabao looked at him resentfully, Olden, Olden, I've been so good to you, why don't you speak up for me? And Zhang Guo awkwardly avoided eye contact, unable to face him directly. Chen Fan decided to build a teleportation array to solve the vastness problem in the Eastern Domain. He had already collected the boundary breaking blade and the teleportation array diagram, and had thoroughly researched the diagram. The only missing materials were the void blade and the foundation stone, the most difficult to obtain. And Zhang Guo mentioned he had only read about these materials in ancient texts and was unsure of their exact locations. He was only good at leading troops in battle and had limited knowledge of the outside world. Wang Dabao suddenly became excited and tried to say something, but couldn't speak. Chen Fan couldn't help but smile as he watched Wang Dabao's performance, teasing, let us hit you. You're putting in so much effort, your performance is truly outstanding. Wang Dabao quickly shook his head, nodding earnestly. Curious, Chen Fan asked, do you know where to find the void blade and foundation platform? Wang Dabao confidently nodded in response, yes, I do. Chen Fan smirked disdainfully and continued to inquire, well, you better not lie to me, or the consequences will be dire. Wang Dabao quickly assured him that he was not lying, and Chen Fan lifted the restrictions on him. Excitedly, Wang Dabao exclaimed, you almost suffocated me. It's, Chen Fan cut him off impatiently, saying, no more nonsense. Wang Dabao concisely mentioned the Great Zhou Dynasty. Curious, Chen Fan pressed on, where is the Great Zhou Dynasty? Wang Dabao explained, the Great Zhou Dynasty has teleportation arrays. Chen Fan suddenly realized and asked, are you suggesting that we destroy the teleportation arrays of the Great Zhou Dynasty? Wang Dabao shook his head in denial. Chen Fan, somewhat impatient, pressed, can you make it clear in one go? Wang Dabao, feeling wronged, said, Master, didn't you tell me not to talk too much? Chen Fan was a little annoyed and said, I mean, stop the nonsense. Was the question I just asked nonsense? Wang Dabao scratched his head, finding it difficult to answer. Chen Fan threatened, believe me, I can make you shut up right now and reflect on your mistakes. Wang Dabao quickly begged for mercy, saying, please don't. What I meant was, why not use the teleportation arrays of the great Zhou dynasty instead of building our own? With your wisdom and strength, you can easily destroy the great Zhou and occupy the teleportation arrays, right? I'm willing to pave the way for you, expanding the territory of the multiverse bank. Chen Fan didn't let him continue, saying, the multiverse bank is not a bandit, we cannot break the rules at will, otherwise, we will be enemies of the whole world. Our goal is trade, reputation enhancement, not domination. The Lingyun continent is just a small part, your vision is too narrow. We will step out of this continent, explore other regions, until the ninth heaven. During the ancient hunting competition, Chen Fan learned a lot of knowledge in the world of encyclopedias, understanding the structure of this world. Lingyun continent is just one of them, we have a broader world to explore. Wang Dabao's eyes sparkled with excitement upon hearing Chen Fan's words, clearly motivated by them. Chen Fan was glad he stopped his rambling in time, ordering him and another person to return to the multiverse bank immediately. As for the matters of the void shuttle and foundation platform, he would discuss them with Su Qingyu and others. Wang Dabao quickly agreed and closed his mouth. Chen Zheng hurriedly began to collect the materials needed to build the teleportation array which should be available within the territory of Great Chen. Chen Fan left the multiverse bank system and returned to Chen Mi's mind, 
summoning Su Qingyu and others to start assigning tasks. He instructed Xiao Yu to lead Qin Zheng to the capital of Great Qin for a quick battle. Qin Zheng nodded in agreement. Qin Fan asked Xiao Yu to protect Qin Zheng on the way, as his strength was relatively weak. Qin Fan arranged for the Black Feathered Eagle to protect Qin Zheng, and it immediately agreed. Feeling a bit discouraged as the weakest one present, Qin Zheng was particularly disheartened when the female slave of the house owner spoke those words in front of everyone. Chen Fan asked if everyone understood the foundation platform and the void shuttle. They all shook their heads in ignorance. Chen Fan was not surprised and simply waved his hand, dispersing the group. The strength of the Black Feathered Eagle was rapidly increasing, approaching the late stage of the spirit communication realm, with extremely fast speed. Despite the vast territory of Great Chen, the Black Feathered Eagle could arrive in the capital in less than an hour. Upon arrival in the capital, Chen Zheng sensed that something was amiss and sought out General Meng, frowning as he asked, General Meng, why are you here? According to the previous agreement, General Meng concealed his injuries and pretended to be a spy, hiding deep within the capital. General Meng explained that under the support of the national teacher and Zhao Yi of the Lingyun sect, Chen Hai had usurped the throne and led a hundred thousand troops to besiege the multiverse bank. General Meng, aware of the bank's strength, believed that Chen Hai would surely be defeated, so he did not go to support him but took control of the capital, cutting off Chen Hai and the national teacher's retreat, waiting for his highness's return. Chen Zheng's pupils constricted upon hearing this and asked urgently, how did my father react? General Ming said that the king of Chen had no reaction and remained idle, seemingly waiting for his highness's response. This move by the king of Chen was to distance himself from the situation ensuring that he would not be implicated regardless of the outcome between the multiverse bank and the Lingyun sect. However, if necessary, the king of Qin would definitely prioritize the greater good and kill Qin Zheng. Qin Zheng fell into silence. After a moment, he decided to wait for his father's next move. Changing the subject, he inquired if General Meng had heard of the foundation platform and the void shuttle, rare materials needed to build the teleportation array. With centuries of experience, General Meng, being well-versed in various matters, mentioned that these materials would be hard to find in the entire eastern region, but other materials could be gathered. Chen Zheng immediately requested to start collecting the required materials. Several days later, a figure slowly arrived at the top of Lingyun Mountain, then respectfully stopped in front of the gate of Wenji Qianzhuang, bowed and said, Zhu Wu, the envoy of the Great Ming is here to see the owner of Wenji Qian Zhuong. Please come in. Chen Fan spoke, and the door opened slightly, with a faint light wave coming from the array. The sound of footsteps rang out as Zhu Wu entered directly. Zhu Tianlong has obtained the Yin Soul technique. It seems to be quite effective, Chen Fan said lightly. The previous transaction allowed Zhu Tianlong to break through to the spirit master realm, becoming the sealed emperor. From now on, there will be a storm in the eastern domain. Zhu Wu listened, his pupils slightly contracted. In the Great Ming, no one dares to directly call the name of the sealed emperor. After being sealed, the power of the sealed emperor has been growing stronger, eliminating all opposition voices within the country. But Zhu Wu understood that the person in front of him was qualified to call the sealed emperor by his full name. During this time, Wenji Qianzhuang has caused a great stir in the eastern domain no less than the great Ming. Especially that mysterious sacred fire, like the flames of purgatory, took the lives of tens of thousands of Qin soldiers and many experts in the spirit master realm and transformation realm in a short period of time. It's shocking. However, didn't his majesty say that the owner of the mansion is a man? How could the person in front of him be a woman? But Zhu Wu did not ask further. The fact that the owner of Wenji Qianzhuang did not appear in person indicated that the woman in front of him represented Wenji Qianzhuang. His majesty could not obtain the Wenji token, nor could he thank the owner in person. He specifically entrusted the official to express gratitude to the owner. Zhu Wu clasped his hands and said, if it were not for the generous help of the owner, the great Ming would not be where it is today. Chen Fan calmly spoke, he has also paid a corresponding price. Zhu Wu wanted to kneel down, but he couldn't. His heart shook. He was a high-level expert in the spirit master realm, yet he couldn't move in front of the woman in front of him. This was the owner of Wenji Qianzhuang. 
it can be seen how powerful the owner of Wenji Qianzhuang is. Why did the sealed emperor send you here? Chen Fan continued to inquire. Zhu Wu said, His Majesty learned that the great Zhou dynasty and the Lingyun sect conspired to harm Wenji Qianzhuang, and he was furious. He sent me to discuss cooperation and fight against the enemy. No need. Chen Fan waved his hand and said, Wenji Qianzhuang, I have not yet taken the great Zhou dynasty and Lingyun sect seriously, let alone join hands with the great Ming. Please go back. Zhu Wu was taken aback, not expecting the woman in front of him to refuse so decisively. After a moment of hesitation, he remembered the emperor's order and still plucked up the courage to ask, Do you need to seek the approval of the owner of your mansion? It means the opinion of the owner. Chen Fan said, his majesty is willing to offer 20 million spirit stones to obtain a Wenji token. 20 million spirit stones? Chen Fan shook his head, a spiritual vein. Zhu Wu's face changed slightly, his brows furrowed. He felt that the woman in front of him was too arrogant. A spiritual vein? Only worth one token? Would the great Ming believe it so easily? Seeing Zhu Wu's expression, Chen Fan knew that the other party thought the price was too high. The Million Realms Bank, once renowned far and wide, is now just a shadow of its former self. Even a Million Realms token can only fetch a spirit bane at a discounted price. This change weighs heavily on people's hearts, as if time has slipped away mercilessly. The protagonist may have experienced glorious moments here, but now can only accept the harsh reality with a tinge of helplessness and loss in their heart. Suddenly, a swift blood-red figure flashed by with a speed so fast that it was hard to catch. It was Su Qingyu, Chen Mi. A large group of people and horses are attacking here. She calmly spoke, showing an unusual calmness. Zhu Wu heard the news, his pupils slightly contracted, immediately realizing that this was the sect summoning order issued by Zhao Yi, gathering the experts. There may even be experts from the great Zhou dynasty. However, the woman conveying the message spoke of this urgent situation with an extremely calm tone. Is this confidence or arrogance? Zhu Wu's face changed slightly, but he did not speak up. He wanted to see if these people would still be so arrogant if the 10,000 realms bank suffered losses. Oh? Chen Fan frowned and said discontentedly, are these people not done yet? They are like annoying flies buzzing around. He had never really cared about Zhao Yi or even the great Zhou dynasty before but these people kept provoking him time and time again. He didn't want to tolerate this situation anymore. Dispose of them. With a cold tone, Chen Fan slowly stood up, gazing ahead and said, If you insist on seeking death, then I will fulfill your wish. Zhu Wu heard these words and secretly sneered, especially when he saw Chen Fan's gaze towards the great Zhou dynasty. He felt that the people of the 10,000 Realms Bank were all arrogant individuals. The great Zhou dynasty has stood tall in the eastern region for tens of thousands of years, with extremely profound heritage. How could they be easily dealt with? Suddenly, Su Qingyu stepped forward alone, while the blind swordsmen stood guard at the entrance of the 10,000 Realms Bank, continuously practicing basic sword skills, chopping, slashing, thrusting, picking, as if it had nothing to do with him. Could this still be just basic swordsmanship? Are there still people practicing such low-level sword techniques in the 10,000 Realms Bank? Zhu Wu increasingly felt that the 10,000 Realms Bank seemed to be unworthy of its name. From today onwards, the 10,000 Realms Bank will be expelled. At the peak of Lingyun Mountain, dozens of figures surrounded, with one figure resonating like a bell throughout the entire world. To show their importance to Zhao Yi, the Great Zhou Dynasty dispatched four early-stage spirit realm experts and one mid-stage spirit realm expert. In addition to the experts and strongmen of the Lingyun sect in the eastern region, a total of 43 people. Among them, there are even late-stage spirit realm experts. With such lineup, it is enough to wipe out a powerful country. It has to be said, truly luxurious. Su Qingyu wasted no time, immediately preparing to take action. The temperature around her sharply rising the flames on her blood-red robe starting to flicker, surrounding her like an elf. Upon seeing the scene before him, Zhu Wu couldn't help but furrow his brow, feeling a surge of astonishment. The magical technique of creating fire out of nothing truly broadened his horizons, and the flames burning with a lively aura seemed unbelievable. Recalling the rumors he had heard before, 
about how a mysterious and powerful demon fire had killed the 10,000-strong army of Great Chin and representatives of the Eastern Domain. Could the person before him be the rumored owner of the multiverse money house? However, based on Chen Mi's attitude towards her, Zhu Wu concluded that she was not the owner of the multiverse money house. Could it be that those powerful individuals before were not the owners, but she was? Zhu Wu realized that he had severely underestimated the strength of the multiverse money house. Suddenly, a few black dots appeared in the distance and in the blink of an eye, they arrived nearby. A burly figure jumped off a flying beast. It was Wang Dabao. As he approached Su Qingyu, he felt the terrifying heat of the flames and had to stop in his tracks, turning to the people from the Great Zhou Dynasty and the Lingyun sect, saying, You can leave, we have some private matters to discuss and don't have time to entertain you. One of the mid-stage spirit communication realm experts sneered, afraid? Wang Dabao, feeling displeased, replied, Are you kidding me? I am Wang Dabao the number two figure in the multiverse money house. I have never known fear. With that, he exuded a powerful aura of the mid-stage spirit communication realm, declaring that he could take on ten, or even a hundred people alone. However, the other party emitted several auras of the mid-stage spirit communication realm, and even one of the late-stage spirit communication realm, causing Wang Dabao's expression to change instantly. After a long journey, feeling exhausted, he pretended to yawn casually. Then turned to Su Qingyu and said, I'll leave it to you. I need to rest for a while. Call me when you need me. We still have a gathering to attend. With that, he turned and left, sprinting towards the gate of the multiverse money house. At that moment, the gate of the multiverse money house suddenly closed, the formation activated, and Wang Dabao was thrown out by the formation. People began to suspect if Wang Dabao was also a member of the multiverse money house. He pounded on the door, shouting, Owner, it's Dabao. Open the door, getting no response. Wang Dabao awkwardly rubbed his nose, then turned to the blind swordsman beside him, saying, Hello, kid, just arrived? Let me tell you, our multiverse money house is absolutely awesome. I'm Wang Dabao, an elder in our house. Stick with me in the future, and you'll live the high life. My relationship with the owner is excellent. Jian Shiazi stared eagerly at Wang Dabao. Why can't you get in? Wang Dabao coughed awkwardly, trying to change the subject. The situation this time is a bit special. Let's not discuss this for now. Faced with this awkward situation, the people from the Great Zhou Dynasty and the Lingyun sect couldn't help but feel a shadow over their faces, igniting anger in their hearts. They felt like they were being treated as playthings. Wang Dabao fearlessly responded. These brainless fools actually dared to break into our multiverse bank, it's like they're asking for trouble. Your intelligence must be lacking. Normal people wouldn't dare to come here, but you decided to come anyway. Isn't it a sign of low intelligence? So, I just wanted to play a joke on you, but I didn't expect you to be so easily fooled, truly showing a lack of intelligence. Before he could finish his words, these people immediately became furious and rushed towards him, losing their sanity. The Lingyun sect has offended the Great Zhou Dynasty so brazenly, it's like they're asking for trouble. How could the Great Zhou Dynasty tolerate such insults? They are burning with anger. The fury is burning in the hearts of the experts from the Great Zhou Dynasty and Lingyun sect, roaring angrily as they charge towards Wang Dabao. Seeing this, Wang Dabao trembles in fear and without hesitation, turns around and runs, shouting loudly, Quick, save me! And Zhang Guo. Su Qingyu, help, he knows full well that only they have the ability to protect him, they are the true strong ones. Chen Fan silently regrets his decision to make Wang Dabao the envoy of the Wenji money bank, it seems like it might have been a mistake now. And Zhang Guo, seeing the many strong opponents approaching, immediately sets up the blood slaughter formation, gathering killing intent, preparing to unleash the world destroying blade. However, before he can make a move, the flames in Su Qingyu's eyes ignite, and fire spirits rush out towards the enemies. There's no escape, only those in the later stages of the spiritual realm with speed faster than the fire spirits can avoid them. Others can only endure the burning flames and the pain of the scorching fire. The sounds of screams fill the air. The later stage spiritual realm experts charge towards Wang Dabao, faces full of hatred. And Zhang Guo wields the world-destroying blade, ready to kill him. In an instant, the later stage spiritual realm expert is slain, 
unable to match Jin Wang's strength, let alone resist and Zhongguo's world-destroying blade. And Zhongguo decisively stops. The blade's energy does not reach the ground, nor does it harm the Wenji money bank. Slaying the later stage spiritual realm expert with ease, and Zhongguo's immense strength is evident. On the other side of the battlefield, the enemies shrouded in holy fire are not spared, all the Ling realm experts perish, the spiritual realm strong approach death, feeling the agony of despair. They cry out in despair, we were forced to come here too. Zhao Yi issued the sect summons, we are willing to offer everything, we also know of a mysterious tomb with treasures inside. Just spare us, the crowd cries out in desperation. They haven't been giving it their all for a long time. Once their strength reached this level, they relied more on intimidation rather than actual power. And as they grew older, their fear of death deepened. That's why they are no longer as tough as they used to be. What's wrong? Weren't you just being arrogant? Can't win so now you're begging for mercy? Is Wang Dabao so easy to bully? I will never let you off the hook. Wang Dabao stood up and shouted angrily, What else can you do? Bite me? Come on. I'll fight you to the end. You little thief. Even if I die, I'll drag you down with me. Fourth grade god explosive talisman. Explode. Let's go meet the king of hell together. Following that, this group of people couldn't bear Wang Dabao's mockery. Regardless of whether you can beat us, dare to come and taunt us. Even if we die, we'll drag you down with us. Then, Wang Dabao quickly retreated. His movements were extremely skillful. Su Qingyu's blood blade flipped between her delicate jade fingers, and at that moment, a blood red blade light suddenly soared, blood splattered, the heavens and earth changed color, forming a huge blood red bell. Bang! Subsequently, this giant bell descended from the sky, enveloping everyone inside. Bang! Then, an explosion erupted. Inside the bell was a blood red purgatory, outside the bell was silent. After the explosion, the bell disappeared. Is it all over? Zhu Wu was completely stunned when he saw this scene, deeply shaken. Is this the power of the 10,000 Realms Bank? He thought he had a high evaluation of the 10,000 Realms Bank's power, but now, he had greatly underestimated it. Um, excuse me, is the owner of the 10,000 Realms Bank among them? Zhu Wu turned to Chen Fan and inquired. No, three envoys, one apprentice, the others are not qualified yet. Chen Fan replied indifferently. Oh, Zhu Wu was shocked. If the subordinates of the 10,000 Realms Bank were so powerful, then the owner of the 10,000 Realms Bank, could it be, in the spirit realm? He finally understood why the emperor valued the 10,000 Realms Bank so much. A spirit realm individual was enough to change the fate of a country. To change the entire situation in the eastern territory. If the great Ming could ally with the 10,000 Realms Bank, they would surely defeat the great Zhou dynasty. Um. One spiritual vein in exchange for one ten thousand realms token, we agree. Zhu Wu said, now it takes two spiritual veins to exchange for one ten thousand realms token. Chen Fan calmly stated, you, Zhu Wu's face changed. This had already exceeded the emperor's bottom line, but the next moment, he made up his mind and agreed, all right. Take it. Chen Fan immediately took out a 10,000 realms token and handed it over. I'm sorry, I only have one spiritual vein on me. Zhu Wu took the token, afraid that Chen Fan would back out, and hastily said, but I promise, I will send the second spiritual vein soon. Okay. Chen Fan nodded. A courtier cannot carry so many spiritual veins on him. Even if the great Ming is now powerful, it's not possible. Blind swordsman, see the guest out. Chen Fan ordered, please. The blind swordsman extended his right hand. As they were leaving, Zhu Wu passed by and asked, excuse me, are you an apprentice of the 10,000 Realms Bank? Yes, the blind swordsman nodded. Phew, Zhu Wu breathed a sigh of relief, feeling that his current strength was only matched by an apprentice of the 10,000 Realms Bank bidding him farewell, which didn't make him feel pressured. The messengers we just encountered were truly remarkable. Besides the chubby royal messenger, the others were simply astonishing. Just as the two of them were leaving the peak of Lingyun Mountain, suddenly a flying beast descended from the sky, its speed rivaling that of a mid-stage master in the Lingjing realm. This flying beast was obviously the mount of those disciples from the Lingyun sect. Upon seeing its master being killed, 
it charged towards Zhu Wu with a determination for revenge. Zhu Wu's pupils constricted, preparing to intervene. With a swoosh, Jian Xiazi swiftly activated the starry sky step, wielding his sword to strike with a fluid and seamless motion. With a thud, he instantly killed the flying beast. Zhu Wu was left dumbfounded, unable to believe his eyes. A martial artist in the mid-stage of the spirit realm actually possessed such strength? Able to effortlessly kill an opponent one stage stronger than himself? It felt like a dream to him. Could this be the apprentice of the legendary Wenji Money House? It was truly unbelievable. In the World Bank system, all members gathered together for the first time. Zhao Yi's arrogant attitude made Wang Dabao unable to tolerate it. He felt angry and firmly advocated taking action against Zhao Yi. Wang Dabao bluntly suggested to the owner that both Zhao Yi and Ji Han should be punished. Chen Fan, knowing Wang Dabao's thoughts well, saw through his intentions with a single sentence. Wang Dabao, struck at the heart of the matter, hesitated to speak, trying to defend himself, but was silenced by Chen Fan. Chen Fan calmly ordered in Zhangguo, Su Qingyu, Wang Dabao, and Jian Xiaos to go to the Great Zhou Dynasty, eliminate Ji Han and Zhao Yi, and retrieve the Void Shuttle and Foundation Platform. This was the price they had to pay for provoking the World Bank. Chen Zheng was asked to prepare the materials for the teleportation array as soon as possible, and after returning to the top of Lingyun Mountain, he went to the Great Zhou Dynasty with Xiao Yu. And Zhang Guo led this operation. Upon hearing the order, everyone responded in unison. The whole process filled with a strong sense of killing intent. The group quickly left the World Bank and headed to the Great Zhou Dynasty. Meanwhile, the Lingyun sect and the Great Zhou Dynasty joined forces to attack the top of Lingyun Mountain, news of another failure spreading quickly. All forces and warriors felt the strength of the World Bank, and the situation was about to escalate. Most of the forces in the eastern region chose to wait and see, not daring to act rashly, as the storm was about to hit. Some dynasties openly supported the Great Zhou Dynasty and publicly endorsed Zhao Yi, seizing the opportunity to gamble on the future fate of the dynasty. For example, the Great Chu Dynasty, the Great Wu Dynasty, and the Great Jin Dynasty, which had conflicts with the Ten Realms Bank, chose to support the Great Zhou Dynasty, while the Great Ming Dynasty stood on the side of the Ten Realms Bank, launching a decisive battle against the Great Zhou Dynasty with a mobilization of 180,000 soldiers. The Sword Dynasty also supported the Ten Realms Bank, deploying 200,000 troops to attack the Great Zhou Dynasty. Compared to the dynasties supporting the Great Zhou Dynasty and Zhao Yi, the actions of the Great Ming and Sword Dynasties were more resolute and decisive. War was about to break out, and the bloody slaughter began at that moment. Whoosh, whoosh, Su Qingyu and his party quickly arrived at the Great Zhou Dynasty, just as fast as the spread of the news. Several days later, they finally reached their destination. Chirp, chirp, at the same time, Chen Zheng and Black Feather Eagle also arrived. Everyone gathered in the capital of the Great Zhou Dynasty. As the first dynasty in the eastern region for thousands of years, the Great Zhou Dynasty had a profound heritage. Everyone practiced cultivation, and spirit realm experts were everywhere, with even martial artists in the transformation realm not being uncommon. Along the way, they even encountered three spirit realm experts. Upon arriving in the capital of the Great Zhou Dynasty, and Zhang Guo squinted his eyes slightly, feeling that the entire capital was shrouded in a huge defensive formation. This was a massive formation. Behind him, Zhu Zhe Yu's eyes were bright, carefully sensing the defensive formation and asking, not knowing if it could withstand the attacks of the blood battle formation. Our goal is to kill Ji Han, Zhao Yi, and seize the foundation platform and the void shuttle. And Zhang Guo said, don't drag your feet. Act quickly. Yes, Zhu Zhe Yu immediately suppressed his inner excitement and respectfully replied, forward, and Zhang Guo took the lead into the formation, and everyone followed closely behind. Zhao Yi lives in the Honglu Temple. They entered the city, where the crowd was bustling. With Wang Dabao's excellent communication skills, they quickly learned of Zhao Yi's residence from a woman and verified the information with others. The Honglu Temple was where the great Zhou dynasty received foreign envoys and important figures, and Zhao Yi was treated with great respect there, known to all the people in the country. Break into the Honglu Temple directly, and Zhang Guo ordered. Soon, they arrived at the gate of the Honglu Temple. 
Who are you? Outsiders are not allowed here. Four spirit realm guards of the later stage blocked them. Wang Dabao was about to use his eloquence, but the four suddenly self-immolated, not even having time to scream, turning into ashes and scattering in the wind. Oh, seeing this scene, Wang Dabao's heart tightened, stealing a glance at the expressionless Su Qingyu, unable to help but swallow his saliva. Beauty may be captivating, but it hides deadly danger. And Zhang Guo and the others stormed into the Honglu Temple without hesitation, despite the tight defenses. No one expected that they would silently break in without a sound, catching the patrolling soldiers and envoys of various countries off guard. In the crowd, there was a mysterious woman whose beauty was captivating, like a flame burning hot yet as cold as ice and snow. This woman was Su Qingyu. Her appearance drew all eyes towards her, making everyone curious to know more. However, at that moment, a general in silver armor strode forward with determined steps, blocking the path of the crowd, and sternly asked, Who are you? Why have I never seen you before? And Zhang Guo fearlessly asked directly, Where is Zhao Yi? Upon hearing this question, the general's brows furrowed, and he coldly stated, The envoy of Zhao is a distinguished guest of our great Zhou dynasty, not someone anyone can just meet. Who are you people? How dare you trespass here? As he spoke, he kept a hand on the embroidered spring knife at his waist, vigilantly eyeing the group. Clearly, he sensed something was amiss. Wang Dabao calmly spoke, General, I advise you to answer the questions truthfully, or face the consequences. Before he could finish his sentence, the general immediately drew his sword, pointing it at Wang Dabao and the others. Soon, the soldiers behind him also unsheathed their long knives, and the atmosphere became extremely tense. Little did they know the terrifying presence they were facing. The consequence of non-cooperation would only lead to a dead end. Suddenly, the soldiers around them were engulfed in raging flames, turning into ashes in an instant, leaving behind only a dozen piles of ashes. This eerie and horrifying scene, even in broad daylight, sent shivers down everyone's spine. This method is too cruel. Who are they exactly? How dare they attack the soldiers of the Great Zhou in a place like the Honglu Temple? The sudden and horrifying scene sent shivers down the spines of the foreign envoys and the arriving soldiers, feeling a chilling sensation from their spines to their feet. And Zhang Guo and others knew deep down that if the envoy from Su is willing, not even their ashes would be left. Leaving ashes behind is just to create a stronger visual impact. Chen Fan stood on the side, observing the situation intently. Where is Zhao Yi? Wang Dabao quickly asked again inside the Honglu Temple. For a moment, no one dared to answer. Who dares to offend Zhao Yi? Offend the great Zhou dynasty? Can they still keep their lives afterwards? Speak up. Wang Dabao pointed at the nearest middle-aged foreign representative. The person trembled with fear and ultimately chose to conceal the information. Wang Dabao, without any hesitation, immediately turned him into ashes. Oh, some timid foreign representatives screamed in fear, their legs as weak as cotton, making it hard to stand steady. Speak up. Wang Dabao then selected another timid foreign representative. He, he is over there. The timid foreign representative immediately signaled to others, fear of death being their first reaction. They found a secluded building along a winding path, and Zhang Guo and others quickly rushed up. Stop. The guards at the door, shocked, tried to stop them. However, soon, the guards also turned into ashes. The guards around who wanted to rush forward all stopped. Who dares to move on? Afraid that they might suddenly turn into the next pile of ashes. Just then, a soldier reached for the signal flare around his waist, trying to sound the alarm. But how could this small movement escape the eyes of Su Qingyu? Immediately, the soldier burst into flames, adding another pile of ashes inside the Honglu Temple. Wow! The surrounding soldiers all exclaimed, taking a step back, instinctively moving away from the pile of ashes. At the same time, and Zhang Guo had already arrived at the door, and the door opened automatically. Where are the people? Search. And Zhang Guo frowned and ordered a search. Lao En, there are two women here. Wang Dabao quickly found two women in a room. They were hanging up, dressed in tattered clothes, ragged and bruised, with one of them having blood at the corner of her mouth, already breathless. The other woman spoke, her voice hoarse, her eyes hollow, looking pitiful. Where is Zhao Yi? Wang Dabao although eloquent, remained decisive and straight to the point in handling matters. 
The ordeal of these two women is evident at a glance. In this world, tragic stories abound, yet they cannot cover all. Right now, the most important thing is the current task. Zhao Yi, that beast. At the mention of this name, the living women instantly became resentful. Their eyes sharp as snakes, their pretty faces contorted in discomfort. Where is he? Wang Dabao inquired. What are you planning to do when you find him? The woman coldly interrogated, her venomous gaze piercing through Wang Dabao, sending chills down his spine. At that moment, Wang Dabao even felt a cold wind blowing in, the temperature in the room seeming to drop by a dozen degrees, making him feel uneasy. A mere mortal giving him such a feeling, it's evident how deep the resentment in the woman's heart is. Kill him, Wang Dabao answered without hesitation. This morning, I heard Zhou Qi looking for him in a daze, seems like they took him somewhere. The woman spoke up, where? Wang Dabao's eyes lit up with anticipation, eager to ask, take me with you, I will guide you, the woman said coldly. Hearing this, Wang Dabao furrowed his brows, couldn't help but look at An Zhangguo. Why? And Zhang Guo's eyes flashed, asking. She is my sister. We used to be a pair of outstanding twin sisters in dance, quite famous in the capital of Qin. However, after being targeted by that beast Zhao Yi, we were abducted and became his playthings, enduring humiliation every day. Last night, my sister couldn't bear it and chose to end her life. I witnessed her death with my own eyes. I hate Zhao Yi. I want him to pay the price. The woman exuded an extremely uncomfortable aura of resentment, as if a vengeful spirit, deeply filled with hatred. All right, and Zhang Wo quietly waited for her to finish venting, then nodded. Immediately, the ropes on the woman broke, and she weakly collapsed on the ground. Wang Dabao, go help her, and Zhang Wo said. Wang Dabao was stunned, feeling puzzled, why me? You discovered it, so the credit goes to you, naturally you should take care of it. And Zhang Wo said, then left directly, with others following closely behind. Swish, swish, soon, everyone left Honglu Temple, following the lead of the dancer to another location. At the same time, a signal flare rose in Honglu Temple, bursting open. Instantly, countless soldiers within the great Zhou Imperial City rushed towards Honglu Temple. Wan Hualu, looking at the graceful and charming women there, and Zhang Guo and the others instantly understood that this was a place of pleasure. Today, the grandest event of Wan Hualu in the Great Zhou Imperial City will be held annually, selecting the Flower Master. The dancer spoke, Wang Dabao, you go. And Zhang Guo was about to speak. Wang Dabao already knew what he meant and wouldn't be fooled again. He interrupted in Zhang Guo, saying, Lao En, I know my own strength. Zhao Yi is a high-level expert in the late stage of the spiritual realm. If I go, it will only be asking for trouble. I think you are more suitable. Or, you can take Zhu Zhe Yu and the others with you. Don't forget what you said before. Swift and decisive action. If we delay, Ji Han may get wind of it and go into hiding. We won't be able to complete the task assigned by the master. And Zhang Guo, let's go in together. Today at the Wan Walu, the leaders of the Chunqiang Pavilion, Yi Hong Courtyard, and Shaoshang Pavilion as well as the outstanding figures from many small-scale romantic venues in the great Zhou Imperial City, gathered together to compete for the position of the flower ambassador. The scene was incredibly lively. The beautiful courtesans attracted numerous young nobles and dignitaries from the great Zhou dynasty. Although Wan Walu was spacious, every seat was filled. In a private room on the third floor, Zhou Qi warmly said to the envoy Zhao, the election of the flower ambassador is about to begin. Wan Walu, Chunxiang Pavilion, Yihong Courtyard, and Shaoshang Pavilion take turns hosting the election. This year, it's Wan Walu's turn to host, and Wan Walu's outstanding beauty Lu Meisheng, with the home field advantage, is sure to become this year's flower ambassador. Moreover, Wan Walu has woven a touching love story for her, rumored to involve the talented scholar Tang Bohu from the great Zhou dynasty. It is said that Tang Bohu even wrote a poem for her, further enhancing Lu Meisheng's reputation. However, Zhao Yi snorted and said, Does Tang Bohu deserve Lu Meisheng? HMPH, if Zhao is smitten with Lu Meisheng, what is Tang Bohu? Just a weak scholar, not qualified to be compared with a peerless beauty like Lu Meisheng. Zhou Qi, understanding Zhao's intention, said, Envoy Zhao, I will make arrangements. 
Tonight, she will serve you. Zhao paused, sipped his tea leisurely, and asked, Who said I want Lu Meisheng? Zhou Qi, puzzled, asked, Then, Envoy Zhao, who caught your eye? Whoever Zhao favored would be fortunate. After finishing his tea, Zhao stood up, his desire evident, and greedily said, I want them all. Zhou Qi, feeling awkward, thought to himself, This Zhao is truly greedy and lustful. His appetite is truly insatiable. But how could he show any displeasure? Zhao represented the Lingyun sect, a powerful figure in the later stage of the spirit communication realm. How dare he offend him? Zhao's aura was extraordinary. Only ignorant people needed to make choices. A true man like Zhao should have it all. Zhou Qi quickly flattered, Please wait, I will make arrangements. Just then, the door of the room was kicked open. Who dared to be so rude? Get out! Zhou Qi's face darkened, and he angrily shouted. Although Zhao did not recognize the door kicker Wang Dabao, he saw Su Qingyu. His eyes lit up, greed taking hold. This was truly asking for trouble. Chen Fan shook his head at the scene. Zhao dared to offend Su Qingyu, destined for a tragic end. Wang Dabao also sighed silently, mourning for Zhao. Beautiful, peerless beauty. In all my life, Zhao, I have never seen such a stunning woman. Zhou Qi, you are too heartless. In the great Zhou dynasty, to have such a peerless beauty, and yet you do not offer her to me? Zhao's mind was filled with lewd thoughts as he stared at Su Qingyu and spoke. At this moment, Zhou Qi was deeply attracted by Su Qingyu's stunning beauty. After hearing Zhao Yi's words, he licked his chapped lips and casually praised, Envoy Zhao, Zhou is seeing such unparalleled beauty for the first time. It must be the extraordinary charm of Envoy Zhao that made the beauty take the initiative to offer herself. Ah ha ha, Zhao Yi was in a very good mood after hearing this, extremely satisfied. It was really interesting to the extreme. Wang Dabao couldn't help but speak up and question, are you blind? Have you ignored our presence? Are you here to offer a beautiful woman? Without even looking at Wang Dabao, Zhao Yi straightforwardly said, exactly. This envoy is very satisfied. Do you want to join the Lingyun sect or serve in the great Zhou dynasty? As long as you are not a disciple of the secret transmission or the prime minister of the current dynasty, this envoy can decide. Zhou Qi frowned slightly upon hearing this. Zhao Yi's words were simply treating the great Zhou dynasty as his own territory. How could he be so disrespectful to the emperor? You, Wang Dabao smiled smugly. This guy, really? Is he so blinded by beauty to this extent? I want to become the emperor of the great Zhou dynasty, he declared fearlessly. Zhao Yi frowned upon hearing this, finally realizing that something was wrong, and said, Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? You crazy ghost! Wang Dabao stared at Zhao Yi as if he were looking at a fool, and said loudly, I think you are the one who's crazy. Do you even know who you're talking to? Zhao Yi's face darkened. I am Zhao Yi, the envoy of the Ling Yun sect. Wang Dabao retorted, So what? Fine. Zhou Qi, is this how guests are treated in your great Zhou dynasty? Zhao Yi is truly amazed. Zhao Yi said coldly, Find death, kill them. Zhou Qi was already burning with anger. Such an incident happening in the imperial capital of the great Zhou dynasty. How could he maintain his dignity? However, before the two powerful early stage Lingjing realm experts beside him could make a move, they suddenly burst into flames. And the holy fire burning around them was exceptionally fierce. Obviously, Su Qingyu was somewhat annoyed. What's going on? The sudden change caught Zhou Qi and Zhao Yi off guard. Who are you people? This is the imperial capital of the great Zhou dynasty. I am Zhou Qi, the minister of rights. You are asking for death. Zhou Qi was shocked and realized that he had provoked a strong enemy. He said in horror, hoping that these people in front of him would restrain themselves. However, the next moment, his two legs suddenly caught fire. Oh, Zhou Qi stumbled, his legs burned by the holy fire, screaming in pain, hurriedly mobilizing his spiritual power to resist, don't hurt me. There must be some misunderstanding. Oh, the flames in Su Qingyu's eyes flickered and the holy fire on Zhou Qi's legs burned even more vigorously. The smell of burnt flesh filled the air. In an instant, Zhou Qi couldn't hold on, being engulfed by the holy fire. Oh, and then, the holy fire enveloped his upper body. He struggled desperately, in excruciating pain, as if he were in a sea of fire. 
Buzz. Immediately, Su Qingyu did not continue to torture. She reached out her jade hand, a sword formed by the condensed holy fire in her hand. Suddenly, the fire sword pierced directly into Zhou Qi's screaming mouth. Zhou Qi's pupils dilated suddenly, his face full of horror. Then, countless flames burst out from his head, as if all seven apertures were spouting fire. His face turned from red to white, becoming increasingly transparent, and eventually as thin as paper. In the end, the flames completely engulfed his face, swallowing him to death. Zhou Qi fell to the ground, passing away completely. The two guards beside him were also powerless to resist, perishing in the sea of fire. Zhao Yi was extremely frightened, watching Zhou Qi and the others being brutally killed, feeling deep sorrow and no longer daring to resist, turning around to flee. But how could Su Qingyu let him escape as he wished? She remembered Zhao Yi's words just now. So, a wall of fire instantly blocked Zhao Yi's way. Zhao Yi, as a strongman in the later stage of the spiritual realm, although powerful, could not break through the firewall by force. Just then, Su Qingyu's slender jade finger gently flicked. A flash of blood pierced through Zhao Yi's right Achilles tendon, followed by three sounds of flesh tearing, cutting off Zhao Yi's left Achilles tendon and both hand tendons, leaving him limp on the ground. The firewall then collapsed, pressing heavily on him, and Zhao Yi let out a piercing scream. Zhao Yi shouted in fear, You actually have spirit weapons. Who are you? Are you going to be enemies with the spirit cloud sect? He regretted coming to the eastern region, where it was even more dangerous than he had imagined, with so many powerful people, and even spirit weapons appearing. Wang Dabao sneered, Don't you know who we are? Whom did you offend? Think about it. Harassed by the holy fire, Zhao Yi struggled to think, finally realizing the identity of the people in front of him, and said in horror, You are from the Ten Realms Bank. How dare you come to the imperial capital of the great Zhou dynasty to commit murder? Aren't you afraid of the consequences? Su Qingyu did not give Zhao Yi a chance to catch his breath, the blood blade continuously stabbing into his body, making him deeply experience what it means to be riddled with wounds. Zhao Yi's blood was instantly burned by the flames, his life quickly fading away. Faced with the spirit weapon, he had no power to fight back. Chen Fan watched this scene feeling a tremor in his heart, regretting provoking a woman, truly a foolish thing to do. When a woman is angry, a man can only surrender, with life and death in her hands. Of course, he was afraid of death. However, Wang Dabao found himself unable to escape the shadow of death. He trembled and said, Who will end my life? Is it you, or the warriors of the great Zhou dynasty? Ah, oh, spare me. I swear never to covet the Wanji money bank again. I am willing. Ah. Oh, to let you do as you wish. Zhao Yi, threatened by the god of death, appeared as humble as a humiliated dog. Since offending our master, your fate has been sealed. You could have chosen to die painlessly, but you insisted on seeking a dead end. Speaking recklessly, provoking the envoy of Su, leading to the current situation, I am powerless to help. Wang Dabao shrugged, showing his helplessness. Kind sir, may I end his life? The dancer looked at the dying Zhao Yi and suddenly asked, You may, Su Qingyu nodded, realizing that they couldn't delay any longer. She waved her jade hand, and holy fire surged out of Zhao Yi's body, returning to her blood-red robe. It's you, Zhao Yi weakly said, recognizing the dancer's identity. Yes, it's me. The dancer slowly took the blade handed by Wang Dabao and walked step by step towards Zhao Yi, her voice filled with anger and sorrow. You ruined my life killed my only family member. She was my only family member. Why? Why did you put her in a desperate situation? When you were high and mighty, playing with his sisters, did you ever think about today's outcome? Intense hatred almost materialized and surged out of the dancer's body. Please, don't. Don't kill me, Zhao Yi pleaded. Go to hell. Go to hell. Go to hell. The dancer's face contorted, hands tightly gripping the blade, viciously stabbing at Zhao Yi's heart. Stab, stab, the dancer crazily continued to stab, blood splattering on her face and body, as if she had fallen into a frenzy, relentlessly stabbing. The mixture of blood and flesh, the scene was extremely bloody. Oh, Zhao Yi's screams gradually weakened and finally disappeared. He couldn't imagine that as an envoy of the Lingyun sect, he would perish at the hands of a dancer. Hee <laughs> hee, suddenly, the dancer laughed, her smile like a demon 
extremely crazy, extremely terrifying. Stav. At a certain moment, she ruthlessly slashed the dagger across her own neck. You. Wang Dabao's face changed, wanting to stop her, but it was already too late. Bang. The dancer fell into a pool of blood. Her life thus ended. Her life was destroyed. Her loved ones were taken away. She lost the will to live. Boom. Then, the holy fire enveloped the dancer, burning her body and soul completely. As for Zhao Yi, his body was left unattended on the side. Let's go, to eliminate Ji Han. And Zhang Wo turned and left. Swish swish. Everyone shook off their previous emotions and followed closely. The sound of the recent battle had scared off the participants of the courtesan gathering. And now the Wan Hua Lu was empty. Step, step. Just as everyone stepped out of the Wan Hua Lu, a large number of troops from the great Zhou dynasty surrounded them, several powerful auras locking onto them. In the imperial capital causing chaos, these people are really audacious. The leader, a guy with a full beard, may only be in the early stage of the spirit realm, but he is the general of this area. Although his official position is not high, his background is profound. After all, the resources in this area are abundant, and those who can establish themselves here are the winners of various struggles. At this moment, he stared at Njongwo and others with excitement and arrogance. Just as he closed his eyes, someone came to bring him a pillow, right on time. Just taking office, he urgently needed some achievements to consolidate his position. Unexpectedly, someone actually brought him heads and credit. How could he miss such a perfect opportunity? Seize them. Without giving Njongwo and others a chance to speak, he immediately ordered their arrest. Bring them in, take them to the prince's mansion. And Zhangguo spoke up. They arrived in the imperial capital of Great Zhou, and in this unfamiliar environment, they needed a guide, especially when time was pressing. Who had time to ask for directions now? Swish, Jian Shiazi wielded a sharp sword and charged straight towards the bearded general. Swish, swish, he used the star polar step, agilely dodging the soldiers charging towards him, then swiftly approached the bearded general, with the tip of his sword already at his throat. You, you dare to kill me? The bearded general's face was filled with fear, instinctively wanting to mention the forces behind him, hoping to make the enemy retreat. Lead the way, however, Jian Shiazi mercilessly cut him off. He had no time for nonsense. Huh? The bearded general was stunned for a moment, not understanding. Go to the prince's mansion, Jian Shiazi said. Huh? The bearded general was shocked to realize that these people were not ordinary and were a group of dangerous individuals. If he led them to the prince's mansion, it might harm the prince, and he would not be able to survive. However, Jian Shiazi ruthlessly pierced his skin, blood gushing out instantly. Okay, okay, I'll take you there. Feeling the pain and chill in his throat, he immediately realized his situation and could only think of saving his life now. Swish, he led the way, followed by the others. However, this guy deliberately slowed down, trying to delay time. Bang, Wang Dabao immediately saw through his intentions, bluntly kicked him and said, why aren't you moving? If you delay any longer, I will take action. The bearded general quickly stopped his scheming and hastened his pace. Someone's blocking the way. At this moment, and Zhangguo suddenly spoke up. It's the domineering aura from before. Laowen, how strong are they? Wang Dabao asked. In the early stage of spirit realm, three of them in total, and Zhangguo replied. Leave it to me. If I can't kill them, I'll just crash into them. Wang Dabao decisively locked onto the three early stage spirit realm strongmen and swiftly launched an attack. Being a mid-stage spirit realm powerhouse with numerous resources, dealing with these three early stage opponents was the most suitable for him. He knew his strength was limited, and now was the best time to make a move. Waiting any longer might bring about even stronger opponents, and then it might be too late for him. After completing this mission, how would the master view him if he achieved nothing? Bang! Facing three opponents, Wang Dabao still maintained a clear advantage. It's not that simple to eliminate these three early stage spiritual realm experts, is it? And Zhangguo has been trying his best, but he is still being held back by Wang Dabao. Too slow. He shook his head, making Wang Dabao feel discouraged. Baby has tried his best. Suddenly, Su Qingyu made another move, and the fire spirit whistled out, flying in the air for a few moments, then violently rushing towards the three early stage spiritual realm experts. 
Beware of the demon fire. The faces of these three early stage spiritual realm experts instantly changed drastically, feeling the pressure of death, and immediately resisting with all their might. Slap, slap, slap. Then, Wang Dabao seized the opportunity, swiftly swung his sword, and killed the three of them in one fell swoop. The whole process was like crushing dry weeds and smashing rotten wood. General Luo's Hu's face suddenly changed, further feeling the strength of the people behind him. So he became even more alert. The people of the great Zhou dynasty around were also slightly surprised to see this scene. They thought that these people causing trouble in the great Zhou imperial city would be quickly suppressed, but now, dot the situation is far more complicated than they imagined. Which force do these people come from? So powerful, so bold, outrageous, how dare they hurt our great Zhou experts and offend the dignity of our great Zhou dynasty? Go to hell, swish, swish, then, the shouting sounded, and several figures rushed out instantly. Two mid-stage spiritual realm experts, two early-stage spiritual realm experts, feeling the terrifying aura, Wang Dabao's pupils shrank, quickly taking a step back. Die, this time, and Zhang Guo frowned, taking action personally. He realized that if they continued to delay, they might not even be able to reach the prince's mansion and would be completely surrounded. So he decided to start the battle early. Bang, bang, without any hesitation, and Zhang Guo directly activated a fifth grade divine power talisman, one palm at a time, instantly defeating them all. Swish, swish, the group continued to move forward. Chirp, in addition, the black feathered eagle and other flying beasts also joined the battle. Everyone jumped onto their backs and galloped towards the prince's mansion. Since they have been discovered, there is no need to hide anymore, only a quick battle is needed. Stop them, another shout, this time, a late stage spiritual realm expert, four mid stage spiritual realm experts, and eight early stage spiritual realm experts all rose to the sky. The heritage of the great Zhou dynasty is indeed profound. Chen Fan looked at this scene indifferently and said, and Zhang Guo and the others are probably in trouble. These thirteen powerful auras rushed towards them like a storm, their speed so fast that they almost intercepted in Zhang Guo and the others before they reached the prince's mansion. The person is none other than the great Zhou prince, Ji Han. At this moment, Chen Zheng shouted, pointing to a figure on the high platform of the prince's mansion. Slash, and Zhang Guo's eyes narrowed. The spiritual power in his palm condensed into a sharp blade, and he fiercely slashed down. The terrifying blade Qi swept out, along the way, even continuously absorbing the spiritual energy of heaven and earth. The momentum was grand, a full force strike from the late stage spiritual realm, the power was so astonishing. In the prince's mansion, Ji Han, seeing this, was not afraid, but instead stared, his face dark and said, It's the Wanji money bank. How dare they be so bold to intrude into our great Zhou imperial city? Then, detain them all. Whoosh, and Zhang Guo's strike was incredibly powerful. As a strong individual who had stepped halfway into the spirit realm, ordinary people couldn't resist his attacks. Buzz, however, at this critical moment, a middle-aged man suddenly appeared beside the crown prince, dressed in a plain gray robe, seemingly unremarkable but exuding an aura comparable to in Zhang Guo's. Buzz, he extended a palm, containing a spiraling vortex of spiritual power. Subsequently, the vortex began to frantically absorb the surrounding spiritual energy, rapidly expanding. Bang, the fierce clash of their attacks ensued. The spiraling vortex of the middle-aged man in the gray robe met in Zhang Guo's terrifying blade aura, the vortex spinning and devouring the surrounding spiritual energy, while in Zhang Guo's blade aura ravaged the opponent's vortex. Stalemate. Both sides were momentarily deadlocked, consuming each other's strength. The vortex trembled incessantly, seemingly on the brink of collapse, while the blade aura gradually became faint, even transparent. Buzz. At a certain moment, the blade aura dissipated, and the vortex shattered. Surprisingly, they were evenly matched, and Zhang Guo gazed at the middle-aged man in the gray robe and said, Ji Han is yours, and Da Zhou can be spared. The middle-aged man in the gray robe stood calmly and replied, The Wanji money house is indeed as formidable as rumored. But the foundation of Dazhou is not as simple as you imagine. To recklessly intrude into the capital of Dazhou is overly confident. Whoosh, whoosh. At this moment, 
Thirteen spirit realm experts had already surrounded Njongwo and others, exuding a murderous intent. Are you the master of the Wenji money house? Crown Prince Ji Han stared coldly at Njongwo and asked, Dealing with Da Zhou, the master doesn't need to act personally. Wang Dabao took over and straightforwardly replied, Ji Han, as the prince of Da Zhou, shouldn't you consider the people and the royal family of Da Zhou? Shouldn't you think beyond yourself? Don't be too selfish. Ji Han furrowed his brow, not understanding Wang Dabao's intentions. If you truly care for the people and the royal family of Da Zhou, then you should end your own life to prevent a great war, innocent casualties, and the downfall of the Da Zhou royal family. You will forever be the sinner of Da Zhou. Wang Dabao revealed his true purpose. I came to the Wenji money house for two reasons. First, to eliminate you and Zhao Yi. Since Zhao Yi is already dead, why don't you go reunite with him? Why waste time? Ji Han's face turned livid with anger, unable to conceal his fury upon hearing Wang Dabao's words, despite his deep cunning. Uncle Wang, I want him dead. He then turned to the middle-aged man in the gray robe beside him and commanded. All right, the middle-aged man in the gray robe nodded, slowly walking towards the platform, his aura gradually rising like an awakened lion king. Buzz, once again, he extended his palm, and a spiraling vortex of spiritual power appeared, this time targeting Wang Dabao. Sensing a chill, as if facing the gaze of death, Wang Dabao decisively stood behind in Zhongguo. He's my opponent, and Zhongguo surged with determination, bravely charging towards the middle-aged man in the gray robe. Beside Su Qingyu, 13 powerful spirit realm experts launched a fierce attack, like a storm assaulting her. Su Qingyu showed no fear, standing in place in a blood-red robe that fluttered in the wind. A fire spirit danced happily beside her, like a playful child. Her body temperature rose rapidly, and the flames in her eyes flickered incessantly. She decided to fight alone. The fire spirit rushed forward to meet the powerful spiritual attacks from the 13 opponents. She confronted the numerous enemies without showing any weakness. She displayed advanced techniques, showcasing amazing power. She exerted all her strength, using techniques like the heavenly dragon palm, fiery fist, and icy force. The 13 spirit realm experts relied on their profound strength, unleashing earth-ranked combat skills. The fire spirit began to struggle, flickering unstably, on the verge of extinguishing. Suddenly, flames crazily burned in Su Qingyu's eyes. Flames erupted all over her body, gushing out like a waterfall, fierce and unstoppable. The black feathered eagle led other flying beasts to flee the scene. If engulfed by this terrifying fire, except for the black feathered eagle, the other flying beasts and people like Sword Blind would not survive. The people of the Great Zhou below looked up at the raging fire in horror. They had no idea what kind of spell this was. How could such a large fire ignite out of thin air, and so scorching, especially the woman in the blood red robe, shining like the sun? Suddenly, their pupils dilated because two flaming wings grew behind Su Qingyu. Huge, beautiful, noble, and sacred. They seemed to see a fairy descending from heaven. Is this the fairy who has descended from heaven? someone exclaimed. At the same time, the fire spirit, which was about to die out, received a continuous supply of energy, burning even more vigorously, piercing through the strong attacks in front of it. This is the fire of spiritual power. She must have cultivated profound techniques to convert spiritual power into flames that can burn everything. A late-stage spirit realm expert's face turned solemn, showing surprise in his eyes. Su Qingyu's strength exceeded his imagination. He thought he could easily crush his opponents, but he did not expect her to single-handedly withstand the joint attacks of 13 experts. He realized that if they continued to fight, they would not be able to hold on for long. A hint of madness flashed in his eyes, as he quickly formed seals with both hands, summoning a huge crimson tiger that roared deafeningly. Then, he spat out a mouthful of blood, causing the tiger's aura to rise again, exuding a majestic momentum. The people of the Great Zhou below all knelt down. Upon witnessing this scene, the other twelve spirit realm powerhouses hesitated for a moment, but ultimately decided to follow suit. The spirit beasts like Flower Leopard and White Wolf let out deafening roars, as if the entire space was shaken by their might. At that moment, the thirteen spirit realm powerhouses each summoned their own spirit beasts above their heads, 
which obediently followed their master's commands and ruthlessly pounced on the flame spirit without hesitation. The spirit beasts opened their huge mouths and devoured the flame spirit completely. Then, led by the crimson tiger, these thirteen spirit beasts, stepping on holy fire, swiftly charged towards the location of Su Qingyu. Being able to summon such spirit beasts clearly required a high-level secret technique, and their level should be quite high, at least reaching the intermediate level of the Earth Realm. Chen Fan calmly remarked that Su Qingyu's current strength might not be able to withstand this wave of attacks. He gazed at Su Qingyu as if he could read her inner struggle from her aloof expression. Without hesitation, he uttered the words, Breakthrough. At the same time, a hint of determination flashed in Su Qingyu's eyes as she sensed the shadow of death. This feeling reminded her of the long-lost excitement and tension. The next moment, she closed her eyes, fully focused on sensing the movements around her trying to grasp the key to life and death. Instantly, her breath soared rapidly, reaching the late stage of the spirit realm. After nearly two months of hard practice, she finally broke through the realm once again. Meanwhile, the thirteen spirit beasts had already pounced. Su Qingyu spread her flame wings, swiftly ascending and quickly distancing herself from the spirit beasts. She gazed ahead, conjured a flaming longbow in her hand, and shot arrows. The arrows whistled towards the thirteen spirit beasts. After the breakthrough, Su Qingyu's control of the holy fire heart technique became even more handy, creating what she needed at will. Chen Fan nodded in approval, knowing that these thirteen spirit beasts were doomed to die. The thirteen spirit realm powerhouses of the great Zhou dynasty would also cease to exist. He was very pleased with Su Qingyu's performance. The arrows pierced through the bodies, and the spirit beasts let out a piercing howl. With a deafening roar, a massive explosion suddenly reverberated through the sky, flames splintering in all directions like a dazzling display of fireworks. This doesn't make sense. The beast spirit technique is clearly a top secret technique passed down from the great Zhou royal family, known as invincible at the same level. Even if Su Qingyu has broken through to the later stage of the spirit communication realm, she shouldn't be able to instantly destroy all our spirit beasts. Could it be that her cultivation has reached the celestial rank? Thirteen spirit communication realm experts exclaimed in shock, especially when they speculated that Su Qingyu's cultivation had reached the celestial rank, their faces changed drastically. Possessing a celestial rank cultivation technique? Isn't that an extremely rare existence in the central domain? That is the true foundation of strength. Even a power like the spirit cloud sect only has one celestial rank cultivation technique to suppress the sect. How could this woman in front of us possibly possess it? The strength and mystery of the Wenji money bank far exceed your imagination. Dai, Su Qingyu's eyes turned cold, once again condensing a flame arrow, aiming at the crowd. Be careful, the crowd's expressions condensed, on guard, many experts hurriedly activating their body techniques to evade, fearing being hit by Su Qingyu. However, the next moment, countless flame chains swiftly generated like venomous snakes, quickly entwining around the hands and feet of the crowd, restricting their movements. Swish, Su Qingyu released her jade fingers, a flame arrow whistled out, directly targeting the vital point of one of the early spirit communication realm experts. Bang, as expected, when the flame arrow pierced his body, his body instantly exploded, turning into a flower of flesh and blood, blooming in the air. Swish, swish, several more flame arrows shot out in succession each one precise and lethal, killing the high-ranking spirit communication realm experts one by one. Save me, Emperor Zhou, save me. These spirit communication realm experts pleaded for help, their voices desperate. Suddenly, a deep drink echoed throughout the venue, the sound reverberating like a bell, shaking everyone's minds. Spirit master realm expert, Chen Fan frowned, realizing for the first time that Emperor Zhou had finally taken action. Buzz. The next moment, a huge palm suddenly reached out from the depths of the Great Joe Palace, crushing the remaining flame chains on the spirit communication realm experts, shattering the incoming flame arrows. Harm the people of the Great Joe Dynasty, stay and face trial. Emperor Joe spoke again, then that giant palm slammed down towards Su Qingyu, Wang Dabao, and the others. In an instant, everyone felt as if they were being suppressed by a mountain, unable to move. They could only watch helplessly as the giant palm slammed down violently. Squeak. Just then, 
A black feathered eagle soared into the sky, its feathers bristling, exuding an ancient aura. Oh, the awakening of the ancient bloodline in the black feathered eagle? Emperor Zhou's voice rang out again. Wen Ji Money Bank, indeed unexpected, the heritage far exceeding expectations. This emperor is curious to see your master. At that moment, and Zhang Wo couldn't contain his anger and sternly reprimanded, pointing out the shameless behavior of the other party without mercy. He quickly broke free from the encirclement of the middle-aged man in the gray robe and gracefully arrived by the side of Su Qingyu and others. The black feathered eagle instantly released a powerful aura at the later stage of the spiritual realm, spreading its wings and soaring high, as if to break through the sky. Then, flames flickered in Su Qingyu's eyes, the wings of fire fiercely flapping and flames burning all around her. And Zhang Guo suddenly punched out with overwhelming momentum. The three powerful experts at the later stage of the spiritual realm joined forces to resist this overwhelming force, and the Wanji money bank was invincible. In a stark contrast to his usual gentle demeanor, Wang Davao stepped forward, shouting loudly, resolutely facing the overwhelming giant hand and launching a full counterattack. Jian Xiazi and Qin Zheng also felt the pressure decrease suddenly and joined the battle, with the Wanji money bank showing no fear. The united front fought together tension rising, and the air filled with the smell of blood. Finally, Zhu Zhe Yu led 108 soldiers to shout in unison, advancing bravely and engaging in intense clashes with the enemy, a breathtaking scene unfolding before the eyes of all, as the attacks of both sides collided head-on. Boom! In the moment of the collision of attacks, a huge surge of spiritual power spread in all directions, sweeping everything in its path. The scene looked as if it had just experienced a wild storm, leaving a mess everywhere. Wang Davao suddenly spurted out a mouthful of blood, his chubby face contorted in pain. The others had pale faces, showing varying degrees of agony. Zhou Huang's strike easily suppressed the crowd from the Wanji money house. Although it didn't cause fatal injuries, his immense strength was unquestionable. However, Wang Davao spat blood again, looking somewhat helplessly at Njongwo and others complaining, why am I the only one spitting blood? Why are you all fine? And Zhang Guo retorted, because you have a weak constitution. With that, he swiftly moved to the front of Zhu Zhe Yu and others, whispering, blood slaughter formation, prepare to kill the enemy. Zhu Zhe Yu and the others immediately lined up, terrifying killing intent condensed into a huge world-destroying blade floating above their heads, filled with murderous aura. And Zhang Guo tightly gripped the world-destroying blade staring firmly at the depths of the great Zhou Imperial Palace, loudly declaring, let's fight. I alone am enough to defeat you. The middle-aged man in a gray robe snorted coldly, extending his palms as two spiraling spiritual vortexes appeared in black and white, exuding a pervasive killing intent. Obviously, this was a display of his powerful combat skills. Zhou Huang ordered King Xiaoyao to deal with the others and handed Wang Dabao over to him. Zhou Huang once again gathered a huge palm, exerting even more pressure. Wang Dabao spat blood again, glaring angrily at the middle-aged man in the gray robe, roaring, you despicable scoundrel. The middle-aged man in the gray robe frowned, coldly glancing at Wang Dabao. You, a weakling who relies on women for power, what kind of man are you? Wang Dabao was furious. In the mysterious cave, King Xiaoyao Zhou Qian was the despicable man who killed Senior Muli, making him his enemy. This enmity would surely be avenged. However, he felt somewhat lacking in power. The pressure from the previous attack was shared by everyone, but due to insufficient strength, he suffered too much damage, leading to spitting blood. Knowing that King Xiaoyao's strength could rival Lao An's, he realized he was not a match, so he turned to Su Qingyu and said, Envoy Su, this guy killed the brother of a woman he liked to gain power. Shouldn't scum like him be eliminated? Su Qingyu retorted, what's that got to do with me? Wang Dabao felt a sense of defeat. If Su Qingyu didn't help, he couldn't defeat Zhou Qian. Wasn't the verbal battle just digging his own grave? Su Qingyu calmly stated, I will kill him because he hindered my plan to kill Ji Han. Wang Dabao breathed a sigh of relief, as long as he could help defeat Zhou Qian, regardless of the reason. Zhou Qian sneered, ridiculous lies. A hint of ruthlessness flashed in his eyes, maintaining a calm exterior. Su Qingyu's figure was as fast as lightning, fearlessly meeting Wang Dabao's fierce attacks, 
showing her firm determination. The two clashed, tension rising, the atmosphere intense and heated. However, Wang Dabao suddenly stepped back and continued to mock loudly, what a joke. You are the ridiculous one. For a woman, you are willing to kill Mu Li, who also loves her, or should I say, loves her even more. And you, you are just being used by the power behind that woman. Don't you realize that your actions have ruined the happiness of two people? Destroyed their entire lives? No, I should say, destroyed the lives of two people completely? Shut up. Zhou Qian listened to these words, a hint of anger flashing in his eyes, but he suppressed his emotions, coldly retorting, nonsense. How could Mu brother possibly die? Zhou Qian, did you kill Mu brother? Just then, a woman in green robes floated over, noble and dignified, glaring at Zhou Qian and asking, what are you talking about? Accused, Zhou Qian was extremely angry, but because of the distraction, Su Qingyu seized the opportunity nearly causing a serious injury. Seeing this, Wang Dabao's eyes flashed with cunning, immediately provoking, what lie did I tell? I have inherited the talent of Mu Li. If I am lying, why are you so flustered? Zhou Qian, your heart is already wavering, clearly able to suppress Su Qingyu, yet almost defeated by her. What are you afraid of? Zhou Qian took a deep breath, relying on his strong will, calming down again, retorting, Mu brother, you are a gentleman. How could you have such a scoundrel as a disciple? Zhou Qian, you are avoiding my question. What are you afraid of? Wang Dabao was always a smooth talker, never at a loss. How could he be confused by Zhou Qian? Zhou Qian, you deceived me. Mu brother suddenly disappeared. Is it related to you? And the fall of the Mu family must be related to you. Li Ener looked at Zhou Qian with disappointment, emotions running high. You lied to me for a thousand years. Zhou Qian, you are lying. Zhou Qian's face turned serious, responding sincerely, Lianer, I have never deceived you. Please believe me, I am willing to swear by the martial way. Lianer frowned, memories of Zhou Qian flashing through her mind, hesitating. Zhou Qian was about to convince Lianer, but Wang Dabao interrupted. Zhou Qian, you can't hide this huge lie. Look at this, what is it? With that, he took out a jade pendant, showing it to Lianer, Senior, this is Mu Li's relic, you should recognize it, right? Lianer's pupils contracted when she saw the jade pendant. Zhou Qian's face changed suddenly, panic rising in his heart, the pressure from Su Qingyu instantly reversing. Zhou Qian took out one gift after another, as if to prove that they were all real, all for Mu Dage. In Lianer's eyes, tears welled up, her body trembling as she was shocked to find that among these gifts, there were even carvings on the night glass with the characters, Li, and, Lien. Wang Dabao then continued with Emu's last words, one flower, one world, one leaf, one pursuit, one song, one sigh, one life for one person. Lienor, in the next life, we will be husband and wife again. Upon hearing this, Lienor was so moved that she couldn't help but cry. Chen Fan hesitated in his heart finding it hard to believe that Mu Li had actually said such words. Although he thought Wang Dabao might be talking nonsense, seeing Lianer's sadness, he began to doubt the authenticity of it all. Lianer's overwhelming sadness was evident, as he cried out, Mu Dage, so you have always remembered Lianer. Lianer thought you had forgotten him and blamed you. Lianer's loyalty moved people. Even though he had been with King Xiaoyao for a long time, he still fondly remembered Mu Li. Zhou Qian looked at these gifts, feeling uncertain in his heart, and suddenly blurted out that Mu Li should have died long ago. This slip of the tongue made Wang Dabao realize Zhou Qian's guilt. Zhou Qian was burned to ashes by Su Qingyu's holy fire. Fortunately, he managed to protect himself in time, otherwise the consequences would have been unimaginable. Zhou Qian tried to explain his words, claiming that he was being manipulated and that Lianer should not believe his lies. Wang Dabao realized the situation was not good and decided to ignite the flame again. Mu had said to forget him and spend the rest of your life with your loved one, to meet again in the next life. Upon hearing this, Lianer was so emotionally stirred that he shouted, I don't love him. Mu Dage, the only person I love is you. Lianer's outburst shocked Zhou Qian, shaking his innermost feelings once again, his face turning pale. If what Lianer said is true, all his efforts will be in vain. 
It may even endanger the Great Zhou Dynasty. He will be seen as a criminal of the Great Zhou Dynasty. However, Zhou Qian couldn't suppress his inner anger and loudly rebuked, Shut up! You lowly woman! Lianer, I have cherished you for a whole thousand years. Yet you still can't forget Mu Li, the deceased. We are like two ships passing in the night. Even in countless dreams, I hear you calling Mu Li's name. Why? Why? What does he have that I don't? Suddenly, Zhou Qian's demeanor underwent a huge change, his aura becoming eerie and chaotic, as if possessed. Through gritted teeth, he said, Since you are so devoted to him, then go to hell and be with him. With that, Zhou Qian let out a low growl, his body enveloped in black aura, looking evil and ferocious. His aura began to rapidly rise, quickly breaking through the spiritual realm, reaching the spirit control realm. This scene made Wang Dabao's face change, muttering in frustration, how could this happen? I was just boasting, and yet the enemy's strength is still increasing. Without hesitation, he chose to retreat, knowing full well that this battle would be extremely difficult. Zhou Qian was using the profound demon technique. This is a forbidden technique of the demon realm. Chen Fan furrowed his brows, traversing through various worlds, extremely knowledgeable, and immediately thought of something, coldly saying, thousands of years ago, the demon realm invaded the human realm, leading to a fierce battle between the two sides. The eastern part of the Lingyun continent was also affected. Although humanity ultimately emerged victorious, the demon race left behind the profound demon technique. No wonder Zhou Qian, who has already reached the late stage of the spiritual realm, couldn't break through, it turns out, he has been studying the profound demon technique. It seems that Su Qingyu and the others, may be in danger. Meanwhile, Zhou Qian suddenly lunged forward, grabbing Lianer by the throat, lifting her up, and roaring, die. Zhou, Qian, you, you. Lianer's face turned crimson, but her eyes were filled with deep disappointment, realizing she had married a cunning and ruthless man. However, at the moment of her death, she learned of Mu Li's true feelings, which filled her with satisfaction. She closed her eyes but took out ten grade five godburst talismans from her hand. Even facing death, she wanted to use her last strength to avenge Mu Li. Consecutive explosions rang out in the sky, causing the entire imperial city to tremble. People fell to the ground in terror, watching the horrifying explosion sweep towards them. One grade 5 godburst talisman is enough to defeat a late-stage spiritual realm expert, yet Lianer detonated 10 of them. The power can be imagined. Even Zhou Qian, who had already advanced to the spirit control realm, paled in fear, engulfed by the explosions. The explosions caused large sections of the imperial city to collapse, a scene of devastation. Wang Dabao immediately took out grade 5 Godshield talismans from his chinkin bag, distributing them to Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi beside him, to guard against any unforeseen circumstances. Although they were far from the center of the explosion, their weaker strength couldn't withstand such a powerful impact. As for Wang Dabao, when Su Qingyu saw the ten talismans in Lu Ling'er's hand, a raging fire burned in her heart. The flame wings flapped violently and her body uncontrollably flew backwards, arriving next to Wang Dabao. Wang Dabao handed two fifth-grade divine shield talismans to Jian Xiaozi and Chen Zheng. Then, he made up his mind and resolutely handed the last fifth-grade divine shield talisman to Su Qingyu, activating a fourth-grade divine shield talisman for himself. Without hesitation, he said to Su Qingyu, Su Envoy, Zhou Qian may not necessarily win. Now is our chance to strike. Seize the opportunity and kill him. With a stern expression never seen before, Wang Dabao shouted loudly. Su Qingyu's eyes flashed with surprise. Then she took the fifth grade divine shield talisman and swiftly rushed towards the center of the explosion. The flames in her eyes spread rapidly, covering the entire eyeball, appearing exceptionally mysterious. Subsequently, flames surged around her body, her hands fluttered, as if weaving a strange pattern. With her movements, the surrounding air began to fluctuate, becoming more terrifying. The shockwave of the explosion quickly hit, but she concentrated all her power in her palms, gradually weaving it into a flame lotus flower. Relying solely on the fifth grade divine shield talisman for defense. After a moment, the explosion ended. Silence enveloped the surroundings. Thud, Wang Dabao's heavy body fell to the ground, 
coughing up a mouthful of blood, his breath instantly weakened. Although Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi were protected by the fifth grade divine shield talismans, they still suffered some minor injuries, pale faced but not spitting blood. Swoosh, the black feathered eagle, although a bit disheveled, remained unscathed due to its powerful defense. Why is it always me spitting blood? Wang Dabao tried to complain, but eventually lost all his strength. Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi stood on either side, protecting him. Ha ha. Just then, a burst of laughter suddenly rang out. Joke, the power of the spirit realm far exceeds your imagination. You, a poor woman, still want to deal with me. You and Mu Li are equally naive. With these words, a figure shrouded in black magic stood in midair. It was Zhou Qian. Although the dark aura in his body had faded somewhat, his aura was unpredictable, obviously indicating that the 10 fifth grade explosive talismans had caused him considerable damage. Su Qingyu glared angrily, a blazing rage burning in her heart. She scolded Zhou Qian. You despicable scoundrel, you are destined for retribution. With that, she moved like lightning, conjuring a fiery lotus in her hand, radiating terrifying energy waves that made one's heart quiver. Zhou Qian, in terror, asked, what do you intend to do? Faced with Zhou Qian's fear, Su Qingyu sneered coldly and mercilessly hurled the fire lotus towards him. Zhou Qian, in panic, was unable to escape the fast speed of the fire lotus. He screamed in despair, trying to flee, while releasing his demonic energy to resist the flames. However, the next moment, the fire lotus exploded, spreading a fierce blaze in all directions like a huge flaming lotus in full bloom, its power no less than the five-ranked divine blast talisman used earlier. Zhou Qian let out a despairing scream, ultimately engulfed by the flames, disappearing completely in the explosion. Thinking she could gain the upper hand by breaking through to the spirit master realm, Su Qingyu encountered a series of backlash, ending up trapped in a sea of fire. Meanwhile, as she released the fire lotus, she unfurled her flame wings, swiftly retreating, enveloping herself in flames to avoid the blast. Suddenly, Wang Dabao was astonished to see Su Qingyu possessing a five-ranked divine shield talisman, leaving him dumbfounded and envious, wondering why she still needed his divine shield talisman. Enraged and emotional, he couldn't help but cough up blood. At the same time, Jian Xiaozi and Chen Zheng also displayed their five-ranked divine shield talismans and activated them quickly. Seeing this, Wang Dabao was so furious that he spat blood three times in a row and eventually passed out. Chen Zheng explained, these were left to us by the master. Wang Dabao, didn't you receive yours? Wang Dabao, in agony, spat out blood, his life hanging by a thread. Chen Zheng and Jian Xiaozi closely protected Wang Dabao, enduring the impact of the explosion. Seeing this, the black feathered eagle could only helplessly shield Wang Dabao under its wings. Feeling a huge blow to his soul, Wang Dabao was severely injured. After the explosion, although Su Qingyu survived, blood trickled from her lips, her injuries severe, face pale, body exhausted, swaying unsteadily, and finally falling from the sky. The black feathered eagle was also injured, struggling to catch Su Qingyu. At this critical moment, Ji Han appeared on the battlefield in a disheveled state, with a determined gleam in his eyes, fearlessly shouting, we can't let them escape. We must kill them, a reward of a million spirit stones and a promotion of three ranks. Such temptations ignited endless fighting spirit within him. Immediately, the soldiers of the great Zhou dynasty charged towards Su Qingyu and the others like frenzied beasts, their speed as fast as flashing arrows in the dark. The late-stage experts in the spirit realm who were saved by the Zhou Emperor and the three mid-stage experts regained their composure and once again lunged towards them. The situation instantly reversed, plunging the situation into a critical state. Black Feathered Eagle, Blind Swordsman, and Chen Zheng tightly guarded Su Qingyu and Wang Dabao, their faces showing a hint of seriousness, as they prepared for a desperate battle. Ji Han coldly declared, this is the territory of my Ji family, under the great Zhou dynasty. Any intruders will pay the most painful price. These people from the Wenji money house dare to kill the king of Shenyao and disrupt the order of the great Zhou dynasty. They must be eradicated as a warning to future generations. The black feathered eagle stood alone in battle against a late stage spiritual realm expert and three mid stage spiritual realm experts. 
The fight began. Jian Blind and Chin Zheng fought against the siege of the Dazhou soldiers. Wang Dabao remained unconscious. Su Qingyu sat cross-legged, fully focused on recovering internal strength, oblivious to the dangers around. Chin Zheng was struck by a general with the strength of an early-stage elemental realm. He quickly activated a fourth-grade shielding talisman to save his life. In a life-and-death situation, he spared no expense in using fourth-grade power talismans and teleportation talismans. Engaging in a fierce battle with the enemy, corpses littering the ground, blood flowing like a river. Jian Blind decided to deal with the experts at the elemental realm level, leaving the enemies below the elemental realm to Chen Zheng. However, he underestimated the strength of the Da Zhou dynasty. This was the imperial capital, with strong individuals aplenty, for everyone he killed, there were several replacements. Jian Blind's star polar step and spirit sword technique were formidable, but facing the strong individuals of the Da Zhou dynasty, he couldn't easily emerge victorious. In an instant, he was pierced through the abdomen by a sword. As time passed, experts from the transforming spirit realm rushed to the scene, and the atmosphere became increasingly tense. The injuries of the two individuals became more severe by the minute. In less than a minute, 18 experts from the transforming spirit realm had gathered around them. Sword Blind and Chen Jingwei were in grave danger at this moment. Faced with such a large number of experts from the transforming spirit realm launching a simultaneous attack, they were simply unable to resist. The battle erupted once again, with no mercy or idle talk, the onslaught continued. Suddenly, the world seemed to be in turmoil, as if dusk was approaching. Then, blood-red light poured down like rain from the sky. These experts from the transforming spirit realm and the soldiers of the great Zhou dynasty, under the baptism of the blood-red light, fell one after another, their lives disappearing in an instant like mayflies. It was terrifying and silent. Seeing this scene from thousands of meters away, the soldiers of the great Zhou dynasty were filled with fear and retreated, afraid of being involved in this catastrophe. A spiritual weapon. It's actually a spiritual weapon. The Wenji Money House actually had a spiritual weapon? Ji Han's face changed abruptly, showing a look of horror. The Wenji Money House actually possessed a spiritual weapon. When others heard this, they exclaimed in shock. Spiritual weapons are rare throughout the eastern region. Only the great Zhou dynasty possesses them. A spiritual weapon is enough to determine the fate of a region. Unexpectedly, the Wanji Money House also possessed one. At the same time, in another battlefield high in the sky, and Zhang Guo suddenly roared, and his aura soared suddenly. Spirit Master Realm. What? Zhou Huang's face changed. Thinking to himself, are all the people from the Wanji Money House monsters? Actually breaking through successively. Blade of Annihilation. Then, and Zhang Guo clenched the Blade of Annihilation, his momentum skyrocketed, pointing straight to the sky. Actually suppressing Zhou Huang. In the previous fierce battle between Su Qingyu and Zhou Qian, and Zhang Guo had always been on the defensive, but with the Blood Slaughter Array and the Blade of Annihilation, his combat power was evenly matched with Zhou Huang. However, at that time, he could only passively defend as Zhou Huang had always held the absolute advantage in attack. And now, Ink Rain Sword. Zhou Huang's face changed dramatically. He felt the shadow of death, and without hesitation, he said in a low voice. Then, a sword cry resounded through the sky, the wind and clouds surged, and the sky darkened. Patter, patter. It started raining, everyone felt surprised. Black rainwater? When they saw that the raindrops falling from the sky were actually black, they felt a sense of eeriness and heaviness in their hearts. Oh, then, the first person hit by the black rain was directly decapitated. Oh, oh, a series of screams followed. The black raindrops were carrying the intent of the sword. Chen Fan squinted his eyes slightly and said softly, interesting. The mysterious sword can generate sword intent on its own. However, Zhou Huang seems unable to fully control the ink rain sword. It has taken away so many lives upon its appearance. Moreover, the lives taken are just ordinary subjects of the great Zhou dynasty. Swish, witnessing such a bloody and cruel scene, and Zhang Guo furrowed his brows, realizing he could not take it lightly. He coldly rebuked. Then the immense doomsday blade fiercely struck down, blocking all retreat paths around Zhou Huang. Swish, swish, at the same time, those black raindrops, like hunters in the forest, 
smelling blood, found their prey, and crazily shot towards the doomsday blade. Ping! Ping! These black raindrops fiercely attacked the massive doomsday blade, emitting sharp metallic clashes. As time passed, the huge doomsday blade gradually became ethereal. The powerful offensive was quickly dissolved. The confrontation between sword intent and killing intent, originally evenly matched, was just. Chen Fan calmly said, The spiritual weapon gathers the essence of heaven and earth, nurtured by countless resources and strong individuals. The power of the doomsday blade is still lacking a bit. Swish. Just then, a blood-red blade light tore through the sky, directly targeting the true form of the ink rain sword. Two against one. This is the winning move. Chen Fan watched the blood-red blade light shoot out and nodded. The blood-red blade light is also a spiritual weapon. Equally extraordinary. Cooperating with the doomsday blade filled with killing intent, they were more than capable of dealing with this mysterious ink rain sword. Ping. Ping. Next, the Ink Rain Sword and the Blood Red Blade Light began a fierce battle. Because the Ink Rain Sword needed to divide its attention to deal with the Doomsday Blade, it was unable to fully respond to the Blood Red Blade Light, resulting in being completely suppressed by it. Swish, swish, soon, the Ink Rain Sword could only retract the endless sword intent it released back into its body. Suddenly, the Black Rain dispersed, and the Ink Rain Sword and the Blood Red Blade Light were evenly matched. However, Zhou Huang instantly fell into a desperate situation, and Zhang Guo's eyes turned cold, recondensing the doomsday blade, then fiercely striking towards Zhou Huang. Zhou was bound again, shouting in terror, Ancestor, save me. Alas, just then, a light sigh rang out, hitting everyone's hearts like a heavy hammer, many faces instantly turning pale, blood seeping from the corners of their mouths. 